can you believe that a girl just disappeared for good reason? That's right, it's me. My name is Lin Shiyu, an ordinary girl who just became a working girl. When you take a bath at home, you are somehow transported to a strange world. I'm still struggling with how I can't feel the side of the bathtub and haven't realized that I'm no longer in the bathtub. When I slowed down and looked at the scene in front of me, I froze. I'm in a lake, surrounded by mountains, a spring, and birds in the sky. I'm probably the only one who's traveled through the ages just by taking a bath. I can only cover my chest. Because of the bubble bath, the only thing that followed me across was a scrubby towel, and I couldn't help the tears that were streaming down my face. But this world is nothing like the modern world I live in. Being in the primeval forest, with all the horrible beasts and poisons, scares me a lot. And orcs that turn into beasts, white tigers, he wanted me to be his mate straight away. And silver wolf, who shamelessly asked me to mate with him. And pythons too, I can't answer that. And finally, there's the man in the temple with the mouth that says just use your body to make up for it. I can't resist. Can I go back to modern times if I pass out now? Fortunately following me to this world. There's a hidden system. Host, the information on creatures and plants in this atlas can help you survive in this world. With the system and iconography, I can also bravely live in this dangerous world. Use the illustrations and knowledge. Work hard on farming and infrastructure, and reopen a new world in this beast world. Then came the time when I had just come into the world, and the man before me asked me from what tribe you had run away, and his eyes were full of joy. I was so shocked by this man, he just held me and rushed to let go of me. When I lowered my head, it was like a bolt from the blue. Shyly, I called him a big pervert, because at this point I wasn't dressed, and he wasn't dressed either. I struggled to get away. You let go of me. I'll call the police if you keep doing that. You pervert. You put your clothes back on and he said he wouldn't hurt me. But when I think about it, you're not even wearing clothes. Saying that the devil will believe you are. The corner of my eye tears flow down. He held me up. I'm not going to do anything to you as long as you don't run away. And he wondered why I was crying. I was scared and I said, then put me down. He said yes, and put me down, and I looked like I was in distress. The moment I let go, I run away from here. The lake ripples. I heard him say, you're too slow. I can easily catch up with you no matter where you go. I turned my head sheepishly. Aren't you ashamed to be naked? Can you put on some clothes first? This man pinches his hair. I'm in the shower. Naked of course. Aren't you too? He's right I can't believe I'm speechless. I shed helpless tears. Even if you let me come in a dress. I looked to the side, and there was a dress. When I picked it up, God I believe you, it was just a towel, he's coming my way, I don't know what to do, and he asked me, where's your male, little female, and I certainly don't know what it is, what females, what males, he explained to me, I'm a male, you're a female, we can be mates, didn't anyone tell you that, I'm a little overwhelmed, no way, what world have I traveled to, and what kind of male beast are you then, the man's eyes are glazed over, my name is Whitey, then a burst of spiritual light surrounded by D, and his body had changed. In the end, he turned into a white tiger. I can't believe it. It's a tiger monster. The white tiger looked at me and I fell straight back in shock. I slowly sink to the bottom of the lake. If this is a nightmare, please let me wake up soon. That's when a ding was heard in his head, confirming the host Lin slowly and starting to dock the information. Information docking successful. System fully activated. Hello host, welcome to system 438. The mind is still pondering over the system something. And then I woke up and felt the wind. My hands are touching this fur. It's so soft. Is it a blanket? The white tiger's mouth is talking. You're awake. I can't believe it. Is the blanket talking? I looked at the fur in front of me. It wasn't a blanket. It was tiger fur and he told me to hold on tight so it didn't fall off. How do you feel? Are you still in pain? A gust of wind blew, and I shivered with cold, having nothing on, and being blown by the mountain winds. The white tiger stops dead in his tracks. Suddenly he transformed back into Whitey and hugged me. He came to a tree and was going to jump on it with me in his arms. Put me down. Let me stay here for now. And he suddenly unzips his trousers. What are you doing? Throw me a cloth and a dagger. These are for you. And Whitey jumped right in. Wait for me. Be right back. And then it turned into a white tiger. I looked at him curiously, wanting to go for what? And the white tiger looked up at the... 
He's aiming for the boar over there. Who doesn't know the danger is coming? The white tiger roared. Immediately, he ran to capture the wild boar, which wailed in fear and tried to run away. Looking at the scene in front of him, it actually bites and the boar is still screaming. The bite and strength was so terrible that the boar could only scream and convulse. And I'm not even enough for him to eat. Then he changed back to his human form. He's got some cuts on him. Come to the tree. It's okay now. Jump down. Jump down. Are you kidding me? This is a height of four meters. In case of a bad jump, it will be directly hiccuped at ah. Whitey opens his hand. Is this female scared? How do you take care of such a small and delicate female? I was still naked and hesitating in the tree. Afraid to jump, Whitey jumped up and thought, looks like we'll have to poke around when we get to the wolf tribe in a bit. He jumped with me in his arms, reaching out for me to give him the bone knife. He took his bone knife and went at the boar. So fast, such a big boar, and cut it to pieces in a flash. And this boar's skin is on me. The skins are cleaned and this will give you protection from the cold. I heard a ding. What was that? Obtained one boar skin. Triggered a novice task. Please ask the host to collect the number of animal skins. After the completion of the task, a novice gift pack will be issued. Whitey called out to me, and I was awakened, not yet knowing what the task was. I bowed to show my gratitude and straight away I charmed Whitey. I'll buy you clothes when we get to the wolf tribe. As for the wolf tribe, I still don't know where it is. And he explained that he usually goes over there to exchange or buy anything he needs from them. It also sounded like a village, but Whitey had only heard of tribes and cities. I got curious and asked him what the city was, and if there were any humans in it. I've never heard of it. The cities are built by orcs. They are very powerful and fierce. I can show you later if you're interested. I hear orcs. That means no humans. The white emperor suddenly took out a piece of meat and asked me if I would eat it. I was shocked and surely didn't eat it. But if I don't eat, my body will have no strength. I'm scared and I'm determined not to eat. Whitey turned around and walked away. He told me to wait. A few minutes later, he came back with all kinds of fruits and asked me if I could eat them. I had a sweet and sour bite. Thank you. Watching me. Whitey wondered if I was a vegetarian orc. I don't know how to shapeshift. I responded to him awkwardly. That. I'm kind of an omnivore. And it's not that I don't eat meat. I just don't eat raw meat. If it's cooked meat, I quite like it too. How do you get cooked meat? I'll do it for you. I thought about the conditions here. And there are no pots here. Frying and stewing are impossible. You can only grill meat, right? Then you have to have a fire in the first place. When he heard me say fire, the white emperor raised an eyebrow. So I asked him if you've seen fire, and he nodded back. The destructive power of fire. It's too horrible for orcs. Must we use fire to do it? I nodded back, and with what seemed like a sigh, he was ready to lead me to the fire. To my amazement, I pulled out a stick that could be drilled for fire. Next it was my show alone. I struggled to twirl the stick as Whitey watched on. 30 minutes later, I'm upping the ante. After 40 minutes I just dropped the damn thing all over again. Sure enough the TV is a lie. Whitey cupped my hand and told me not to mess with it. He kissed the kissing hand tenderly and led me to the fire while I was a little shy. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. Whatever you want, I'll get it for you. You're my female, I'll take care of you for the rest of your life. He hugged me and said these words. I froze when I heard about my females these guys. Shyly, I pushed away from his body. I'm no one's female. When I looked into his eyes, they were so gentle but with a kind of determination. And he said, you don't have to be afraid. As long as I'm here, I'll protect you. He took my hand. Even if you're weak, I'll get you well. This orc is so powerful, yet so gentle. He was adopted by his uncle after his parents died in an accident when he was a child. It wasn't abusive, but from that point on, my home was gone. After that, I grew up alone and got used to the unprotected world. He asked me again, my hands are so cold, are they not feeling well? He hugged me worriedly and put his hand on my chest. Is that better? This warm dry temperature gentle embrace. The first time I felt such tender treasures since mom and dad left. Mere worried concern. Like family. I panicked and said it was okay. This warmth was felt again in an orc. Then the sun shone. He carried me on his back and was going to take me to the wolf tribe first to show them my body. I say it's fine but it doesn't work anymore because I fainted earlier for some reason. I'm sweating. I can't say you scared me out of my wits. Don't worry. I won't leave you no matter what your problems are. He had re-emphasized that you are my female. And I'm really female. I smiled helplessly and remembering what the mission just said. I want two more animal skins, is it okay? He said it's okay and asked me to wait a bit. An hour later, he brought five skins. Not enough to get some more. Whitey suddenly assumed human form and helped me sort the blood stains out of my skin, and I looked sheepishly at his body. 
found out he hurt his arm. Whitey looks at his arm wound and says it's fine. It'll be fine in a minute. I went up and touched his arm. Thank you. You are my female. I would do anything for you. He rubbed against me and said these words. This orc really likes to rub and cuddle. Almost like a big cat. Whitey then prepares to leave. First going to wipe the blood stains to remove the smell. Or his prey will smell it. I waved my hand and he finally left. I just heard a ding. Confirmation that the new bee mission has been completed. Issuing new bee gift packs. Please pay attention to the host to check receipt. A cloth bag appeared directly in front of my eyes. I waved the stick in my bag, which seemed to be hollow inside. As soon as I opened it, I was surprised to find that it was kindling. Great. Finally a spark. Curious to see if there are any more treasures. One of the books that appeared as part of an illustrated compendium of ancient flora and fauna. I heard voices. Whitey's back. Whitey noticed my behavior too. I greeted him back with averted eyes. Still carrying my own cloth bag. The corners of Baidi's mouth rose slightly. It seems that my little female still has little secrets. But it's okay when we spend more time together. I'll slowly unravel all the secrets in you. After that, we set off for the wolf tribe. When we came to the wolf tribe, we saw these wolves and orcs here. Every 10 days, the wolf tribe holds a fair at the bottom of the Rocky Mountains. The surrounding orcs would arrive with their own goods, exchanging what they needed. Looking at these orcs, how can they be so tall? A hand behind me grabbed my cloth bag and lifted me up in a flash. Whitey explained, females are precious, and there will be trouble when females like you are discovered. They swarm to compete for the right to mate with you. I was shocked by that. I heard a voice behind me. Please don't leave me. It's true that females are precious, and all the males around are circling this she-wolf. They all revolve around one woman. Things are rare, and it's very common to see dozens of male wolves surrounding a female. So the status of females in the wolf clan is very high. High status without productive labor, but it's scary to be surrounded by so many men. No, perverts. He told me not to be afraid. I'll take you to a witch doctor. The orc seems to have noticed something. He turned his head and looked over. The other orc then asked him what was wrong. He said it was nothing. In my mind, that's just Whitey. Right, he's always been a loner. Why would he bring a partner? A man carries a beautiful woman to the wolf tribe. How can he have the leisure to take a walk? Whitey asks the witch Dr. Longju to look after my mate, who suddenly fainted earlier. I quietly peeked out from behind the man, not realizing that this old grandpa looked like Father Christmas. Longju was stunned that the white emperor had such a young female with him. He came at the female instantly, shouting uncontrollably from his mouth. Little female, how many male mates have you had? Whitey immediately moved forward to protect me. After all, it was his female and no one could hit on me. Long Ju's face was instantly gloomy. You kid is so lucky to have found a female mate. Poor young lads of our wolf clan fighting to get a female mate. I didn't expect him to be serious for a second, but he immediately walked up to me and took a closer look at me. As time passed, Long Ju finally understood my situation. Long Champ said that the little female was not sick, just that I looked too small and delicate and needed to be taken care of. So he dug into his sack and handed me some crunchy fruits as a gift. He also reminded me that they have a lot of fun in the wolf pack besides this. Long Ju suddenly told me to look at him more often. Their wolf boys are handsome, gentle and affectionate. I immediately said that I would only listen to Whitey. After all, it looked like that tiger was angry now. I saw the white emperor lift me up as soon as he could, and the long champ witch doctor was still chattering excitedly. This old witch doctor must be up to no good. Whitey says he doesn't need to. He'll take care of me. So we walked towards the noisy streets, surrounded by people selling things that orcs need. I sat comfortably in the arms of the white emperor and looked around suspiciously. Where was this going to go? By D thought to himself that this little female cared a lot about being naked, so he'd better buy her a suitable dress first. As he mused, he led me quickly to the huge stone wall with colorful clothes hanging from it. I picked up the clothes aside and stroked them, not realizing that they were all real leather. The workmanship was simple, but it was better than being naked, so I rushed off to change my clothes. But the orc's clothes were also too big, and I had to borrow a needle and thread from them. The beasts had only twine and stone needles, and I could not look at the rough tools without weeping. Suddenly I had a flash of insight. I had metal pins in my hair bands. Maybe I could use them. 
So I hastily took it off and carefully unwrapped the metal inside. Bai Di handed out a crystal coin in displeasure. She said the clothes were all too big. Weren't there any smaller ones? The shiny crystals are worth a fortune. But she's just too petite. But you can take two more outfits. When Whitey wanted to do something else, I stepped out of the fitting room and said I was done. I stood slightly rushed, waiting for Whitey to comment on my clothes. I didn't realize that Whitey was staring blankly at me, and that the clerk behind him had turned into an orc-like figure. I covered my chest in embarrassment. Was I wearing clothes that didn't fit? I only saw Whitey's eyes pulling at me and complimenting me on how good I looked in A. I shyly explained that the original dress was too big and I had it altered. I looked at my smooth little feet. Don't they sell shoes in the shop? So I looked down and saw them all walking barefoot in the street. At that moment Whitey suddenly looked up and gazed straight at my ankle. No wonder the little female skin was so delicate. He mused darkly. No wonder it was all scratched up. In a moment of dawning realization, he asked the shopkeeper for a small set of needlework and animal skins. Whitey handed me something, and although he didn't say much, he was careful to feel what I wanted. Although he came to this world inexplicably, it wasn't that scary with him by his side. As I pondered this, I walked forward, when a voice suddenly came from behind me to intercept us. I didn't realize it was a little orc with a message that Longchamp Witch Doctor had invited them to his home. The White Emperor's eyes suddenly became fierce and he bluntly rebuffed the Witch Doctor's request. The wolf tribe was large, with many males and few females, and his little female was too much of a danger, so he immediately put me on his shoulders, intending to quickly leave this place of wrongdoing. The little orc was in a state of shock when he realized that Frost Cloud had actually returned. They've got a little female in the tribe, super pretty and well behaved, but she's only got one male mate right now. Frost Cloud said he hadn't seen it again and wasn't interested in these mates or anything else. He carried the food he had hunted to the mouth of the cave and waited for its imminent entry into his stomach, but he stood frozen at the mouth of the cave, looking gravely across at his companion. The sounds that came from inside the cave rose and fell, causing Frost Cloud to recoil in a paroxysm of stomach. He seemed to be looking up as if he were watching. Three orcs across the street enjoying a small female. The cave was full of charming. The female was being caressed by the male at will, but she was unable to resist at all. This thing, ugly as if it were a puddle of rotting flesh, rolling around in several males, was his mother. He couldn't contain himself any longer and quickly threw his prey to the ground. They were so disgusting. The females are all the same. Ungrateful. Lazy and greedy. Only interested in hooking up with reliable males. Frost Cloud darted forward, indignant to get away from them. At that moment, outside a huge cave, two figures stood, one tall and one short. Whitey had the blade of grass in his hand and handed it to me. This would be comfortable to lay on, but he was going out hunting now. I sat in the cave with unquestioning good behavior, my eyes looking forward to what prey Whitey would bring. After I watched Whitey fade away, I thought to myself that the big tiger had finally left. I suddenly picked up the bamboo in my hand to show me if that fire was working. I was able to light the torch easily. There's still some dried meat left behind by by D. These can be used for barbecuing. Now the jerky is sizzling. I then began to check out the world, and the booklet inside the parcel was written in great detail. Continental basics sold beasts and females. Sold beasts are evolved from normal orcs and are very strong in combat. As for the females, they are very rare. They are responsible for reproducing and will have many mates. Of course, this assumes the ability to reproduce, which is why the world is polygamous. She suddenly saw the food crunchy fruit. Both the leaves and the fruit are used as medicine. So Grandpa Claus is so good, that fruit still needs to be preserved. After I closed the book with satisfaction, I smelled a hint of something unusual. Sure enough, the meat on the grill is burnt. These things are hard to beat. Whitey walks to the entrance of the cave with his prey and suddenly notices a fire coming from inside. He was startled by the fire inside. Was the cave on fire? The little female was still in the cave. So Whitey quickly rushed inside, looking around in a panic for the little female. I froze and looked at Whitey in front of me, clutching the burnt skewer in my hand. I didn't expect Whitey to suddenly shout that the cave was on fire and tell me to get out. I hastened to tell him to relax, that I had lit this fire myself. But the White Emperor was angry. Do you know that fire? Fire is dangerous, you touch it and it will be burnt to ashes. I had to gag him by letting him try the kebabs after they were grilled. Bitey's puzzled gaze changed to shyness. This tasted better than anything he'd ever eaten. 
it's baked by the fire, and the fact that I spent so much time by it proves that it's not as dangerous as I thought it was. The fire also provides me with warmth and allows me to cook and eat my food. But Whitey is serious. This is still too dangerous. Next time let him cook and roast the meat. I had just walked up to Whitey when he was done with the kebabs. It's true that Pak Thai's kebabs are the best. Soft and tender with no burnt flavor. They are delicious. Whitey sat down across from me and after careful scrutiny he ate it. At this time the cave was warm and welcome as if this was a happy life. I leaned back against the rock after eating and drinking my fill and burnt comfortably. Whitey suddenly transformed back into his original form and let me rest on his plush backside. I can't wait to touch it. It's like a giant blanket. It's so warm. But then I saw the wounds on his body and suddenly remembered that there were still crunchy berries to bandage up. Whitey said he didn't need it. He just licked it himself. And the crispy fruit told me to keep it for myself. But you're my family. So of course you'll be fine. Crispies aren't as important important as you. Whitey suddenly became sentimental. After all, he had never seen his family since he was born. When he was brooding on the sidelines, I quickly tended to his wounds. By D was touched and thought to himself, this cute little female, I am so lucky to have met you in this life. As the time drew on, with the fire still burning on one side, they were to begin to rest. As they slowly fell asleep, the color outside gradually brightened. I fell into a deep sleep against his body, and the fire across the way actually burned more and more fiercely. Suddenly I opened my eyes and realized something was wrong. It was hot underneath my body. So when I looked quickly, I realized I was having my period. I sat awkwardly, looking around and wondering what to do. At that moment a voice from behind me asked if I was hurt. I ran out the door in an instant, loudly warning Whitey that I wasn't hurt myself. But Whitey didn't believe any of my bullshit. The smell of blood was coming from between his legs. He had to take off his clothes to check, and I broke down and called him a pervert and a pervert. The White Emperor looked like he didn't understand and said in a serious manner that he was a tiger not a wolf. I had to shyly explain that bleeding was normal. But why would I want to talk about my period with a tiger? As an orc, Whitey didn't know anything about that. He only knew that bleeding all the time would kill him. He suddenly remembered when he was a child, and he was in pain as he walked towards his injured brother. But his brother didn't answer him, and his nose was dying. He suddenly began to mumble. Are you going to leave me too? Whitey wouldn't allow that to happen. And as soon as he picked me up, he intended to take me to the witch doctor for an examination. I haven't heard of anyone dying from their period until now. At this moment, Frosty Cloud was covering his wounds in pain, and no one would know how many times he had been hurt. The witch doctor sighed helplessly. He was running out of herbs here, but the witch doctor was exceptionally angry that his energies were now focused on the hunt, in the completely wrong direction. He suddenly reminded Frost Cloud that you should find a female. After all, you're already an adult. As much as I know you hate females, some of them go back to their old ways. Frost Cloud suddenly shouted at him, breaking down to stop the witch doctor from talking any further. He angrily pushed the door open with one hand, turning back slightly to explain to the old witch doctor that the thought of his mother made him sick to his stomach. And with that, he stormed out of the door, not caring about the serious wounds on his body. Frost Cloud, as the leader of the Wolf Clan, has no intention of reproducing any offspring at all. At that moment, Whitey rushed forward with me in his arms, looking worried and asking the old witch doctor to save me. Shyly, I clutched my robe tightly and kept explaining to him that I was fine. But Whitey handed me to the witch doctor. But how can I be looked at in a place like mine? I had to explain to the witch doctor that my constitution is such that I bleed a few days a month. The old witch doctor didn't think there was anything so magical. He'd never seen it before. Suddenly a thought occurred to him. The little female was still unable to determine which race. I was so overwhelmed by their dialogue that I had to admit to them that I was a human being. But humans they had never heard of. Only apes that had come down to them very early in life. I had to take the opportunity to admit it. It's kind of the same ancestor, barely a race. The old witch doctor, however, was a bit serious. It's better to let her stay here for a few more days first. Then he took out the red berries that replenished my blood and quickly handed them to me. I didn't expect the old grandpa to be so thoughtful, and I was a little touched as I took the red berries in front of me. The old witch doctor, however, was dumbfounded. This little female was gentle and not at all spoiled. She also looked as pretty as she had ever looked, unlike any other female. 
might as well introduce Frosty Cloud to her, but we still need to rest first to see how tomorrow goes. At this point I picked up a needle and thread to mend the animal's coat, and anyway, there are plenty of skins now, so I'll take one and make a pair of pants, but I've never done needlework before, and the stone needle went straight through my finger. I held my fingers in pain while Whitey watched me from in front of me. He suddenly took the animal skin as soon as he could, indicating that he should be allowed to help with the sewing of the clothes. Then after a burst of easy sewing and a quick threading of the needle, he picked up a pair of delicate panties and handed them to me for me to try on. I took it awkwardly. I didn't realize the big tiger's handiwork was so strong. I quickly ducked behind him and quietly wore the. I was wearing the carefully sewn panties, but I felt my body was incredibly comfortable. Whitey, you're really good at this. It fits really well, with absorbent soft and leaves in it, and it's barely enough to top off the last few days. By D. However, was very puzzled behind him as to what this thing was actually for. When I saw his claws touching me, I quickly dodged out of the way and shouted at the big pervert. I pouted in displeasure. This big tiger couldn't be playing dumb on purpose. But the man in front of him picked up the hides and looked at them, saying that the rest could be used to make shoes. He thought my feet were softer and I hadn't had this at the market before. So I'd better just do it. My heart thumped up, moved to look at this man. So I sat on a rock and put my foot over it. And sure enough it's still too weird to be touched by a man's foot. Whitey, however, had no other thought than that my feet were so small that I could not use much animal skin. But I was a little shy. The soles of my feet were being rubbed with a tingling sensation. In the end touching it well. He looked up as if he felt it and asked me to wait a little while. I didn't expect him to pick up the animal skin and sew it quickly. And in three or two strokes he had made a pair of shoes. I can't believe this one has straps on it, so if it's too big for me I can still pull it up and wear it. I happily tried on the shoes and bounced around showing him the. Whitey doesn't talk about love, he just tells the truth and says I look good in everything. I happily held up the remaining animal skins. Would you like to make a pair of shoes as well? But he refused decisively. It was inconvenient to change his shoes when he transformed into a beastly. Suddenly my mind wandered, imagining what the big tiger would look like in his shoes. But he must have looked really funny with his shoes on. At this time outside the cave entrance, the sunlight from outside has already shone inside the cave. Frosty Cloud took the herbs in her hand thinking that these should be what the witch doctor wanted. So he went to the witch doctor's residence and pushed open the door only to find a woman's figure. He angrily scolded the woman. How dare she come here to steal things? I tried to explain to him but he grabbed me by the wrist. He was still chortling loudly, so reckless on the basis that he could bear children. What a shameless female misunderstood. I could only explain that I didn't. It was my red berries that fell into the herbs. The werewolf ripped my hand right off. Don't be sophomoric. You're a thief. This orc's hand is so strong. What nonsense. If you don't let go I'll call out to someone. The werewolf grunted, though you females have plenty of males to defend you when you cry out. But you're wrong. I'm the leader of the wolf clan. I won't allow anyone to steal here. Langju witch doctor look at this man. I shouted towards the back of him and the werewolf craned his head to look at him too. I broke free with a smooth headbutt to his chin. The werewolf held his chin in anger. How dare you sneak up on me, you vile female. I instantly ran away and looked at him with a dejected look on my face. But I know how to subdue the dragon with 18 palms. But the werewolf was completely enraged, and his sinister eyes glared at me. The look in my eyes was so frightening that it made me feel like I was going to die for a moment. I felt so bad that I had to run before he tore me apart. However, he caught up with me, and he reached out and pulled me by the hair. He gripped my hair a little dully and his cheeks actually reddened. The Wolf King had only one thought at the moment. This guy's hair was so soft and smooth. He reached out and hugged Lynn slowly. She was also white and clean, unlike the females he had seen in the past. A soft touch on his hand woke him up in a second. I started to struggle violently. Where are you touching? Let go of me. And the Wolf King reddened. What had he just done? He looked at me and couldn't help stuttering. Considering you're a first-time offender, give the witch doctor an apology and I'll spare you. I was speechless listening to him. I looked at him warily. I didn't do anything wrong. Why should I apologize? I'm warning you son of a bitch don't come any closer. The Wolf King heard me call him a bastard and got angry. If you say that again, I'm going to do it. Lang Zhu appeared in time to kick him. He looked at the Wolf King with an indisputable look on his face. You can't even lay your hands on such a lovely female. 
He was furious. He wanted to leave me behind to create an opportunity for Frosty Cloud, but he almost beat me to death. The Wolf King's cheeks blush slightly as she steals from you. Lang Zhu was furious and drove him away, stating that I was not well and was recuperating at his place. When Frosty Cloud left, Lang Zhu sighed and told me not to get on his bad side. Lang Zhu said that Frosty Cloud was not bad and was a strong fighter and was the youngest clan leader of the Wolf Clan. I laughed and put the jar down. It's okay, I'm not mad at you. I graciously stated that I would never see him again anyway. Lang Zhu, who was so happy the moment before, instantly wilted when he heard this. Lang Zhu was rambling and still trying to put in a good word for him when I noticed that Whitey had returned. I happily rushed straight into Whitey's arms. He handed me the bundle in his hand, which was my stuff, and I asked him what was taking him so long. Whitey laughed and said he was going to wash the skins. He thought I liked collecting animal skins. I can only smile awkwardly. It's all about the mission, to prevent him from getting getting himself any more animal skins. I hastened to tell him that he would not need them in future. The white emperor smiled and nodded, thinking that this female had quite a few secrets to keep. At that moment Whitey suddenly took out a bouquet of flowers and handed it to me and asked me if I liked it. I looked at the bouquet with some surprise and some amazement. Thank you Whitey, it's beautiful. When Lang Zhu saw this, he could only wish Frosty Cloud good luck. I didn't notice anything strange about Lang Zhu and turned my head to tell him that I was going out for a walk with Whitey. The sunlight pouring through the leaves is beautiful. I hugged the flowers and jumped ahead, and someone on the cliffs above us saw it. Frost Cloud looked at me and realized that I hadn't always been mean. I had such a sweet and gentle side. He thought to himself that he must be thoroughly hated for mistaking me for a thief. Frost Cloud shook the object in his hand. He held it up and looked at the red berries in his hand and thought I wouldn't take them either. Frost Cloud squeezed the parcel tightly at the thought. The next moment I was picking flowers I was startled by the parse. Whitey went forward and picked it up to open it to see what was inside. There were actually a lot of red berries in it, so Whitey knew it was supposed to be for me. I froze a little at the fresh, moist red berries in his hand. Whitey thought for a moment and was sure it was for me. He asked me if I'd eat it and I immediately shook my head. I'd eaten a lot myself. I'd better give it to the witch doctor. The white emperor nodded at his words. Thinking of something he suddenly stared at me. He asked me if the bleeding in my arse had stopped and I instantly turned red. I reached up and covered my arse, stating that it usually takes five days. He was still a little unsure, but I finally got him to push through. When he returned the witch doctor looked at the red berries a little surprised that someone had given them to himself. I told him it was thrown down just outside his house. Thinking of something Lang Zhu slipped something back to me and said it was for me. After that, he slipped away without waiting for me to react. Meanwhile, Frosty Cloud sat on the cliff in full valor. Frosty Cloud turned his head at the sound of the voice. And it was actually Lang Zhu at the... Frosty Cloud blushed and denied that she didn't know what he was talking about. Lang Zhu demolished him straight away. The scent on the bag he smelled at once. Frosty Cloud was still dead serious. He had picked it for him in passing. As if Lang Zhu believed him, he left straight away and said he was going to ask for it back. But Frosty Cloud stopped him in a hurry. Lang Zhu directly broke him down. He was just interested in Lin Shou Shou. Frosty Cloud stiffened her neck and stated that this was compensation for having misunderstood her before. Said the infuriated he ran straight away. Lang Zhu, who stayed at the same place, looked relieved. It seems to have a chance. Five days later my period finally left and I felt a wave of freshness. Seeing this, Whitey stated that he would leave the wolf clan today then, and I nodded obediently. But Lang Zhu suddenly appeared and said we can't leave yet. For the sake of Frost Cloud's lifelong happiness, he pulled an excuse that winter was coming. I'm a little confused. Whitey said it's still over two months away. Lang Zhu looks serious. This year there is a change in the climate. Winter will be two months earlier. The White Emperor also fell into silence at his words and hesitated. At that moment, the system appeared and reminded me that I had triggered the large-scale serial quest of winter. The system will issue a series of quests, and you will be rewarded for completing them. There really is a winter, and at this point I'm believing the witch doctor's prediction. Whitey looked at me with some hesitation. After all, I'm too delicate for a little female. Lang Zhu spoke up at the right time and said he had enough here for the winter. Of course Bai Di knew what he was up to, but he could only stay for Lin Yuan Yuan's sake. I looked at the silent Whitey and didn't realize that this was going through his mind. Whitey then put his arm around me and said we'd stay for the winter. Lang Zhu became excited at the news and hurriedly took us to choose a place to spend the winter. That's when the system spoke out again, reminding me that I had triggered one of the series of quests. Prepare a house of not less than 40 square meters with at least one complete set of furniture. 
The wolves have made their home in countless holes in this cliff. The white emperor knew that they had prepared for the winter. They're digging tunnels in the rock. It's full of paths. It's like a maze. I see this silently said. The bottom line no lights good dark ah. At that moment, countless ghostly green lights suddenly lit up in front of me, and I was startled. It was only when I heard the noise that I realized it was the orc's eyes. Whitey put his arm around my waist and told me to stay close to him and watch my step. Lang Zhu said he could pick any spot to dig, as long as he didn't dig into other people's houses. At that moment the white emperor transformed back into his beastly form and a valiant white tiger appeared in front of me. The rock instantly turned into powder and splattered in all directions. White tiger looked at the cave in front of him and asked me if this was enough. I told him to dig two more little holes in there, the bedroom and the kitchen. After half a day the cave was finally dug, and the thinner rock on top let in a little light. I reached out and touched the rock, but unfortunately there was no drainage system or I could have made a toilet. I'm impressed that the edges are smooth, carefully polished by Whitey. I danced around and told Whitey that the room was the right size. Now all that was left was the furniture. We can make some out of wood. The white tiger sniffed without impatience and took me about to go to the forest. The sun was setting and Whitey and I were ready to go home. Just as we got to the door, we noticed some changes. I don't know when a cave appeared next door to us. When I was shown the owner of the cave, my mood was instantly unattractive. Frosty Cloud looked at me with a dejected face with his arms wrapped around him. When I got home I sanded the furniture and couldn't figure out why Frosty Cloud was punching holes in the side of me. The thought of him looking so pleased with himself makes my teeth itch. At that moment, Whitey spoke up to show me how he made the bed. I was so surprised by the finished bed that I couldn't help praising him. Whitey, you are amazing. I reached right up and hugged him, rubbing myself in his arms for reward. Frosty Cloud, who was eavesdropping outside the cave, stared in disbelief. He couldn't help but cover his ears, regretting that he dug a hole next to her by mistake. He clearly hated females himself, and it made him wonder. At that moment, there was another commotion from inside, and Frosty Cloud pricked up his ears to eavesdrop. Unable to resist, he hid and peeped. It just looks like the two are going out, going to the forest. Frosty Cloud secretly gritted his teeth and eventually followed him up. Once again, the sound of falling trees came from the forest. Whitey pointed to the block of wood he'd made next to him and asked me if it would work. I'm looking at the wood block. This is too good. Whitey, you're good. Whitey was very flattered by my posting and spoiled me by saying that it was good that I liked it. Frosty Cloud, who was hiding in the corner and peeking, had a sour feeling in his heart. He couldn't help but flash his wolf claws. His own claws were pretty impressive too. Not knowing anything about the situation, I followed Whitey home with a happy face. Whitey was pulling planks on his back and told me that there were too many planks that needed to be transported back in several batches. He wanted me to ship a batch back first, but quickly dismissed it. The forest is dangerous. I'm looking at the board. You worked so hard to cut it. It can't be stolen. Whitey sniffed at the compromising love and took human form again and hugged me. Then he made a gentle leap, and we were in an immensely tall tree. He instructed me to wait in the tree. He'd be back soon, and I smiled and nodded, taking advantage of the break. I opened the parchment booklet and read it. Frost Cloud, on the other hand, ran up another tree to observe me surreptitiously. He saw the white tiger and left me here, thinking how dangerous it was to worry about. He thought of something bad. I'm such a petite body. Don't fall down. At that moment, a mutant purple flower spider suddenly appeared next to us. Hearing the commotion, I looked up at the source of the sound. That huge, gigantic spider is coming my way. I screamed in panic and my body fell backwards. As I fell, Frosty Cloud hugged me. I looked at this beast man. How come it's you again? The two ambiguous scene. Really small and soft. Completely different from other females. I let him put me down. He sniffed at me again. The smell was different. What are you smelling? Let go. I stepped away from this orc. This wolf was just too strange. That or thank you. He suddenly shouted. Look out. I think I see danger. Then he hugged me out of the way. And the spiders came at me from behind. Frost Cloud stopped me behind. Hide behind. I asked him. What about you? He told me to run. He was in wolf form. Growling. He looked at the spider with a stern look in his eyes. Then he stomped on the spider's body. Spilling blood everywhere. The spider was retreating. Its mouth was squeaking. It seemed to be powerless to resist. I heard the sound of wailing. Looking at the scene in front of me. I was stunned. He was a silver wolf. Such beautiful fur. The spider was already on all fours. The silver wolf then came towards me. I thanked him. Thank you for saving me. He turned his head with disdain. What's the use of talking with your mouth? 
If you want to thank me, spread your legs and let me have a good time. This guy is deliberately trying to humiliate me. I immediately retaliated. You bullied me last time, but you saved me this time. So let's call it even. Since we're even, why are you still here? Do you want to be fucked by me? I looked at him helplessly. This pervert. Then he left in a huff. What I didn't know was that the silver wolf fell to the ground with a plop. One of his feet was infected with toxins and he couldn't move. I never thought I'd end up in the hands of a spider. If the clan knew I died like this, they'd laugh at me. I heard a sound again. I came back and looked at the silver wolf on the ground. He was hiding his injured front leg. What's the matter with you? You've changed your mind and want me to get on it. I picked up a book and huffed. I came to get my stuff. I seemed to see something wrong with him. What's wrong with you? He wailed. Fuck off. Don't you know I hate females? This guy has a bad mouth. You were poisoned. His feet were already shaking more than once, but he still told me to fuck off. I watched what happened to him, then actually grunted and hugged my book and got ready to leave the place. Sure enough, all females are the same, cold and heartless. Even if they give their lives for them, they won't be touched in the slightest. My father died because of a female. I didn't think I'd make the same mistake. I took the herb and went to the Silver Wolf. Looking at Silver Wolf's performance, groovy. He's already in a coma. His body is twitching. I took out my bone knife and cut his hand open. Luckily I found a note about flower spiders in the parchment atlas. Put the herbs on his hands. But this kind of poisonous wound. The right medicine can only be detoxified by finding the resting flower herb. Frosty Cloud was suddenly awakened. The wound hurt so much. I was relieved to be sane. It seems the method was right. But he looked puzzled. How did the little female come back? Was it a hallucination before she died? I held up my hand. You are awake. Come see how many this is. Frost clouds look at me. Is it you saved me? She actually came back to save her real me. And those females are different. I happily responded. Right. You just saved me. Now I also saved you get even oh. He said thank you. I stretched my ears. I is so lighted. I can't hear it. Frosty Cloud shy face angrily roared, said I was a fool. I pointed at him. You were just saved by a fool, which means you're even more stupid than a fool. But he said he didn't ask me to save him. I stared at him dead in the face. I should have known that I would not save you stupid wolf. Suddenly one came through. What's going on here? White Emperor came here with a few orcs. They looked at the spiders on the ground. They were flower spiders. Their claws and teeth were poisonous. Bai Di put his arm around me. It's lucky Frosty Cloud came or the little female would have been eaten by the flower spiders. Thank you for saving my mate. I'll remember this favor. If I'm needed in the future, I'll be obliged. Frosty Cloud looked at Bai D. This white tiger is saying thank you in the open, but secretly it's warning me not to hit on the little female. And this tiger is looking for males who already have females, so that even if they are tempted, they won't do anything out of the ordinary. This tiger is very bad. In the end, they took the wood and left to go back to the tribe. The people on the side then reminded Frosty Cloud that they needed to serve you. Frosty Cloud naturally said it was fine. They could leave. A beautiful view of the setting sun. I looked at the bed in front of me. It's good that I have tree resin. Otherwise I really can't get it right. A brand new bed appeared in the cave. With a matching table and flowers. I sat down on the bed and breathed a sigh of relief. A voice came from the system. Congratulations to the host for completing one of the series of quests. The rewards will now be distributed. Please remember to check your account. A pot and spatula appeared in front of me. Wow! I cried tears of joy. It's a spatula. I can fry and cook now. Whitey held the spatula and didn't seem to understand what it was. He smashed it twice. What kind of material is it made of? Of course it's made of iron. I took the spatula. Let me cook for you later. It won't burn this time. The firewood is crackling and the meat in the pot is boiling. By D smells the flavor. It smells so good. I brought a bowl of soup. This is for you. Bai D sips the soup. It's good. I'll give this to Frosty Cloud next door. He's a pain in the arse, but he saved my life. Whitey reached out. Give me the soup. I'll deliver it. When he came to the door next door, he called out to Frosty. Frosty Cloud opened the door with a reluctant face. Why? I'm giving you a taste of the broth I made at home. He was carrying the soup. Did she ask you to send it to her? But Bai D didn't answer, turned around and left the place, looking at him, so pretentious, coming into the night, the wolves were wailing, I touched my stomach, I was so full, Bai D said, thank you for making the broth, it's delicious, I looked at him shyly, you're so good looking, my heart beat faster, but he said it's good that you like it, I turned away shyly, this tiger really teased me, it's late, go to bed.
He answered yes, a little happy. Then he grabbed me. Let's sleep together. The two of us lay on the bed, one after the other, with our hearts pounding loudly and clearly. For the first time in my life, I slept with a man. No, a tiger. Although we have a wooden door, but a little force can be from the outside. If someone rushes in to do you wrong and I'm not with you, you're in danger. He interrupted. I can't let you be in any danger. After all, you were almost eaten by a flower spider today. But I, I wanted to say something else. Instead, he said, are you sick of being with me? He sat on the bed, still disgusted with my body. Is this tiger trying to tempt me? No. Lin Shua Yu, you can't be. He gave me a choice. You can sleep outside or inside. I wasn't happy about it. What's wrong with me sleeping outside? The meeting was over, so I had to sleep inside with him. My eyes were hazy, but I was really tired after a busy day. Suddenly, I was awake again. Something was pushing against me. A bright light was flashing. I couldn't see anything in the darkness. I grabbed it with my hand. Whitey groaned, not knowing why. I realized something was wrong. That touch and moan just now. Then I screamed and turned red. I immediately blushed and apologized. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was yours. He then wrapped an arm around my waist and moved closer to my body. He licked the nape of my neck. I moaned and my body tingled. Being licked. He said, it's okay, I like being held by you. I turned my head, I'd better sleep next door. He frowned, next door. Another tightening of his arm. Are you looking for Frosty Cloud to sleep with? Do you like him? Whitey stuck out his tongue again and continued to lick my back. I trembled and moaned. Whitey's mesmerized eyes, my little female. He doesn't even know how delicious he is to be around. I don't like him, I just want to sleep in the other bedroom. He then said I was lying. You looked like you liked him. His hand was rubbing my waist. Otherwise, why did you try so hard to save him? I shyly said I really don't like him. Don't be like that. I'm scared. He said, don't do that. What was it? This way or that way. I trembled. The feeling was horrible. It was like being held in the palm of the white emperor's hand, and I couldn't help but feel like falling. Inside the room, there were moans and groans. Frosty Cloud next door could hear it himself, listening with a speechless face. He sat with a red face. Damn it! There is no way to block the sound. The ear is too sensitive. I heard it again. Do you like Frosty? No! I don't like it. Frost Cloud lowered his head when he heard he didn't like it. I don't know what he was thinking. Why didn't he like it? His mouth also chanted Lin's name. The next day, the sun cleared up. At dawn, I woke up. Straight away I sat up. Yesterday I was with Bai D, looking at my body. My body is very fresh. The animal skin underneath me was also changed. Just remember last night. This and that seems to have done everything but get to the last step. I touched my face. Unbelievable. At that moment, Whitey came in. Are you hungry? Have some broth. He brought it over. I looked at the broth and said thank you. I'm going hunting later. Let me know if you need anything. I'll bring it back for you. I've asked Mu Xiang to take care of you. She's a female of the wolf clan. She's about the same age as you. You guys should talk. I get nervous. Thinking back to earlier, Bai Di said earlier that going out for a hunt might take 10 days, so I have to stay alone in a strange wolf tribe. He looked at me. Hunting is too dangerous. It's safer for you to stay here, but I want to follow you. He explained. Ease up. We're going hunting to protect ourselves from the coming winter. The winter is very dangerous for the orcs. The shortage of food. The extreme cold. Every time a large number of orcs can't hold out and die. To prepare for the coming winter, the wolf males and I will go deeper into the forest to find more food stores, which may take up to 10 days. The animals in the forest are many times more dangerous than the flower spiders. I can't let you be in any danger. I understand. Indeed. If I go in this way, I will only be a drag for by D. He hugged me. Slowly. You're my female. You're the most important thing to me. Then you must come back early and safely. The first person I met in this world is by D. I don't realize that I've made him my only dependence. I've asked Mu Xiang to take care of you. She's a female of the wolf clan. She's about the same age as you. So you should get along well. I let out an O. A little down. He seemed to notice too. He stroked my face. Don't be sad. What do you want? I'll give it back to you. I immediately took out the book. Then Whitey, if you see these, can you bring them back for me by the way? These are fennel and star anise. They can make meat and vegetables tastier. He understands. Keep the bone knife for your defense. I took it, hugged me again and waited for me to come back. I blushed up. 
Hearing a slurping sound, I left Pak Tai's embrace in fear. There was a she-wolf standing at the door. Oops, excuse me, Ma Kiang came in. Bai Di, where did you find such a cute little female? He was Ma Kiang. Ma Kiang praised me for being cute. Finally, Pak Tai was ready to leave. I'm counting on you to take care of him. It's okay, go ahead. He walked out with a cloth bag. Below are all male wolves here, ready to hunt together. White emperor surrounded by light. Finally it turned into a huge white tiger. This hunt must get enough food so that the young female can safely survive the winter. Meanwhile, I nervously called out to Sister Mocha. I want to go out and have a look. Can you take me with you? I still know too little about this world. She immediately took my hand. Yes, let's go. She wants to go out too. They both left the room. One in shoes, the other bare-legged. Outside, the sun was shining. I watched the male wolves going about their business and coyotes trying to steal food working. It's all older males and young males working. And Ma Kiang pulls me over there again. I looked left and right. Where are the females? Where are they? I can only see two females eating food. The females here really don't work. If I keep eating like this, I won't become like that too. I immediately asked Mu Xiang if she could tell me how to tan animal skins. I can, but we females don't need to do that. We just need to have babies. I was shocked to hear that. It would be horrible if all you could do in this world was lie down and have babies. I'm just bored. I want to do something. Okay, I'll go with you to make some skins. We'll leave now. There's a lot of male orcs making hides. These two orcs noticed the upstream side. I think it's a female. A pair of hands is tanning the skins here. I asked Mukha, is this how they clean it? That's right. After cleaning and drying, it's ready for the next step. Behind the tree, a group of male wolves were giggling and watching us clean the skins. A few of them were drooling in amazement. The delicate, seldom explored females are by the river. Two females, both very pretty. Pretty. The petite female is so cute and pretty. I'm going to hit on her. The two were still talking about who would go first, unaware that the clan leader had arrived behind them. Frost Cloud grabbed both of them by the tail and they screamed. They screamed and were dragged away by the matriarch, and they begged for mercy. Mu Xiang was the first to spot the matriarch and looked over. She asked me, do you know Frosty very well? Not really. She saw Frosty's eyes. He's been looking at you. There's something wrong with this silver wolf. Sister Mu Xiang, you were looking at him wrong. He came over. I also turned my head to look at the past. He coldly asked me, what are you doing here? I responded to him with a face of displeasure. Whatever your business right. As a result, Frosty Cloud blushed directly. Her voice, the same delicate purr as last night. Damn body reacted, then immediately turned her body sideways. Mukha seems to have noticed something. The matriarch is reacting. The female hating Frost Cloud matriarch is reacting. This is a rare thing. I was struggling to lift the animal skin. It became heavy after it got wet, so I could only drag it back. Frosty Cloud came straight over to me and put the hide on his shoulder. Let's go back. He left in two steps. I waved for him to wait for me. What's the point of walking so fast? I walked behind him and watched him. This wolf isn't so bad after all. I was just praising him. And he said, I can't even carry this much stuff. So I guess all females are useless. And I clenched my fists. I asked him to walk slower. But he said my legs were too short. Mu Xiang looked at the two. The dialogue between these two. The matriarch turned out to be like this ah. Before the powerful patriarch. Domineering and fierce. Now it is like a fool. The two fought. Frost clouds just do not give me the animal skin. The sun is setting. The geese are flying. Almost the sun is going down to make dinner. Asked to prepare the food. I found that there was only one bowl. When Whitey gave Frosty the soup, he didn't bring it back. I came to Frosty's door and called out to him. He became a wolf and scared me. And then he shouted at me for what? Why did you suddenly turn into a wolf? He replied, I'm sleeping. What do you care? Forget it. I can't reason with a wolf. Where's my bowl? He's still trying to play dumb. It's the wooden bowl from last night's broth. Don't play dumb. Give me the bowl. He turned round and walked in. It's just a wooden bowl. He came out with it. Take it, you cheap bastard. I took the bowl, and I left and closed the door, leaving the wolf behind. And the wolf was so upset that he was digging at the ground. Damn it, the only thing the little female gave me, and now it's gone. The broth is bubbling in the pot here. I eat the broth with satisfaction. It smells good after a long day's work. It would be better if Whitey was around. I wouldn't be alone. I don't realize that I'd become so dependent on Whitey. I can't. I have to pull myself together. I can't go on like this. I can't go on like this.
I've come to this strange world, and I've become more and more dependent on Whitey. The lone wolf next door was still sleeping when a scent came in. As soon as he smelled it, he sat up. When he came to the door, he saw the wooden bowl here, filled with meat soup. Lone wolf looked at the door. It's the soup the little female gave me. Then he began to eat the broth. It smelled so good. The days of waiting are always long. The wolves are constantly busy. After a few days, after I got used to it, tanning hides wasn't too difficult. I wiped the sweat from my face. A group of orcs appeared in front of me, coming this way. It turned out to be Bai D who came back, and he noticed me too. I jumped around and attracted Bai D's attention. He smiled and looked over at me. The two of them embraced each other. Other. A warm picture. Bai D put down his backpack. These are the plants you wanted. I got them for you. I opened the backpack and looked at the plants inside. I was very surprised. Whitey, you are really great. This foothill fruit, the juice is salty. It can be used as a substitute for salt. Whitey doesn't know what salt is. I picked up the spatula. You'll know when I'm ready to cook the food. Then I started to cook and cook. Pak Tai sniffed his nose. It really smelled good. Finally I showed the result of my cooking. It was all ready. The smell was spreading. I brought a bowl of broth ready to hand it to Bai D. These days you were away. I was tanning animal skins by the river. Frosty Cloud helped me out a bit. Bai D, help me deliver these dishes to him as a token of appreciation. Since Bai D is back, I don't need to face Frosty Cloud's foul face. Bai D took the broth. Frosty Cloud came over in a hurry, smelling the aroma. Then he saw Bai D here. How come it's you? But how come this isn't Bai D? Bai D held the broth and slowly said you helped her a lot. I thank you for her. Frosty Clouds hummed. I help people is her. To say thank you should also let her personally to say thank you. You have no right to say thank you to me for her. Bai D said, after this winter, we will leave. He stopped with the broth in his hand. Bai D intervened. Don't hit on her. Frosty Cloud was not to be outdone. I'll do whatever I want. It's none of your business. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here alone. Whitey hasn't come back yet. I heard a ding, triggering the second of a series of missions. Please ask the host to collect enough food before the winter comes. But I don't understand. Enough. How much is that? Then I quietly waited for the system's prompt. In the end, I could only knock on the table. What kind of system is this? It just left me with one sentence. Whitey also asked me, how much is enough food? I looked at Bai D. Long Ju which doctor did not say to prepare more food to deal with the cold winter. He put down the broth and reassured me. With me, I'll get you as much food as you want. Bai D's eyes are too naked. His pecs are so toned up close. Is this what it's all about when you're full and warm? He ruffled his hair. It's getting dark. Do you want to wash up and take a break? I just slipped on the bed. I'm so tired today. I'm going to sleep first. He looked at me running so fast and wondered what he wanted to say. I didn't look at him again. I slept first first before saying anything. Whitey reached over with one hand and kept coming closer to the bed again. I also realized that he was right behind me. He reached out and rubbed my hair. I blushed red as his hand was very unruly. I sat up and shouted, where are you touching me? He hugged me straight away. Slow down. I've missed you so much these past few days. I just want to hug you and do nothing else. I felt by Dee's body. His hands are so big and warm. My shy breath increased. I didn't know what to say. He kissed my eyes. Okay, Whitey, not here. And then again, not here. This lone wolf can only stare in disbelief. I can only rub the wall helplessly, making a creaking sound. This Whitey, he did it on purpose. The next day, the sky was clear. By D looked fresh and he was ready to go hunting again. I gave a shy loan. When I saw this lone wolf, he didn't seem to have slept well. With a pair of dark circles under his eyes. I then remembered last night. Did he hear everything? I looked at By D helplessly. It's all your fault. He added. Okay, then slow down you hold back a little next time. Don't scream when I'm holding you, he said and moved closer to my body. I shouted his name and he left the place with his backpack and his mouth in a hurry. In the days that followed, every time Whitey went out hunting he brought back a lot of prey. Every time, he had the most, and they could only stare in disbelief. When Mu Kiang saw this, he called me. Your mate is amazing. He hunted more prey alone than my family. I was curious and asked him, your family? Ma Kiang said I have five mates, and my pupils quaked. My family is not what I thought it was. My five mates are already considered to be the best of the males, but they are not as good as the white emperors. That's when I explained that he and I weren't mates. Then why do you allow him to live in the same house as you and sleep in the same bed? I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer that. I can't answer that. I can't answer that.
I can't think back to the beginning. I don't know how to explain my relationship with Whitey either. Since we met in this world, we've been together naturally. We ate together, slept together, and sometimes acted out of character. But we haven't really gone all the way. We're kind of family. That's the only answer I can give. Mika explained that a mate is also a family member, but that's not the same. In my real life, I'm not ready to find a mate in this world. She seems to have thought of something. If you don't want Bai D to be your mate, just say so. He's so good at hunting. I can make him my sixth mate. I was in a hurry. No, he can't be your mate. Mu Xiang smiled. Why? You don't like him, so it's okay if you let me have him. I blushed bright red. Who said I didn't like him? She smiled again, so she liked him. I realized something was wrong. I was being set up. Then I heard a voice and turned my head. I turned my head and looked over. It was by D. How did he come back? I immediately turned back again. Shocked. What have I just said? He picked me up and gave a bag to Mu Xiang. Thanks for taking care of me these days. When I was hunting, I picked some crispy fruits. I hope you like them. Mu Xiang took the bag. You're welcome. I like Yi's too. She's a lovely female. You're very lucky. Then she waved her hand. I'm leaving. You family talk among yourselves. I covered my eyes and didn't dare to speak. Both of them fell silent. I'm so ashamed. I've been overheard. Why did you come back so early? Bai D hugged me head on. I missed you. So I rushed back. Luckily I came back in time. Otherwise I wouldn't have heard the words you said. I averted my eyes and asked which sentence. Bai D smiled. You said. You like me. I touched my shy face. You must have misheard me. I didn't say that. Whitey hugged me. I heard it with my own ears. And I tried to deny it. He then frowned. Slowly. You don't like me? My heart was pounding. Whitey was waiting for me to respond. I turned my head sideways and said softly, I don't dislike you. When Whitey heard that, he got shy too. Then you like me. They kissed. I was kissed. I was shocked. I immediately pushed Pak Tai away and shouted, What are you doing? Whitey looked at me happily. You like me. I'm very happy. If you don't like me kissing you there, I won't do it next time. I turned my head in panic. Not really, but it's too bad that everyone can see it. But there's no one here. It's empty. Anyway, next time don't kiss me without my permission. Then I rushed out of here. I'm going to clean up my prey. I covered my face, the way I looked at Whitey, and the kiss. Although it was just a brief touch of lips, my heart was beating so fast. I slapped my face. Slow down, what are you thinking? The priority is to survive in this world, ah. The prey that Bai D brought back, marinated in the juice of the fruits of the foot, and then dried in the sun. It can be kept longer and not easily spoiled. And some edible vegetables, partly dried and partly stored in the cellar. I stood up, that's good enough, and took a breath. After half a month of preparation, the cellar and the kitchen were finally filled up. Just then I heard a ding. Congratulations host. The second of your series of quests has been completed. Rewards will be issued to you soon. Please pay attention to receiving them. With a clatter, a packet of items fell into my hands. Looking at the text on it, this is a sanitary napkin? I happily raised the sanitary napkin. Finally I have a sanitary napkin. I no longer need to worry about all kinds of embarrassment when I have my period. This system is still very powerful. The reward is still quite practical. It White Emperor poked his head out and asked me what's wrong. Nothing. This is too much trouble to explain with Bai D. It's better to put it away carefully first. He looked at my movements. So cute, like a little animal, trying to store food for the winter. It's already snowing heavily outside. It's getting colder and colder, and the animals are hunting less often. With jerky and pots and pans, the cold season isn't so hard to bear. It's so windy out there. The witch doctor was right. It's getting cold all of a sudden. Cold? Whitey asked me. Come to me. I'm warm. That's true. After all, Whitey is a big tiger. I stood up and sat on Whitey's body. I stood up and sat on Whitey's body. I'm sorry. I asked him. Why don't you get up? It's because I'm not in the right position. You don't feel comfortable. I'm shy when I hear that. Not really. I peeked back at Pak Tai. He saw me too. He caught me. I turned back again. My heart was pounding. They just snuggled together. In the middle of winter, a group of orcs suddenly came to the wolf clan. The noise outside woke me up. I opened my eyes in a daze. What's going on outside? I sat up. White Emperor came in. The wolf tribe from the Blackwater River is here. I asked him, Blackwater, what is that place? 
Blackwater Riverside is on the south side of the Rocky Mountains, where many tribes of orcs, big and small, live, and one of them is the Wolf Tribe, who are known as the Blackwater Wolf Tribe. I took the coarse cloth and wiped my face, so there are several wolf clans here, and I thought the Rocky Mountain was the only place in the world where there were wolf clans. The wolf clan that lives on the banks of the Blackwater River is called the Blackwater Wolf Clan, then the wolf clan that lives on the rocks. Isn't it called the Rock Wolf Clan? By D touched my head. Yes, my little female is so smart. You guys are still really casual. What is the Blackwater Wolf Clan doing here? He explained up. The leader of the Blackwater Wolf Clan is a brother to Frostcloud's father. They suddenly came here. They should be coming for Frostcloud. I also understood the meaning of this. So they are here to visit their relatives. He got serious. Visiting relatives? At a time like this, the other party must have some plans. So they would purposely choose this time to come to the Rocky Mountain. But these are all internal matters of the Wolf Clan. Hungry. Eat. Slow down. The animal skin belt pouch you asked for is ready. I took the animal skin fanny pack. Whitey you're great. So you can stuff the sheepskin atlas and the fire in it. At that moment, there was a clunk. We all looked over. Two male orcs stood here and told us to get out. Our female has her eye on your house. Move out now. This will be our home from now on. I looked at these two beast men. These beast men looked strange. They were all beast men of the Blackwater Wolf Clan. Whitey stood in front of me, telling me not to be afraid. This orc pushed by D directly. Hurry up and go. You should be honored that our females fancy your house. By D definitely refused. The only thing that can make me back down unconditionally is to slow down. Hearing this, the beast man immediately raised his hand and attacked by D. What? How dare you refuse the female's request? You don't know how to die. By D raised his hand to meet the battle. Radiating light. He directly squeezed the beastman's hand and then twisted it. Only to hear a click. The orc's hand was broken and flung him towards his companion falling to the ground and screaming in pain. My arm! White Emperor only said one word. Get lost! The two men defied him. You wait! Then staggered out of here, screaming in agony as they left. Pak Tai loaded the door. The wolf tribe may be in chaos these days. Try not to go out alone to avoid danger. I realize the danger too. It seems that the beasts of the Blackwater Wolf Tribe don't come here to be guests. Plundering is their purpose. I don't know what else they will do in this cold season. These two came to the mate here and called out Liwei's name. She also noticed this side. What's going on? I told you guys to find a room near Frost Cloud. Why did you come back in this condition? The two orcs also explained. Livy, that guy not only refused to give us a room, he even hit us. Livy's face immediately sank. How dare a male refuse my request? I am the most beautiful female of all the tribes along the Blackwater River. I have always been held in the palm of my hand and pampered. No one has ever refused me. Let's go. Let's go and see. Where's the male who has the guts to refuse me? Livy came here with her boys. She told her boys to open the door and they came down. I heard a bang inside and looked over. All of them came in. They were females. I looked at them nervously. Why are you trespassing in other people's homes? Get out! Li Wei looked at me. There was a female in the house. If I had known there was a female living there, I wouldn't have come to take over the house. Why is her skin so white and her hair so smooth? How come her waist is so slim? Better looking than me. Unforgivable. This orc is also looking fascinated. Li Wei pointed at Lin slowly. Where did you come out of the wild female? I'm looking dumbfounded here. He continued, I am now ordering you to get out of here as the mate of the wolf clan leader. You are not welcome in the wolf tribe. I immediately rebutted him. I've never seen you before. You must be a female of the Blackwater Wolf Clan. This is the Rocky Mountain. Even if you are the mate of the Blackwater Wolf Clan chief. You ass. This woman had a smug look on her face. Who said I'm the mate of the Blackwater Clan chief? I'm the mate of the Rock Clan chief. I'm the mistress of this place. I can't believe it. When did Frosty Cloud have a mate? I don't care whose mate you are. Behind me by D walked in. This is my home and Slow's home. Now get out of here or I'll be rude to you. I stepped forward and approached by D. You're back. Then whispered in his ear. She said she's Frosty Cloud's mate. You know. Just after that, this Li Wei explained. Just today, I have my eye on him. He must be my mate. So it's all your wishful thinking. I told you. Frost Cloud's temperament that bears his teeth when he sees a female. How can he accept a female as his mate? When Li Wei heard what I said, she was furious. You wild female. Who are you calling wishful thinking? It's an honor for Frost Cloud to have me as his mate. Unfortunately. 
Frostbite, who had just come in, heard all of this. Who do you think should kneel down in gratitude? At that sound, Li Wei seemed to sense something was wrong. She turned her head and looked over, and the others hurriedly dispersed. Livia took off her cloak. No male can resist my charm. In Frost Cloud's eyes, this female was exactly the same as the females he had met before. Selfish, greedy, cruel and ruthless, with a high opinion of herself, always thinking that the world revolved a. Frost Cloud was the strongest orc in the Rocky Mountains of his generation. I will take him as my 30th mate. Li Wei moved closer to Frost Cloud and rubbed against his chest. His eyes changed. No orc could resist my temptation. You are here to help me out. I directly covered my eyes, not daring to look. Li Wei continued. I knew you've always cared about people. Frosty Cloud immediately became impatient and her eyes blazed up. A push away this female beast man. She screamed miserably. He wiped his hand. If you touch me again I'll cut off your hand. I was struggling to lift the animal skin. It became heavy after it got wet. So I could only drag it back. Frosty Cloud came straight over to me and put the hide on his shoulder. Let's go back. He left in two steps. I waved for him to wait for me. What's the point of walking so fast? I walked behind him and watched him. This wolf isn't so bad after all. I was just praising him, and he said, I can't even carry this much stuff, so I guess all females are useless, and I clenched my fists, I asked him to walk slower, but he said my legs were too short, Mu Xiang looked at the two, the dialogue between these two, the matriarch turned out to be like this ah, before the powerful patriarch, domineering and fierce, now it is like a fool, the two fought, frost clouds just do not give me the animal skin, the sun is setting, the geese are flying, almost the sun is going down, to to make dinner, asked to prepare the food. I found that there was only one bowl. When Whitey gave Frosty the soup, he didn't bring it back. I came to Frosty's door and called out to him. He became a wolf and scared me. And then he shouted at me for what? Why did you suddenly turn into a wolf? He replied, I'm sleeping. What do you care? Forget it. I can't reason with a wolf. Where's my bowl? He's still trying to play dumb. It's the wooden bowl from last night's broth. Don't play dumb. Give me the bowl. He turned round and walked in. It's just a wooden bowl. He came out with it. Take it, you cheap bastard. I took the bowl, and I left and closed the door, leaving the wolf behind. And the wolf was so upset that he was digging at the ground. Damn it, the only thing the little female gave me. And now it's gone. The broth is bubbling in the pot here. I eat the broth with satisfaction. It smells good after a long day's work. It would be better if Whitey was around. I wouldn't be alone. I don't realize that I'd become so dependent on Whitey. I can't. I have to pull myself together. I can't go on like this. I can't go on like this. I've come to this strange world, and I've become more and more dependent on Whitey. The lone wolf next door was still sleeping when a scent came in. As soon as he smelled it, he sat up. When he came to the door, he saw the wooden bowl here, filled with meat soup. Lone Wolf looked at the door. It's the soup the little female gave me. Then he began to eat the broth. It smelled so good. The days of waiting are always long. The wolves are constantly busy. After a few days, after I got used to it, tanning hides wasn't too difficult. I wiped the sweat from my face. A group of orcs appeared in front of me, coming this way. It turned out to be Bai D who came back, and he noticed me too. I jumped around and attracted Bai D's attention. He smiled and looked over at me. The two of them embraced each other. A warm picture. Bai D put down his backpack. These are the plants you wanted. I got them for you. I opened the backpack and looked at the plants inside. I was very surprised. Whitey you are really great. This foothill fruit. The juice is salty. It can be used as a substitute for salt. Whitey doesn't know what salt is. I picked up the spatula. You'll know when I'm ready to cook the food. Then I started to cook and cook. Pak Tai sniffed his nose. It really smelled good. Finally I showed the result of my cooking. It was all ready. The smell was spreading. I brought a bowl of broth ready to hand it to Bai D. These days you were away. I was tanning animal skins by the river. Frosty Cloud helped me out a bit. Bai D. Help me deliver these dishes to him as a token of appreciation. Since Bai D is back, I don't need to face Frosty Cloud's foul face. Bai D took the broth. Frosty Cloud came over in a hurry, smelling the aroma. Then he saw Bai D here. How come it's you? But how come this isn't Bai D? Bai D held the broth and slowly said you helped her a lot. I thank you for her. Frosty Clouds hummed. I help people is her. To say thank you should also let her personally to say thank you. You have no right to say thank you to me for her. Bai D said, after this winter, we will leave. He stopped with the broth in his hand. Bai D intervened. Don't hit on her. 
Frosty Cloud was not to be outdone. I'll do whatever I want. It's none of your business. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here alone. Whitey hasn't come back yet? I heard a ding, triggering the second of a series of missions. Please ask the host to collect enough food before the winter comes. But I don't understand. Enough! How much is that? Then I quietly waited for the system's prompt. In the end, I could only knock on the table. What kind of system is this? It just left me with one sentence. Whitey also asked me, how much is enough food? I looked at Bai Di, Long Zhu which doctor did not say to prepare more food to deal with the cold winter. He put down the broth and reassured me. With me, I'll get you as much food as you want. Bai Di's eyes are too naked. His pecs are so toned up close. Is this what it's all about when you're full and warm? He ruffled his hair. It's getting dark. Do you want to wash up and take a break? I just slipped on the bed. I'm so tired today. I'm going to sleep first. He looked at me running so fast and wondered what he wanted to say. I didn't look at him again. I slept first before saying anything. Whitey reached over with one hand and kept coming closer to the bed again. I also realized that he was right behind me. He reached out and rubbed my hair. I blushed red as his hand was very unruly. I sat up and shouted, Where are you touching me? He hugged me straight away. Slow down. I've missed you so much these past few days. I just want to hug you and do nothing else. I felt by Dee's body. His hands are so big and warm. My shy breath increased. I didn't know what to say. He kissed my eyes. Okay, Whitey. Not here. And then again. Not here. This lone wolf can only stare in disbelief. I can only rub the wall helplessly, making a creaking sound. This Whitey, he did it on purpose. The next day, the sky was clear. Bai Di looked fresh and he was ready to go hunting again. I gave a shy loan. When I saw this lone wolf, he didn't seem to have slept well. With a pair of dark circles under his eyes. I then remembered last night. Did he hear everything? I looked at Bai Di helplessly. It's all your fault. He added. Okay, then slow down you hold back a little next time. Don't scream when I'm holding you. He said and moved closer to my body. I shouted his name and he left the place with his backpack in his mouth in a hurry. In the days that followed, every time Whitey went out hunting he brought back a lot of prey. Every time, he had the most, and they could only stare in disbelief. When Mu Kiang saw this, he called me. Your mate is amazing. He hunted more prey alone than my family. I was curious and asked him, your family? Ma Kiang said I have five mates, and my pupils quaked. My family is not what I thought it was. My five mates are already considered to be the best of the males, but they are not as good as the white emperors. That's when I explained that he and I weren't mates. Then why do you allow him to live in the same house as you and sleep in the same bed? I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer that. I can't answer that. I can't answer that. I can't think back to the beginning. I don't know how to explain my relationship with Whitey either. Since we met in this world, we've been together naturally. We ate together, slept together, and sometimes acted out of character. But we haven't really gone all the way. We're kind of family. That's the only answer I can give. Mika explained that a mate is also a family member, but that's not the same. In my real life, I'm not ready to find a mate in this world. She seems to have thought of something. If you don't want Bai Di to be your mate, just say so. He's so good at hunting. I can make him my sixth mate. I was in a hurry. No, he can't be your mate. Mu Xiang smiled. Why? You don't like him, so it's okay if you let me have him. I blushed bright red. Who said I didn't like him? She smiled again. So she liked him. I realized something was wrong. I was being set up. Then I heard a voice and turned my head. I turned my head and looked over. It was by D. How did he come back? I immediately turned back again. Shocked. What have I just said? He picked me up and gave a bag to Mu Xiang. Thanks for taking care of me these days. When I was hunting, I picked some crispy fruits. I hope you like them. Mu Xiang took the bag. You're welcome. I like Yi's too. She's a lovely female. You're very lucky. Then she waved her hand. I'm leaving. You family talk among yourselves. I covered my eyes and didn't dare to speak. Both of them fell silent. I'm so ashamed. I've been overheard. Why did you come back so early? Bai Di hugged me head on. I missed you. So I rushed back. Luckily I came back in time. Otherwise I wouldn't have heard the words you said. I averted my eyes and asked which sentence. Bai Di smiled. You said. You like me. I touched my shy face. You must have misheard me. I didn't say that. Whitey hugged me. I heard it with my own ears. And I tried to deny it. He then frowned. Slowly. You don't like me? My heart was pounding. Whitey was waiting for me to respond. I turned my head sideways and said softly, I don't dislike you. When Whitey heard that, he got shy too. Then you like me. They kissed. I was kissed. I was shocked. I immediately pushed Pak Tai away and shouted, What are you doing? 
Whitey looked at me happily. You like me. I'm very happy. If you don't like me kissing you there, I won't do it next time. I turned my head in panic. Not really, but it's too bad that everyone can see it. But there's no one here. It's empty. Anyway, next time don't kiss me without my permission. Then I rushed out of here. I'm going to clean up my prey. I covered my face. The way I looked at Whitey. And the kiss. Although it was just a brief touch of lips, my heart was beating so fast. I slapped my face. Slow down what are you thinking? The priority is to survive in this world ah. The prey that by deed brought back, marinated in the juice of the fruits of the foot, and then dried in the sun. It can be kept longer and not easily spoiled. And some edible vegetables, partly dried and partly stored in the cellar. I stood up, that's good enough, and took a breath. After half a month of preparation, the cellar and the kitchen were finally filled up. Just then I heard a ding. Congratulations host, the second of your series of quests has been completed. Rewards will be issued to you soon. Please pay attention to receiving them. With a clatter, a packet of items fell into my hands. Looking at the text on it, this is a sanitary napkin? I happily raised the sanitary napkin. Finally I have a sanitary napkin. I no longer need to worry about all kinds of embarrassment when I have my period. This system is still very powerful. The reward is still quite practical. It White Emperor poked his head out and asked me what's wrong. Nothing. This is too much trouble to explain with by D. It's better to put it away carefully first. He looked at my movements. So cute. Like a little animal. Trying to store food for the winter. It's already snowing heavily outside. It's getting colder and colder, and the animals are hunting less often, with jerky and pots and pans. The cold season isn't so hard to bear. It's so windy out there. The witch doctor was right. It's getting cold all of a sudden. Cold? Whitey asked me. Come to me. I'm warm. That's true. After all, Whitey is a big tiger. I stood up and sat on Whitey's body. I stood up and sat on Whitey's body. I'm sorry. I asked him. Why don't you get up? It's because I'm not in the right position. You don't feel comfortable. I'm shy when I hear that. Not really. I peeked back at Pak Tai. He saw me too. He caught me. I turned back again. My heart was pounding. They just snuggled together. In the middle of winter, a group of orcs suddenly came to the wolf clan. The noise outside woke me up. I opened my eyes in a daze. What's going on outside? I sat up. White Emperor came in. The wolf tribe from the Blackwater River is here. I asked him, Blackwater, what is that place? Blackwater Riverside is on the south side of the Rocky Mountains, where many tribes of orcs, big and small, live, and one of them is the Wolf Tribe, who are known as the Blackwater Wolf Tribe. I took the coarse cloth and wiped my face, so there are several wolf clans here, and I thought the Rocky Mountain was the only place in the world where there were wolf clans. The wolf clan that lives on the banks of the Blackwater River is called the Blackwater Wolf Clan, then the wolf clan that lives on the rocks. Isn't it called the Rock Wolf Clan? By D touched my head. Yes, my little female is so smart. You guys are still really casual. What is the Blackwater Wolf Clan doing here? He explained up. The leader of the Blackwater Wolf Clan is a brother to Frostcloud's father. They suddenly came here. They should be coming for Frostcloud. I also understood the meaning of this. So they are here to visit their relatives. He got serious. Visiting relatives? At a time like this, the other party must have some plans. So they would purposely choose this time to come to the Rocky Mountain. But these are all internal matters of the wolf clan. Hungry. Eat. Slow down. The animal skin belt pouch you asked for is ready. I took the animal skin fanny pack. Whitey you're great. So you can stuff the sheepskin atlas and the fire in it. At that moment, there was a clunk. We all looked over. Two male orcs stood here and told us to get out. Our female has her eye on your house. Move out now. This will be our home from now on. I looked at these two beast men. These beast men looked strange. They were all beast men of the Blackwater Wolf Clan. Whitey stood in front of me, telling me not to be afraid. This orc pushed by D directly. Hurry up and go. You should be honored that our females fancy your house. By D definitely refused. The only thing that can make me back down unconditionally is to slow down. Hearing this, the beast man immediately raised his hand and attacked by D. What? How dare you refuse the female's request? You don't know how to die. By D raised his hand to meet the battle. Radiating light, he directly squeezed the beastman's hand and then twisted it, only to hear a click. The orc's hand was broken and flung him towards his companion falling to the ground and screaming in pain. My arm. White Emperor only said one word. Get lost. The two men defied him. You wait. Then staggered out of here, screaming in agony as they left. Pak Tai loaded the door. 
The wolf tribe may be in chaos these days. Try not to go out alone to avoid danger. I realize the danger too. It seems that the beasts of the Blackwater Wolf tribe don't come here to be guests. Plundering is their purpose. I don't know what else they will do in this cold season. These two came to the mate here and called out Li Wei's name. She also noticed this side. What's going on? I told you guys to find a room near Frost Cloud. Why did you come back in this condition? The two orcs also explained. Livy, that guy not only refused to give us a room, he even hit us. Livy's face immediately sank. How dare a male refuse my request? I am the most beautiful female of all the tribes along the Blackwater River. I have always been held in the palm of my hand and pampered. No one has ever refused me. Let's go. Let's go and see. Where's the male who has the guts to refuse me? Livy came here with her boys. She told her boys to open the door and they came down. I heard a bang inside and looked over. All of them came in. They were females. I looked at them nervously. Why are you trespassing in other people's homes? Get out. Li Wei looked at me. There was a female in the house. If I had known there was a female living there, I wouldn't have come to take over the house. Why is her skin so white and her hair so smooth? How come her waist is so slim? Better looking than me. Unforgivable. This orc is also looking fascinated. Li Wei pointed at Lin slowly. Where did you come out of the wild female? I'm looking dumbfounded here. He continued, I am now ordering you to get out of here as the mate of the wolf clan leader. You are not welcome in the wolf tribe. I immediately rebutted him. I've never seen you before. You must be a female of the Blackwater Wolf Clan. This is the Rocky Mountain. Even if you are the mate of the Blackwater Wolf Clan chief. You ass. This woman had a smug look on her face. Who said I'm the mate of the Blackwater Clan chief? I'm the mate of the Rock Clan chief. I'm the mistress of this place. I can't believe it. When did Frosty Cloud have a mate? I don't care whose mate you are. Behind me by D walked in. This is my home and Slow's home. Now get out of here or I'll be rude to you. I stepped forward and approached by D. You're back. Then whispered in his ear. She said she's Frosty Cloud's mate. You know. Just after that. This Lee Wei explained. Just today. I have my eye on him. He must be my mate. So it's all your wishful thinking. I told you. Frost Cloud's temperament that bears his teeth when he sees a female. How can he accept a female as his mate? When Li Wei heard what I said, she was furious. You wild female. Who are you calling wishful thinking? It's an honor for Frost Cloud to have me as his mate. Unfortunately, Frostbite, who had just come in, heard all of this. Who do you think should kneel down in gratitude? At that sound, Li Wei seemed to sense something was wrong. She turned her head and looked over, and the others hurriedly dispersed. Livia took off her cloak. No male can resist my charm. In Frost Cloud's eyes, this female was exactly the same as the females he had met before. Selfish, greedy, cruel and ruthless, with a high opinion of herself, always thinking that the world revolved a. Frost Cloud was the strongest orc in the Rocky Mountains of his generation. I will take him as my 30th mate. Li Wei moved closer to Frost Cloud and rubbed against his chest. His eyes changed. No orc could resist my temptation. You are here to help me out. I directly covered my eyes, not daring to look. Li Wei continued. I knew you've always cared about people. Frosty Cloud immediately became impatient and her eyes blazed up. A push away this female beast man. She screamed miserably. He wiped his hand. If you touch me again I'll cut off your hand. Crowds of people surrounded by the face of surprise. Hands cover the mouth exclaimed. Looking at the ground lying constantly shivering green haired woman. I cannot help but sigh. Really worthy of the frost cloud. The orc world a big strange man. The woman sitting on the ground in a state of distress said angrily. Is he still a male or not? How dare he do this to her? But the man just pale face said he is not male. Only his mate is entitled to know. Just see his face is not good said. Frowned tightly. Told her as far as possible to get as far away as possible. See her feel sick to the stomach. The woman eventually couldn't hold back her tears. Angrily aggravated. No one could bully her like that, warning him that he would regret it. She cried and turned to leave running away. The people behind her followed with nervousness and worry. But Frosty Cloud heard this and just turned his head to reprimand me, being bullied to the doorstep and still do not know how to fight back. Hearing this I looked at him speechlessly. I simply did not have time to counterattack. He had already come. There is no need for me to play ah. Uh. He was blocked speechless. Thinking of the previous is to hear his side of the accident. Panicked and ran here. 
he explained that he just happened to be passing by and saw it. I didn't expose him. I gave him face to drink. I also guessed so. But he still blushed red with shame and cursed loudly at the stupid female. To cover himself up, he grunted and turned to leave. I was very puzzled. This guy how to say flip-flop on the flip-flop. Silver long hair man surface catering to do not know. But the heart glad slow did not find his mind. Afterwards the man is ready to strengthen this wooden door a bit. But just a few minutes later it was repaired. I looked at the broken wooden door in front of me thinking that this door is useless for the orcs. If only we could get an iron door next time. I suddenly woke up and thought, I don't realize that I'm getting used to this place. I haven't thought about going back for a long time, and I'm sure this will happen again. I frowned and thought about it, but the man behind me was afraid of catching a cold. So he thoughtfully put a coat on me and reassured me that I shouldn't be afraid. He even reassured me that I shouldn't be afraid, and promised me that if anyone dared to do this to me again, he would never let them go. I was touched that he was worried about me, and only responded that I was fine, and that I wouldn't be afraid if he was there. I settled my heart. I feel safe in this world with Bai D and me together. On the other side, sobbing came from the cave. The man saw her crying and took food to comfort her, saying don't cry, eat some jerky. But the woman didn't appreciate it and fiercely kicked him away and told him to get lost. She sat with one hand clenched in her fist and tears in her eyes, accusing them of not protecting her and watching her being bullied. They could only advise that they couldn't afford to mess with her and that they had to use other people's places to hide from the cold but she simply could not listen to these. Only brainless delusion. If Cold Cloud is her partner, all this is not the natural course of events. The woman kept kicking and hitting him, disliking his uselessness. He cried and pulled her legs, just begging not to abandon him. The woman gritted her teeth in anger. She can't even look at these orcs, and is even prepared to find another way to get me killed. Outside the cave, the snow is drifting heavily. With the arrival of the cold wind, the forest has officially entered the winter. I thought happily that winter is here. It's the right time to eat hot pot. I prepared the seasoning, the meat and the pot. Soon the pot was gurgling with meat and the aroma was overpowering. I told Whitey to go to the cellar and get some vegetables to put in the hot pot. I stood in front of the pot, staring at the steaming hot pot in front of me, wondering if the atmosphere wasn't good enough for this meal, and wanting to call for more people. When I was about to call Frosty Cloud, I opened the door and found that. Frost Cloud was talking to two people whose faces I couldn't see, and one of them, a male orc, seemed to have spotted me. The man licked his lips and had bad intentions. To my horror, I realized that the man had seen me, and the look in his eyes sent a chill down my spine. The green-eyed man noticed and warned him to keep his hands off me. Otherwise, don't blame him for being rude to him. The man was defiant and was about to retaliate, but the man behind him pulled him back just in time, telling him not to make trouble. This is not their territory. The man could only grimace and snort turned to say goodbye and left in anger. The man turned around, bent his head low, and said to Cold Cloud that they were going back first. Cold Cloud looked at their backs as they left, pondering, turning back to me. He asked me what I was doing out here, and angrily reminded me not to go out alone for a while. I was confused and didn't know what was going on. I just replied to him that I had cooked a hot pot and wanted to eat it together to make it more lively. So I asked him if he wanted to come and eat it. He was flattered by the news and was so excited that he thought we were going out for dinner but he still said, what's that, can I eat it? I heard him talk like this angry turn around and leave, love to come not come, listening to the back of his voice to stay, did not turn back, he looked at my back and shouted that he wanted to eat hot pot, followed by pushing the door into the house, looking at the scene in front of him, he was surprised to find a fire, very panicked, wanting to pull me to leave quickly, because they believe that fire is very dangerous, I rushed to tell him that I lit it, he was surprised to hear this and hid in fear outside the door. I reassured him that fire doesn't hurt anyone and that it can also make delicious food. Beckoning him to come inside, Bitey came back, holding some vegetables in his hands, and called out to me, Tell me the meat is cooked, come and eat it. Frosty Cloud looked at the two men in front of him fishing for meat in the pot to eat. Shocked that Whitey was not afraid of fire, think it must be in front of me to show off deliberately pretend. He secretly decided that he cannot be afraid, sat down and found that there is nothing special. This meat is so fragrant, a thousand times more flavorful than usual. Bai D gave me a bowl of it. I smelled it smelled so good that I just couldn't help myself. I picked up a piece of meat and put it in my mouth, but because it had just come out of the pot, I accidentally burned my mouth. I cried out in pain. The man stared nervously, holding me up and urging me not to rush. What if it burns? 
tears in my eyes. Whitey caressed my face with worry. He gently blew a breath, all of a sudden stuttered, nervously said nothing. Frost clouds look at the scene in front of me. Chopsticks on the meat fell off and did not know it, thinking that he also wanted to blow. It's really embarrassing. I violently cover my mouth and quickly change the topic of conversation. I asked him if they were from the Blackwater Wolves. He explained that Aki was the son of the Blackwater Wolf Clan's leader, his cousin. The other was Ma Ching, the witch doctor of the Blackwater Wolf Clan. They came to talk business with him, but it didn't occur to him that Livy was determined to follow, and he was annoyed to see her coming. I picked up a piece of meat and gently blew on it, asking what kind of business they wanted to talk about. When he didn't answer, he said, you don't have to tell me if it's inconvenient. He didn't take it to heart, and didn't think he had anything to hide from me. Whitey stopped his chopsticks as he listened to their conversation and remained silent. I told them to wait and then turned around and went next door to get something. Then I took the bamboo tube and showed it to them. They explained that the water inside the bamboo tube was the water they wanted to sell. And I gently sniffed the bamboo tube. This smell. This is actually wine. Frosty Cloud was surprised that I actually knew about this kind of water. Seeing me nodding my head and explaining the uses and disadvantages of wine, I suddenly remembered that Yajo did not mention that wine should not be drunk too much. He did not know or deliberately conceal. He did this in the end what intentions? Bitey asked why he couldn't drink more. So I explained that it's easy to get drunk, and when you're drunk you can easily lose control and even go crazy. For the sake of safety and insurance, it's still not recommended to drink too much. The two were shocked to hear that. This is very important. They remembered. I reminded Dao can inquire about what they use to make wine. Excited to think that if they can grow food in the future, not only can they eat it, but they can also make wine to sell it. It's like a one-two punch. Frosty Cloud quickly agreed to it. I poured some wine into everyone's bowls and took a sip, happily raising my glass to celebrate tonight's hot pot. The two of them looked at me so happy, but didn't understand what it meant to say cheers. They were confused. The three of them raised their bowls together. By D tasted the wine in the bowl. The flavor was really shocking. Frosty Cloud took a sip. It felt a bit strange and a bit spicy, but it was quite good. Before we knew it, we were all having a good time. The three of them were happily mingling. I looked at the empty bamboo tube. I didn't realize that we had drunk all of it. Suddenly, I felt a strong gaze from behind me and turned around to find that. These two people were staring at me somberly. I don't know what's wrong with them. Frosty Cloud's face was red and he was already drunk, gently calling my name. Immediately the next second he violently shouted out loud. Startled me a bit, he shouted out loud, asking me to be his mate, telling me that he really liked me so much. When I heard this, I thought he might not be drunk, so I told him to stop talking nonsense and rushed him back to rest, but he refused and turned into a furry little gray wolf. He said he wanted to sleep with me. I was petrified, looking at Frosty in front of me like a big dog. I didn't know what to do. When White Emperor appeared behind him with a gust of cold air, when he heard that Frost Cloud wanted to be my mate, White Emperor slapped him out of the door and flew away. The White Emperor grabbed him by the back of his neck, and I was worried that he would get hurt if he dragged him around like that. The White Emperor's body emanated a black aura and said, He has thick skin and flesh. It won't break. We have to send him back to his room. As I watched, Bai Di dragged him all the way out. Snapped. Frosty Cloud was thrown on the straw. I covered my mouth and looked at him sadly. His heart is really big, actually already asleep. Behind me there was a suffing sound. White Emperor violently picked me up and said, Go back to sleep. I was shocked and looked at him. His body is so hot, it will not be drunk. I hurriedly dissuaded him, told him to wait a moment. After putting me down, he tugged at the clothes on his body. I frowned at him, not knowing what was happening. He pushed me violently on the bed and I told him to sober up. Then he kissed me. Whitey had his hands on the bedpan. I was shocked and wanted to warn him not to do that. But then there was a loud bang, and the dress was accidentally torn. I looked at the dress in pain and frowned. Whitey seemed to have sobered up a bit and let out a slow breath to compliment me on how pretty I look. I told him his pupils were the best. They were blue, like the stars in the night sky, dazzling even without light, and like seawater, sparkling with light. I gazed at him tenderly, and he looked at me with affection. I looked at him in shock, wondering what he wanted to do. Whitey's eyes were in a trance. Then he turned Lin slowly over to the front. He was facing Lin. Lin was already kneeling on the bed with her back to him. Suddenly he realized something was wrong, seemed to feel the pain and screamed out. I let him be like this. Bai Di was in the back. His face flushed and said, 
Slowly. I like you. I looked at him in panic. I'll be torn apart. Don't. I'm scared. Whitey said he was so uncomfortable. Pulling at Ease's shorts again, I cried out. Naked to him. Whitey's eyes weren't right. Not the usual Whitey. Shit. He was drunk too. It was horrible. I couldn't get rid of him. I tried to wake him up. Wake up. But his eyes were lost. There was no way to wake him up. I only suffered pain. Frost Cloud's beast ears shrugged. He sat up, holding his forehead in pain, and heard someone whimpering. After slowing down, shocked, it was actually me who was crying. Frost Cloud swished and darted over, kicked the door open with a clang, and nervously asked what was wrong with me. He violently transformed back to his original form, and in front of him appeared a man high big gray wolf. He rushed at Bai D and tore at him violently, telling him to let go of me. Bai D came to his senses and didn't know what was happening. Frosty Cloud saw me fall to the ground in a state of disarray and called out to me nervously. I cried out in pain. He picked me up fiercely, saw that my face looked bad, comforted me and said don't be afraid, ready to take me to the witch doctor's side. Bai D looked at the scene in front of him. He was shocked. He couldn't believe that this was his doing. He just wanted to go over, but he was warned by Frosty Cloud fiercely, telling him to stay away. He fiercely questioned him. I was hurt so badly, he did not know it. Finished ready to take me away, so that he was left alone to clear his head. Frosty Cloud carried me away, leaving by D alone in the house. He slammed his fist on the table, holding his forehead. He guiltily questioned what stupid thing he had done. Outside the cave, snow was falling and the wind was blowing. Inside the house, Long Ju was cozy with a black mask on his face. The door was kicked open with a clang, and he heard someone shouting his name. He turned around and scolded. What are you doing in the middle of the night? Frosty Cloud said. I'm hurt. Let him take a look. I was carefully placed on the straw. Long Ju cursed me when he saw me hurt like this. But Xuan Yin hurriedly explained that he didn't do it. Although I had already fainted, I was still sobbing in my sleep. Which doctor looked at the injuries on my body. Frowned hard. Hate voice asked. In the end, which bastard did it? Frost Cloud on the sidelines said it was the White Emperor did it. I did not expect that person has been mild and gentle actually he did it. Too shocking. After looking at the injuries, he began to instruct Frosty Cloud to take out the herbs and mash them up. After some treatment, the blood finally stopped. Fortunately sent in time, the two of them stood at the side, looking down at me worriedly. After asking the witch doctor to take care of me, Xuan Yin was ready to put me here for the time being and turned to leave. The witch doctor hurriedly asked him where he was going. He turned back to me with a grim face and said, to go back and teach that bastard a lesson. The White Emperor saw Frosty Cloud return and opened his mouth ready to inquire, but Frosty turned into his own body and jumped down and beat him. White Emperor asked him what he was going to do. He heard him say he wanted to beat him up and blamed him for bullying and hurting me. He lay on the ground in a state of distress and opened his mouth to explain that he didn't remember what happened just now, and that he could beat him up all he wanted. He just wanted to know if I was. Frost Cloud's pair of wolf eyes stared viciously at the... Finally he turned around and prepared to leave, and told him it was because of you that I was hurt so badly, just don't want to know anything about me. In the end, Frostcloud viciously left a comment that White Emperor is not qualified to have me as his female, piercing his heart. He covered his face in pain, regretting what he had done. Outside the cave, the snow is still whistling down, the cold pierces the bones. After several days, I opened my eyes and wondered where I was now. When I came to my senses, I found myself lying on the bed. Feeling pain in my body, I violently recalled what Bai D had done. My face was ugly. I tugged at the quilt and shivered uncontrollably. Suddenly, I heard someone asking me how I was doing. I turned around and found that it was the witch doctor from Longju. The witch doctor came over with the soup and medicine, and after asking about my health, I answered him carefully. I looked at the black soup in front of me, which didn't smell good, and I didn't want to drink it. After the sound of clattering, it was Frosty Cloud. With a big bag in his mouth, he brought me a change of clothes. I remembered that all these clothes were made for me by Bai D. I couldn't help crying. Frosty's face immediately tensed up, thinking I was crying because of the pain of my wounds. I could only rub my eyes to hide that it was because the medicine I just took was too bitter. Thinking of the time before I came here alone, met by D and lived like a family, but something like this happened. How should I face him in the future? A furry wolf head came over in front of me. Frost Cloud should be comforting me, right? I hugged his big head and he was wooing me to cheer me up. Bai D, with a wounded face, appeared outside the witch doctor's door, not daring to enter. The witch doctor saw him and asked him what he was doing here, but he only wanted to know if I was well. So he asked the witch doctor about my wound. 
Long Zhu had to tell him that I had just woken up, so don't scare people, it would be troublesome if my wound disintegrated. He remembered what Frosty Cloud said to him that day and hated what he had done. He had something he wanted to ask the witch doctor to tell me. Five days later, I told the witch doctor that I was really well and could go back. He had no choice but to leave me behind and bid him farewell. I thanked him for taking care of me all these days, and prepared to go to the White Emperor to tell him that I hadn't seen him all these days, and I couldn't hide from him any longer. When I arrived at the White Emperor's door, I pushed open the door, but I didn't see Bai Di, called out his name. No one responded. I found the blanket replaced with a new one, and the cellar was full of vegetables and dried meat, but the man was gone. I stared at my lovely, dull eyes with mixed feelings and exclaimed that Bai Di was not at home, sitting in front of the pot, very angry. I thought to myself. Fine, I'll just stay home and wait for Bai Di to come back, and in the meantime, I'll think about our future. My eyes were glowing as I thought, Bai Di is good to me, I have a good feeling about Bai Di, I want to be his mate and live the rest of our lives together in peace. Suddenly I frowned and thought of something terrible about him. I sat in front of the pot, staring at the rice in the pot, thinking, if I really can't solve it, maybe I can think of another idea. With a poof, I lit a match, thinking I'll just have to tell Whitey to find another mate. I lowered my head and my heart dropped to the bottom, thinking, we could be brother and sister, like family too. I shook my head frantically to get rid of my thoughts. Ah, uh, uh, no, it's too selfish to think like this. What to do? I'm so worried, ah. Uh. The rice in the pot was cooked and gurgling. I've been waiting for the white emperor for almost a day. He hasn't come back yet. It's going to be dark soon. Frosty Cloud swished through the door and asked me if I was feeling better. I answered him with a helpless smile on my face. Thank you. I'm much better. Do you know where White Emperor went? As soon as Frosty Cloud heard the name of that tiger, he bared his four fangs in great displeasure and shouted angrily, I don't know. I ignored Frosty Cloud's ranting behind me and turned my head to go find the Long Zhu Witch Doctor. I thought to myself that the wind was howling, the snow was flying, the temperature was so low. Bai Di hadn't come back for the whole day. It was very dangerous. I was very worried about him. Frosty Cloud shouted, Really? Let's go together. When I left the cave, I saw snowflakes flying outside, and it was white as the sky. I hurriedly asked Long Zhu, Do you know where Bai Di went? He pondered for a while and told me that the source leaf fruit is a good tonic for females, and Whitey volunteered to help find it. I said, Why is he so stupid? It's freezing outside. I have to find him. Frosty Cloud tugged on my arm frowning tightly and said to me, It's snowing so hard. If you go out now you're sure to get frostbitten. He held my trembling hand and thought to himself, Even though he was almost like that bye bye D, his body was in pain and he was still worried about him. He frowned tightly and shouted at me. He helped me to find it and told me to be good and stay here. My eyes widened in surprise as I looked at him, thinking why is he being so nice to me? Frosty Cloud looked back at me and told me that we were guests of the Rock Wolf Clan, and that is the leader of the Wolf Clan group. He surely couldn't see us die and save us. Long Zhu which doctor thought to himself, why didn't he know that Frost Cloud had such a strong sense of responsibility? I hurriedly called out to Frost Cloud and he stared back at me. I walked over and put the cloak on Frosty Cloud, raised my head and said to him, it's cold outside, take the fire with you as well. I looked at him with expectant eyes and said to him, if you really can't find by D, you should come back. His voice suddenly turned red. He looked down at me and shouted, slowly. He told me firmly that if he could come back safely this time, he would make me promise him one thing. Long Ju which doctor in the back, happy all jumped up, thinking that the brat finally got the hang of it. My eyes were glowing, and I firmly said to him, as long as you can come back safely, no matter what, I promise you. I suddenly realized why I was a bit nervous. Outside, the wind was whistling and rattling the branches of the trees. The frosty clouds accompanied the wind and walked step by step on the snow with perseverance. I'm praying here that by D and frosty cloud must come back safely. Frosty Cloud was gone for three days, but the snow outside got heavier and the temperature got lower and lower. Every day I stood there staring at the snowflakes. The witch doctor came out and said, Don't worry, they will come back. I blamed myself with tears in my eyes and said, It's all my fault. If I hadn't given them alcohol, they wouldn't have lost control of their emotions. Dr. Longchuk advised me not to blame myself too much. I blamed myself with tears in my eyes. I was really stupid and useless. Frosty was right. They shouldn't have risked their lives for me. They shouldn't have risked their lives for me. Which Dr. Longju hurriedly explained. Don't misunderstand me. 
me. Frosty Cloud is always lying. He says he hates it, but in his heart, he wants to be my mate. He wants to mate with me. I don't understand him. Doesn't he hate females? I sat down slowly and heard Long Zhu tell me why Frost Cloud hates females. Frostcloud's mother used to be the best-looking female in the wolf clan and had many suitors. Frostcloud's father was also one of them. He knew what his mate liked to eat and he was willing to find it for her. Unfortunately, he was bitten by a full-grown fire dragon bird, the female. However, thought Frostcloud's father was too useless and abandoned him without a second thought. So she was so devastated that she died without surviving the attack. I couldn't understand why he gave up hope of living after being abandoned by the female. Seeing that I was puzzled, Long Zhu said in detail, because each male orc can only have one female in his life. Therefore, a male who is abandoned by a female will suffer the repercussions of the mate contract, which is not a pain that anyone would want to endure. At first I thought that mates in this world were similar to marriages, but it turns out that the consequences of being abandoned are simply fatal. But the witch doctor followed that up by saying that wasn't the most painful. His father died and his body turned back to its original form, which was the most prized of all the mutant frost wolves, the female who abandoned him and tried to have his first strip from him. Undoubtedly it's something that causes a lot of pain. It's very cruel. This is the worst boy I've ever seen. His own cruel mother trying to get other males to skin off his father's fur. Luckily Frost Cloud arrived in time and tried desperately to stop it. He stood over his father's body and tore into anyone who came near. It it wasn't until the body rotted that the mother had to give up her father's fur. A child watched his father's body rot in front of him. It was a huge blow to Frostcloud's heart. From then on, he became very hateful to females. I sighed with tears in my eyes. I'd better be nice to him from now on. I won't fight with him on the pole. Someone shouted behind me. Slow down. It's not good. The purple-haired boy rushed into the cave and hurriedly shouted, Someone has stolen something from your house. I said with a panicked look on my face, What? After hearing this news, I ran out of the cave in a panic, facing the wind and snow, ignoring the people behind me to rush out. He came back to his senses and immediately came and called all the young males of the clan to help slow down the family. Long Ju which doctor looked at the back of the purple-haired boy left and lamented, Frost clouds and white emperor are not there. This can be a bit of a problem. He looked in amazement at the faintly glowing object in front of him and made a rustling sound. I pushed the door open violently shouting, What are you doing in my house? Put down everything! I cried out, weak and helpless, but they all ignored me. The sinister green-haired woman stared at me with her evil eyes. She said to me with a sinister look on her face, Your males are gone anyway. You can't stop me. I said angrily, They actually took advantage of my absence to run into my house to rob it. When Whitey comes back you will be dead. Before I could finish my sentence, the corner of Livy's mouth rose and she pointed her hand at me and said that's if they come back alive too. I was suddenly a pair of hands cupped chin, shocked to look at the person in front of me. She smiled evilly. If it wasn't for the fact that someone had their eye on me, she would have destroyed me. I violently brushed aside her hand and slammed my body into her saying, get out of my way. She was knocked to the ground by me and let out an ah. Livy thought to herself, this wild female has made a fool of her three times. She can't stand it any longer. She's going to arrest me and teach me a lesson. Her friends looked at each other. All of them looked embarrassed and thought to themselves, she's crazy to do that to a little girl. I'm sure they couldn't do that to a pretty, cute female like me. Liwei was shocked and thought, she is the most beautiful, but these males are even hesitant about me. She surely can't keep me. She shouted out, Yachul, get your female out of here. Surprised and scared, I turned around to see Chewie. Aki smiled a sinister smile and looked down at me and said, poor little female, he'll take care of me. I gripped the stick and shouted, I don't need your care and I won't go with you, so get out of here or I'll be rude. Yachel said grimly with a tight frown, if I don't go with him I'll just starve to death. Li Wei said smugly, all my food belongs to her anyway, advising me to go with Yakiu. I frowned hard thinking, the two of them are actually in cahoots, one robbing things and the other robbing people. The calculations are really loud. The two of them showed looks that made people sick to look at and said those disgusting dialogues. Bam! The wooden stick had hit the ground. I shouted in horror, what are you going to do? Let go of me! Yachel held my wrists hard and threatened me, telling me I'd better go with him. If I didn't, I'd suffer the consequences. I shouted in surprise. No! Let go of me! Let go of me! Lai Wei was at the back of the room, 
fanning the flames. Archer pressed me to the ground with brute force. I screamed in agony. I screamed in agony and bitterness as he pulled me down, and I shouted, Stop it! Shooey! I stared fiercely at him and shouted, Yachel, have you thought about the consequences of this? I will abandon you. I will not let you go even if I die. I held on to my last glimmer of hope that he would be scornful of the consequences of reflecting on the mate contract. I watched as he slowly showed a hesitant expression and thought to myself, the repercussions of the mate contract are too vicious. He can't afford it. Li Wei shouted very grumpily, what a useless waste. Don't hesitate. She said sinisterly, pour me a large amount of potion and I won't resist. I looked embarrassed thinking, this time it's definitely over. I'm sure I'll be doused. Will it be the same as that night? I'm too scared. So much so that my body was trembling with fear. Yachel had a sinister look on her face as she laughed at me and stroked me while still saying those disgusting words. Li Wei smiled evilly and said to me, he he he, it's right to be afraid. There will be something I'm even more afraid of in a while. Her pupils dilated and she stared at the spot. Suddenly, with a thud, she spat out blood. Not knowing what happened, she fell heavily to the ground, letting out a scream. She stood up shakily, clutching her stomach. With tears in her eyes, she said harshly, Who kicked her? Stand out for her. There was a sound of footsteps and everyone looked at the door. Frosty Cloud stared at all the people in the room with a cruel look and said through gritted teeth, It's him. The orc looked incredibly surprised. Frost Cloud, aren't you already dead out there? Frosty Cloud reassured him that even if your whole family died, I'd still be alive and well. Frosty Cloud's eyes really want to kill me. As long as it's okay, we'll go back first. He flashed to the orc in an instant and grabbed him by the neck. It wasn't going to be that easy to leave. The orc backed away in horror. Frost Cloud, we are mistaken. His gaze grew more and more fierce. Want to lay hands on slowly? Just based on you are also worthy of it. The other orcs were all stunned. Watching the blood splatter across the room, the orc kept convulsing his body. Frost Cloud begged you to stop and save me. He didn't feel anything about it. He just wanted to kill it. And then he reached out and stabbed it right in. The female cried out in horror. Oh my god. Frost Cloud is really going to kill Aki. So is it my turn after that? She tried to run away. But the door was thrown open. And there were countless helpers standing outside. How dare you bully the females in our rocky mountains. Arrest all these offenders. I'm a poor female and the daughter. Of the Black River Wolf clan leader. You can't take me to the dungeon. The female comforted our heroine. Don't be afraid the White Emperor and Frost Cloud are back. No one can bully you anymore. Slowly, he became excited. The White Emperor really came back. Tears flowed out of her aggrieved eyes. It's so great that Whitey is back as well. Frost Cloud angrily cursed his men. What a useless thing. And threw him out of the cavern. An old man suddenly sent word for him to wait. Asking the Frost Cloud Patriarch to be merciful and spare his life. Frosty Cloud looked at the visitor and laughed out coldly. Witch Doctor Machin of the Black River Wolf Clan. You've come just in time. The witch doctor, Machin, said it wasn't feeling well, and then Aki went behind his back and did this. The witch doctor is a slippery, treacherous man, and is probably behind Aki's roughing up of the females. It's the same water that made Whitey lose control. What's he up to? But he can't kill Archer. But the little female quietly came over. Frost clouds this matter. can be left to me to solve it. His little face turned red. What a nosy little female. Whatever. Slowly look at these old slickers. How much magic water you've brought it. The witch doctor thought to himself that the first time he had discussed with a female, he had brought as many as the barrels with him. Then you leave both barrels of water and tell us what kind of food is made from. And we'll forget the whole thing. The old man immediately lost his temper. Wanting our formula is to greedy. Frost Cloud picked up the dying Aki just in time. So what else do you have to trade? Slowly stated that she didn't want the recipe, just the ingredients, and that she wanted to brew her own magic water. The old man couldn't believe them. Why are you asking about the ingredients? What are you going to do? Frosty Cloud saw that he was dead set on not letting go of his mouth and then picked up the fool again and flung him around. Are you still not going to say yes? The old man sighed darkly. How could he not let him die here? Of course, he could only promise to. So the orcs brought big barrels and said that all the magic water was here. Frosty Cloud is acting very calm as the clan leader. Hurry up and tell us your recipe. He let come slowly to himself and muttered in her ear for a while. These are all the ingredients. We're not hiding anything. Well, goodbye then, extraordinary little female. We'll see you again, slowly believing only a small part of it. This machine looks weird. Still need to be careful. But they're finally gone. I'm gonna go check on Whitey real quick. But before she could leave, Frosty Cloud fell down with a puff. Slowly rushed over. 
Frosty Cloud, what's going on? What's going on? And she actually became very cold when she touched his body. She suddenly realized what was going on and looked over with unblinking eyes. A pattern emerged on his arm, similar to that weird starburst pattern. She didn't know anything about this at all. What the hell could this pattern be doing? The witch doctor slammed open the door of the room. This is it. Quickly put Frosty Cloud on the bed next to him, slowly following the crowd. He did see the unconscious white emperor. He seemed to be breathing steadily, so she guessed there was nothing wrong, for which she quietly sighed in relief. The witch doctor said, except for the slow, you all go out, you guard the door, no one is allowed to enter. The starbursts appeared, the beast's soul inside Frost Cloud was awakened. Why at this time? slowly expressed his lack of understanding. What is that thing called a star tattooed beast soul? When an orc evolves, a starburst will appear, which represents the awakening of the beast soul, allowing for a great increase in combat power. Starbursts are hard to come by and don't always awaken the soul of the beast, and many beastmen fell in their evolution, resulting in death. She covered her mouth in surprise. How could the long Jew witch doctor explain it like that and why did he die? Evolution is a task given to the orcs by the gods, and those who fail the test are losers they should be eliminated. The weak are the strongest. The strong are the most powerful. This is the law of survival of the works. According to the usual practice, when Frosty Cloud comes of age, it should be his father who helps to awaken and appease the soul beast within him. But his father died a long time ago, so he couldn't awaken the animal spirit inside him. I thought the beast soul in his body had died out due to his father's death, but I didn't expect it to suddenly appear today. There's nothing we can do. If he fails in the end, failure is death. Slowly didn't want him to die. Although he had a bad personality and a bad mouth, he was a very good orc. He saved me time and time again. I'm not cold-hearted. Frosty Cloud and Whitey must be fine. All of them must hang on. She cried in aggravation. In a trance, the White Emperor heard a slow cry and snapped out of his stupor, only to see him rubbing up and sitting up. Frost Cloud, what happened to him? The little woman slowly burrowed into his arms and cried out uncontrollably. Frost Cloud seemed to be dying. The witch doctor waved his hand helplessly at him. It was Frost Cloud's starburst that appeared. I die instantly understood the truth of the matter and slowly helped me down. I'll go and check on Frosty Cloud. Although he was lying peacefully on the bed. His furrowed brow emphasized the physical pain he was experiencing at this time. The White Emperor thought to himself, Silver Frost White Wolf, and it seems to be considered the will of heaven. He explained to the witch doctor that maybe I could save his life. He uncovered his clothes slowly and methodically, and the side of his waist was suddenly visible, now realizing that he had that weird pattern too. Slowly looking at the increasingly obvious pattern, have you also awakened a beast soul? Which Dr. Longju's mouth opened wide in surprise. This was a three-star soul beast. A powerful three-star soul beast. Capable of calming the soul of the Silver Frost White Wolf. Which Doctor, please save Frosty Cloud. Just say the word and we'll be at your service. I can't save him, but I can't do it alone. I need to slow down. Slowly the look of worry that was just there changed to one of shock. The White Emperor came to her slowly. I need you and me and Frost Cloud to be mates. She opened her eyes wide for fear of mishearing a word. Three people together as mates. If you want to appease the beast's soul inside Frost Cloud, it has to be his loved one. If you become our mate, you'll be bound to each other. Like family. When that happens, I'll make a move to appease his beast's soul, and my chances of success will be greatly improved. Slow doesn't understand but is greatly shocked. I never thought of getting to mates. Isn't marriage supposed to be monogamous? Now the three of us are mates. This is crazy. But if I don't agree, will Frosty Cloud be hopeless? I looked in Frost Cloud's direction again. He was still shaking with pain. If I save by die and come back this time, can you promise me one thing? Frosty Cloud is still waiting for me to save his life. I can't just ignore him. At that moment, why he stretched out his strong arms around the delicate female. I used to stop you from going out with males. I was afraid you'd be taken by someone else. I always wanted to have you all to myself. He recounted it so aggressively that his body began to shake uncontrollably. In fact, it's hard for Whitey to. Isn't it? It's because of me that he's making this decision. We owe him our lives. I'll do anything to get him back. In the normal course of events, mating must take place between a female and a male. The witch doctor took the object in his hand and his expression became incredibly serious. Now, the frosty cloud is unconscious, and by die is injured. We can only go through another method. Whitey was the first to cut his finger, and bright drops of blood slid down his fingertip, gradually dripping into the container. He then left to retrieve his fingers. The witch doctor came to Frost Cloud and took a knife and cut his finger. 
the blood drops of the two gradually merged, and it would soon be her turn. Instead of scratching her fingers, she actually picked up the glass of water with a grave expression on her face. She then cupped her hands around the glass of water and frowned as she finished it all off in one gulp. I didn't expect her to pick up the knife again and cut her fingers randomly without daring to open her eyes. Whitey suddenly knelt down to her, and she didn't stop the act this time, only to see her handing it to Bike die with a heavy heart, a hint of worry showing in her expression. He solemnly lifted the glass of water and drank the cup of female blood into his mouth. The witch doctor, after taking the glass of water over, gently pulled up his back and slowly fed it into his mouth. In this moment, slowly seemed to see light. Could it be an illusion? And that's it. That's it. I'm mated to them. Frosty Cloud's face became normal, and the icy aura on his body gradually dissipated. Is this the end of the ceremony? I can't believe it. Frost Cloud hates females so much. Will he be very angry when he wakes up and finds out he's been forcibly coupled up? The domineering white emperor was the first to speak. If he dares to dislike you, I'll kill him. In fact, Frosty Cloud likes you very much. He'll be madly happy to be your mate. I had to heckle twice. Females hate getting words. Is it a lie? Pacti told her not to worry. The mate is valid for three months. If you don't mate with us, it will automatically expire. The witch doctor gave a quick thumbs up. Yes, you stay if you think it's passable and dump them. If you're not satisfied. So that's it. I thought this was for life. Think of it as a relationship. Although it does seem a bit odd that it's with the people. Whitey walks forward and crouches down. I'll take care of him next. Only to see his large hands suddenly put up and unleash energy around his starburst. For this reason his star pattern gradually spread out. Even the full pattern came to the fore. The heart suddenly beat so hard I felt the beating of their hearts, the rhythm of their breathing, the souls of the beasts in their bodies. I'll follow. Frosty Cloud's eyes swished open after the duo's treatment. The starbursts on his arms are getting brighter and brighter. What did I just do? The witch doctor was shocked by this. A one-star soul beast gets the mark. You've evolved successfully. Why do you look very bad? Lie down and rest. But Whitey didn't agree. Help me back. I want to go home. It's so touching to slow down a little bit and go back to our home. The house has been restored to its original state, presumably with the help of Moksha and a few of her males. The white emperor lay resting on his bed, but his eyes followed the slowly. This is Gunpaku fruit. Eat one every day from now on. It's very good for your health. It's because of them that Whitey is in danger. But how can I refuse his heart? Whitey apologized with a pale face. I'm sorry he is. That night I died. Don't say that again. I've forgotten about that night. Don't ever mention it again. She put away the bag of fruit, her fingers shaking slightly. Why he is very grateful to her, as long as she keeps me around. He's in a nervous mood. Can I hold you again? I don't reject Whitey. After this, I realize I really can't live without him. Besides, it's really great that Whitey is back now. So early the next morning, there was a clanging sound outside the cave. Slowly was awakened. Who is going on? Someone came to the door to find fault again. She walked forward with her little cloak wrapped tightly around her, and a large hole was broken in the parlor wall, only to see Frosty Cloud's little head exposed on the opposite side, looking at her shyly, slowly but angrily. Why are you smashing the wall of my house? Frosty Cloud said we are mates. Your home is my home. Of course this wall should be smashed out. He's incredibly apprehensive and nervous. I'm just going to open up both sides of the house. Besides, I'm your mate now. It's only natural. Slowly expressed helplessness at this. Even so, then you cannot just smash the wall. Frost Cloud's mouth grinned. The little female didn't deny it, so she was admitting it in disguise. But the White Emperor interrupted them and jerked up behind her. Conveniently, what? Frost Cloud did this, of course, for his own convenience. Wanting to abduct her into his bed, but he's already made dinner, and the little female wants to go eat first. He then looked at Frosty Cloud. You saved my life. I helped you out. From now on, we'll have a fair competition, and his will be able to choose his own male. Frosty Cloud says just play fair. I'll never give in to you. Whitey was obviously very perfunctory, not caring in the least about his opponent behind him. I won't ask why you're strong enough to show up in this place, but you're not allowed to hurt the clan or slowly. He said it doesn't matter, I just want to live a good life with slowly. If you break her heart, I won't let you go. Very grabby slow, surprised to cover his mouth tightly. How to do all of that? The next three months are going to be three people living together. Will they make it through? It looks like there's going to be a lot of trouble in the days ahead. And so began the cohabitation of the three. This is the first day of change, slowly panicking to protect his body. He righteously said no. Frost Cloud said letting myself run errands. Why shouldn't I get paid for it? She just doesn't agree. I can't sleep with you. He's furious about it. We're mates. We sleep together. It's the right thing to do. You sleep with that tiger every night. 
he always makes you make those noises. Slowly red in his cheeks. Is the sound insulation of the rock wall so bad? I want to complain. Whitey and I are in love, but you don't like me. I consider you a friend. It's not appropriate for us to sleep together, so you should reconsider. Frost Cloud's brain wiring is clearly not here. You don't even like me, do you? Then why mate with me and let me misunderstand you so? Slowly indicates that the situation is urgent, and I can't see it too. It's not a real partnership. What do you mean it's not a real partnership? I just want to be with you. Let you think of me as a true mate. I hate to push her right now too. The title of mate is completely seated, but the female's claws are retracted. But it still has a shred of sense. It's just an errand. I'll go. Won't I? So huffing and puffing, he storm out, intending to leave the little female's side. However, the little female misunderstood. Why was he so angry? He really hated females. We saw our little milk wolf running angrily and kicking in the door of Longju's room. It's a thank you gift I was told to bring you. Throw it at me. The witch doctor immediately poked him in the heart. You and slowly are at odds again. Slow doesn't like me at all. I like her so much, but she just doesn't like me. Longju looked at him painfully. Don't be sad. Tell me more. The wind is howling outside, but the orcs don't seem to feel the cold. With a gift on his shoulder, Whitey accompanied the female to Maksha's house. Makain just happened to be in there. Is she slowing down? Come on in. The white rabbit slowly and unknowingly. Mushi and I have brought you a thank you gift. But the scene in front of her really caused her to collapse a little. She ran out the door screaming. And oh my god, that was hot. The people inside the door don't seem to be able to perceive it. Molhai. Shout at me when you're done. Mukai is really. It's still daytime. Right. I die had to explain that it's normal that it's winter now. When the forest is in spring and prey and food are plentiful, the females will be able to lay their pups. I don't agree with you. You don't have to have a threesome. It's too much. Why do you reassure her? that I don't like the idea of having you with other males at the same time. Why does he get on my case? Is he only interested in me? He really does do everything to get himself off. She's the only thing that matters to Pak Tai. He'll do anything she says. The sun is setting, and it's midday outside. Frosty Cloud, who had finished running errands, appeared at the door and he's dying back. They're having a delicious barbecue. Frosty is back. Come and eat. He walked forward with a dull gaze and waited for the roast with unparalleled equanimity. Whitey grilled a stewer of meat and handed it to her, tasting it to see how it tasted. It was really nice and crispy on the outside and with a little bit of juice on it. It tasted really good. Frosty Cloud was like a light bulb, sitting dumbly across from the duo. Dr. Longchamp reminded himself that females love sweet talk. He picked up the kebab thoughtfully. How was he going to learn to say love words himself? He didn't give a damn then, but now he's studying hard. Just because of the witch doctor's words, can you still compare to the white emperor? The three star soul beasts are so powerful, and just like that, they are still gentle and considerate, taking care of the little female in every way. Of course, he likes him. You've got to learn the ropes. Frosty Cloud argued with a blush. I'm not going to learn from that tiger. But if he doesn't learn, he'll lose his reprieve. He won't allow this to happen. I'm going to change the loss of the reprieve. I can't stand it. There's a lot of snow outside. But inside the cave there's a starry night. Slowly but dazedly, I opened my eyes. Why do I'm a little cold? But then she suddenly remembered that he was next door. And after that incident, he was afraid that I was in harm's way. She was still a little sentimental. But there was a click outside. There's a news and sound coming from the kitchen. Could it be an unscrupulous thief? I saw a big, slender hand actually grilling a delicious meat skewer. Slowly thinking it was a thief, he saw him with the wooden stick, but stood frouncing in place. This frosty cloud is roasting in the kitchen in the middle of the night. What are you doing here? The haughty white wolf immediately hit the kebabs and told her that he wasn't doing anything. But the kebab was so hot he screamed and threw it away. Slowly rubbing up against him. Should be fine. No redness or burns. But you didn't sleep in the middle of the night. And came here to barbecue. Didn't you have enough to eat at night? That arrogant white wolf says he doesn't care about you. But inside he wants to learn to cook and make his happy. Slowly reaching out and pointing at him. Your ears shrug down. Every time you get upset your ears shrug down. She was sweet enough to sit on the sidelines. Do you want a roast? So she began to configure the spices and said she could teach him. The meat has to be cut before it can be grilled. She explains as she moves. That's it. Do you want to try it? The weak complexion arrogant coyote's face turned a bright shade of red. But when he was cutting the meat, he finished it with a few skillful swishes and swishes. Stewer them evenly like this and then rotate them slowly. So they are evenly heated and brushed the center with seasoning. He had a look of realization on his face. So that's how it works. Looks like it's almost ready. Try this. 
he ate the successfully grilled kebabs, but they didn't taste as good as those grilled by Pak Thai. The more he thought about it, the more desperate he felt. Everything was inferior to Whitey. Take what the district competition slowed down. Slowly completely unaware of the situation, why is he drooping his ears again? You are not happy that the barbecue is successful. He looked to this little female. Do you care if I'm happy or not? Ease is really eating this up. What's with the what look like a big dog? But you only care about the tiger. It doesn't matter to you what happens to me, does it? A little female indicated that he was important, which sounded like she was just comforting him. I didn't realize the female had grabbed his wrist. I mean seriously, you're very important to me. You're actually quite nice and helpful. I appreciate it. He's happy about it. But all you've got from me is thanks. Slowly becoming stumped for a response. But then he noticed it. Slowing his heartbeat to a quicker pace. He suddenly came forward. You kind of like me too. Am I right? I didn't know how to respond. I stammered. I couldn't speak. To deny it would be a lie. But to admit it. What about Whitey? Frosty Cloud's small face turned even redder. And with this reaction of hers. I understood. It's not just me. Slow is starting to like me too. Only the little female suddenly cried out. I don't know my own mind. He immediately regained his haughty expression. He likes me but doesn't dare to say it. Is he afraid of my rejection? Slowly, who had just been entangled, was suddenly brought back to his senses by this scene. He stated that he hated females, but seeing as you like them so much, he could give you a chance. Slowly was furious. I must be blind for having a crush on this guy. Don't be so self-absorbed. Get out of my way. I'm going back to bed. He got a bit overwhelmed, and hastily raised his arm to stop the female from leaving. Before you went to save Bai Dai, you promised me a request. I want you to fulfill the condition. Slowly says it's totally fine. What do you want me to do? Only to see him look at her in a serious manner. You want to mate with me? Slowly and angrily shouted. Are you suffering from some serious illness? Get back to bed. So she quickly returned to her room and fell into an exhausted sleep. At that moment her arm was stroked, and he was still whispering for a slow. She woke up in a daze, and sure enough, she saw the arrogant coyote. Ignoring any reaction from the female, he leaned down slightly and kissed his way towards her. Their hands were clenched in both directions, neither one of them willing to let go. Slowly opening his tearful eyes, Frost Cloud, what are you doing? Only he didn't respond, and he wanted to do something to her in the depths of his love. Slowly and violently she Saturday up from the bed, her long beautiful hair becoming disheveled. That dream was horrible. How could he possibly want to have sex with me? She looked in the direction of the kitchen again, and there was Frost Cloud's charred roast. She recalled the words, and the scene she was in. It's either the dream or what he said that makes it so strange. The coat winds howl at night, and they don't even stop in the middle of the day. My good friend's eyes have changed. You're not in the mood today. Slowly inwardly spit out being tossed by Frosty Cloud. Yet the words came out of his mouth as, Didn't sleep well, did he? My best friend came over quietly. Was Frost Cloud too much for him last night? She quickly told her friend to shut up. We Frost Cloud didn't do anything like that. Mushon righteously retorted. How could there not be? Frost Cloud Patriarch likes you so much. She was shocked at this. How could Frost Cloud like me? But think of how he treats Livy. That's how he doesn't like it. And in thinking of how he treats you, she thinks it's not the same. Frosty Cloud's got a bad mouth. But he'll do anything I ask. Mock Hyen came over with interest. What are you hesitating for? I would have jumped on a man like Frosty and enjoyed him. It suddenly occurred to her that she couldn't even stand Whitey. And Frost Cloud looked strong too. Sure enough, she didn't care that she was blushing. Didn't it hurt when you did it? Makayin looks bland. I feel good and comfortable. But you're a bit delicate. So they don't dare to push you too hard. You're too small. Too much difference in size hurts. But there's a fruit that eases the pain. But didn't you happen to have heard of the kind of fruit? Mocha was talking about, in the cellar of the source leaf fruits home, why he picked a jar of source leaf fruits, why he gave me some, and I got much, much better, I didn't realize, that the source leaf fruit could still have that kind of, wonderful use, at that moment Frosty Cloud's voice rang out of the door, trying to get her to come out for a moment, she quietly opened the doorway, how she felt embarrassed to be caught in the act, she looked at Frost Cloud in surprise. What was he squirming about? He said there was no need to be shy. That there was no hurry on that matter. He had another thing to say. I'm not going to have sex with you, narcissist. What's up? Come on. Unexpectedly his words constituted a small surprise to her. Livy was pregnant. Why are you telling me this? Is the baby in her belly yes? Sniffing the frosty clouds exploded violently into. I was going to put her in a cell and throw all her gain out when the snow melts. Long Zhu asked me to release her, saying that if something happens to a pregnant woman, it would be bad for the reputation of our tribe. But I think you're the victim. 
You decide what to do with her. Whatever you want, I'll do it for you. But killing a pregnant female is a serious offense. Are you afraid you'll be reviled? Frosty Cloud says he doesn't care. He can't afford not to be the cleanlier and take you away to live somewhere else together. You don't have to do this. Let Livy go. The baby in her belly is innocent. His look was grave. You are willing to let Livy go because you don't want to make things difficult for me. You really like me. That's why you're so sensitive to my feelings. I'm really touched. His expression grew more and more agitated, and he cried out softly in pleasure to the little female before him, only to see him come forward slightly and drop a kiss on her forehead. Then he left happily. I'll go and take care of it first. You be good at home and wait for me to come back. The entrance to the dungeon at this time was actually open violently. These orcs are having a messy affair in the dungeon. He looks behind him to his little brother. You go up and open the door and let them out. Livy was so excited. You're really lying. You care about me so much. Frosty Cloud, disgusted by these words, suddenly broke out in a cold sweat. She took a closer look at his body, not realizing that he had evolved. She was so happy, she rushed over to me. I'll have a great baby with you, what is his name? I have more to offer you than that wild female. Frosty Cloud just pinched Li Wei, and Li Wei could only scream in pain. You should be thankful to Ease. She said that for the sake of your pregnancy, she asked me to let you go. If you dare to come one step closer, I will definitely kill you. Li Wei was shocked by Frosty's words. Behind her, Li Wei's mate shouted Frost Cloud, let her go. She is still pregnant. Frosty Cloud then threw Li Wei to them. When he was about to leave, he turned around and told them to keep an eye on her and not to hang around in front of me so that I wouldn't kill her. If I didn't feel like it, she was so angry that tears flowed out of her eyes. Frost Cloud, how dare you humiliate me like this, and that wild female. I won't let you go. Outside, the wind and snow were blowing furiously. The three of us were sitting and eating food when Frost Cloud came here too. I stole a glance at Bai Dai, not sure what I was thinking about. He then asked me if I was full and seemed to have other actions coming up next. I bowed my head and mm and full, what should I say to Bai Dai? If it's a must to choose a mate, I want to be with Whitey. With that, Potty was ready to get up, and I went to sleep outside. As soon as I did, I took Pide's hand and told him to wait a moment. He also turned his head curiously and asked me what was wrong. My voice trembled, and I said shyly, You stay tonight. By die suddenly frouncy. He didn't expect Lin Shu Yu to say something like that. He also took my hand and carried a wooden bowl. This made Frosty Cloud on the side unhappy. So she shouted at the two of them, Are you trying to keep Bai Dai down to sleep? I also noticed over, You want to be with Bai Dai first, and give birth to Bai Dai first. Right. Frost Cloud was red-faced and defiant. Bai Dai squatted down at that moment. I was at a loss for words. I didn't know how to answer this question. Bai Dai looked at me deeply and slowly. I was so happy. My heart beat faster. Frosty Cloud looked at us and then frowned, not knowing how to retort. In the end he could only turn around and walk away, and I tried to call out to him. But Dai walked over after seeing Frost Cloud's condition. It's fine. He's going back to his cave to rest. Slowly, are you sure you want to be done? Aren't you scared? I explained slowly. I'm not afraid of you. I'm just afraid of the pain. When he heard me say I was afraid of pain, he hugged me. I was bad last time. Then I pushed him away. Wait, I have this. I took out the source leaf fruit inside the cloth bag. Mu Xian told me that the source leaf fruit can ease my pain. As oh, Bai Dai smiled and shouted my name. It seemed a bit happy. In fact, you don't have to force yourself. Even if you can't, you'll always be my mate. I'll always love you. I want to be loved. As an orphan, the love I got in my life is too little. I can't feel how good Bai Dai is to me. That's why I cherish it extraordinarily. I don't want to lose it. I held his face. Whitey, do you love me? Bai Dai also responded to my words. Slowly, you are my favorite person. Then the two of them embraced and kissed each other. Back inside the room, he slowly put me on the bed. Bai Dai looked at me deeply. If you feel uncomfortable, just tell me. I will stop immediately. I shyly turned my head and gave a hum. With that, Bai Dai threw away the cloth back, taking out the source leaf fruit inside. He crushed this fruit. The juices inside all flowed out and shone brightly, and Lin Slowly's body was trembling for some reason. His body suddenly became so hot, like he was longing for something. Bai Dai's body seems to be out of place too. He's blushing slightly. I cover my face. It's too shameful. Don't dare to look at it at all. White Emperor took the source leaf fruit and helped Lin Slowly place it in the appropriate position. Afterwards, she moaned, feeling the pleasure of her body. But then I suddenly realized something was wrong. I hurriedly pushed Bai Dai away and asked him to wait. I turned my body sideways and looked at the place on my head. This familiar feeling. I went, what's with the blood? Damn it, I'm on my period. 
Whitey sobbed led to, I hurt you again, his face didn't look good, I had no choice but to explain, it's none of your business, it's my period again, it's a shame that I invited my period halfway to bed, at this time, Frosty Cloud could only bite the quilt helplessly, I also want to mate with slowly, I'm so angry, on the second day, the wind and snow were still blowing outside, and there was a small noise, Mushon then mocked me, your physique is really strange, every time, it comes at a critical time, I was embarrassed and told her not to say anything. Fortunately, the system also gives away sanitary napkins. Otherwise, I really don't know how to live. She carefully examined me. No kidding, but you look so pale. You look very uncomfortable. I don't know why. But this time, my menstrual cramps were particularly bad. At this time, the white emperor brought fruits. Slowly, this fruit can replenish blood. You eat it. Frosty Cloud clangs the door open. Long Shu, you give Ease a look at the body. Slowly you don't be afraid. It will be fine soon. Mu Shun watched the actions of the two men. Not bad. Looks like Bai Dai and Frosty Cloud both cared about slowly. You often went to the cave entrance a while ago. That place is windy and snowy. It was supposed to be strong. Now that you have your period, your body is weakening and the sickness took advantage of it. You can get well. You just have to suffer a bit. I suddenly had some ominous feeling. She then held out a bowl of medicine of unknown origin. Drink it and you'll feel better. This color and smell. I bat away in a hurry, rejecting this potion very much. But these two just shouted at me that I had to drink it. And I went straight to the ground in seconds. I lay on the bed and finally drank it. It was really too hard to drink. Frost Cloud in the bedside then said, You rest well, these days do not move. Everything has us to help you do. I looked at the man in front of me. Why do you seem to have become gentle? This, this is your illusion. Frosty Cloud blushed instantly. I found you to be annoying at times, but quite cute at others. A hand gently caresses my head. I'll go boil some hot water. Frost Cloud will stay here with you. Alone in a strange world, meeting by dying Frost Cloud. Encountering difficulties and dangers doesn't seem so scary anymore. Seven days later, my great aunt finally left. White Emperor and Frost Cloud. Let me go to the platform outside the cave to bask in the sun. In this long cold winter, this is the only piece on Rock Mountain that gets the most sunlight. It's the favorite place for the Rocky Mountain Wolf Clan females to stay in the cold winter. The sunshine is long overdue. The coldness in my body has dissipated. Thanks to the two males in your family who take care of you, so it was Makayan who came over. It's only right that the males are nervous about the females. Look, I just got pregnant and they can't wait to offer me up. I looked at her stomach with curiosity and excitement. Makayan is pregnant too. It's still flat, can't tell. So looking forward to your baby. I wonder what an oak baby would look like. Would it be a small animal? That's when a voice came. Moksha then spoke. Livy, you are not welcome here. Livy covered her stomach. I'm pregnant. It's normal to come over to bask in the sun. Right. She then turned to me and said. I heard you found a mate. Why aren't you pregnant yet? She sneered. Is there something wrong with your body that you can't conceive a child? I turned my head away not wanting to talk to her. There's something wrong with me. Seeing me ignoring her. She got annoyed. How does she ignore me? Hey, I'm talking to you. Did you hear me? She tapped me on the shoulder. I shook it off. Don't touch me. It hurts. Good chance. The way fell straight to the ground. Ouch. My stomach hurts. Why did you push me? The orcs behind me immediately whispered. And I frowned a bit. Mu Xian immediately spoke for me. Nonsense. She didn't push you at all. Li Wei then pointed at me. Then slowly is going to kill me and the baby in my belly. She couldn't give birth to a child herself. So she's going to kill someone else's child. I didn't. I tried to refute her. Li Wei seemed to have seized the opportunity. If my child is gone, I won't let you go. Then she made a move to jump up. She rushed towards me. You wild female with evil intentions. She pushed me out of the way. And I must have been unsteady. My body fell backwards. And I couldn't stand on my feet. Mok Hyun saw this and immediately shouted my name. I seemed to realize something was wrong. I actually stepped on the ground and couldn't stand on my feet. Oh no. I was on the edge of a cliff. I screamed miserably and my body fell downwards. Whitey seemed to realize something. It's ease. She seems to be in danger. And I keep falling. It seems to have some connection with Bai Dai. Frosty Cloud wanted to jump down, but was stopped by Mu Xian. Don't do anything stupid. This is a cliff. You'll be pulverized if you jump. Warning, warning. The host life is in danger. The system is activating defense procedures. Space transfer is about to take place. Space transfer successful. I've been transferred to this place by the system. It's snowing and windy. I woke up freezing. It's cold. Didn't I fall off a cliff? How come I'm in the snow? I suddenly woke up. I fell off the cliff. No injuries from the fall. I'm in one piece. I'm not hurt. The system is so powerful. 
I looked around me. What a strange place. Where is this place? That's the Rocky Mountain. The system has moved so far away to save me. It's going to take ages to walk back and it's snowing so much right now. But I have no other choice but to get out of here. I have to hurry back or White Emperor and Frost Cloud will be worried. The sun has set and the Rocky Mountains still look so far away. It would be too dangerous to leave at night. We have to find a place to land. The sun has completely set. Luckily there's a cave. We're cold and hungry. We'll rest first and go in the morning. Kindling, a sheepskin atlas, a few sweet fruits to satisfy the craving, and a bone knife. I should have put more meat in my bag. I looked outside and went to find firewood first to keep warm. Suddenly I heard a noise and stuck my head out to check. There was someone outside. The man was lying there. I came to his side through the snow. Hey, are you okay? Wake up. Looking at the man in front of me, he didn't move again. There's blood seeping out of his waist. He's injured. If left unchecked, he'd probably freeze to death alive. I tried to lift his body. I couldn't. He was too tall and heavy for me to lift. In the end, I could only drag him. I slowly dragged him towards the cave. It was still snowing heavily outside. With no sign of stopping, I built a fire. I needed to keep warm or I'd freeze to death. And this man had been brought inside by me. This man is so good looking. Is he an orc too? The way he was dressed, he didn't look like a normal orc. The fabric texture and craftsmanship, the ones worn and used by the orcs in the Rocky Mountains, are completely different. Ah, uh, he came from a place with a much higher standard of living. Not only fabrics, but gems. What kind of place would that be? Would there be a city? My eyes suddenly got a little misty and eventually fell into a deep sleep. And the man just woke up. Where was this? Where's the guy who's after me? He looked at the woman in front of him. A female. Eyes narrowed. A little alarmed. Fire. Why is there a fire here? He looked at his wound again. It was bandaged. Did this little female bandage it? It looks like it should be this little female who saved me and built a fire to keep me warm. This should be a remote area with low-level tribes on a winter's night. This little female is alone in the mountains and knows how to make a fire. So I don't know what she is from. Looking closely, she's so cute looking. Even in the temple, I've never seen such a beautiful female. I woke up just then. I was surprised by the man in front of me. Did you save me? Thank you. Don't move. Don't move. You've just bandaged your wound. It's easy to tear it if you move. This man turned round. Are you a witch doctor? No, I'm just an ordinary female. This man's eyes are so cold and scary. My name is Aang Knight. What's your name? My name is Lin Ease. You can call me Ease. Ease, what a nice name. This person's voice is so seductive when he calls me by my name. When I was bandaging him before I saw that Sang Ye's wound was so flat, it looked like he was stabbed by a sharp object. Was someone trying to hurt him? But he looked so cold. It is not good to approach and dare not ask. Winter season. All the beastmen are hiding for the winter. How could there be such a small female here? On this side of the Rocky Mountain, everyone knows the situation too. By die angrily shouted let go. I'm going to find slowly. Slowly fell from such a high place. It is impossible to live. If you go down the mountain to look for her now, you can only find a corpse. What's more, the frost cloud patriarch has already found now at the bottom of the cliff. And there is no trace of slowly at all. And Frost Cloud is looking here. He can feel the breath of slowly. Slowly told me, you are not dead. You're still alive. The next day, the snow has stopped. I was medley a bit dazed from hunger. My stomach was so hungry. The wind and snow had died down outside. So I went out to see if there was any prey. But I know you still have injuries on your body. You can't move around. He then directly ripped off his own clothes. I was stunned. Sang Yu put on his clothes and explained. My body is different from normal people's. My wounds have already healed. The wound healed itself in one night. What an awesome talent. He put on his clothes. I'm going out to hunt. You stay here and don't run around. But I want to go home. I called out to him in a hurry. The response I got was this menacing stare. The man was too cold to retort. I could only wimp out for a second. It was nothing. Finally he walked out. He's gone and won't be back anytime soon. The snow has almost stopped. Frosty Cloud and White Emperor must be very worried about me. It's better to hurry up and get on the road home. Although I want to leave a note to Sang Knight. But I don't have a pen or paper. And I don't know how to write here. We're just strangers. So it shouldn't matter. I look at this fruit. This kind of fruit should be edible. I ended up spitting it out as soon as I ate it in my mouth. It tastes so bad. I touched my stomach. I was so hungry. I miss eating barbecue with White Emperor Frosty Cloud. And then it snowed again. But I couldn't find a place to hide from the snow. I was cold and hungry. Finally I fell into the snow with a thud. A pair of feet appeared right here. 
what are you doing here? It turned out to be Sang Yeo who came over and it just looked at me. My body shivered with cold. I wanted to go home. Where is your home? I responded to him. Live over there on the rocky hill. But then he said, come back with me. He picked me up in his arms. Can you take me home? I really want to go home. Please help me. My maid is waiting for me to come back. When I first met her, I smelled the faint scent of male orcs. And they were her mates. You guys already. I said no. What's wrong with this person to ask such a thing? If you don't have it, you're not really a mate. So you better come with me obediently. No. Wait a minute. I tried to resist, but he ignored me and carried me away. The wind was blowing. The snow was blowing. He made a fire and roasted the meat. And handed me the roasted meat. Aren't you hungry? Eat up. I looked at the meat. This man wasn't afraid of fire either. Surely his tribe should be of a more advanced kind. I looked at his hand, burned and asked him, Does your hand hurt? He ate the meat and said it didn't feel anything. I looked at the meat in his hand. Eating raw meat. You don't like cooked meat. I don't like hot things. Then you just roasted the meat over a fire. He then said, Because I want to eat. This man looks cold. He's not really cold. He's just not good at expressing it. Right. I turned around and walked over. I picked up an ice cube after all that grilled meat. Some ice to refresh. But this man keeps staring at me for some reason. I turned to look at him. Why do you keep staring at me? Do you want to eat? I don't like something so cold. You don't like either hot or cold things. Is there anything else in this world that you like? What an eccentric person. He didn't answer my question either. After that I leaned against a rock to rest. But my body shivered from the cold. That's when Sonia also noticed me, being chilled by the night breeze from the cave. He then stood up and took off his own clothes. Finally his body transformed into a beast. He turned into a black boa constrictor, sitting on its back, watching me move and shiver. He continued to wriggle his body. He blocked the entrance to the cave. Then his whole body blocked the entrance to the cave, so the wind and snow couldn't blow in. Then I was relieved. I didn't feel the cold. He just watched me sleep, not knowing what he was thinking. Time came the next day. I woke up with a yawn. I slept so warmly yesterday. Then a snake appeared in front of me. I was so scared that I ran away from it. Help. He was going to roll me up. I struggled with my body. Don't eat me. Help. I heard him say, I'm not going to eat you. I then recalled that the voice sounded a bit like saying use. This giant snake has black and purple gems on its head. I looked at him hesitantly. You're saying night. He responded back to me. Sure enough in this world, it's either old tigers and wolves or snakes are. Ah. The animal I'm most afraid of in my life besides rats is snakes. Shouldn't snakes hibernate? As a result, he responded that after a beast evolves into an orc, it doesn't need to hibernate anymore. As oh, then can you change back to human form? He then asked me, do you think I'm ugly in this form? Females usually don't like pythons too much. Will the little female be like the other females? He spat out his snake letters. Real snake kisses are scarier all right. I was scared and it behind it trembling. He saw how I was behaving. The little female was trembling. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Say Knight's voice. A little sad. Is he worried that I'm sick of being afraid of him? I stood up and lightly touched his tongue. The first time I touched a snake's letter. The soft touch was quite new. It doesn't seem so scary anymore. Son you trembled with emotion. She was different from the other females. She wasn't afraid of me. I really want to keep pastoring you. So that you belong to me alone and no one can take you away. He then rolled his body. I'm going out to hunt. I don't feel comfortable with you being alone in the cave. Hold on to me. He led me outside. He kept crawling forward. I was a bit helpless. The python car was quite stable. There just happened to be a snowbank in front of us. So he stopped. What's the matter? He put me in a tree. He turned around and came to this snowdrift. With a flick of his tail, he smashed the snowbank open, and there seemed to be something inside. It turns out that there was a rabbit inside, which had been knocked out by same night. The first time I saw this method of hunting, the hibernating hare family was buried alive in their sleep, truly killing the beast without bloodshed. Then it looked towards me. Let's go back. He then took me back inside the burrow. He slowly lowered me down, and his body seemed to change a little again. It changed into human form again. I was stunned by this scene. My face was slightly red, because his body was not clothed. I covered my eyes and didn't dare to look. Why didn't you say hello before you transformed? But he said, don't you like my body? I quickly waved my head. Like it or not, you can't just spare your body in front of a female. Uh, don't you know that? He put on his clothes and said, never heard of it. I realized that this was the world of beasts. I can't get used to the spontaneity of the orcs. He got dressed too. When I touched the vines on one side, I heard a ding, triggering the third of the winter quest. Please ask the host to collect 300 plant seeds. A new quest. Mission tip. One of the ancient plants. 
and animals has a wide range of plant seeds. The house can refer to it for reference. Bird feather vine. The fruit is rich in many kinds of starch. After drying and grinding, it can be turned into a food similar to flour. Flour. Then I can eat steamed buns, noodles and dumplings. Bird's feather vine is tenacious. As long as the root is buried in the soil and plenty of sunlight and water, it can grow. It should be put away properly and planted in the spring. Just then, Soyo handed me the roasted rabbit. I took the roasted rabbit and said thank you. Looking at his hand, Sung Ye's hand was burned again. So I said to him, I'll roast it next time. I don't want your hands to get burned again. He then asked me with a smile on his face. You're relating to me. I also happily responded to him. Yeah, Sung Ye looks gloomy, but he's actually very nice. I already consider him a friend. He then braced himself and stood up, walked in front of me and approached me. Do you want to mate with me? Be my mate. I'll treat you well. I was a bit overwhelmed and quickly refused. I already have a mate. But he then immediately rebutted me. You are not really mates if you have not mated yet. How can you tell? To me, as long as you genuinely like each other, you are a true mate. Sing Yeon then asked me, you like them? Then of course I do. He squeezed my shoulder. What about me? Don't you like me? I only like you as a friend, not as a man and a woman. He was immediately cold again. I don't need friends. No, it's me who can't accept many mates, wanting to be together for a lifetime. And then suddenly there's an extra frost cloud. I still haven't digested the accident to this day. Then let us three males duel. The one who wins becomes your mate. The one who loses gives you up. Naturally I disagreed. How can a relationship be settled like this? He then glared fiercely. Don't you push me? I stepped back in some fear. Saint Knight's eyes were so scary. If you insist on refusing to accept it, I will have no choice but to swallow you so that we can be together forever. I then explained. There are many young females in the Rocky Mountains. You can pick your favorite female from them to be your mate. It doesn't have to be me. He just dismissed my words outright. No, I just want you. I like you. Are you mistaking the saving of your life? How can you like me when you've known me for less than three days? No, I like you. I like you so much that I can't help but keep you in my arms and never let you go. I've met many females, and the idea of a mate never occurred to me. Only when I saw you, I knew I had to have you. But I'm not pretty. I'm weak, and I'm not good at anything. You shouldn't have seen me. You're the most beautiful female I've ever seen. You are beautiful. I bow my head in embarrassment. It's the first time. I've been praised for my beauty in more than 20 years of my life. Then he spat out his snake letters and licked the corner of my mouth. I was shocked. I stepped back. Why does this guy always lick me? When I couldn't retreat any further, he came closer to me. Slowly, why can't you give me a chance? It's too close. Saying Knight's breath is at the end of his nose. You're a good man and deserve a better female. He then sneered. A good man? I am not. If you refuse me again, I'm afraid I won't be able to resist eating you up. I was a little overwhelmed. Sam ye, ew. He continued, let's make a deal, shall we? What deal? Take back your hand. Ten days, if you can fall in love with me within ten days. We'll be mates. If not, I'll give up voluntarily and send you home. It's a bit of a waste of time. But with Sang Yu's escort, I'm sure I'll be able to get home quite smoothly. I then immediately said yes. The corners of his mouth rose slightly. He kissed me straight away. Then he immediately dodged away again. So we have a deal. I protect my body. Without my permission, you cannot move your hands and feet on me. Not even now. He said yes. But in his heart he said, little by little, start with a kiss. Let the little female drop her guard. Outside, the wind is howling. The wind is snowing. And here at Rocky Mountain. Whitey, have you really made up your mind? I can feel that he is still alive. If she unfortunately dies, I'll die with her. He can only sigh. This is for you. This is water that you can drink to get warm all over. You take it with you. You might be able to use it. By Dai took this water back and thanked him. With that, he slid down the rope. Slowly, I feel you alive. Wait for me. I'm coming to save you. Inside the dungeon, Li Wei was still screaming for help. It's been two days, right? Since that wild female fell off the cliff. I've been left here. No one has come back to bring water or food. You can't do this to me. I'm a female, and I'm carrying a child. If anything happens to me, my tribe will never let you go. Is there anyone who brings me food and water? Just as I finished speaking, Frosty Cloud came over to me. Quickly put me out. I'm so hungry now. Frost Cloud walked towards Li Wei. Something seemed to be wrong. Frosty's eyes turned blue and he said without any emotion. I'll make you pay for the death of slowly. He asked Livy, how do you want to die? He had a very fierce look in his eyes. Li Wei wept and cried and cried out in sophistry. Lin Slowly's death has nothing to do with me. She fell off the cliff by herself. She deserved to die. But you're the one who really deserves to die. You can't kill me. It's protocol in the wolf clan. 
not to lay a hand on a female, and I'm pregnant. No female can be put to death, no matter how much she's committed. Frost Cloud smiled evilly. The rules only said that the wolf clan could not lay hands on females. But what about orcs that aren't wolves? Lee Waste wanted to call out to him. What do you want to do? Frost Cloud then ordered the others to take her out and throw her to the edge of the dense forest below the rocky mountain. It's freezing out there right now. If I step outside the wolf clan's boundaries, those wandering orcs are starving. There's no telling what y'all will do. Frost Cloud, you can't do this. She was then dragged out and thrown in the snow. Don't throw me out. They threw her straight out, and all Livy could do was scream. No, don't leave me. Livy tried to call out to them, but how could she be ignored? And all she could do was scream for help. She couldn't stand up anymore. At that moment, a wolf was suddenly heard behind him, and it was very close by. This stray ferocious wolf saw Livy, a wild female, and it looked so tasty. Livy could only yell, don't come any closer. Don't come any closer. But how could the starving wolf listen to her? At last the wolf came behind Livy, who crawled forward in fear to escape. Finally there was the continuous screaming, as the orc watched Livy's misery from above. Frost Cloud then instructed the others to come over in the morning and look around, and if there were any bones left to collect them for her. The witch doctor came and looked at Frost Cloud's appearance and tried to call out to him. Since Slow was pushed off the cliff, Frost Cloud was colder than before, if he was still alive. But that was simply impossible, right? Come the next day, it's snowing heavily. The chief is so cruel to leave Livy here like this. But Livy is also very excessive. The little female is so nice. She lost her life like that. If I were the matriarch, I wouldn't be able to stand it either. This dress is Livy's corpse. So wrap it up and bring it back. I didn't realize that the first beauty of the Blackwater River would end up with a bag of corpses. And in the dungeon, there are other people from the Blackwater tribe being held. Damn it, is the Rock tribe trying to starve us to death alive by not sending us food? Chewie threw away the wooden bowl with an irritated look on his face. Ma Ching ate the dry food in her hand. In the freezing weather, she couldn't go out to hunt. It's better to eat the dry food we brought from the Black River tribe. That's when Aki seemed to smell blood. Aki then called out to the man with a bag. Is that fresh meat in there? Do you want to trade with me? The orc even hesitated. But the clan leader didn't let me do that. And Machin seems to know something. Yatul then directly want to exchange. I give you half a pot of water to drink. He's not afraid of cold. Big pieces to share me a little. How about it? And the orc smiled. Okay, but just some bones with meat. Are you sure you want it? I'll trade for it. Give it to me. Aki just ripped the meat right off the bone. Yum, it's not a lot of meat, but it's so tender. He then picked up a piece of meat, matching you eat it too. And NM, quite tasty, such tender old meat, or a precious female, you have to savor it. And on the other side, the wind and snow, with the help of Sang Knight, I began to collect seeds from the forest. After seven days of trying to find them, I've collected 278 seeds, and I'm still 20 to short of completing the task. That's when Sun Yat turned his head to look at me, and I noticed his movement as well. Out of his mouth rode to seeds, botanical illustration, fragrant crisp fruit, not only crispy and tasty, but also has the effect of stopping bleeding and anti-inflammatory is a very rare trauma medicine. I was pleasantly surprised to hold this fruit. Crispy fruit, singing you're amazing. Seeing this fruit again reminds me that I look for its seeds. That's when I loaded the seeds and saw the same night not look quite the same. He lowered his head. Did you want me to touch his head and praise him? I stroked his head. Why are you so clingy? Not like a cold snake, but like a big dog with relatives. And Sang Knight's heart is also beautiful. Slow and is so comfortable. So like you. More and more like you. Here's a man walking in the snow. Whitey also found the place, which showed signs of animals passing by. I went back to the cave with Sonia, but I kept coughing. There are 290 seeds in total. Only the last 10 are missing to complete the system's mission. Song Yao saw me coughing all the time and asked me, Why do you keep coughing? Are you alright? I'm fine. Maybe I'm choking on the cold air. I rubbed my head. Why did my head feel a little hot? After all, it's been a long day of running outside in these temperatures. He let me sleep for a while, and he called me when he had made the food, and my body shivered slightly. Finally laid down and had to rest and recuperate. In a short while, Sang Yu's meat was ready and brought it here. I'm breathing a little fast. My head hurts. It's hard. And my body is still hot. When Sang Yu touched my head, slowly the temperature turned higher. She's sick. The snow and ice would get the ease and clothes wet. And that would be even more uncomfortable. I was colder and could cool her down. He undressed himself and placed me in his arms. And my consciousness blurred. Only feeling close on a cold body. Holding this body, I rubbed against his body, so cool and comfortable, but I was still coughing, and Sanyal looked a little worried at my condition. She had a good dry cough and needed some water, 
just grabbed an ice cube into his mouth, melting the ice into water. He's up. Don't die. I must let you live. Finally, he slowly drank the water from Sang Yeo's mouth. It seemed like my body was reacting and I woke up straight away. Then he turned behind him and kept coughing. He just took me in his arms and eased. How are you? As a result, I had no relief at all and coughed even harder. Eventually coughing up blood, slowly spitting up blood. Is she dying? It's so hard to find a female who wants to be with me all the time. I can't lose her. The lungs are burning and hurting. Is it acute pneumonia caused by a cold and fever? In this day and age without antibiotics, pneumonia can kill you? Is there any medicine for me? By the way, crispy fruit. Thinking back to before, crispy fruit, not only crispy and tasty, but also has the effect of stopping bleeding and anti-inflammatory, is a very rare trauma medicine. The two crispy fruits I picked earlier, I ate them straight away, and the pain in the lungs has subsided. It looked worriedly at how I was doing. The coughing stopped. You can talk. My eyes are misty. Chris Berry's heal. So please go find some more for me. Okay. I trust you. Wait for me here. Saying you is very worried about me. Although it was still snowing outside, he still came out to look for the... The blizzard started again in the evening, and everywhere was covered with snow, and it was impossible to find. That's right. When I was being hunted, I passed by a tribe that might have something. Then we came to the boar tribe. What are you doing? Don't come in here. I have crystal coins here. Does your boar tribe have any crispy fruits? I'll buy as many as there are. But the patriarchs were tough. We were short of food and refused to exchange food. Crispy fruits don't fill you up at all. And if you're short on food, I'll trade you hair meat as well. No, the matriarch is not backing down in the slightest. You're trying to trick me. Heck, no food change. The slowdown is at stake. And in that case, the only thing to do is to rob it. Then he took on a human form and opened his mouth wide. He swallowed the boar tribe chief straight away, and the group of piglets all stared in disbelief. Cripes, the patriarch was eaten. He killed the patriarch, killed the snake. After they reacted, saying I could only flee the place. Crunchy fruit must be in the place where the food is stored. Smelling its aroma, the boars saw where he was going, too. He went to the caves, where we store our food. As soon as I came in, I saw the crispies. Hurriedly rolled up this bag of crispy fruit and went back to save the reprieve. The boars have rushed in just in time. He's going to run. Stop him. The python's skin is too hard for us to penetrate. They didn't seem to be stupid enough to pick up a torch and use fire. Snakes are afraid of fire. Picked up the torch and threw it at Sonya's body. His body was burning with fire and it was making a loud noise. You can't burn the crispy fruit. Mulberry leaf grits her teeth and endures the fire. He immediately fled the area, and the boar behind him saw that it fled to the forest. Chase, kill him, take the torch and go after him. And he could only drag his wounded body forward. But the wounds of his body affected its speed. I can't stop. I have to go back quickly. He's up. Wait for me. You're saved. Behind them, the boars continued to chase, not giving up at all. And I'm still lying here coughing my guts out. I can't stop. It was just then that Sang Nai came back and slowed down. I brought the crispy fruits you asked for, but I just coughed twice and didn't answer what he said. And Sang Nai seemed to see what was going on as she lost consciousness. He'll just have to chew the crunchy fruit himself. Hand feed it in her mouth. He's up. You're going to have to hold on to it. It's the next day. Slowly there was no more coughing. Only light breathing. Song Yao looked at the slowdown. She wasn't coughing too much anymore. Was the crispy fruit working? And I slowly opened my eyes as the sunlight came in. I Saturday up and asked him, Did you feed me crispy nuts? Without answering me, he asked me, Are you feeling better now? I've been better. Thanks. I noticed when he turned his head. Song Yao, what's wrong? The boar orcs were coming after them. Outside their silhouettes have been sensed by the same night. Do you want to go home? He asked me that question out of the blue. It's too cold in the forest. You'll get sick again if you stay. So I asked him, well, can you come back with me? You saved me. I have to repay you. What can I do to repay this python? Who is gloomy on the outside, but gentle on the inside. Slow is starting to change his attitude towards me, unfortunately. Now is not the time. I don't need your repayment. Just get out of here. Where did these wounds come from? I saw the wounds on his body. It's from looking for the crispy fruit. Are you hurt? A small injury. He turned his head as if he didn't want to answer. After assuming human form it said, I don't need your pity. But that's not what I meant. I held this big snake. And you were so badly injured. When you went to find the crispy fruit for me. Come with me to Rocky Mountain and get your injuries healed. You go away. Go back to your mates and stay out of my face. I don't look down on you. I just don't think I'm good enough for you. You deserve a good female who is dedicated to you. He just turned around. I don't need your uninvited attention. I want to be there for you. I looked into his eyes. Zan Knight's eyes. Sincere and firm. Will you go back with me first and talk about the mate thing? 
after you've recovered from your injuries. Coupling is not a small thing, and I had to get permission from both partners as well. Slowly shaken, so happy, to bad it was at this time of year. The Boar tribe's pursuers had already followed the trail and were coming this way. It was necessary to let slowly leave first, or she would be in danger. He's injured and can't move for a while, so he asked me to go back first and bring help and food to him. I immediately agreed. Good, I'll go back and get someone to save you. You must wait for me. Sang Yu is injured and can't hunt now. We'll all end up dead in the end. He told me to wait again. He stopped me. The crystal on his forehead sparkled and he reached out to touch the. Finally went down to this crystal gem, so he wasn't born with a jewel on his forehead. He gave me the jewel. It's a sacred stone left to me by my mother. It's for you. Keep it close to you. I can sense your well-being. It's good to have this. So I can use it to contact Sonia. When I moved to the rescue, I took one look at his body and turned away. I know. Get dressed. That's right, Senyu. I'll leave all this food for you. He took the back, too. I'll walk to the entrance of the cave and wait for me. I'll be back. Take care on your journey. I'll be waiting for you. Get as far away as you can. Those boar orcs. Let me hold them off. The boars have also come to the entrance of the cave. And the snake is inside. Light the torches and burn him. And a pair of eyes suddenly appeared inside the cave door. Staring at the group of boars. Finally, the black python rushes towards the boar orcs. Another fight to the death. And I'm walking alone in this freezing cold. I ended up accidentally slipping on the ground. And it seemed to be holding me back. I slowly got up again. To hurry back. Sun Yao was still waiting for me. I move on, hoping to reach the rock tribe soon. It's getting dark, and the rocky mountains are still so far away. Almost there. Hold on a little longer. I need to slow down. It's too exhausting. But I couldn't keep up with my strength, and fell heavily to the ground again. No, I have to get up. I have to get up. I can't give up. Sonya is still waiting for me to save him. That's when a voice came. Slowly, where are you? The voice was Whitey. I looked up and shouted. I'm here. And Whitey seemed to hear my cries. Walked up to me quickly. It picked me up. As lowly. And I found you. You are indeed alive. I'm breathless trying to speak. Save someone. Save Sanyu. He picked me up and was about to leave. Don't talk yet. I'll take you back. My eyes have gone misty. And I want to call out to Whitey. To save Sanyu. Save Sonya. He's waiting for me. Back to the Rocky Mountains. Makayang was eager to step forward and found it slowly. Makayang watch out for the kid. Get the witch doctor from Long Jamp here. She has a fever. It's serious. My mouth still said, go save him. But Frost Cloud couldn't hear me. Save who? She's burning up. Mustn't stop the fever first. I'll use the medicine. Longju brought the potion and told her to drink it down first. Whitey came over worried and helped me cool down in the... I got the ice and used it to cool down for the reprieve. He's up. You'll be fine. Who's talking to me? Head spinning. After a night, the snow has stopped. The fever's finally gone down. I think we'll be fine when we wake up. Both of them also breathed a sigh of relief. Great. At that moment, a clan member came over. Clan chief. It's bad. Da Cho and Ma Ching have run away. What's going on? Ma Ching took advantage of the fact that you guys went looking for slowdown and the clan was short on manpower, and ran off with Ya Cho and a dancing male orcs. Some of the orcs that ran away were living mates that hadn't died after the mate contract. Right, if you let the tiger go, there will be a lot of trouble. Frosty Cloud has a gloomy face. I will lead my men to go after them. Make sure to kill them to silence them, before they return to the Black River tribe. To be on the safe side, I'll bring more men. I'll leave his in your care, split into to track them down. If you see Ya Cho and Ma Ching, kill them both on the spot. Don't let them go back to the Blackwater tribe alive. The clansmen all shouted yes in response. Their eyes blazing. Frost Cloud, on the other hand, immediately raised his voice to the sky, echoing his own clan to begin the action. Then they all took the form of beasts and began to chase after Ya Cho's crowd. And I had, by this time, opened my eyes. In an instant he Saturday yelled, seemingly startled, and called out Saint Knight's name. Whitey came over and hugged me, easing you've been unconscious for two days and you're finally awake. I leaned on Whitey. You're not dreaming. I'm really back on Whitey. That's right, Sen Knight. I suddenly realized the problem. Bye die. Go and save Sen Yi. He's wounded and needs to be saved. Sun Yao is a python and was badly injured trying to save me. So please go and save him. Don't worry, since it helped you, I will find him for you. As long as it's what you want to slow down, I'll do it for you. As long as you don't leave again. And Whitey hugged me. Thank you. Whitey is always so gentle, helping me and caring for me. In contrast, I'm of little use in this world, and I've caused so much trouble for everyone else. I took out this gem. This is the jewel Sang you gave me. It says that with this, I can find him. 
I'll wear it as a pendant, whitey. If you wear it, he'll believe you. But I looked at this necklace, high grade purple and black crystals. That same night's origins were not simple. Then I watched him leave. Long Ju let me rest assured. I've asked Zhou Yuan to bring someone to go down with Bai Dai. They'll take care of each other. They'll be fine. You're the matriarch's mate. Your family. That's the way it should be. And on the other side of the Rocky Mountain, there are two orcs. Here watching the hills as if they're up to something. I've come to mock Hain. You're so lucky to be found. How did you manage to be pushed off a cliff without a scratch? I awkwardly say I don't know why. I can't say I was sent by the system to a wasteland a hundred miles away. By the way, how's your baby? It looks like it's getting a lot bigger. The old witch doctor said he might not have to wait until spring for the baby to be born. Orcs seem to have a much shorter pregnancy cycle than humans. It's bound to be a healthy and cute little baby. Niu Xiong then smiled a treacherous smile. You and the Frost Cloud Clan chief should also cheer up. That's when Wang Zhu walked in, slowed down, and took his medicine. I looked at the medicine and it smelled disgusting. As if he were the same as Pan Jimian. Long Chan, which doctor's potion is always bitter. And I can't stop drinking it. A clan member ran in. Which doctor? It's bad. The Black River tribe is fighting. Outside, there were hordes of Black River tribesmen who roared uncontrollably. This Yachal is ripping off the Rock tribe's clans and come with me. Revenge. Plundering the land and food of the Rock tribe. The other clans responded with. Frosty Cloud, you didn't think, did you? We'll come back with a kill shot. I heard that the little female was actually retrieved by the tiger. Just in time, when Frost Cloud is under my control, I want him to watch me possess that little female. Hugh Frost Cloud again, and take the position of the Rock Clan's patriarch. Long Champ, which doctor, they're coming on strong. We can't stop them. The beasts of the Black River tribe have long had their eyes on the rocky mountains and nacho came to our tribe to scout the way a few of the slow runners have already been killed by them everyone was hurt badly and the wolves of the blackwater river were really trying to kill everyone how many people are on the other side what are our chances of winning frost cloud took two-thirds of the tribe's males and whitey is away right now there are only 70 or so people even females in rocky mountain and the other side has nearly 200 so we have no chance of winning it's a tiger that's been transferred from the mountain. The Black River tribe was prepared for this. Livy's deliberate provocation. The conflict between the two sides erupted. Frosty Cloud kills Livy. Ma Ching and Achu escape. Frost Cloud led the way after them. And the conspiracy was a chain of events that connected without a single gap. It seems that even orcs, who are straightforward by nature, cannot be underestimated for their intelligence. Slowly, I remember Pak Tai Dage Big Seller. Right, you take Mukayan and hide in it. The other females came over and all of them hidden after slow and moksha. Long wished the witch doctor, but it did not answer, and all went into hide. Whatever happens out there, don't come out. I looked worriedly at Long Chao, the Long Chao witch doctor. What about you guys? Long Zhu's eyes are firm, and he has a face that looks like he's going to die. Let's go and guard the door. You be killed, you'd better hide in here together. But it didn't stay. He just left. Long Zhu turned his head with a stern look in his eyes. All the cowards of the rock tribe came out. There are only heroes who die in battle in the Rockwolf clan, not cowards. Guardian of the Rockwolf clan, guard the Rocky Mountains. They're all out guarding their homes. The last wolf's tooth pendant was placed in front of me. Give this wolf's tooth chain to Frosty Cloud so he can avenge us. I cried out in a voice, long wishing the witch doctor. He's up. Frosty Cloud is counting on you. Finally the door was closed and we were all worried about them. Long champ, cover up this door. You can be seen. Then he turned his head and showed his teeth, very fiercely, revealing his wolf teeth, and the ropes on his feet were broken. Rock wolves, no cowards. Come on, you scum. Long live the world. The invaders, who rushed towards the Black River tribe must guard their homeland. The two of us snuggled together, seeming to already know their downward spiral. Mu Xian, don't make a sound. It's full of enemies out there now. We can't be discovered. Mok Hain shed tears as if she had some sense. Our mate was brutally murdered, collapsed in resistance. How could they be a match for the men of the Black River tribe? Already a large number had been killed, all of them from the Rocky Wolf Pack, and the enemy was still reaping a merciless harvest. You are not allowed to invade the Rock Wolf clan's territory. Long Zhu is the only one still fighting back. Go to hell, Long Shu. With a sneak attack behind him, Aki bites into the back of Long Zhu and hits it at the same time. Long Zhu can only be knocked away and smashed into the wall. It's you, Chelsea. Long Cham's body is shaking with pain. It's me. Didn't expect that. Chewie's very proud of himself. Oh, Thane, from now on, this is the territory of our Black River clan. The last thing he did was to send Long Zhu flying with a claw. Long Zhu had no ability to resist. Er, the old thing is finally dead. Go. Let's go find the female in hiding. 
Long champ twitches by the long winter nights. So long, but the sun always rises. Uh, our clan chief will surely lead the rock clan out of the long night. Finally, the light shot out and flew towards a place. Frosty cloud over here seemed to have sensed it and frowned in place. What's wrong, matriarch? Go back, panic in my heart. I always think something's wrong. This side of the ground is full of people from the Black River tribe, looking around for people. We'll hide here together. We can't be found. No one in the entire tribe knows about this cellar, except my mate and the witch doctor. There is food here, enough to last until the others return. I comforted everyone and told them not to worry. That's when Mika's body was shaking. What's wrong with Mika? Sticky to the touch. Is this the water breaking? Makhayan is going into premature labor. She collapsed on the floor. Silence. This is not the time to upset yourself. A voice came from above. It had been searched and no one was in the house. No way. Find that little female. Even if I have to dig up the ground, I must have her. Aki's voice. They're looking for me. There was a clunky noise from above as items continued to be broken and not found. Go look outside. I'm relieved. The footsteps are fading away, and still no exit on the ground has been found. I was relieved to hear that. By the sound of it, they were finally gone and the place was safe for now. But Makayan is already shivering in pain. He's up. It hurts. Makayan is dying. She can't hold on much longer. Only here to help her deliver the baby. Mushon, you have to bear it for a while. You bite down on this animal skin roll. No matter how hard it is, you can't scream out. Got it. Mulk a bit into the animal skin. Knowing in her heart that my mate must have died in battle, they die protecting me and the child. Moksha, push the child outward with all your might. I must have the baby. I will avenge my mates. Finally push hard enough to give birth to your own child. The first wolf cub was born, with blood still on its body. The other females watched, as Miu Xian gave birth to a young wolf cub. And they all curiously went up to look at it, hearing and the sound of coyote pups yelping. At, and so on. And one, two. Gently, what about the nine babies? They all look good. The babies are quiet with Moksha yet. I took out food. Everyone's tired. Right, there's jerky and dried fruit over here. Have some. With a well, the coyote pups peed. The coyote pups peed. Despite the current crisis, the birth of these wolf pups eased everyone's fears a bit. My head suddenly developed a dizzying sensation. The body is still too weak. I wonder how long Zhu is doing. When will Frosty Cloud be back? On the other hand, it's still snowing heavily outside. Machin noticed Frost Cloud. Frost Cloud, they turned back. Well, what now? He then instructed this henchman, you take a shortcut and go quickly to Rocky Mountain and tell Aki. The other team then said, as oh, which Dr. Ma Ching, what about us? We've got to stop Frost Cloud and go after them. We can't let them go back to Rocky Mountain. At that moment, Frost Cloud seemed to notice the voice behind him. Where are you going? It's Ma Ching. Why is he here all of a sudden? Frost Cloud immediately shouted, commanding the rest of the clan to rush over and hurry back to Rocky Mountain. And on the other side, stop them. Frosty Cloud is standing here alone, with the full moon and the sky behind him. Who dares to stop me? He shouted. The body radiates light. With that, he turned into a silver wolf and leapt up. The light following his position. Finally he landed firmly on the ground. Runes flashing beneath his feet, rushing towards the Black River wolves that were going to intercept them. They instantly let out a cry of misery. Machin immediately panicked. A one-star soul beast. Frost Cloud actually awakened a beast soul. Run, move back. They're just frouncing into stone. The frost cloud rushed towards these stones and shattered them. And they naturally died. Asa Chin looked at frost cloud's ability and miscalculated. The difference in battle power between a soul beast and an ordinary beastman was incomparably wide. All they could do was flee frantically. And the clan behind them tried to stop them. Stop chasing and go home. Ma Chin's reaction means something should really have happened to Rocky Mountain. And on by Dai's side, he is still making his way to Sanya's cave. Strange, I suddenly feel that slow is in danger. Go back to Rocky Mountain first. Then we went back to the Rocky Mountains. Frost Cloud returned with a tribal enemy. But it seemed late, and the ground was littered with corpses. They couldn't believe it. My brothers, all killed. Frost Cloud also suddenly thought at that moment, where are my mates? Our shell and the rest of them? The orcs behind him responded to him, seeing a group of orcs heading towards the north of the forest. It should be Aki and the others. That's when Whitey jumped up. Patriarch, it's Whitey coming. I've come all this way with the bodies of Rocky Orcs. Where's this? Is she all right? Yeah. Frost Cloud just remembered. There were no females among the corpses of these clansmen. So Slow must have hidden with them. If Slow is still alive, there must still be alive ones in the clan. Slow down. Lanshu, it's me. Frost Cloud, back. I must be alive. However, the carcass of a white wolf appeared before his eyes. Whitey, carrying an oversized suitcase and panting, stopped against the wall. 
and shouted angrily at the top of his lungs to slow the, the crowd turned around and exclaimed, so is the white emperor, it's our clan that's come back, it doesn't care about the safety of these people, where is my slow now? The clan reacted instantly, slowing her down below. The white emperor had finally returned, but when he picked up the little female, he realized that her body was so hot, it looked like she had a fever again. Her consciousness gradually blurred. She couldn't see the person in front of her at all. She couldn't open her eyes at all. My mind is all over the place. Am I going to die? Maybe my eyes are opening to realize it was all a dream. Suddenly someone called to me softly and that urgent voice was very familiar. That male appeared to himself. Didn't you say you were coming back? Why didn't you come back? Who the hell is this guy? It's like a mess in my head. Three days later inside the Rocky Mountain, it was already light outside. Her companion came in, and in a panic inquired whether Whitey was in the... Sure enough, Whitey didn't leave at all, slowly never woke up. How's your baby? She lifted the outer robe to reveal the little cups. Quite nice, just quite rowdy. She wasn't caring about her little baby. It had been three days. Why hadn't slow woken up yet? One slow and one frosty cloud. This rocky mountain is simply sad and foggy. The old witch doctor went to the other side, leaving behind only a sense of tattered remains. Frosty Cloud has been very busy these past few days with tribal matters. He hadn't had much rest for three whole days and he seemed afraid to stop for fear that if it did he would break down. He disposed of the remaining bodies of the tribe and performed the rituals for those of his own kind. Frost Cloud's eyes were no longer childish and contained many complex emotions within his look. At this point, she was still constantly feeling sad and she didn't expect Frosty Cloud to come to the scene, only to see him looking at the crowd all tired and slowly waking up. By Dai picked up the bowl of medicine in his hand. She had been unconscious and had not woken up since her fever had gone down. She doesn't eat when she's in a coma, but we can't let her stay hungry, so the source leaf fruit should do the trick. Frost Cloud, on the other hand, was incredibly worried that she would stay asleep, just like Longchamp and Father. Apparently Whitey didn't agree with him that slowly would definitely wake up. He took the woman's small hand and held it like a treasure in the palm of his hand. Ease up and wake up. Longchamp which doctor is dead. The rock wolves are suffering. I mean pain. I wish you were awake to talk to you about my pain. Slowly, in her sleep, she suddenly heard, as if it were the voices of Frosty Cloud and White Emperor. They were waiting anxiously where they were, expecting the little female in the bed to awaken quickly. Unexpectedly, there was another voice, with which she expressed complete unfamiliarity. He suddenly transformed into his own body and charged at her, leaving her frouncing and unable to avoid it. Slowly, as if startled, he roused himself violently from his sleep. The first thing he saw was Wai, looking himself up and down with concerned eyes. He tried to hide the fear inside him and took the woman into his arms at the first opportunity, but Slow seems to have forgotten something. Their home is completely out of mind. She furrowed her pretty eyebrows slightly. I seem to have forgotten a lot of things. Tactai's eyes are shocked. So do you remember me? The little female feigned innocence and looked him up and down without haste. Then it came out violently. You're my fool whitey, but you're really stupid. You're my mate. We have a contractual induction. He was secretly relieved, joking at a time like this. I'm really scared to death. A good time of laughter is always interrupted by something. Just like now, Frosty Cloud rushed in in a hurry. Slow down, you're really awake. He didn't care about the little female's injured body or if she was very uncomfortable, only to see him excitedly picking up slowly, his expression about to overflow with love. If you don't wake up, Frosty Cloud stammers and dares not threaten. But the woman pouted. What will you do if I don't wake up? I didn't realize that the male was actually mouthing off and excitedly lifted her up to indicate that he wanted to do the exercise. Sure enough, he was mercilessly thrown out by Whitey. After all, he was in first place. Everything seems to have returned to tranquility, and everyone is trying to forget the dead. The pain of losing a lover and staying strong in this world, they continue to live on for the dead. In their place, slowly looking at the tablecloth of seeds. When did he collect so many? I always feel like I'm forgetting something important in my memory. A voice suddenly rang out. Slowly when you find rescue, come back to me. Who the hell is this person that keeps circling around in one's mind? She couldn't control the slight tremor as a hand gradually reached for her. Slowly frowsy, his body scuffed and fell backwards. It turned out to be the white emperor's big hand, gently soothing himself. If you can't figure it out, don't think about it or your brain will crack. The white emperor, however, was impressed by this and after a slow fever had passed, seemed to forget the owner of this jewel. But that's good. The owner of this thing should be a trouble. It's better not to get involved. Slowly holding the warm little bowl, it was a good thing the pot hadn't been snatched away. 
where there wouldn't have been any good gravy. Although they don't know what it is, Frosty Cloud is going down the mountain tomorrow. He held his football with a serious look on his face. The tribe didn't have enough food. The Rocky Mountains were ransacked for food. Now the tribe is a mess. It can't feed over to hundred orcs. But now that the snow has closed the mountains, it's impossible to find that much gray. I didn't realize that Frosty Cloud wasn't going to hunt the prey, but to snatch back everything that belonged to him. The Blackwater tribe is too numerous for us to fight. He said not only for food, but also to seek revenge on them. These people must not be spared. Dr. Longchamp and everyone else did die for this. We can't let them die for no reason. Slowly, he suddenly remembered something and hastily pulled something out of his body. She held up the necklace and handed it over. The old witch doctor asked me to pass it on to you. Frosty Cloud burst into tears. This was Longju's wolf tooth necklace. He gritted his teeth and scuffed to his feet, not caring about the little female who cared for him. Whitey said to tell her to relax, that it would be good for him to be alone now, outside the cavern. The wind is howling, and the branches of the trees are thick with snow. He couldn't get the pain inside him to go away, but it was amazing that the little female had found herself. Slowly, his eyes are a little worried. Longju witch doctor definitely does not want you to be said like this. He said to look at the clan again. We will forborn here, and we will be buried here. All those dead mates will always be watching over us. He's up. You want to hear a story? Me and the long champ witch doctor. They were sitting on a high rock, and Frost Cloud's memories were becoming clear. My father died a long time ago. The rest of my females only know how to enjoy themselves and completely ignore me. I'm on my own. When I was very young, I had to learn to hunt to feed myself and ended up getting bitten on the leg. When I was brought back, the female didn't care about me. She was still having fun. Without food, my wounds festered day by day, and I felt like I was going to die soon. But a figure appeared, like a father. The long chew which doctor carefully held up his. He heard I was abandoned, so he traveled a long way to find me. He healed my wounds, gave me food, taught me how to hunt. Dr. Longchuk was like a teacher and a father to me. My life turned around because of him, and he would compliment me from time to time to boost my confidence. I wouldn't be where I am now without him. He's the most respected man in the world. I've thought about the future. Even if he's too old to walk, I'll still take care of him. I didn't think he'd die in the end. If I come back sooner, Longchamp and everyone else might not have died. Slowly, sadness welled up, and Frost Cloud felt really bad in his heart. But which Dr. Longchamp's greatest wish is that you take the Rock Wolves and live on? Frosty Cloud shed tears of grief. I never thought he would leave so quickly. Why couldn't he have slowed down a little? Why didn't he wait for me? Slowly, a joke came over him, and Frost Cloud actually cried in frustration. I'm sure Dr. Longchamp will be pleased that you're a good chief now. Ancestral spirits of the Rock Wolf Clan, please bless us, the Rock Clan, and keep us going through this difficult time. They quickly recovered as they were, and were not frustrated by these things. The Blackwater tribe outnumbers us three to one, so it's hard to deal with. But they're not united, and with a little division, they can be made to kill each other. I didn't want to get involved in the Wolf Clan's affairs, but the Blackwater tribe almost took solely captive. They consist of 14 tribes of different sizes, the most powerful being the wolf and wild horse tribes, respectively. There's been constant friction between the two clans, and they're on a collision course. Slowly, on the other hand, was unable to spit. One eats meat and the other eats grass. It would be strange if the relationship would be good. A down scene or so while best fawns were stolen, and a vicious fight broke out between the two sides over it. If you can unite the Mustangs, you have a chance to defeat the Blackwater Wolves. That's a good idea. The question is how to get the Mustangs to agree to join forces. There are no eternal enemies in this world, only eternal interests. Whitey took out the crystal pendant and showed this to the Wild Horse Clan's patriarch. Slowly, he looked at the pendant, but it felt unusually familiar. High-grade black crystals are only found in the upper-class beast cities. How did you get the precious crystals? He, on the other hand, acted blaze and the painting was brought in slowly why can't i remember i seem to have forgotten some memories but my instincts tell me that this black gemstone pendant is important and i can't throw it away whitey stroked her hair at this point and would return the pendant to you after use you tell the chief of the wild horse clan that the blackwater wolves have taken the black crystal and i'll believe that you know how to do it slowly expressed his lack of understanding. We didn't have any black crystals taken at all. That's the problem with the Blackwater Wolves. They snatched the black crystals. What's it got to do with us if we can't find them? Does Whitey belong to the white cut black? That's a great technique for throwing dirt. Frost Cloud waved his fist at this point, expressing his great approval of Whitey's plan. So at first light, 
Frost Cloud led them into the Mustang Tribe. The perimeter of the tribe is heavily guarded. We have to do something. He walked up to the entrance of the Mustang Tribe, and this horseman actually showed disdain for him. The next gym he pulled out really got the Mustangs a little excited. And then, as if they were plying something, one with a grin on his face and the other with anticipation in his heart. The wildebeest fantasized about the wealth of their tribe, which would be untold amounts of gold and silver. Then the wildebeests were instantly impressed and high five frost cloud of the rock tribe. He quickly went back to his tribe, a completely different land from the wildebeests. Frosty Cloud says he successfully teamed up with Wild Horse and slowed down thanks for the black crystals. She thinks it's her own and it's not. Confused and totally confused. Instead, he thoughtfully put it out for him. And since it was something important, it must not be lost again. Slowly lowering his head to touch the gem. How on earth did this pendant get to be so precious? At this time, a voice suddenly appeared. Congratulations to the host for triggering this special mission. Please collect five different colored crystals to receive a special reward upon completion of the mission. I can't believe this system is still in place. I almost forgot about it. Are crystals like that? Special rewards for special tasks sounds awesome. But isn't that hard to get? This crystal is a special stone that can draw energy from it to strengthen the beast's soul. She dropped her head in defeat. I want to get five different colors together. Wouldn't that be hard and difficult? Unreliable Frosty Cloud took out the bag. What do you want the crystals for? If you want this, take it. Slowly and hastily unwrapped. I did not expect it to be crystals. She wanted to consult the system. Were these considered one of the crystals? These colorless crystals are called crystals. Colored crystals are rare. When she used to go to the market with my dye, he bought things with crystal coins. So the little female took out a crystal and said she wanted one and that was enough. But males give their property to females when they find a mate. Is it too little? When spring comes, I'll hum more and exchange them all for crystals. Why don't you want it? Are you looking down on me? A hand was then thrown into her receptive hand, and she was viciously forced to put it away. I'm going to make a lot of crystals to impress my females. The wind is howling outside, but it's not snowing. Here's what I'm storing. Everyone takes some. My cellar is huge and I have a lot of storage. The orc's eyes were grateful, slowly thanking you, not only for protecting my female, but also for sharing the food with us. There's still hope as long as we're all alive. Let's not let the dead down. The gloom from the clan's deaths is gradually lifting, and everyone's spirits are better. Her heart overflowed with emotion. But what were those down there? What's with all the kernels? I think I'll have to think about it. Turns out I dug it out of the sweet fruit when I was making jam before. It's quite a lot. Hundreds of them. At that moment, in front of her, a long-eared yellow-haired child actually appeared. This kid's brain. Is it the system he's bound to? Please don't waste your time with these irrelevant topics. This kind of cold face avatar is just like having no face at all. A seed drifted down with it, and slowly and immediately reached out to catch it. What kind of seed is this? It's got a hint of flavor. The system describes it as a divine wood seed, but it's not even in her catalog. The divine wood belongs to the divine plants, and the illustrated book the host now possesses only has records of low-grade plants and animals, which means that to find out what this is, I'll have to get my hands on a few other illustrations of flora and fauna. If you have all seven books, can you summon the dragon? The little indifferent face finally had an expression. The divine dragon didn't belong to this realm and couldn't be summoned. Slowly snorted a laugh. A joke you even took it seriously. This seed can't be buried in the soil. It's just a forced seed. It can only be eaten directly. She doesn't recognize the reward at all. I've gone to a lot of trouble to complete the task, and you're giving away a dead seed. The little cold face system was instantly silent and closed his eyes tightly without further explanation. Aren't all the systems in novels great? Why does mine look like a defective item? The system of being called a defective product is very, very angry. If you don't eat it, I'll take it back. Being beads of sweat slowly appeared. Forget it. I can't beat you. I'll eat it. But before I could chew it myself, it went down my throat and disappeared. It seemed to have a spirit. Only then did the system explain that the divine wood is the source of all trees and can increase your affinity for nature. Immediately after that, it was quickly shut down. The host's authority is not enough, so I can only explain so much at the moment. This system, this, I don't know what that one doesn't say. It can't be intentional. It looks like these seeds will be ready to plant when the spring starts. This beast world is bare now, but with seeds and sunlight, there is hope. She had just thought of sunlight when the setting sun in the cave spread. When the time comes, I'll start the orc world. Advanced farming mode. A few days later, in the morning, inside the cave where Slow resides, 
Frost Cloud led the male beast down the mountain, their gazes all showing determination. After all, they're going to war and revenge. As long as there's a war, there's bound to be casualties. Why he and the other orcs stay behind to protect the females and cubs of the tribe. I hope Frosty Cloud isn't hurt and everyone comes back safely. But as soon as she went to sleep, she would think of Frosty Cloud who went out to fight and worry about him. In the dream, Frosty Cloud was in great pain and sprawled on the snow in silence. Fearing that something might have happened, she rushed quickly and eagerly over to the unexpectedly behind her. The evil orc appeared behind him and slowly swung his arm up. He seemed to be worried about Slow's well-being and did not dodge away from the attack behind him. Ease, who witnessed the whole thing, broke down in sigh and shouted, Don't hurt Frosty Cloud. Only her eyes snapped open, but she couldn't calm her emotions. It's a horrible nightmare, but it's so real. Frostbite won't have an accident. When I was at Frost Cloud's hopeful union, if I had promised him then and had his child, even if something happens to him, we can still leave a little bloodline for him. At this time, the White Emperor suddenly appeared. Gently pushed open the door of the room. Slowly, what happened to you? She began to tremble all over. I dreamt that Frosty Cloud was killed. I was so scared. Whitey had to move forward to reassure that it was just a nightmare and that Frost Cloud would return safely. You won't leave me, will you? None of you will leave me, will you? He wrapped his arms around the sad female. Of course we will never leave you. For the first time, I understood that both Whitey and Frost Cloud were my family. They're the closest thing I have in the world. I can't live without them. This time I wouldn't hesitate. And then I took the initiative to kiss Whitey on the lips. In my last life, I lived alone, with no one to love or care for me. It's been hard to meet the people in my life who truly love me. If just the bonding alone could keep them from ever leaving. Then I said I was more than willing, so I offered to take Whitey by the shoulders, even though he has an anomaly. Now is not the time to. But Guy had to suppress the restlessness in his body, shaking her slightly to ease her awake. Slowly stated that I was awake and I knew what I was doing. You don't usually do this. Did the nightmare provoke you? The little female, having been gassed, dropped her head slightly to drop little teardrops. I don't want you to give me your first time on impulse. I'm afraid you'll regret it in the future. Slowly and hastily said that he had no regrets and that he had thought it through clearly enough. I can't do anything when you're in danger. I'm really useless. Whitey, on the other hand, says you can do whatever you want as long as you don't cry. She was sad and shedding tears, her voice breaking. So will you be with me? It seems she's so worried about losing Frosty Cloud and I. What was her life like in the past? Whitey sighed slightly, slowly insecure. Of course I'm willing to do that. You're my treasure. I don't want you any more than I have to. The woman looked up immediately at the words, with pathetic teardrops still hanging from the corners of her eyes. But by Dai suddenly came forward and kissed the corner of her soft lips again. Slowly a tear streaked across his face, and then he began to initiate a response. But he suddenly opened his eyes. He heard her last time. Be careful this time. So he pulled out the fruit and clenched it tightly in his big hand. Only the juices flowed out in a smooth stream. But it didn't take his eyes off the little female. Slowly in a piece of charming species awake. So it is the source leaf fruit. He did everything in his hand, and quickly bent down and leaned over and lightly wrapped his arms around the woman. She was ready to take off the clothes on her body slowly by herself. There was not a ripple in her expression, as if what was about to happen had nothing to do with her at all. By Dai tried his best to hold back the agitation in his body, wanting to confirm things again this time. Only her expression was not dark, and the bean-sized teardrops filled her eyes. It turns out that Whitey is desperately enduring, and is really worthy of his trust. Slowly and immediately responded and comforted with a soft voice. I'm fine, Whitey. I have only one wish, and that is that the one I love, never leave me. Why he felt the woman's touch, and the agitation in his body visibly increased. After waiting for a response, the male, indicating that he was finally not holding back, eagerly kissed him. Their tongues continued to intertwine, full of love that had found an outlet. It's cold and windy outside again, but inside it's warm. Slowly and involuntarily, she wrapped her arms around him, and a coquettish voice kept coming out of her mouth. There was a blush on the white emperor's face, and his eyes gazed at his treasures, but on his pectoral muscles, there was actually a strange glow. There's a glow on Whitey's body. Is it just me? But the only males that responded to her at the moment were a succession of male outbursts. At this time, the light of day slowly did not get up. Once again, she marveled at by Dai's physical prowess. She herself was about to be exhausted. Only a hard roll over showed she didn't even have the strength to move. She is still in her big warm bed, but someone's in her room. It turned out to be his own mate, Whitey. So it's a good thing he wasn't letting outsiders see him. But it's so humiliating. I don't know how to face him at all. The fact that Bai T actually wanted to wipe herself down 
simply made her even more shy and uncomfortable. She sat her day up in a panic, not realizing how fragile her body was. I moved to much yesterday, and now I can't stand the pain in my back. My Dai smiled gently. It's better for me to help you wipe. I won't do anything. The slow expression of refusal was unusually shameful. It was now the most lucid time of the day. This tiger is getting serious. Of course I'll do all the scrubbing and relaxing for you. Slowly and gradually accepting the offer, he stooped a little and began to wait for the... The white emperor's palm was really big, generous and warm. Touching himself was really comfortable. The white tiger, on the other hand, looked at her shyly. Slowly your skin is so soft and fair. The emergence of this topic has caused sudden alertness in back pain ladies. Followed by a quick dodge to show that he was much better and fine. She dashed to the door and then poked her little head out. I'm going to look for Mukyong. Walking out the door slowly and secretly. Feeling like I'm going to be eaten by a tiger at any moment. But Whitey is now. Truly, my mate. This is real family. Isn't it? Only Maka's face came close. Sniffing around rapidly. She is sure and certain that you smell like Whitey. But Maka's voice was simply too loud. And she had to quickly block it out. Mok Hyun said it's normal to be shy. But you look very moist. That tighter served you well. Slowly sniffing even more shyly. Her tiny face became incomparably red. As soon as she picked up her cute little cub. She said she didn't want to talk to the old driver. But when Frost Cloud comes back and finds out you were eaten first. He'll probably explode. Slowly sniffing was shocked. Frosty Cloud couldn't be that serious. But Frosty Cloud is so tongue-in-cheek and looks like he doesn't care. He's probably going to come back and chip a big hole in the wall. The males fought each other so much. They became family. Mushian suddenly recalled that the ones in my house were also previously. You must live a good life. Don't be like me. You only know how to cherish it after you've lost it. Makian's mates, almost all of them died in the previous great battle. Makian, you still have the babies. Your mate still has nine dollars. He'll be there for you. The female grits her teeth and dares not shed a tear. After all, she is the powerful mother of the... At this time, a voice rang out violently. Slowly blue butterfly seems to be giving birth. You should go and take a look quickly. Slowly, like an old mother, she moved to wherever she needed to. Blue butterfly lay on the bed in pain. Her mouth constantly chanting it hurts so much. Why do you have to call me when you're giving birth? I'm not an obstetrician. Why isn't the midwife here yet? It's a big deal. Go and boil some hot water. Blue butterfly may need it later. Slowly and awkwardly. I stood still. I'm not an obstetrician. I've never even had a baby. Makhain reminded her at this point that blue butterfly trusts you very much. And she can only feel it is if you're here. She said she'd go to the white emperor and boil a pot of hot water and bring over a source of leafy fruits. Makhain wrapped her arms around her own child, and turned hastily to indicate that she was now going to. At that moment her small hand was grabbed, causing her to look back instantly. Slowly you not only protected us, but you also saved the mock shock ups. Surely you can protect us too. It seems that Blue Butterfly is now very weak, but also needs to be soothed in her heart. Blue Butterfly gets the woman's affirmation and weakly states that she believes her. That's when Mok Hyen arrived on the scene with his men to help deliver the baby. Whitey was indeed a reliable male, rushing over with hot water in his hand. But the cubs are a bit big, so it's difficult to give birth to them, and the source leaf fruit can increase your stamina. On the other side of the Blue Butterfly's husbands are in a happy and worried moment. Blue Butterfly, who was about to turn into a mother, then clenched her teeth fiercely and pressed hard. The midwife suddenly exclaimed, It's born, it's born, it's born, it's born. These little babies are simply adorable, each sleeping nicely on their side. Maksha hurriedly ran to check, not realizing that there was another female. Blue Butterfly's husbands and the crowd outside the door exclaimed what great news. As a mother, Blue Butterfly was the first to let his hug her baby. She picked up the cub obediently, and the coyote was actually affectionate towards herself. But they're really small and soft, like a little ball of dough. Life is really amazing. Will I get pregnant and give birth to a child too? In this world to give birth to my child with Y. Slowly and lazily stretched out her waist, really tired, accompanied by a pregnant woman in labor is also a physical job, by Dai is very considerate to stick to her, see you so tired, I help you massage it, he carefully massaged her, the white emperor's hands are really big, thick and hot, she hadn't had time to feel it in detail, when suddenly her face blushed with shame, 
what is this guy by Dai's hand doing, causing her to constantly wail inwardly, slowly turning back with a shy face. Her tone was delicate as she tried to stop it. Obviously the man expressed dissatisfaction with this. The big hand along the trend, all the way down. Is this place is sour? I help you press a little bit. The woman's body immediately a burst of tingling. The voice of the delicate anger against the man. You obviously are ill-intentioned. His body has long been a little restless. So tightly pressed against the woman's body. My slow really cute. This guy's body is hot. The purpose is too obvious. She seemed to sense something and warned the man in a slightly compromising manner. Can you be a little faster this time? By Dai instantly threw her onto the bed. How can a man be said to be fast? Then you will have to cry later on. So the two people's hands clasped each other tightly, spread all over the room of charming, although she has already experienced once. This time or the mind is still confused to swelling. Slowly I was thinking that if we had children, they would be the most adorable. Ours would be more adorable than any of theirs. Whitey was like a storm that swept me in. It's true that a man's mouth deceives ghosts. Be meant to. He secretly poked and lifted the quilt. Slowly you see you see ah. Uh, the woman shyly rubbed backward. I do not want to see it to get together shameless. But he just wanted to see the star pattern on the waist. She immediately angry accusations. Who asked you to say this position is so embarrassing? What happened to your star pattern? The tiger tattoo has an extra ring of thorns on his head. Like putting a crown of thorns on the tiger. But it's quite pretty. How did this circle of vines appear? It appeared the same night we were together and the animal soul in me showed signs of upgrading. She has big innocent eyes. Is it a coincidence that you're about to upgrade? I paid attention last night and found that when we were together, the beast soul inside me would become particularly excited. Afterwards, I communicated with the beast soul and learned that there is something in your body that emits strange energy. There's such a magical thing in my body. It has a faint scent of grass and wood. I'm a bit surprised. The smell of grass and wood is the seeds of the divine wood I ate. Divine wood that's a legendary divine object. After growing up it can condense the heart of nature. The beastman who gets the heart of nature. If you can obtain the favor of the gods, you can be promoted to become a dinner god. It sounds very powerful. At that time, the system also mentioned that the divine wood was the source of all trees and could increase the affinity for nature. She immediately began to ponder what exactly the connection was between these things. I die suddenly looked at her. Can you tell me how you got the divine wood seed? She hurriedly avoided this line of sight and stammered that it was given to her by someone else. An old friend you don't know? But inside she couldn't explain it. After all, no one would believe in such things as systems and traveling across the world. It's okay if you don't want to talk about it, but you have to remember that you must never let anyone know about it, or else you'll be in danger of death. That seed is actually so important, and I misunderstood the little system to perfume me. The heart of nature is extremely tempting to the beastmen. They will do anything for the divine wood seed. Slowly nodded with a grave face, indicating that he remembers it very clearly. Then can we tell Frost Cloud about this matter, or should we wait for him to discover it of his own accord? before explaining it clearly to him. If together it will make the star pattern change, this kind of thing will also happen sooner or later. That the divine wood seed in my body is a dead seed. It can't germinate and grow. It's impossible to condense the heart of nature. I'm not a criminal, but I have a bigger problem. Right. So she flew to Mushian's house to seek her help in finding birth control pills. It's hard to accept by Dai and Frosty Cloud, but it's still too early to procreate. Mushon said that she had never heard of it. Of course the more you can give birth, the better. I'm still looking forward to you giving birth to little children, being hit hard by the words. Slowly, her face was blushing but there was nothing she could do about it. The orcs here have no concept of contraception. In this world, Having a child means the future of the tribe. But in this world of crisis, it's really dangerous to get pregnant and have a baby now. She walked in the ice and snow. Her back looked incredibly lonely. She suddenly thought of something and opened her mouth to test if the system existed. The system was really powerful, instantly flashing in front of her. Do you have something to do? I have a serious matter. I want to ask the system for your help. Her eyes immediately lit up. There is really a chance. Do you have any birth control pills off? The small system's dead fish eyes immediately whitened and looked at its owner with a shocked expression, only to see it turned into a mess of code, gradually disappeared in front of her eyes. System that guy cannot call out, or look at the atlas, there is no information in it. There are a lot of types recorded in the book. I didn't expect to really find it by myself. Wu Jin flower can inhibit the hormones in the body, squeezing the juice and applying it to the body. 
will have an inhibiting effect on females. Slowly and carefully note down. It seems that this Wu Jin flower may be able to. Mu Shong at this time came to me. You want to go to look for ingredients. It is just that the clan will also go tomorrow. Winter is coming to an end. They are going to find some animals that are still hibernating to eat. The sun soon set, leaving only the industrious creatures. Whitey's face is full of disapproval. What do you want to go hunting together? I want to find some plants and fruits. Can you take me with you, Whitey? He said of course he could, but the cold winter hasn't passed yet. Don't leave his side then. She happily came forward and rubbed his chin affectionately, but she has not been happy for long. The man thought of warming the quill for her. The tiger is too dangerous. She must stay away from him. The wind was howling outside, but it was warm inside the cave. She had long been in dreamland, dreaming of a male voice. It's too dangerous here you go first. You can't even remember me, but you still want to say Save me. Don't you know I've been waiting for you, you big liar? She woke up violently from her sleep. How could this dream be so real? What a horrible nightmare. She felt that voice was cold, that she thought she had heard it somewhere before, but she couldn't remember at all. Who was he? It was as if she was stuck in a deep memory. The sun rose as usual, and the beasts hunted as usual. The beasts were walking on the rocks, and the noise in the distance was a jolt. The white emperor was in his true form, carrying his beloved woman on his back. Some of the small beasts transformed into their own bodies, while others continued to use their human forms to look for prey. Slowly, he also searched for the Wu Jen flower among the herbs, which he must need urgently. Indeed, he found it. The plant was the Wurut flower. The plant was in perfect condition and was swaying around with the wind. She hurriedly picked one and rushed forward. Her little arm swung in the direction of the white emperor, but she suddenly frowned see for a moment. He probably knew what this herb was for, so it wasn't because of this. She hurriedly reached out and pointed forward, trying to get by Dai to turn around and look over. He instantly turned to look, now realizing that the orcs behind him were stunned. A group of figures had clearly appeared in the distance and were walking in their direction. The beast began to exclaim that it was actually Matriarch Frost Cloud who had returned, and with a lot of prey. Although Frost Cloud and the others were injured, everyone came back safely. Moreover, they brought back a lot of supplies. It seems that Bai Dai's suggestion was useful. Frost Cloud and the clan behind him were very excited and told everyone that we had won. These are the animal skins that the Black River Wolf clan took from our rock mountain. The beastmen immediately rushed forward, chattering and examining these treasures. Frosty Cloud explained to everyone that these were looted from the Black River Wolf tribe, so everyone could share them equally. We thoroughly learned about the Blackwater Wolf tribe, but unfortunately, we let Machine escape. Frosty Cloud was still introducing it to the crowd, as a way to build up his momentum, when a delicate voice rang out. It turned out to be his precious little female, slowly was excitedly rushing towards himself, only to see her jumping and pouncing on the man. Really unparalleled joy. Frost Cloud, you're finally back. They hugged each other tightly. Frost Cloud greedily drank in the female's flavor, but his eyes widened instantly, easing the smell from his body. He quickly pushed the female out, forcing her to look straight at him. Have you been with the White Emperor? Slowly hung her head at a loss, completely at a loss as to how to explain herself. Frosty Cloud rubbed up against him. You bastard, how dare you take advantage of me not being at home to secretly dominate slowly. By Dai, who was misunderstood as a bastard, looked at him very plainly, to which he didn't explain anything either. How dare you take advantage of my absence to secretly dominate the slowly. By Dai explained that she was his mate, and that it was only natural for them to be together. Frosty Cloud didn't listen to his nonsense. Slowly is not yours alone. Don't we have to compete fairly? He dodged to avoid the attack look, I am in love with slowly. Frosty Cloud, who has always been a man of few words, suddenly became anxious and angrily scolded him for farting. Slowly precious first time, but was stolen by a dead tiger. I must kill him. The more he thought about it, the more unconvinced he became, so the energy around him suddenly changed and quickly transformed into his own body. The White Emperor could see that he was indeed very serious. His eyes stared directly at him with a cold stare, only to see a whoa and a roar roar. The two males actually no one lost, but their baby, the slowly, suddenly stepped in front of Bai Dai and shouted at Frosty Cloud to stop. Frosty Cloud told her to hurry up and leave. He had to teach this bastard a lesson himself. Her next words directly broke the existing situation. It was she who voluntarily gave it to Bai Dai. Frost Cloud I show sadness within. Why do you always protect him? Is it in your heart only him? She immediately said certainly not. But that is not guilty of fighting for her. Frost Cloud aggravation out of small teardrops. You like you only like him do not like me. Then he left sadly, not caring about the cold-blooded female behind him. Bai Dai suddenly pressed her shoulder. Slow down or don't chase after him first. You will be very tired. 
Frosty Cloud's character is indeed impatient. Let's wait until he calms down and talk to each other. Facing the mates in this world, she really still had a hard time adapting to it. At that moment, a will came from behind them, causing them to turn and look over despite their sadness. The orc was calming his wife. Don't cry. I came back alive. We are famous from now on. But his wife was not happy. The old witch doctor was gone. What about your wounds? Slowly discarded the feelings inside. Slowly walked to them. I can look at it. There are scratches on the chest. The untreated wounds are still bleeding and inflamed. It seems that the wounds are infected. Slowly you helped Mushian and Blue Butterfly. Can you save my husband? Inside the huge rocky mountain. It has been covered with heavy white snow. These battle damaged orcs are lying inside the cave moaning helplessly as if they're going to die in the next second. The wounds of many people are quite deep. But Lan Shu is no longer. A slow voice came from behind him. Put him down on the hide. The little female wants to find wine and crispy fruit. But he is jealous and does not want to give. Anyway, only the white emperor is good to you. Slowly even in her kind heart. She was angry enough by this guy. So she shouted at Frosty Cloud. I want crispy fruits and wine to save my life. Are you going to give them to me or not? He immediately succumbed to the female's power and urged his little brother behind him to go and get them. He was really a good fighter. He got it back in just a few minutes. Slowly had to assign him again. You guys help hold him down. I need to treat the wound. The orc's little brother exclaimed. Little female, do you know medicine? In modern times, I am only an ordinary person. In this time and space, should be more useful than the average orc. The orcs don't care if it's true or not. They quickly followed her instructions and carried him to the animal skin. The wound was first cleaned with wine. The orcs on the ground had already wailed in pain. After the wound was cleaned, the crushed crispy fruit was applied to the wound. She casually skimmed off the sweat on her face. The wounds were sterilized, and the anti-inflammatory bandage with the crunchy fruits would be enough. Luckily, the cold weather didn't make the infection serious, but the orc said he was super sore. She once again instructed the orcs to get a few people to moisten their skins with wine and rub it on the skin of the patients every once in a while. She also gave them more red berries to eat. It can benefit the chi and blood. It's good for the injured. It seems that he really knows how to heal. We are all saved. She immediately raised her arm forward. Let's bandage the wounded together until the sun set again and it became dark outside the cave. She stood up panting. After all, after bandaging so many wounded, it's almost time for me to go back. She hadn't gone out of the cave when a bee stood in front of her, blocking her way. It turned out to be her mate Frosty Cloud, staring at her with a haughty and stubborn look. Suddenly, he squatted down to show that he was going to carry her home on his back. Frosty Cloud seemed to see that she was late and shouted with some annoyance. Nonsense let you come up then come up. Slowly has long been exhausted. He is really a mouthy guy. She quickly climbed onto the man's back. Physically and mentally exhausted, she did not want to move at all. They had nothing to say all the way, but Frosty Cloud was very sweet and took her home very smoothly. He walked along the winding stone wall as if it was as easy as walking on flat ground. Slowly staring into his ear, a bad thought was born. She quietly puckered her mouth and kissed his ear sweetly. Frosty Cloud instantly blushed and turned his head back. What are you doing not allowed to just seduce me? But the female on top of him shifted her body and hugged him tightly. His weak colored skin was red, and the little female on his back softly nibbled on his ear. Luckily you came back safely. I had a nightmare that something had happened to you guys. The follow-up she didn't even dare to think about it anymore. Slowly body shivering. She is sad and worrying about me. But how can I die? And then let you and by die forever together. Do not think about it. Simply impossible. All Although Frosty Cloud's mouth is indebted and his personality is not pleasant, but it's great that he can't come back. With the two of them with us, we'll have something to hold on to in this world, and the fear in our hearts will disappear. Inside the cave, a delicious barbecue was turned on, and the small meat skewers were grilled with a fizzling sound. She handed Frosty Cloud a meat chop. You've worked hard this time. Eat more meat to make up for it. Frosty Cloud proudly took it. His heart and appearance did not match in the slightest. I'll reluctantly take a bite. Only the tips of his ears betrayed him. They turned pink again. He looks so happy. The thoughtful Bai Dai suddenly spoke up. Slowly you eat too. Then handed her a bowl of soup. Today you have also worked hard. Bai Dai gazed dotingly stared at her. The bowl of soup bubbling with hot air. Slowly really ate this. Shyly took it and cupped it with both hands. Frost Cloud witnessed their behavior. The roasted meat in his hand does not smell good anymore. So his big hand slapped down hard. Slow tonight to sleep with me. Her eyes are very stunned. He just said what to sleep together tonight. I am your mate. The kind of ceiling. You can sleep with a tiger. Then I demand fairness. The seemingly fair right to sleep was too much of a challenge to respond to. So, 
She had to look at Baidai for help, showing that she was at a loss for words. We are both slow mates. As long as she agrees I won't interface. But you can't force her. Frosty Cloud said he wouldn't force her. He wanted to love her more than he did. He secretly pulled up the female. Slowly come with me. I'll show you something. The little female's voice of resistance rang out. Frost Cloud, where are you pulling me to? So fast to your room. She still wanted to do some mental preparation. After all, sleep together and so on. Simply ashamed of people. But when she saw the things inside the room, it did shock her heart a little. Do you like what I've arranged? Frosty Cloud looked super nervous and waited for her response. We've collected a lot of supplies from this battle, including crystal coins, ores and snow child flowers. I want to give you the best of the besties. You are my mate and the most important person to me. Little Ease herself is very fond of it. After seeing this wreath, she was even more touched inside. Ease, you're so beautiful. You're the most beautiful female I've ever seen. His big slender hand gripped the little hand tightly, even with a piece of his sincerity. Let me become your male, okay? Frosty Cloud's eyes and words were so firm. It was really hard to resist, but her touching didn't last long before she was quickly dumped on the bed. Instead of chatting with Mito with the tension, you have an impatient look on your face. Slowly inwardly keep spitting. This guy is a real dog. Serious but not to seconds time. Frosty Cloud said he has advanced and will definitely surpass the stinky white tiger in the future. When he was holding against the leader of the Black River Wolf clan, the power in his body suddenly erupted, and his beast soul directly rose to do stars. Looking at his arm tattoo, there really is an extra star next to the wolf tattoo, so we need to hurry up and do it before winter passes. Give me a litter of wolf cubs. Frosty Cloud looked at her with resignation. When will you be ready? Do you not want to do it with me? Frosty Cloud, I came here suddenly, and I'm still getting used to the world. Can you give me some time? He had a very flattering look on his face. After all, it was the first time the female had opened her heart to him, so he soothed the female's body. Line, I'll listen to you. Who asked me not to see you unhappy? She was touched and raised her head. My home Frost Cloud is really good to me. He helplessly squatted aside. The female had to explain. My side to apply the potion should be able to. As long as the potion is applied to the body and then together. It should avoid conceiving a baby. Frosty Cloud seemed to not hear the outside world. Only echoed a sentence. Apply it to the body. Slowly and suddenly he was awakened. Frosty Cloud why do you have a nosebleed? You want to apply the medicine for me? She was originally a casual sentence. But immediately made Frosty Frosty Cloud come to his senses, only to see that she hastily backed up a few steps, frightened and shy to look at him. You want to help me apply it? I'm your male. This is something I should do, but slowly felt really shameful. Frosty Cloud once again used his aggression skills. But I am your male. That's not the same thing. If you turn around and ask me to spread my legs for Frosty to apply the medicine, I'd rather die. She kept warning the man. Don't look back. Don't listen with your ears open. Then she poured the potion while spitting. What kind of world is this? Such an embarrassing scene. But she still applied it obediently. Her subtle voice was clear. While we were still carefully applying the potion, the coyote behind us had already crawled over. She had noticed. But the sound behind her was really dull. At the same time she turned to look over. She was actually embraced by a man fiercely into his arms. His face was red as he explained. Slowly I'm so excited. Can you paint it now? She intended to be with him, and now has applied a good key step. So the bedside of the potion rolled down, slightly sprayed out some of the frost clouds have long been unable to restrain the restlessness. In a moment, he lowered his head and kissed the past. She slightly raised her chin. Her tone of voice coquettishly said don't be like this. The man's low voice ran out, but still a smell of arrogance. I want to remove the taste of the white emperor. Slowly opened her small mouth in surprise. What's wrong with him again? He gently licked the place. His own body was made numb by him, so that she could not help but cry out. He lowered his eyebrows as if he wanted to imprint her in his heart. After all, he loved her so much. But don't love me, or I'll die of heartache like my father. Frosty Cloud had always rejected loving others, also because he was afraid to die of her like his father. She raised her small hand to reassure the man. It won't don't be afraid of Frost Cloud. The woman looked at him shyly, but her voice broke. We will always be together. Apparently he was also very flattered and his face was as red as a drop of blood. They were in the warmth of the room and began to kiss each other in the depths of their feelings. Outside, the snow was heavy and the cold wind was blowing. Baidai was walking alone outside, his figure indescribably desolate. His look was obviously impatient because the woman who belonged to him had also been divided by someone else. Daylight dawned early, the next day's life began again, slowly opening her eyes in a trance. She didn't expect to sleep until dawn. She recalled yesterday's feet, being tossed around viciously by this guy for a night. 
She slightly shook her body. Frost clouds a jolt to sit up. You rest it yet continue to do it. Do you big head of hell I want to get up I'm hungry. Frosty cloud rushed to fly to get ready. I didn't expect to run into the nasty white emperor. I'll go get her a change of clothes and some food. By die was speechless and didn't want to argue at all. Frosty cloud's eyes shone brightly as he said. Slowly's first litter will definitely be mine. It didn't even bother to argue. So we'll see. Seemed slow and frosty. I could hardly breathe. I do understand frosty cloud. I know how slowly felt the first time he gave me a baby. The cave was cozy with a delicious meal cooking in a stone pot. He took the oversized meat skewer in his hand. Slowly eat this. This one is even better. White Emperor is not willing to lag behind. He picks up the bowl of soup. Slowly takes a sip of soup to warm himself up. It's really embarrassing and stressful. It doesn't feel like eating. After all, their eyes are really weird. They look like they want to eat themselves up. Inside another stone cave, the sunlight gradually shines into the cave entrance. The orc gave a healthy thumbs up. His wound stopped bleeding and started to heal gradually. He followed the method explained by slowly. Let a few orcs take care of it day and night. Their fever has gone down today. Frosty Cloud couldn't restrain his inner excitement and happily hugged the compact woman. Slowly you are to good. Why don't you forget to praise yourself when you praise me? The next step is to take good care of the upper ring and scrub the wound with wine every day. I didn't expect the man to make her a witch doctor. How can that be? After all, I'm not a doctor. I only know a little. How can I be a witch doctor? The injured were about to die, but you brought them back to life. And now the clan trusts you. His words made the woman shy. This feeling of being given affirmation, so ample and satisfying. The reliable by dice suddenly appeared. You're already very good. Many tribal witch doctors don't know as much as you do. But I'm not the right person for the job. I'm not good enough to do it with my half baked skills. If you don't want to be a witch doctor, I can ask you to take a look if anyone in the tribe is sick or injured. When the little female responded, he smiled and said, That's good. At this time, she suddenly remembered something. Frosty Cloud, you started to give me a look. So he obediently raised his arm and the star pattern on it began to gradually emerge. On the head of the wolf tattoo appeared a thorn head ring, similar to a king's crown. It wasn't there last night, but when he was with Frost Cloud, it appeared as a crown of thorns. Frosty Cloud was also puzzled by this. Why was there an extra ring of grass on Wolfram's head? But Dai quietly patted him on the shoulder. Let's talk about this in private. This is what happened. It should be related to the seed in my body. Frosty Cloud's eyes were glowing. Together with slowly, it can also enhance the power of the star soul. He immediately couldn't wait to be manic. So what are we waiting for? Let's hurry up and get moving again. She dabbled and rushed behind by Dai. Frost Cloud this guy last night is not enough. I do not want to be together. You like by Dai so much you don't like me. Where am I not better than him? She said she wants to rest tonight. Nothing dare to sleep purely. Otherwise overindulgence will die. Frosty clouds. On the other hand, a look of disbelief. This is what you said. I want to supervise you to sleep together. Slowly very tired. I'm afraid you can't control yourself. Let her sleep alone. Frost Cloud snorted coldly. How do I know? Will you sneak in? I die is not afraid. I'm also afraid that you will come over in the middle of the night. I'll stay with her tonight. They exchanged fierce glances, as if to see who would be defeated. Slowly broke down and shouted, Stop it! Why don't we just sleep together? They all looked at her seriously, but they didn't object to what she just said. The common self-possessed. A Mr. Bidey actually thought it was a good idea. The arrogant and cold a Mr. Frosty Cloud. Let's sleep together. Who cares? It's not a question of who's afraid of who. It's a question of modesty. But she seems to have forgotten that orcs don't have such things as morals. After a ban, as if completing some task, they looked at the triple bed in front of them and eyed slightly in satisfaction. The bed was now big enough. The double bed has been upgraded to a keen size, super keen size bed. You guys are too skilled. Frosty Cloud can't feel shy at all. Pleasantly looking towards Slow. Let's sleep. She cried without tears and went to bed. After all, the excuse that the bed was too small was useless. Outside the stone cave, the moon hung high, obviously shining into the cave a trace of moonlight. By Dai obediently lay down on the bed. A noble and inviolable nobleman look. Frosty Cloud looked like a university sports student. His wheat-colored skin was very attractive, slowly lying in the middle of the two, like a meatloaf, emitting a charming aroma. This picture is too damn embarrassing. One can't sleep at all. By Dai 
I broke the weird atmosphere. It's getting late. Go to sleep now. Frost clouds want to help her cover her feet, but she said no. They are like this. They are very nervous. However, after five minutes, she entered a sweet dreamland. Frosty Cloud carefully observed this little female, and surprisingly, she was really asleep. It was the White Emperor who knew how to care for people. She was still too tired. After all, she had been rescuing orcs for the past few days, so he slightly leaned over and placed a kiss on the little female's soft forehead. Frosty Cloud must not be happy. Kissing is in front of me. I must kiss as well. His mouth pouted slightly, but his eyes looked towards the White Emperor. But I said he wouldn't bother with him. Stop messing around and go to sleep. Although it's weird for three people to sleep together, it has a warm atmosphere of mutual warmth. Slowly and lazily stretched out her waist. Really tired. Accompanied by a pregnant woman in labor is also a physical job. By Dai is very considerate to stick to her. See you so tired. I help you massage it. He carefully massaged her. The white emperor's hands are really big, thick and hot. She hadn't had time to feel it in detail, when suddenly her face blushed with shame. What is this guy by Dai's hand doing? Causing her to constantly wail inwardly, slowly turning back with a shy face. Her tone was delicate as she tried to stop it. Obviously the man expressed his satisfaction with this. The big hand along the trend, all the way down. Is this place is sour? I help you press a little bit. The woman's body immediately a burst of tingling. The voice of the delicate anger against the man. You obviously are ill-intentioned. His body has long been a little restless. So tightly pressed against the woman's body. My slow really cute. This guy's body is hot. The purpose is too obvious. She seemed to sense something and warned the man in a slightly compromising manner. Can you be a little faster this time? By Dai instantly threw her onto the bed. How can a man be said to be fast? Then you will have to cry later on. So the two people's hands clasped each other tightly, spread all over the room of charming, although she has already experienced once. This time or the mind is still confused to swelling. Slowly I was thinking that if we had children, they would be the most adorable. Ours would be more adorable than any of theirs. Why it was like a storm that swept me in. It's true that a man's mouth deceives ghosts. Be these men too. He secretly poked and lifted the quilt. Slowly you see you see up. Uh, the woman shyly rubbed backward. I do not want to see it to get together shameless. But he just wanted to see the star pattern on the waist. She immediately angry accusations. Who asked you to say this position is so embarrassing? What happened to your star pattern? The tiger tattoo has an extra ring of thorns on its head. Like putting a crown of thorns on the tiger. But it's quite pretty. How did this circle of vines appear? It appeared the same night we were together and the animal soul in me showed signs of upgrading. She has beginners and eyes. Is it a coincidence that you're about to upgrade? I paid attention last night and found that when we were together, the beast soul inside me would become particularly excited. Afterwards, I communicated with the beast soul and learned that there is something in your body that emits strange energy. There's such a magical thing in my body. It has a faint scent of grass and wood. I'm a bit surprised. The smell of grass and wood is the seeds of the divine wood I ate. Divine wood that's a legendary divine object. After growing up it can condense the heart of nature. The beastman who gets the heart of nature. If you can obtain the favor of the gods, you can be promoted to become a dinner god. It sounds very powerful. At that time, the system also mentioned that the divine wood was the source of all trees and could increase the affinity for nature. She immediately began to ponder what exactly the connection was between these things. I die suddenly looked at her. Can you tell me how you got the divine wood seed? She hurriedly avoided this line of sight and stammered that it was given to her by someone else. An old friend you don't know? But inside she couldn't explain it. After all, no one would believe in such things as systems and traveling across the world. It's okay if you don't want to talk about it, but you have to remember that you must never let anyone know about it, or else you'll be in danger of death. That seed is actually so important, and I misunderstood the little system to perfume me. The heart of nature is extremely tempting to the beastmen. They will do anything for the divine wood seed. Slowly nodded with a grave face, indicating that he remembers it very clearly. Then can we tell Frost Cloud about this matter, or should we wait for him to discover it of his own accord? before explaining it clearly to him. If together it will make the star pattern change, this kind of thing will also happen sooner or later. But the divine wood seed in my body is a dead seed. It can't germinate and grow. It's impossible to condense the heart of nature. I'm not a criminal, but I have a bigger problem. Right. So she flew to Mushian's house to seek her help in finding birth control pills. It's hard to accept by Dai and Frosty Cloud, but it's still too early to procreate. Mushon said that she had never heard of it. Of course the more you can give birth, the better. I'm still looking forward to you giving birth to little children, being hit hard by the words. As lowly, her face was blushing but there was nothing she could do about it. The orcs here have no concept of contraception. In this world, 
having a child means the future of the tribe. But in this world of crisis, it's really dangerous to get pregnant and have a baby now. She walked in the ice and snow. Her back looked incredibly lonely. She suddenly thought of something and opened her mouth to test if the system existed. The system was really powerful, instantly flashing in front of her. Do you have something to do? I have a serious matter. I want to ask the system for your help. Her eyes immediately lit up. There is really a chance. Do you have any birth control pills off? The small system's dead fish eyes immediately whitened and looked at its owner with a shocked expression, only to see it turned into a mess of code, gradually disappeared in front of her eyes. System that guy cannot call out, or look at the atlas, there is no information it. There are a lot of types recorded in the book. I didn't expect to really find it by myself. Wu Jin flower can inhibit the hormones in the body, squeezing the juice and applying it to the body will have an inhibiting effect on females. Slowly and carefully note down. It seems that this Wu Jin flower may be able to. Mu Shong at this time came to me. You want to go to look for ingredients. It is just that the clan will also go tomorrow. Winter is coming to an end. They are going to find some animals that are still hibernating to eat. The sun soon set, leaving only the industrious creatures. Whitey's face is full of disapproval. What do you want to go hunting together? I want to find some plants and fruits. Can you take me with you, Whitey? He said of course he could, but the cold winter hasn't passed yet. Don't leave his side then. She happily came forward and rubbed his chin affectionately, but she has not been happy for long. The man thought of warming the quill for her. The tiger is too dangerous. She must stay away from him. The wind was howling outside, but it was warm inside the cave. She had long been in dreamland, dreaming of a male voice. It's too dangerous here you go first. You can't even remember me, but you still want to save me. Don't you know I've been waiting for you, you big liar? She woke up violently from her sleep. How could this dream be so real? What a horrible nightmare. She felt that voice was cold, that she thought she had heard it somewhere before, but she couldn't remember at all. Who was he? It was as if she was stuck in a deep memory. The sun rose as usual, and the beasts hunted as usual. The beasts were walking on the rocks, and the noise in the distance was a jolt. The white emperor was in his true form, carrying his beloved woman on his back. Some of the small beasts transformed into their own bodies, while others continued to use their human forms to look for prey. Slowly, he also searched for the Wu Jen flower among the herbs, which he must need urgently. Indeed, he found it. The plant was the Wurut flower. The plant was in perfect condition and was swaying around with the wind. She hurriedly picked one and rushed forward. Her little arm swung in the direction of the White Emperor, but she suddenly frowned for a moment. He probably knew what this herb was for, so it wasn't because of this. She hurriedly reached out and pointed forward, trying to get by Dai to turn around and look over. He instantly turned to look, now realizing that the orcs behind him were stunned. A group of figures had clearly appeared in the distance and were walking in their direction. The beast began to exclaim that it was actually Matriarch Frost Cloud who had returned, and with a lot of prey. Although Frost Cloud and the others were injured, everyone came back safely. Moreover, they brought back a lot of supplies. It seems that by Dai's suggestion was useful. Frost Cloud and the clan behind him were very excited and told everyone that we had won. These are the animal skins that the Black River Wolf clan took from our rock mountain. The beastmen immediately rushed forward, chattering and examining these treasures. Frosty Cloud explained to everyone that these were looted from the Black River Wolf tribe, so everyone could share them equally. We thoroughly learned about the Blackwater Wolf tribe, but unfortunately, we let Machine escape. Frosty Cloud was still introducing it to the crowd, as a way to build up his momentum, when a delicate voice rang out. It turned out to be his precious little female. Slowly was excitedly rushing towards himself, only to see her jumping and pouncing on the man. Really unparalleled joy. Frost Cloud, you're finally back. They hugged each other tightly. Frost Cloud greedily drank in the female's flavor, but his eyes widened instantly, easing the smell from his body. He quickly pushed the female out, forcing her to look straight at him. Have you been with the White Emperor? Slowly hung her head at a loss, completely at a loss as to how to explain herself. Frosty Cloud rubbed up against him. You bastard, how dare you take advantage of me not being at home to secretly dominate slowly. By Dai, who was misunderstood as a bastard, looked at him very plainly, to which he didn't explain anything either. How dare you take advantage of my absence to secretly dominate the slowly. By Dai explained that she was his mate, and that it was only natural for them to be together. Frosty Cloud didn't listen to his nonsense. Slowly is not yours alone. Don't we have to compete fairly? He dodged to avoid the attack look, I am in love with slowly. Frosty Cloud, who has always been a man of few words, suddenly became anxious and angrily scolded him for farting. Slowly precious first time, but was stolen by a dead tiger. I must kill him. 
The more he thought about it, the more unconvinced he became, so the energy around him suddenly changed and quickly transformed into his own body. The white emperor could see that he was indeed very serious. His eyes stared directly at him with a cold stare, only to see a whoa and a roar roar. The two males actually no one lost, but their baby, as Loli, suddenly stepped in front of Baidai and shouted at Frosty Cloud to stop. Frosty Cloud told her to hurry up and leave. He had to teach this bastard a lesson himself. Her next words directly broke the existing situation. It was she who voluntarily gave it to Bai Dai. Frost Cloud I show sadness within. Why do you always protect him? Is it in your heart only him? She immediately said certainly not. But that is not guilty of fighting for her. Frost Cloud aggravation out of small teardrops. You like you only like him do not like me. Then he left sadly, not caring about the cold-blooded female behind him. By Dai suddenly pressed her shoulder. Slow down or don't chase after him first. You will be very tired. Frosty Cloud's character is indeed impatient. Let's wait until he comes down and talk to each other. Facing the mates in this world, she really still had a hard time adapting to it. At that moment a will came from behind them, causing them to turn and look over despite their sadness. The orc was calming his wife. Don't cry, I came back alive. We are famous from now on. But his wife was not happy. The old witch doctor was gone. What about your wounds? Slowly discarded the feelings inside. Slowly walked to them. I can look at it. There are scratches on the chest. The untreated wounds are still bleeding and inflamed. It seems that the wounds are infected. Slowly you help Mushian and Blue Butterfly. Can you save my husband? Inside the huge rocky mountain. It has been covered with heavy white snow. These battle damaged quarks are lying inside the cave moaning helplessly as if they're going to die in the next second. The wounds of many people are quite deep. But Lan Shu is no longer. A slow voice came from behind him. Put him down on the hide. The little female wants to find wine and crispy fruit. But he is jealous and does not want to give. Anyway, only the white emperor is good to you. Slowly even in her kind heart. She was angry enough by this guy. So she shouted at Frosty Cloud. I want crispy fruits and wine to save my life are you going to give them to me or not he immediately succumbed to the female's power and urged his little brother behind him to go and get them he was really a good fighter he got it back in just a few minutes slowly had to assign him again you guys help hold him down i need to treat the wound the orc's little brother exclaimed little female do you know medicine in modern times i am only an ordinary person in this time and space should be more useful than the average orc the orcs don't care if it's true or not they quickly followed her instructions and carried him to the animal skin the wound was first cleaned with wine the orcs on the ground had already wailed in pain. After the wound was cleaned, the crushed crispy fruit was applied to the wound. She casually skimmed off the sweat on her face. The wounds were sterilized, and the anti-inflammatory bandage with the crunchy fruits would be enough. Luckily, the cold weather didn't make the infection serious, but the orc said he was super sore. She once again instructed the orcs to get a few people to moisten their skins with wine and rub it on the skin of the patients every once in a while. She also gave them more red berries to eat. It can benefit the chi and blood. It's good for the injured. It seems that he really knows how to heal. We are all saved. She immediately raised her arm forward. Let's bandage the wounded together until the sun set again and it became dark outside the cave. She stood up panting. After all, after bandaging so many wounded, it's almost time for me to go back. She hadn't gone out of the cave when a bee stood in front of her, blocking her way. It turned out to be her mate Frosty Cloud, staring at her with a haughty and stubborn look. Suddenly, he squatted down to show that he was going to carry her home on his back. Frosty Cloud seemed to see that she was late and shouted with some annoyance. Nonsense let you come up then come up. Slowly has long been exhausted. He is really a mouthy guy. She quickly climbed onto the man's back. Physically and mentally exhausted, she did not want to move at all. They had nothing to say all the way, but Frosty Cloud was very sweet and took her home very smoothly. He walked along the winding stone wall as if it was as easy as walking on flat ground. Slowly staring into his ear, a bad thought was born. She quietly puckered her mouth and kissed his ear sweetly. Frosty Cloud instantly blushed and turned his head back. What are you doing not allowed to just seduce me? But the female on top of him shifted her body and hugged him tightly. His weak colored skin was red, and the little female on his back softly nibbled on his ear. Luckily you came back safely. I had a nightmare that something had happened to you guys. The follow-up she didn't even dare to think about it anymore. Slowly body shivering. She is sad and worrying about me. But how can I die? And then let you and by die forever together. Do not think about it. Simply impossible. Although Frosty Cloud's mouth 
is indebted and his personality is not pleasant. But it's great that he can't come back. With the two of them with us, we'll have something to hold on to in this world, and the fear in our hearts will disappear. Inside the cave, a delicious barbecue was turned on, and the small meat skewers were grilled with a fizzling sound. She handed Frosty Cloud a meat chop. You've worked hard this time. Eat more meat to make up for it. Frosty Cloud proudly took it. His heart and appearance did not match in the slightest. I'll reluctantly take a bite. Only the tips of his ears betrayed him. They turned pink again. He looked so happy. The thoughtful Bai Dai suddenly spoke up. Slowly you eat too. Then handed her a bowl of soup. Today you have also worked hard. Bai Dai gazed doltingly stared at her. The bowl of soup bubbling with hot air. Slowly really ate this. Shyly took it and cupped it with both hands. Frost Cloud witnessed their behavior. The roasted meat in his hand does not smell good anymore. So his big hand slapped down hard. Slow tonight to sleep with me. Her eyes are very stunned. He just said what to sleep together tonight. I am your mate. The kind of ceiling. You can sleep with a tiger. Then I demand fairness. The seemingly fair right to sleep was too much of a challenge to respond to. So, she had to look at by die for help, showing that she was at a loss for words. We are both slow mates. As long as she agrees I won't interface. But you can't force her. Frosty Cloud said he wouldn't force her. He wanted to love her more than he did. He secretly pulled up the female. Slowly come with me. I'll show you something. The little female's voice of resistance rang out. Frost Cloud, where are you pulling me to? So fast to your room. She still wanted to do some mental preparation. After all, sleep together and so on. Simply ashamed of people. But when she saw the things inside the room, it did shock her heart a little. Do you like what I've arranged? Frosty Cloud looked super nervous and waited for her response. We've collected a lot of supplies from this battle, including crystal coins, ores and snow child flowers. I want to give you the best of the besties. You are my mate and the most important person to me. Little Ease herself is very fond of it. After seeing this wreath, she was even more touched inside. Ease, you're so beautiful. You're the most beautiful female I've ever seen. His big slender hand gripped the little hand tightly, even with a piece of his sincerity. Let me become your male, okay? Frosty Cloud's eyes and words were so firm. It was really hard to resist, but her touching didn't last long before she was quickly dumped on the bed. Instead of chatting with me to whiz the tension, you have an impatient look on your face. Slowly inwardly keep spitting. This guy is a real dog. Serious but not to seconds time. Frosty Cloud said he has advanced and will definitely surpass the stinky white tiger in the future. When he was holding against the leader of the Black River Wolf clan, the power in his body suddenly erupted, and his beast soul directly rose to two stars. Looking at his arm tattoo, there really is an extra star next to the wolf tattoo, so we need to hurry up and do it before winter passes. Give me a litter of wolf cubs. Frosty Cloud looked at her with resignation. When will you be ready? Do you not want to do it with me? Frosty Cloud, I came here suddenly, and I'm still getting used to the world. Can you give me some time? He had a very flattering look on his face. After all, it was the first time the female had opened her heart to him. So he soothed the female's body. Line, I'll listen to you. Who asked me not to see you unhappy? She was touched and raised her head. My home frost cloud is really good to me. He helplessly squatted aside. The female had to explain. My side to apply the potion should be able to. As long as the potion is applied to the body and then together. It should avoid conceiving a baby. Frosty clouds seemed to not hear the outside world. Only echoed a sentence. Apply it to the body. Slowly and suddenly he was awakened. Frosty Cloud, why do you have a nosebleed? You want to apply the medicine for me? She was originally a casual sentence, but immediately made Frosty Cloud come to his senses, only to see that she hastily backed up a few steps, frightened and shy to look at him. You want to help me apply it? I'm your male. This is something I should do, but slowly felt really shameful. Frosty Cloud once again used his aggression skills. But I am your male. That's not the same thing. If you turn around and ask me to spread my legs for Frosty to apply the medicine, I'd rather die. She kept warning the man. Don't look back. Don't listen with your ears open. Then she poured the potion while spitting. What kind of world is this? Such an embarrassing scene. But she still applied it obediently. Her subtle voice was clear. While we were still carefully applying the potion, the coyote behind us had already crawled over. She had noticed. But the sound behind her was really dull. At the same time she turned to look over. She was actually embraced by a man fiercely into his arms. His face was red as he explained. Slowly I'm so excited. Can you paint it now? She intended to be with him, and now has applied a good key step, so the bedside of the potion rolled down, slightly sprayed out some of the frost clouds have long been unable to restrain the restlessness. In a moment, he lowered his head and kissed the past, she slightly raised her chin, her tone of voice coquettishly said don't be like this, 
The man's low voice rang out, but still a smell of arrogance. I want to remove the taste of the white emperor. Slowly opened her small mouth in surprise. What's wrong with him again? He gently licked the place. His own body was made numb by him, so that she could not help but cry out. He lowered his eyebrows, as if he wanted to imprint her in his heart. After all, he loved her so much. But don't love me, or I'll die of heartache like my father. Frosty Cloud had always rejected loving others, also because he was afraid to die of her like his father. She raised her small hand to reassure the man. It won't don't be afraid of Frost Cloud. The woman looked at him shyly, but her voice broke. We will always be together. Apparently he was also very flattered, and his face was as red as a drop of blood. They were in the warmth of the room and began to kiss each other in the depths of their feelings. Outside, the snow was heavy and the cold wind was blowing. By Dai was walking alone outside, his figure indescribably desolate. His look was obviously impatient, because the woman who belonged to him had also been divided by someone else. Daylight dawned early, the next day's life began again, slowly opening her eyes in a trance. She didn't expect to sleep until dawn. She recalled yesterday's feet, being tossed around viciously by this guy for a night. She slightly shook her body. Frost clouds a jolt to sit up. You rest it yet continue to do it. Do you big head of hell I want to get up I'm hungry. Frosty cloud rushed to fly to get ready. I didn't expect to run into the nasty white emperor. I'll go get her a change of clothes and some food. By Dai was speechless and didn't want to argue at all. Frosty clouds eyes shone brightly as he said. Slowly's first litter will definitely be mine. It didn't even bother to argue. So we'll see. Seemed slow and frosty. I could hardly breathe. I do understand Frosty Cloud. I know how slowly felt the first time he gave me a baby. The cave was cozy with a delicious meal cooking in a stone pot. He took the oversized meat skewer in his hand. Slowly eat this. This one is even better. White Emperor is not willing to lag behind. He picks up the bowl of soup. Slowly takes a sip of soup to warm himself up. It's really embarrassing and stressful. It doesn't feel like eating. After all, their eyes are really weird. They look like they want to eat themselves up. Inside another stone cave, the sunlight gradually shines into the cave entrance. The orc gave a healthy thumbs up. His wound stopped bleeding and started to heal gradually. He followed the method explained by slowly. Let a few orcs take care of it day and night. Their fever has gone down today. Frosty Cloud couldn't restrain his inner excitement and happily hugged the compact woman. Slowly you are to good. Why don't you forget to praise yourself when you praise me? The next step is to take good care of the upper ring and scrub the wound with wine every day. I didn't expect the man to make her a witch doctor. How can that be? After all, I'm not a doctor. I only know a little. How can I be a witch doctor? The injured were about to die, but you brought them back to life. And now the clan trusts you. His words made the woman shy. This feeling of being given affirmation, so ample and satisfying. The reliable by dice suddenly appeared. You're already very good. Many tribal witch doctors don't know as much as you do. But I'm not the right person for the job. I'm not good enough to do it with my half baked skills. If you don't want to be a witch doctor, I can ask you to take a look if anyone in the tribe is sick or injured. When the little female responded, he smiled and said, That's good. At this time, she suddenly remembered something. Frosty Cloud, you started to give me a look. So he obediently raised his arm and the star pattern on it began to gradually emerge. On the head of the wolf tattoo appeared a thorn head ring, similar to a king's crown. It wasn't there last night, but when he was with Frost Cloud, it appeared as a crown of thorns. Frosty Cloud was also puzzled by this. Why was there an extra ring of grass on Wolfram's head? But Dai quietly patted him on the shoulder. Let's talk about this in private. This is what happened. It should be related to the seed in my body. Frosty Cloud's eyes were glowing. Together with slowly, it can also enhance the power of the star soul. He immediately couldn't wait to be manic. So what are we waiting for? Let's hurry up and get moving again. She dabbled and rushed behind by Dai. Frost Cloud this guy last night is not enough. I do not want to be together. You like by Dai so much you don't like me. Where am I not better than him? She said she wants to rest tonight. Nothing dare to sleep purely. Otherwise overindulgence will die. Frosty clouds. On the other hand, a look of disbelief. This is what you said. I want to supervise you to sleep together. Slowly very tired. I'm afraid you can't control yourself. Let her sleep alone. Frost Cloud snorted coldly. How do I know? Will you sneak in? I die is not afraid. I'm also afraid that you will come over in the middle of the night. I'll stay with her tonight. They exchanged fierce glances, as if to see who would be defeated. Slowly broke down and shouted. Stop it. Why don't we just sleep together? They all looked at her seriously, but they didn't object to what she just said. The common self-possessed. 
a Mr. Bitey actually thought it was a good idea that Arrigan and Cole to Mr. Frosty Cloud. Let's sleep together. Who cares? It's not a question of who's afraid of who. It's a question of modesty. But she seems to have forgotten that orcs don't have such things as morals. After a ban, as if completing some task, they looked at the triple bed in front of them and eyed slightly in satisfaction. The bed was now big enough. The double bed has been upgraded to a keen size, super keen size bed. You guys are too skilled. Frosty Cloud can't feel shy at all, pleasantly looking towards Slow. Let's sleep, she cried without tears and went to bed. After all, the excuse that the bed was too small was useless. Outside the stone cave, the moon hung high, obviously shining into the cave a trace of moonlight. By Di obediently lay down on the bed, a noble and inviolable nobleman look. Frosty Cloud looked like a university sports student. His wheat-colored skin was very attractive, slowly lying in the middle of the two. Like a meatloaf, emitting a charming aroma, this picture is too damn embarrassing. One can't sleep at all. By die broke the weird atmosphere. It's getting late. Go to sleep now. Frost Clouds want to help her cover her feet. But she said no. They are like this. They are very nervous. However, after five minutes, she entered a sweet dreamland. Frosty Cloud carefully observed this little female, and surprisingly, she was really asleep. It was the White Emperor who knew how to care for people. She was still too tired. After all, she had been rescuing orcs for the past few days. So he slightly leaned over and placed a kiss on the little female's soft forehead. Frosty Cloud must not be happy. Kissing is in front of me. I must kiss as well. His mouth pouted slightly, but his eyes looked towards the White Emperor. But Dai said he wouldn't bother with him. Stop messing around and go to sleep. Although it's weird for three people to sleep together, it has a warm atmosphere of mutual warmth. The melting of the snow and ice signaled the imminent departure of the cold winter. The injured beast gradually healed. Lin slowly took the place of the witch doctor for the time being, and the clansmen all shouted at her. People can usually be cured of any headaches or fevers as well. I'm coming. I'll be right there. Relying on the records in the sheepskin atlas, Lin slowly prescribes medicines in conjunction with the actual situation of the patient and basically gets the right remedy. This one will be much better. Thank you, slow witch doctor. I'm not. Just call me Ease. Thanks to you, my wound is fine. Thank you very much. Which Dr. Ease? I look a little shy. Ease has fully integrated into the Rock Wolf clan and has gained the respect of everyone. Sunshine has also come to Rock Mountain. There were corpses of orcs placed here. All of them were orcs who were killed by the sneak attack led by Yatl before. As the snow and ice began to melt, it was time to dispose of the remains of the orcs who had died in battle. Is it still the old rule? to throw these skeletons into the pit behind the mountain. I came here and threw them away. Isn't that just random abandonment of the remains? One could say that, but we've always done it this way. In the winter the bodies can be frouncing in ice, but in the spring, the remains rot so quickly that we rock wolves throw them behind the mountain. Throw them in a pit. That's not safe either, and it's not very respectful to the departed. I'll give my opinion. So, can they be cremated? Cremation, what's that? Both of them asked me curiously. That's how we used to place our deceased relatives over there. In short, after cremation, they won't rot, and the ashes of the deceased can be preserved. We can pay tribute to them every year. Do you guys think cremation is bad? Watching them all fall silent. I was still too reckless, but then Frosty Cloud said, No, this is good. Mok Hain will find comfort in that too. If my father could have left later, we could have held a cremation for him and not have to look at his body. I watched as Frosty Cloud lowered his head and spoke in a low tone about his father's body in the past. Both of them agreed. Okay, let's start preparing then. All the wood needed for the cremation was piled up by the orcs. They were constantly busy. The other females also came here. Cremation, what is that? It seems to be a ceremony that is slowly raised. They say it's so that the body of the deceased won't decay. Frosty Cloud raised the torch and the others watched from here. Then it was placed next to the wood and set it on fire. Finally a huge fire was lit and the bodies on it were burning. I looked at the burning corpses and thanked you all, and the Longju witch doctor, for sacrificing your lives to save me. Then I kneeled down on the ground to express my gratitude and at the same time to show my respect. Frost Cloud looked at my actions and asked me what are you doing. I am comforting the souls of the deceased, hoping that they can rest in peace underground. Orcs are very superstitious about ghosts and gods, so this explanation should work, right? Frost Cloud then asked me, do people still love dead souls after death? Is Longju's dead soul also looking at me? Then I have to kneel down too. 
Frosty knelt down with me, looking at the burnt pile of white bones. Oh, witch doctor, we have avenged you. You can go in peace. The rock wolf clan will be guarded by me. The orcs behind us whispered, Undead souls, are my brothers there too? I wonder if they can hear me. At that moment, Makayan also fell to his knees with a plopping sound. Rest in peace. Juyuan will take care of me. I will always remember each and every one of you. Then he lowered his head and had to kneel. The other orcs looked at the scene and all knelt down as well. Forefathers and warriors of the Rock Clan, rest in peace. We will protect the Rock Clan for a long time to come. The Rock Wolf Clan will never lose. From the sky, they looked down at the crowd with high hopes. The last altar has appeared. Keep it safe. It's filled with the heroes of our tribe. The others, including Whitey, are looking at the altar. White Emperor watched my performance, kneeling and kowtowing to console. The soul is a form of witchcraft in the eyes of the beast. Slowly as a witch doctor was recognized by the whole tribe, the days that followed were filled with peace and joy in the Rocky Mountains. Someone else is going into labor. Quickly go and call the witch doctor. Slowly, Slow blesses the newborn wolf cubs and is sure to keep the baby healthy. Luckily, the matriarch has made Slow a mate. It's so good to have such a mate who knows both witchcraft and healing. After losing the old witch doctor Longju, why did it end up like this? I don't know witchcraft or medicine. Forget it, you guys are happy. Spring is coming. Everything is reviving. I came here alone to work. Frosty Cloud took everyone to hunt. Whitey went hunting too. But what about always going alone? That's when I heard a ding. Congratulations to the host for successfully surviving the winter. Completing the winter series of quests. I almost forgot about this quest. Rewards will be issued soon. Please remember to check for them. Host, what's the reward? I then felt my palms so hot. The fruits fell to the ground. And light surrounded my hand. I then realized there was something in my hand. Five rings were in my hand, all five colors at the same time. The rings are almost all in the same style, just with tiny gems on them. If you look closely, you can see the thorn pattern engraved on top of the ring. It's simple, but it's very well done. This one is pink, so I wore it on my finger. It's just a bit too big, but then I noticed something else. The ring automatically shrunk to the thickness of my finger. It's amazing. Why are there five of them? System, what is this ring for? Meanwhile, I'm taking off this ring. But why can't I pull it off? I'm still trying to pull it off. The system then said, this is a contract ring. Once you put it on, you can't take it off. Unless the host dies. Unless the host dies. I frowned see when I heard these words. The ring is a master ring and for slave rings. The slave rings are given to the contracted partner. What? There's a master ring and a slave ring. I got nervous. So system, this one I'm wearing, is it a master ring or a slave ring? The system revealed a smile. Slave ring. The master ring is the one with the simplest style and the silver thorn pattern. Is this for 138 system laughing at me? Why do I feel like he's laughing? I took out that silver ring. This is the master ring. How is it different from the slave ring? I was just about to put the silver ring on when the system said, Do you want to put the master ring on as well? That's not possible. The slave ring is controlled by the master ring. And the person who puts on the master ring will be in a dominant position. I'm not going to be controlled by anyone. I'd rather keep this master ring for myself. I hold this ring tightly. The five rings came with the same space. And if no one were the master ring, the space would not activate. When I heard space, I frowned see. Space, I manerved in disbelief. Is it the kind of carry-on space written in novels, where you can put anything in it and maybe there's a big treasure inside? It can be understood like this. As long as someone wears the master ring, come they activate the space. Yes. A ring can only have one owner, so please choose the owner of your master ring carefully. To use the space, you have to become someone subordinate and can't resist. One carry on space. One freedom. It's all because I'm so stupid. I'm punking myself. I actually have to make such a choice. After that I flopped down on the bed listlessly and sighed helplessly. A hand touched my head and shouted my name. It asked me, why are you unhappy? Can you tell me? I stopped just as I was about to speak. I can't tell anyone about the system. It involves the secret of my crossing over. Then he hugged me. Are you in trouble? Tell me. But in this world, the one I trust the most is by die. Although Whitey has great power, he has never been gentle and reliable to me. Although he wanted to be my only mate. When Frost Cloud was in danger and had to couple with me, he also ended up helping Frost Cloud and I complete the ceremony. If we all had to choose one person, to wear the master ring in the end. It would have to be by die. I let him give me his hand. I took his big, thick hand, put this silver ring on his finger. It's a contract ring. Ring? Whitey looked at the ring not knowing what to realize. The one on your hand is the master ring. It's yours. The one on my hand is the slave ring. 
from today onwards. Our destinies are completely linked together. I believe that even if the slave ring is under the control of the master ring, Bai Dai will not bully me. He then said, the master ring, it sounds like it's the most important one in there. Why give it to me? Shouldn't you be the one to wear it? I turned my head and shed tears. I would like to. Who let my hand wear it wrong too quickly? I coughed lightly in embarrassment twice. Because I believe you won't hurt me. Whitey's face flushed slightly. Of course not. I would rather hurt myself than you. I look at him and my heart beats faster. By the way, there is a magical space in this ring. My heart still beats hard when I'm looked at like this by by Dai. Since you're wearing it, let's see if we can open it. You try to say open the space. With that, by Dai said open the space. The two were brought to this place and the light shone so brightly that they couldn't open their eyes. After that I slowly opened my eyes again. A space appeared in front of our eyes. I was surprised to the point that it really was space. Then I threw in a pillow to see if the space could be used. The pillow was thrown in. It seems that it can really store things all. We can use it as our secret storage. I put my treasures in first. My bone knife, parchment atlas, kindling, and tampons can all go in the space. Then it's moving time for both of us, putting all the important stuff in. It takes up so little space. This space is really big. Is it just an illusion? It seems to be getting bigger. I just don't know if I can put living things in it afterwards. But Dice said behind him, this is already amazing. I will place these in categories. Easy to take out. This space looks small, but it's foggy and invisible in the distance. Maybe when my ability improves, I'll be able to utilize more of the space. Right. The rest of the ring, there are three in this space. If you want to use the others, you have to give them away. Back in the room, Frosty Cloud shouted, a gift for me. This is the first gift you've ever given me. I'm so happy. Yes, for the sake of family harmony. Let's not talk about the master ring and the slave ring. Otherwise, Frosty Cloud will definitely explain float on the spot. Frost Cloud looks at the ring on her hand. Tomorrow I'm going to go show everyone the gift that he's gave me. Naturally, I was a little nervous, and Frosty just looked at me. Then he ran over and pounced on me, calling out my name. He blushed sheepishly. You gave me a gift. Are you just as fond of me now? I replied to him helplessly. I would like you more, if you weren't going to be in heat all day. That won't work. I only have feelings for you. He then kissed up, and as I watched him, and slowly closed my eyes, in no time at all the two of them separated. He said shyly, slowly, I want to. He rubbed his slow waist and tried to tell him to stop. Brush, I seemed to realize something, then pushed him away. Welcome, a moment to eat, but I still wanted to. I rejected him outright. No, then he went back to his room, rolling in bed in the daytime, too depraved. As a result, in front of my eyes, I saw Bai Dai here. He then called me to eat. I inexplicably turned my head. Bai Dai. Bai Dai looked at me with a gloomy face. Slowly his lips were red and swollen, and there were marks on his neck. I really want to kill that bastard Frost Cloud. He turned around and left the place to prepare the next food. I went up and called out to White Emperor. Is it because of the contract ring? I can feel Bai Dai is in a bad mood right now. It's icy. I took his hand. Bai Dai. Wait. Your mood doesn't look right today. What's wrong? Bai Dai eased his face and turned to look at me. He's up. I regret it. He hugged me. I should have taken you somewhere else for the winter. That way you wouldn't be mated with Frost Cloud. And you'd be stuck with me. But you're the one who made me mate with Frost Cloud in the first place. That's why I regretted it. Very, very much. However, now that I've made a mate contract with Frost Cloud, it's impossible for me to abandon him. The repercussions of destroying a contract are too horrible for a beastman. Then he fell silent. Today, my emotions were a bit abnormal, and I actually had murderous thoughts because of the slow mating with my mate. It seems that I was affected by the master ring. This ring isn't as simple as just space. Why do you look so angry and pissed off? Don't be angry. I promise that I won't accept any other male orcs in the future. Okay. That's when the system spoke out. Uh, woman, don't talk to fool. Why do you think they're over from the ring? This system is so annoying. No wonder it's called for 3-8. Hey, hey, hey. You're cursing. I can hear you. After that it was time to eat. The pot of broth was gurgling. Frosty Cloud took out the meat. Slow down. I got the meat all done. Bai Dai took the meat on a skewer, which resulted in Frost Cloud seeing the ring on Bai Dai's hand. Then he stretched out his hand and showed off his ring. Humph, I have a ring too. Bai Dai just stared at me. I could only turn my head away from him awkwardly, not knowing how to reply. But Bai Dai didn't want to ignore Frosty Cloud and just said let's eat. Hey, hey, I'm getting more and more seeds. I'm going to get a seed bank in the future. Looking at the seeds in front of him, there were already so many stored. Frost Cloud came here and slowed down. I found a piece of land at the foot of the mountain. Perfect for seeds. That's great. Let's go check it out. I hold the altar and set off. It's sunny here and the trees are lush. Nestled against the mountains. This place is really nice. 
there's also open space. I look at this place happily. Finally, I'm going to start farming. After half a day, farming is so hard. I'm still naive. There's no iron. We can only use polished stones tied to wooden sticks to make a simple version of a hoe. But I can't lift it at all. The white emperor took my hoe. What do you want to do? Let me help you. Let me help you. I showed him how to do it. This is how you dig the ground. Why he holds the ground the way I do? Wow. I was flooded with infatuation. It really is a collision of strength and beauty. Frost cloud watch from behind. It's just hoeing. I can do it too. As a result, just as I touched the ground, a hoe broke. This thing really gets in the way. The claws are faster. He then took the form of a beast and plowed the ground. Oh, ah, the ground is all loosened up. Frost Cloud, you're good. I can't help it. I'm just better than a tiger. And the White Emperor just watched the demeanor of the two. His face immediately lowered and it looked a little annoyed. No way. My desire for exclusivity is back. Must train self-control to keep myself from being influenced again. He gripped the hoe tightly. I love ease, so I can turn this love into a burden for her. After a few days of hard work, they all came here. I look at the land in front of me. Both acres are hoed. It's ready for sowing. So I took the seeds from the altar and sprinkled them on the land, and covered the seeds again, and tapped them. The first time I sowed seeds, I planted vegetables, and collected tree seeds. And for the next few days, by Dye and Frost Cloud took turns to accompany me and water in the vegetable plot. Together we looked forward to what wonderful changes the two acres of land would produce. By Dye, let's go fetch some water. And in the process, we had an unexpected discovery. There are fish here. Let's eat fish tonight. River food, ah. It's really been a long time since I ate it. By I also agreed to do so. Yes, I also like to eat fish and prawns. And my fishing skews are not bad. He then went to the river and looked at the fish in the water. He jumped straight into the water and rushed towards the fish. In no time at all, he had already bitten a fish. This is almost enough. Isn't it? That's enough, Whitey. You're great. I'm drooling over all the fish. It's a lot. We'll have a whole fish dinner tonight. A whole fish feast? Well, let's see me do it tonight. Then the sun will set and the geese will fly. Finish gutting the fish. Remove the scales and fillet it into a pot. The soup was flavored with shrimp and powdered herbs that I read about in the Atlas. I took a sip of the soup with a spoon. And then an M. So tasty. It's ready to eat. By Dai also picked up the bowl and drank. It's really delicious. I can't believe it. Ha, uh, Cacti looks like a cat that way. A tiger is a big cat. No wonder he loves fish. Originally, I don't like fish. I didn't think it could be made so delicious. What kind of fish is this? Fish is just ordinary fish. This dish is called boiled fish herbs. Plus fish fillets and picos together to be able to eat boiled fish in this barbaric area. Frosty Cloud just looked at me. Slow down, you're amazing. This fish is delicious. He looked at me with affection. I'm embarrassed here. Crap. This look. I hurriedly turned my head. Then Frosty Cloud, you need to thank by Dai more. He caught all the fish and prawns today. I'm going to go wash the pots. You guys enjoy chatting. After dinner came the evening. Let's see how many seeds are left. Behind me. By Dai then hut me. He said gently. Didn't you say you wanted to thank me? I want to thank the gift. His hands kept rubbing the slow body. I blushed up and wondered what he wanted to do. By Dai then just picked me up. I was shocked. He rubbed my stomach and kissed again. I closed my eyes, feeling the changes in my body. Both of them took off their clothes. Was it the rain? It felt like I couldn't seem to say no to what Whitey wanted. Then both of them kissed. Without refusal, I gripped the sheets, and Whitey's hand squeezed mine. I let out a breath as tears flowed from the pain. He picked me up again and changed positions. Spring was at its best, with plenty of rain and fertile land. All the vegetables I planted sprouted. But there was also something weird. I was dumbfounded, looking at the vegetables in front of me. How did the vegetables I planted grow so big? How did they grow so fast? They don't grow like this even with hormones. I'm tying up the leaves in bundles. I hope there's nothing wrong with the cabbage. It's not poisonous. After a taste, ah, uh, it's delicious. The fish soup is even more delicious with the cabbage added. These to took the cabbage and eased. These leaves, the flavor is average. I still like meat. It's so hard to bite. Is it for grinding teeth? I have no choice but to explain. You males don't like to eat vegetables. Female beastmen can like it. Mushong then came here. Slow down. Do you still have the sweet water lettuce you gave me last time? My wolf cubs love it. We'll order some too. It's really delicious. Yes, by Dai and Frosty Cloud helped me harvest a lot of vegetables. Since Mushong and the kids like it, I'll go plant some too. 
I don't want to eat all the time. Okay, then I'll count the number of people later and distribute the seeds to everyone. After that, after distributing the seeds, they sowed the seeds. Fine on this land, several people sow seeds together. They all kept busy, hoping that the seeds would grow quickly. And I came here too. The entire rock wolf clan's seeding mode was started. After the other orcs started planting as well, I noticed a problem. The vegetables planted by the orcs next door were normal size. The vegetables planted by Ling slowly were huge. The vegetables in my family's field are indeed abnormal. It grows fast and is also extraordinarily huge. Has this vegetable become a spirit? Why? The system prompted at this point. It's because of the divine wood seed in your body. Host, the divine wood seed increases the affinity for nature system. When did it come out? Ordinary plants will unconsciously want to please you, and the way to do so is to try to grow up. Is that so? I'm looking at this fast-growing fruit. That's why these vegetables and trees are growing like they're on steroids. Hard work. Dias, is it an illusion? It feels as if the little plant vegetables are responding to me. Then Frosty Cloud came here and called to me. Let's go. Let's go fishing. Frosty Cloud sat happily with his fishing net. We came to the river. There are a lot of fish here. Frosty Cloud looked confident. Hey, this time I'll show you how good I am. Then with a plop he jumped into the river to catch the fish, splashing all over the place. Half an hour later, Frosty Cloud was still catching fish in the river. As if the fish were conscious they wouldn't let him catch them. I had no choice but to watch him catching fish by the side of the river. Your fish catching skills are not as good as by Daiso. Not a single fish was caught. He just looked embarrassed and said, Who said I couldn't catch it? I don't believe I can't catch a fish today. Oh, what a silly wolf. The fish flew up by itself and landed on the shore. Landed on the shore. I looked over in amazement. The fish came to my door. My luck was too good to be true. Not long after, another one jumped up. I immediately picked up the fish. Fearing they would jump into the river again, a third fish jumped up. It's an amazing day. All these fish are jumping to the bank with all their lives. I followed where the fish jumped to the bank. And Frosty Cloud finally bites a fish this time. Slowly, I've got it. But Lynn is no longer on the bank. I don't know how deep we've gone. Where are we? I'd better go back. This place is deserted. I heard a loud noise behind me. I looked back in panic. A man was looking at me in the water. Saying you looks at me with an expressionless face. Finally, I found you. Who is this man? Why is he looking at me with such resentment and pain in his eyes? Who are you? Saying I looked at me again with resentment. So you've forgotten me. Seeing him sad. Why do I feel weak? I don't remember much. He looks familiar. But I can't remember. I rubbed my head. Saying you spoke indifferently. You promised I'd come back for me. Saying night. I'll find someone to save you. Wait for me. I dragged my wounds and waited for you for a long time in the stone cave. Never could wait for you to come, but I didn't leave. Watching the snow pile up outside the stone cave. Until the snow outside the cave melted and your snowman melted with it. Until the flowers bloomed on the hillside. You didn't come. I held the wreath. As if I knew you wouldn't come back. And still you didn't come back. Did that ever happen to me? When he said those words. It felt strange to me. But there was a tingling sensation in my head. It was you who lied to me. Sun Yao looked at me with resentment. His eyes were filled with murderous intent. I stepped back in shock. Danger. I ran away in fear. Behind me. Sun Yu appeared directly on the surface of the water. And didn't want to let me go. He used his tail and his eyes turned white. I realized it was a snake. And it tied me up. The bag on my body fell down with it. It landed on a nearby bank, leaving clues behind. Then the fish also jumped out of it, and I was taken by Sang Yeo. Then I slowly opened my eyes. Where am I? I don't know where I've been taken. I hid behind a rocking fear and crawled up. I remembered that I was swept up by the man's snake tail. I heard another voice and looked over. It was the man. He was holding a fruit in his hand, and when he saw me waking up, I asked him where I was. Why did you bring me here? He took the fruit and said this is our home. With a sad look in his eyes. Oh, are you mistaking me for someone else? We haven't met before I finish speaking. He crushed the fruit to vent his anger. Then he pushed me against the wall and I was hurt. You said we haven't met. When you had a high fever I held you to cool you down. In order to save you I went to the Boar clan. To grab the crispy fruit and my body was burned by the fire. You promised you'd come back. But you never returned. So scary. The eyes of this snake man. Full of killing intent. You deceived me. All I could say was sorry. Maybe I can remember some things after the fever I had earlier. You had a fever. Saying you rolled me up. Pushing me into his side again. He stared at me dead in the face. I'm shaking with fear. Don't be like this. The snake scales rubbing coldly against my skin. This is such a weird feeling. But it held me straight. Not letting go of me. Close to my face. He spat out his snake letters and was licking me. I moved away from him in fear. You smell of other males. And while I was waiting so hard for you to come back. You had someone else sexo. 
I panicked as I angrily ripped at my clothes with one hand. He took the jewel on my chest. Do you remember this jewel? I gave it to you. I looked at the gem and seemed to recall something. He snapped the jewel off his forehead. This is the sacred stone my mother left me to give to you. This doesn't prove our relationship, but my head hurts and I still can't remember it. Can you not come closer to me? It's killing me. My head hurts so much. It's like it's going to split. Do you hate me that much? I've tried my best to protect you. Can't you exchange your heart for a body full of wounds? Saint Knight's eyes were very stern, thinking back to earlier, when I was chased by the boar orcs, and my body was still on fire, dragging my injured body. Instead of seeing you leave and letting other males get you, I'd rather keep you forever. Then he took a bite on my neck, and I screamed in agony. It hurt so much. Was he going to bite me to death? Blood was already flowing out of my neck. I couldn't move in pain. Her eyes gradually drifted away, and she began to remember. I'm saying, yo, what's your name? My name is Lin Jong Chu. You can call me John Chu. Ten days, if you come like me in ten days, we'll be mates. If not, I'll give up and send you home. The orcs from the boar tribe are chasing us outside. Go back, is This is the sacred stone my mother left me. It's for you. I remember. I fell off a cliff and met Sane Hyo. Then Sane Hyo was injured trying to save me. I left alone to bring help. But later I forgot about Sane Hyo because of the fever and high temperature. Sane Hyo, I'll get someone to save you. You must wait for me. Instead, his eyes were telling me to go as far away as possible. Slowly, I'll be waiting for you. Here, I let the injured man stay alone in this cold stone cave. Until winter turns to spring and didn't come back. I wrapped my arms around the man in front of me. I'm sorry for leaving tears in my eyes. Saint Knight hesitated. Is this remembering who I am? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have forgotten you. At this time, I grabbed his clothes. But my body has fallen down uncontrollably. Son, you looked at me incredulously. You remember me. Do you know who I am? At this time, he heard another sound coming from the mouth of the cave. His eyes looked that way. There was a loud bang. The debris behind them smashed into them. He hugged me to dodge it. All the time, the black hand appeared. Luckily, the contract ring allowed me to sense the location of the reprieve. Frost Cloud came here and shouted angrily. Snake Beast let go of slowly. I saw Frost Cloud at this time too, but I was dizzy and my mouth wouldn't listen to me. When he saw my condition, he became enraged and shouted my name urgently, then immediately transformed into a beast form. Dare to harm slowly, I'll kill you. Frosty Cloud directly rushed towards them, with a spiritual light in his eyes. He was determined to save slowly. As he rushed towards them, saying he was also furious, this person was unbelievable. He could only counterattack. At the same time, his tail formed into a snake shape, fending off Frosty Cloud's attack. As a result, Frosty Cloud was directly concentrated by Sang Yi's tail and flew backwards. Just as he flew out, a hand behind him caught Frost Cloud. Are you all right? The White Emperor arrived. And Frost Cloud looked over as well. He looked at Sang Knight angrily. You've come just in time. This snake beast has captured slowly. Let's kill this snake beast together. Sang Ye hugged Lin Jongyo and looked at the two of them angrily. Not afraid at all. Bai Dai looked at Sang Ye viciously and let go of slowly. Immediately. Then he took the form of a beast and unleashed his pressure. Sang Knight slowly put me down. Even if I die, I will never hand over slowly. After he put me down, his eyes were strange, surrounded by light. Finally, he turned into a python and opened his mouth wide to attack the two of them. It bit the silver wolf in one gulp, and the wolf tried to break free from the pain. At that moment, I slowly opened my eyes, because the sound of their fight was too loud. White Emperor saw my state. I just opened my eyes and fainted. White Emperor turned his head and asked Python, What did you do to slowly? She was dying. Oh no, I forgot that she was poisoned by my snake. Sang Knight then remembered, then transformed into human form. He came to my side and hugged me to dissolve the snake poison. Snake blood is the best antidote. Try it on Frosty Cloud first. If he's not poisoned to death, then go and save slowly. Stinky Tiger, you're testing the poison on me. Do you want to put slowly in danger? Fine, as long as I can't save ease. I can be the guinea pig. This is the poison paw. Sangy then bites his arm and bleeds out. Come on, you try it first. Frosty Cloud with a disgusted face, dipped some of Sung Yu's blood and put it in his mouth. No problem. The wound doesn't bleed black anymore and I'm not dizzy now. He then picks me up and eases. Drink my blood and you'll be fine. His blood also dripped into my mouth to help detoxify me. Both of them were staring at my condition, nervously watching to see if my state was getting better. I woke up in no time and looked at them all. I looked at Song Ye. I should apologize to Song Ye. I opened my mouth, but why can't I speak? The snake venom has dissolved. You have a weak constitution. You still need to recuperate for a few days. After tonight you'll be able to speak. Frosty Cloud is ready to step forward. 
Slowly you're fine. Give me back his. You've hurt her like this and still won't let go. Sangi holds this me tightly. Hearing this, Sangi seems to have thought of something. Every time she's with me, she gets hurt and sick. Slowly too. Almost died under my fans. Thinking back to the previous scenes. They weren't wrong. I'm a cursed sinner. Misfortune befalls any orc that comes near me. It let go after that, and Frost Cloud stepped forward to pick me up. You watched me being carried away. It was good to just let her go. Anyway, she never liked me in the first place. Frost Cloud was ready to leave the place with me in his arms. I looked at Sang Yi behind me and wanted to shout his name, but my body was too weak to make a sound. Sang Yi, it's my fault. Frost Cloud, put me down. I want to talk to Sang Yi, but Bai Dai then directly blocked my sight. As low down, your body is still not well. Don't talk. Bai Dai turned his head and spoke fiercely to Sang Knight. I know, last time it was you saved slowly, but this time you caused slow to almost die. Now we don't owe anyone. He raised his hand. Slow is our mate. I hope you won't bother us again in the future. Looking at them, there was some reluctance in my heart. In the end, he slowly lowered his hand. Because in his heart I didn't like him. Treating this place as a home for me and slowly. I was so naive. In the end, I became alone again. The next day, here at Rocky Mountain, we all went back to our caves. That's when I suddenly woke up. My mouth cried out. Pinched my mouth and made a sound. Finally I could talk. I brushed myself off and jumped out of bed. I had to go find Sonya. I ended up being stopped at the door by Bai Dai. I looked at him awkwardly. He lifted me up with one hand. Rest well don't run around. Go and lie on the bed. I struggled and waved my hand. Eh, I'm already better. Want to get down and walk around. Bai Dai doesn't like me going to Sang Night. Can't tell the truth. But straight away he refused. No, you must lie down at home. You can't go anywhere. I pouted pitifully and looked at him with white eyes. I have to go water the vegetable patch. Bai Dai had already told Frosty Cloud to go water it. But isn't Frosty Cloud going hunting? As a result, Bai Dai then said, I thought you would ask about Frost Cloud's leg injury first. It was only then that I reacted. Frost Cloud is injured. In order to snatch you back, he was bitten in the leg by that big snake and bled all the way. Didn't you even notice? I was so focused on the matter of Sang Knight that I completely failed to notice that Frost Cloud was injured. I bowed my head and admitted my mistake. I'm sorry, it's my fault. If Frost Cloud knew that you cared so little about him, he would have lost his temper again. I was filled with guilt as I remembered how Frost Cloud looked. Then I'll cook at home and wait for him to come back. By die stroked my head. So good. This makes me feel relieved. The bitter trick is the best way to use on the easily soft hearted slow. Then by die just went out the door and saw Frosty Cloud coming back. Frost Cloud was carrying a bag. Uh, is she better? By Dai then explained that her spirit was still good. She wanted to go down the mountain to find that big snake. Frost Cloud was furious and gritted her teeth. When I get better, I will immediately go and slaughter that snake. Don't let Slow know, or she will definitely have to be anxious with you. I wonder what she sees in that big snake. It's cold, bad and its teeth are poisonous. It's not good enough for Slowly. Never mind all that. The immediate priority is to make good use of your current injuries and passed her slowly not to let her go down the mountain. Frosty Cloud is full of confidence. I will definitely not let her have a chance to meet that snake. Frost Cloud's speech then caught my attention in the room. Is Frost Cloud back? Well, it's me who's back. Frost Cloud went straight to the second. Let me take a look at your wound. The wound is covered in blood scabs and dirt. You're not afraid of inflammation and infection. I'm not a witch doctor. How would I know how to dress a wound? Don't move. I'll clean and bandage it for you. Twenty minutes later, it's bandaged. I've put some medicine on it. Rest at home for a few days. And don't let the wound get wet. If it gets infected, you'll have to wait for amputation. What does amputation mean? I'm gesturing. Amputation means cutting off your arm. That's not so bad, is it? Then I'll listen to you and not go out. For the next few days, although slowly wanted to sneak down the mountain to see Sang Knight, he could only hold back the anxiety in his heart and accompany Frosty Cloud to nurse his wounds at home. But my absent-mindedness was noticed by Frosty Cloud. You want to go down the mountain to look for that big snake, don't you? I frowned see when I heard this. My heartbeat accelerated, as if I was being talked into it. No, I promised to go look for him before, but I went back on my word. I have to go and explain the misunderstanding clearly. Frosty Cloud immediately became anxious. After that, are you going to bring him home and mate with him? I didn't mean that. Then what do you care if he misunderstood you? He has nothing to do with you after that anyway. This, I immediately retorted to him. This is my business. Are you meddling too much? 
Then I turned around and left. I went to clean down the animal skin bandage. Frosty Cloud still wanted to call me back. After that I went to the river. Frost Cloud was right. It was me who kept thinking about saying night. I'm sitting here, but I can't forget the look on Sun Yu's face when she was hurt. Sun Yu's jewel is still with me. He gave it to me himself. He was the one who saved me and protected me so that I could return to the White Emperor again. I want him to know that I didn't mean to run away and leave him behind. I wanted to explain myself to him and clear up the misunderstanding. A footstep came and I looked up. Bye Dai. When did you come back? He then asked me. Why are you here alone? I see you moping. I turned my head. No. I was cleaning up the animal skins. Bai Dai looked at me like I was thinking about something. Let's go. I'll show you something good. Why he scooped me right up? I shyly asked him what it was. You'll know when you go see it. White Emperor picked me up and we came here. Looking at the scene in front of me, my eyes lit up and I couldn't seem to believe it. The fruits here are all ripe. I didn't expect it to be this big. See, Ace, your bird feather vine has fruited. That's great. The illustration says that this fruit can be used as a substitute for flour. I looked to White Emperor. Can you cut it open and take a look? White Emperor lifted his claws and brushed them. The fruit was split open. I took a spoon and started digging into the pulp inside. You can scoop out the pulp and dry it. Then get a stone mill to grind the pulp into powder. Pack Tai. Can you find a stone to make it like this? That's it. The pulp goes in here and the ground powder comes out this way. Whitey carried two big stones over to me. Then he followed the figure I drew and made it like that. Is that so? It didn't take long to make the grinding stone. I can't say it's exactly similar. I can only say it's exactly the same. Put the flesh of the sun-dried bird feather fruit in it and grind it up. Frost Cloud came over with an exasperated voice. Don't just keep Chirati busy. I can do things too. Then Frost Cloud, you can help grind the pulp. He happily became a licking dog. Only I can help slowly grind the fruit pulp. Watching the fruit pulp juice flow into the basin, the flower of the orc world. I tasted the flavor. Well, it really tastes like it. That's the flavor. I have flour. I'll make you dumplings tonight. With flour in hand, I can make dumplings. The two of them looked at me and danced happily, although they didn't know what dumplings were. But my little females were so cute. The sun is setting in the west. The evening sun is reflecting on the rocky hills. The fragrant dumplings are ready. I made fresh meat dumplings. You guys try them. Both of you are eating the dumplings. The vegetables you grew are not good. But these dumplings are good. I tasted the dumplings I made and cried tears of joy. It really tastes like dumplings. I can't believe I can still eat dumplings in the beast world. By Dai looked at me. It seems that slowly really likes eating dumplings. Randomly, he said, then plan more bird feather vines in the future. But this one has to be looked after by me yet. Frost Cloud then asked me, Why? I inexplicably lowered my head. If I don't go down to the ground to take care of those vegetables, they will grow very slowly. Frosty Cloud said, By the way, our vegetables grow well because of your heart of the divine wood. So, I'll go with you to look after those vegetables. Bai Dai seemed to have thought of something and frowned. I then asked him, what was wrong and Bai Dai's eyes changed. Frost Cloud looked at the situation and became alert. You don't want to go see that big snake, do you? It's amazing that a guy as rough as Frost Cloud noticed. Was my expression too obvious? Not really. What's so great about him that you can't stop thinking about him? Is it just because snakes have to ding dons? What the hell are you talking about? So slow down. Does it have to take both of us to fuck you together for you to completely forget about that snake? As I listened to these dirty words, my face turned red and I felt a little dizzy. Ease. If you want, I can change it for you. Both of them stare at me dead in the face. Not really. Well it can be, I promise you that I won't see Sane Night again. Then I huffed and picked up the pot. I'll go wash the pot. Both of them watched me leave in anger. Neither of them said anything. Did we go to far just now? By Dai also noticed Frost Cloud's words. Then he asked him, so you want to slow down to find him or even bring him back? Of course I don't want to. Frosty Cloud then shouted. That's good. By Dai's eyes then so. I went to help his clean things together. I cleaned the pot. By Dai and Frost Cloud were just trying to scare me on purpose. But the effect was damn good. It's normal for Bai Dai to recoil though. He should have understood what Song Yao was thinking. Looks like I need to figure out how I can help Sang Knight and repay him for saving my life. I'm standing at the edge of the pool and White Emperor comes here. He picks me up and I look back in panic. Whitey what are you doing? The pot in my hand fell in the pool. He then asked me, are you angry? I lowered my tongue. It's me who didn't care about your feelings. Slowly, I am your male. I can satisfy you with whatever you want but I really don't want another male to share you. The two of them hugged each other tightly with some difficulty. Whitey slowly undressed again, 
and the thought of slowing down to be coveted by another made her like a tear in his heart. By Dai's eyes were so naked that his body was trembling, but he couldn't refuse. Is it the power of the Lord's ring, or is it inside me? I simply can't resist against Bai Dai. The woman was very shy inside. She was actually picked up by him, making her have no time to prepare for it, slowly panting to hold up her body, and asked Bai Dai to stop the following action. Let me apply the medicine. Okay. By Dai's gentle eyes instantly changed, with me to do still need to smear medicine, slowly shyly whispered in his ear, I do not want to give birth to a baby, his eyes couldn't be seen to become lost, lowered his head inside the struggle to accept them, so after a few moments of silence, by Dai's low magnetic voice sounded, the potion is in this bottle, he did not wait for the little female's response, directly reached out and took it, and said he would wipe it for him. The little female opened her mouth wide to express her astonishment. Why are you all doing this? What kind of love interest is this in the end? Only to see by Dai had already poured the potion onto his hand, and with a face that insisted on applying it for her, she really couldn't refuse. His broad and warm palms gradually and slowly moved downwards until it reached that place and stopped. His big hands began to rub powerfully, slowly and uncontrollably hummed out. That place was very shy for herself. White Emperor seems to be extremely restrained restlessness, but also in the young girl's ear whispering. Want to go further down inside a little, waiting until all the application is completed. I die this is a light breath, moving long eyelashes flickering. Then I'm going to come in. Slowly you are my mate. I want to really have you. Become your most important person. The little female gasped in enjoyment and shyness. Why you're the first orc I've ever met. The most important family member I've ever had in this world. They both reached the peak of their relationship. Kissing with physical and mental satisfaction and pleasure. Suddenly she felt a flash of something strange. The restlessness in her body made her cry out. In her heart by Dai is the most important person. By Dai looked up with a flushed face. His eyes did not seem to be satisfied. So he whispered softly. I'll carry you back to your room. She was stunned eyes wide open. Being size small teardrops are still hanging in the eyes. I look to fall not to fall. White Emperor seems to feel her nervousness. Doting hugged up a smile. This thing we are not yet finished. When the end has been forgotten. Only know that when I woke up. It was already the next day afternoon. By dying frosty cloud. Both tried their best to stop me from going to find Sang Knight. And slowly I just had to give up. Only after Sang Yeo had left for good did by die and Frosty Cloud bring me to the vegetable field, but there seemed to be a sound coming from the distance. It turned out to be your mate, Black Skin Frosty Cloud, who was holding to large wooden buckets to deliver water. Sweet water vegetables need a lot of watering. It's too tiring to keep you running around. Frosty Cloud waved his hand with disinterest. It's all a piece of cake. Slowly the next proposal shocked him. Actually want to dig a large water canal. Frosty Cloud was full of questions and puzzled. As the wolf clan leader himself, he didn't even know what an aqueduct was. She patiently demonstrated for him to explain, to bring the water from the river to the vegetable field. In the future watering will be much more convenient. Frosty Cloud's little beads of sweat broke out in disbelief. Although the little female was very smart, was this thing really feasible? By Dice suddenly appeared behind them. His low and magnetic voice came out. I think this idea is very good. My family slow always have all kinds of godly ideas, and in the end they all work. I believe that this time it will definitely work as well. She was touched by the feeling of being trusted. Frosty Cloud was not willing to lag behind. I also believe that slowly will be able to do it. So early the next morning, the aqueduct project began to take action. Frosty Cloud led the orcs to dig an aqueduct by the river. He is worthy of being the leader of the wolf clan. He even drove a few orcs to work with great vigor, as if everything was easy. Just see the small orcs suddenly become the body, arranged in an orderly manner. Bright claws, frantically digging holes in the ground. I was thinking of making a few hoes, but the claws of the orcs are much stronger. Little Frosty Cloud was just about to rest for a moment when he noticed his little female, shouting adorably across the street to slow down. You white tinder don't sunbathe here. Little female soft explanation. I come to pick some vegetables by the way to see you. Although the orc state is sometimes very old, but the wolf Frost Cloud is not too cute. She waved her hand, intending to leave, and reminded Frost Cloud to go home early. They were waiting for him to have dinner together. The love brain matriarch came online at once. Her little face flushed as she whacked her tail. My family just can't stay away from me. The little woman walked forward with a basket of vegetables on her back. The sunlight shone warmly on her body, causing her to slow down her pace. These beets should be almost ready, slowly holding the basket of vegetables very satisfied. Crystal clear big eyes blinking. I did not expect this trip. There are other games. The ground actually fell a lot of wild fruit. This fruit should be able to eat it. 
So she smiled happily. The fruit can be taken back to make gem. It's not very delicious. She picked up the fruits and intended to leave. Unaware that behind her on the tree, a snake's tail drooped silently. The python seemed to feel something strange, and the tip of its tail actually wiggled violently. It seemed to be staring at the figure of the little female, its body happily spitting out its tongue, as if signaling its next move. After three days of hard work by the orcs, the first aqueduct was successfully dug. The fruits of their victory hung high. Each one was red and looked sweet and savory. By Dai just climbed up the tree to pick the fruits. When the delicate voice of Chu Yu rang out. Dear Bai Dai, be careful. She and Frosty Cloud were at the bottom picking up the fruits, and many fruits were falling down from above, making them look in a good mood. Luckily, we don't have many fruit trees. We finally finished picking them before dark. We'll find a chance to put them in the space. The other orcs were also very busy. After all, this was their harvest. The harvested fruits and vegetables are too many, although the space can accommodate them. But they are more than the tribe can digest. White Amber, like an old father, urged, Do you want to consider selling some? Otherwise, it would be a pity to let it go bad. Don't you forget, the Rock Wolf clan has a regular market, and there will be beastmen from other clans too. Trading our fruits and vegetables for something else sounds like a good idea. On the day of the fair, since it was the first fair of the spring, all the nearby tribes came to trade, slowly standing on the side of the uneasy feeling. Then the last market orcs more. At this time an arm reached out to her, directly lifted the little female to the top of the arm. White Emperor is like a sweet big brother, blocking all the sight for her. We are over there. Frost Cloud has already found a good position. I saw the black skinned, Frosty waving vigorously from the opposite side of the street and shouting at the top of his voice. Our stall is here. Frost Cloud brought the vegetables and fruits ahead of time. They were neatly and orderly lined up, waiting for the other orcs to deal with them. Slowly confident in myself, the vegetables and fruits I grew are sweet and delicious, as long as those who have eaten them will never forget them. There are so many orcs today, surely I can sell them all, and then exchange them for crystals to complete the mission, and go to the peak of life. Half an hour later, the bazaar was full of orcs, all of them with big bags full of money. I looked at the noisy street. The sweat of loss gradually flowed down. My vegetables were not bought by orcs at all. After all, except for the rocky wolf orcs, most of the orcs here eat meat, and I have never seen these things before. I'm afraid of the deep alley. It seems that I have to rely on myself to shout. Delicious beets and fruits are. Everyone to try it. Don't miss it. This shouting out directly to the two little wolf and tiger confused. Slowly do not care what they think. Beautiful female sister. Want to try to eat a little. After eating the skin moist and better look oh. The beastman smelled a little disgusted. You cannot be lying. There is no meat aroma. Frost Cloud angrily came. They grabbed his collar threatened. Dare to say that slow planted things do not taste good. Simply looking for death. Female sister tasted a small fruit. Suddenly her eyes lit up. The taste is really good I want some. But slowly, having just made a deal, welcomed a second female sister. Is this fruit really tasty? The orc said. Since my female likes it, I'll take all of these. And slowly told the crowd. I want herbs or crystals in exchange. The beastman scratched his head in embarrassment. I don't have any crystals. Herbs. What are herbs? The slowly, she was about to take out the sheepskin map. At this time, the white emperor shielded her. From view and gently urged the little female not to let others see your sheepskin atlas. Words and books are very precious. If you take them out rashly, you will cause some unnecessary trouble. White Emperor is right I am too careless. But it's not hard to slow down. I'll dictate to you the shape of the herbs. It's this and then that shape. The little rabbit walked in the back of the room's eyes lit up and shouted exaggeratedly from the back of the room. I know this kind of plant you're talking about. He didn't wait for anyone's reaction. He went home quickly after the notification and told her that he would bring it right away. As expected, he acted very quickly. The little rabbit man held the herb in both hands and walked towards the front. You quickly see is this kind of grass. I didn't realize that this was a herb that can clear heat and relieve coughs. It's one of the herbs I need. The rabbit wanted 50 fruits or some crisp vegetables. Is this okay? Then I will give you 10 sweet fruits, 10 crispy fruits and 10 sweet water cresses. The little rabbit man nodded approvingly. Our tribe still has a lot more we can come and get it. At this time, Bai Dai suddenly spoke. We will be here every market day. Come to buy if you need it. Dong Yu returned with his bag full of vegetables. The tribe will love these vegetables. It seems that exchanging fruits and vegetables for medicinal herbs is feasible. I hope I can have a chance to exchange them for crystals today. The sun is gradually starting to set. The setting sun gradually shines on the earth. There are still many orcs in the marketplace, slowly at the side of the very embarrassed and helpless. It seems that I still think to beautiful. 
Fruits were sold out and vegetables were sold out, but she didn't receive a single crystal stone. White Emperor is responsible for solving her problems. Crystals are very precious. Basically will not appear here. It seems that the system's mission is not easy to complete this time. I still want to collect five colors of crystals. The White Emperor seems to be able to see through her thoughts at a glance. Do you want the crystals so badly? He can't get them if the female says she wants them. Seeing that it is really the most reliable male, he opened his hand and said that he had saved the crystals. Do you need them? In the center of Bai Dai's big hand, there were two pieces, one blue and one red. Slowly, her heart was overwhelmed with excitement. These are the colors I don't have. So she took it with both hands, and the system began to broadcast. Receive the red and blue crystals. The host's quest progress is still short of one piece. Already have for crystals. Just one last crystal. One will be able to complete the task. Frosty Cloud, on the other hand, was very upset that the dead titer was looking for another opportunity to please slowly. We can also ask the Wish Doctor of the Black River tribe. He has a lot of knowledge. Maybe he can have the crystals you want. White Emperor nodded with approval. Let's pack up and go to the tribe. Frosty Cloud shouted fiercely. Don't order me stinky tiger. Slowly to this quarrel is not strange. Let's quickly pack up and set off. Set off to the Black River tribe to look for crystals. Inside the Black River Wild Horse tribe, a house built of straw. The orcs have a very free nature. Half of them look like human beings, but the bottom half of their bodies are horses' hooves. The witch doctor of the Black River Wild Horse tribe, Melly, looked at them in puzzlement. What are you doing here looking for me? He swore with certainty as well as certainty that I will not let the wild horse tribe be used by you, and Frosty Cloud moved forward to make him calm down. It's better to have one more ally than one more enemy. I think you guys can be allies. As I was told by Longju, the witch doctor, Men Lee seems to be thinking of a deceased person. His expression suddenly relaxed a bit. That old man died a very unhappy death, right? He expected it, but he still poked around like this. Men Lee and the witch doctor seemed to have known each other before. Dr. Longju fought to the end, protecting our rock wolves and their descendants. A superhero of our clan, you are willing to convince the wild horse clan chief to help us fight the Black River Wolves, but you also wanted to avenge Longju's death, didn't you? You're overthinking it. It's just that we're all witch doctors and we feel sorry for him, but he mentioned Longju witch doctor. Manly witch doctor looks a bit sad. Is it a good friend? As expected, she was right. Manly even began to spit. After all, to death is still an old bachelor. Frosty Cloud won't allow anyone to say anything bad about him. Monk Knight Witch Doctor, aren't you also an old bachelor? Dare to say something bad about Longju Witch Doctor? This Witch Doctor Manly looks strange. When he talks about Twitch Doctor Longju, he becomes very strange. Maybe they are both Witch Doctors. They sympathize with each other. That's why they can let go of Longju's death. Monique is full of questions. Have you decided on a new witch doctor? Of course, it's not that easy for us to replace the witch doctor. But this time, we're here mainly to exchange items. He looked impatient and pride. What do you have to exchange? It's my female, who wants to exchange fruits and vegetables, for medicinal herbs or crystals. And no one else has any. So, of course, I'm coming to you. Manly seemed to hear a sentence. You're female. You really have a female. Only to see the small female hiding behind him. Is looking at him with a worried face. You even turn character as a female. I thought that you want to go Langju's old way. Frost Cloud hastily explained. That is I did not sincerely love each other before. This feeling of love. You probably won't have it for the rest of your life. Monday Lee Witch Doctor as if stabbed into a knife. Slowly watched them fight back and forth. These beastmen are childish ghosts. Manly said he would not give them herbs. Their things are good if the crystals he did have. The little female said, only the introduction can not. You still often this sweetheart dishes. And then we are talking about the crystal stone. Out of curiosity, he walked forward and folded off a leaf. Originally impatient, which Dr. Manly sighed after tasting it. This leaf is really delicious. This vegetable is our unique variety. And we will have more fruits and vegetables soon. I think you wild horses will like it. It does taste good. He couldn't help but think back to the old days, when that tribe was still poor and destitute, the Rockwolf tribe wouldn't have had this plan before. Was it only when she came along that all this started to happen? He suddenly felt that his thoughts were a bit far away, so he looked at them with great satisfaction. This dish is very good. Two crystals should be enough. Buy all your vegetables and fruits. Slowly, he said in his heart that it was a pity that it was colorless crystals, but after all, it was better than nothing. If you have other colored crystals on your side, you can also exchange them for vegetables and fruits. Mainly was instantly adorable. Frost Cloud, this little female character is good. There is nothing to do. Quickly go. The Wild Horse Clan does not welcome you. Slowly suddenly shouted almost forgot. Machine has not been found so far. 
That guy is really cunning. After escaping from the Black River tribe, his whereabouts have been unknown. It's not easy to catch him. Can we put out a wanted notice? The orc said that it was the first time they heard that there was such a thing as a wanted notice and exactly how to use it, slowly explaining for the crowd. That is, whoever can catch Machin or provide clues will give him a generous reward. Although this is a very good solution, but we do not know what he looks like. How to tell everyone a wanted poster needs a portrait to identify the target. Let me take care of this problem. By Dai and Frosty Clout were surprised. How can a small female be so smart? It seems that no problem is too hard for her to handle. She suddenly thought that there was no ink, so she had to turn around and ask Man Lee if there was any liquid that could leave a mark. She didn't expect this witch doctor to say something amazing. The wild horse tribe has animal blood. When it was too late, Manly had already brought out the blood. This is what they used to record for marking. She secretly gave in her cheer. Can only use the blood to talk first. Later must find something. Can replace to do the ink. But the technique of drawing portraits. She could only take off her robes beforehand. After all, this blood stains she very much do not like. Ink stained on the outer robe can be a problem. This is her favorite robe. Manly stood by the side was very surprised. She is the female of the frost cloud. Although the little female is a small body, but the body is very white and beautiful. The guys seem to be able to see through them. Slowly stretched out a small finger and dipped a few drops of blood in the bowl. Then she used her finger to draw on the scroll. Although her body was small, her brain was not too good. She was very familiar with the look of the hemp green. The three orcs in the room all had serious faces, staring at her movements carefully. What exactly was this little female going to do? I bit my finger, stretched out my hand on the animal skin, and began to draw carefully, using blood to carefully depict a portrait of a person. After the quick drawing, I thought that while the blood was still wet, so I quickly turned my head and asked the White Emperor for another piece of animal skin. White Emperor took over a large group of animal skin. This cannot. I quickly reached out to take over, and then lowered his head to measure a bit, and even said yes. Subsequently, this large piece of animal skin, carefully spread and leveled out, placed on the ground to press the animal skin flat, followed by the start of topography. Frosty Cloud looked at this wave of my operation, puzzled to stand in place, touched his chin, full of question marks. What is this doing? I looked seriously at the animal skin on the ground, reached out and pressed down firmly, almost ready, then stood up, reach out and take the two skins shake off, and then show everyone. Finally topography is ready. You look, everyone is shocked. All of a sudden it became to portraits. Even the honorable females in the medium-sized city had never heard of knowing this. How did this little female get such a powerful spell? So I told everyone to just use this method. A simple topography. Ten down scenes of portraits can be completed very quickly. The white emperor is also very shocked. Slow can read and write can draw pictures. No a variety of dishes. How could it be so powerful? Looking at the girl in front of him who was constantly shining because of her knowledge, was simply shocking. The knowledge she knows is just too much. Frosty Cloud looked at such a girl. Her face was shocked, her face slightly reddened with admiration. Couldn't help but murmur in a low voice. Then T.S.K.E.D. Frost Cloud for the first time had a worry. Would it not be good enough for ease? But I also heard it. He also had the same thought in his heart. His face deepened as he reminded. Then work hard to raise the level of the beast's soul. Lest he be left behind by slowly in the future. Soon I was holding several sheets of animal skin. Rolled into a large roll. Reached out and handed it to Effort Frosty Cloud. Almost topped up the room sheet. Haven't drawn for a long time. A little hand draw. The painting is not very good. But the Frost Cloud had seriously look at me. Not stinging she prays. No one can draw better than you. He had a blush of anticipation asked, later when we have children, can you teach them to draw and write? I did not think he would ask this question. At the sight of the orcs heard this sentence. Instantly expression suddenly changed. Very unbelievable. In her shock, Frost Cloud suddenly woke up and realized that he had said the wrong thing. Frost Cloud, what on earth are you babbling on about? So can help but think. So precious knowledge. General orcs will be treated as a most important secret. It. And Slow now do not want children. How can I just open my mouth to let Slow teach it? So he's somewhat guilty about his head. Slowly sorry, should not say so. Just apologize. Frost Cloud next second was shocked. Because I happily responded. Can I? If I have children, of course I will teach them all. If there are skills, maybe it will make them? In this world, easier to survive it. White Emperor and Frost Cloud are this. They were shocked and shouted, incredibly reminded. Such an important skill. Do not have to be reluctant to teach it. I smiled and told them, there's no need to force it, although I'm not ready now. But when I have children, I'll teach them what I know. I'll teach them all. Bye-bye.
Frosty Cloud, our future life will definitely get better and better. And then moved forward to hold the hands of the two men. By Dai deeply looked down at the girl, only to hear his voice softly shouting slow, then fell into deep memories. The first time I saw Ace, she had no body, just a lonely little female, weak and helpless. Her heart was pure and she treated everyone with sincerity. She was so good, and we were so lucky to have her. But then she showed more and more surprising powers. She can make a lot of things, all kinds of novelty. She can do all kinds of things. It's just shocking. If she left the Rockwolf clan in the future, and went to a mid-level C, or even a BC, she might not be able to hide her abilities anymore. The secrets and abilities on Slowly's body will surely attract the attention of those guys. I must be careful at that time, the envoy thought to himself. It's really that simple to get so many portraits out, and they're exactly the same. And this little female even casually, this little female even casually passed on this magical skill to others. It's really scary. Is this the hidden power of the Rockwolf clan? Hearing a voice coming from behind him. So what is the clan leader? Booker asked this is the portrait of Ma Ching. The painting is quite similar. Why are you guys here again? Why are you Rockwolf so annoying? Frost Cloud provoked him. I came to bring my little female to exchange goods with you. Booker's face was ugly, very puzzled by his mate. At this time slowly stood out, then bowed his head to greet Booker with a big smile. Booker saw slowly, instantly like a thunderbolt from the sky, inwardly wailing and crying. Such a beautiful and lovely mate. The same patriarch. I am still a bachelor. Then Lee again lowered his head and came closer, muttering in Booker's ear. Tell him what just happened. Booker's face was gloomy. I heard the witch doctor Manly say, you are selling good vegetables and fruit. Fruits. I intend to come to buy some. So Whitey stood out and asked, So, Chief Booker, do you have any color crystal stones other than colorless? Booker frowned tightly, his face dark, very serious look. He lightly opened his lips and asked, What color do you want? White Emperor told him, Purple or gold can be. Really do not have if green is also okay. Booker cheeks crossed a drop of cold sweat. He looked grim, purple and gold are both medium crystals. You've got a big mouth, he said, but by Dai didn't back down. The atmosphere between the two is tense. Medium crystals can be exchanged by going to the exchange in BC. I don't want to go there because I think it's too far away. If you want to trade in the B-City exchange, you need to have more than three stars and a guarantor. This male orc's origin is not simple. Uh. Booker had to take a bag of crystals, hand it over, so I quickly reached out and took it, happily opened the bag, put in the heart of the hand observation, finally set up, and finally with 30 colorless crystals, for a green crystal, but I didn't expect this green crystal to emit a glittering light, and the scene behind me quickly changed. I couldn't help but marvel at it. At this time, the system prompted me, congratulations Congratulations to the host for completing the fire colored crystal collection task and obtaining a special reward. I stood in this white space, looking around. Is this the world of the system? Just at this time the sky suddenly appeared objects. It was a light blue rectangular box. I thought with some anticipation, what kind of reward would it be? Soon the box was opened. It was a book and a compass. So I reached out and took the book, and on it was the first volume of the mineral illustrated book. Then I got the compass. It's so small and delicate. But what's the purpose of this? I was puzzled. The system suddenly prompted me. This is a treasure hunting compass. Wide-eyed and a little shocked, began to listen carefully to the system's introduction. The system seriously explains. It can't help you to find the vein within a radius of 500 meters. Heard this sentence. I instantly excited eyes. Clench fists happy thought. This is a vein. Count this gold and silver treasure. Uh, carefully and seriously look at the hand. Can't not help but think. This small compass. Can't really find the vein of ore. I used to be just a miserable office worker. And could not afford to buy gems and diamonds. Suddenly I frowned see for a moment. As if I thought of something. In my heart, I laughed out loud. Do I want to achieve freedom of wealth in this beast world? Diamonds, gold and silver mines. I'm coming. But suddenly my face fell down. Embarrassed and frowned in place. With their current conditions? Cannot smell metal. Uh. I can't help but cry in my heart, annoyed at what I've missed out on. At this time, the system suddenly voiced. The host has completed all the tasks in the novice period. The system will soon be upgraded. During the period automatically fall into a state of dormancy. I couldn't help but stare in disbelief and ask the system, you going to go into hibernation? The system told her, the level of the system also follows the host level of improvement changes. The host then just came to this world, become stronger. I was touched by the time. The next second, the system's cold and inorganic voice rang out, just a little bit, and even stretched out his hand then. I couldn't help but complain that it was so annoying. After the system is upgraded, it will open up different functions according to the host's physique, and the specific content is waiting to be reopened. 
looking up at the system slowly and on the eyes. Cannot help but think, sounds like a very powerful look, but in advance I also have to become stronger. So I opened my mouth and clenched my fist to cheer myself up. I wish you success in upgrading. I will also cheer up. The system lowered its head and smiled gently at me and promised to do so. Also sent me a blessing. Also wishing an early birth. I could not help but slide a drop of cold sweat on my head. This will not be necessary. The system then quickly disappeared. Bidding me farewell. Then we'll see you after the upgrade. So in a flash, I blinked and was back in the beast world. Just in time to hear someone shouting at me. White Emperor and Frost Cloud were waiting not far away. Looking back at me. Reminding us that we were going back. So I answered in a hurry. Out a bag. Thinking that I had to hurry up and put away the compass and book first. And then study it in detail when it was safe to do so. Frost Cloud told by Dai, I still have to rush back, the Black River tribe to see the situation, and then go back to the Rock Wolf tribe, and discuss with everyone about the vegetables that need to be picked and transported. White Emperor nodded, and all of a sudden bent down and transformed into the appearance of a humanoid white tiger, and turned his head to look at me, telling me to come up quickly. So I Saturday on White Emperor's tiger's back, and Frost Cloud also changed back to his wolf body, carrying a big parcel, ready to go back together. I turned my head and looked at Frosty. If it was two months ago, I wouldn't have dared to think that I would be riding on a tiger now. I couldn't help but put my face on the tiger's back, happily thinking about white emperor's fur. It's so beautiful and soft, it's too comfortable to touch around, as white emperor said before. There are often cross-species combinations between orcs, and the offspring conceived is based on who is stronger. That is to say, if the parents are stronger, then the offspring will be stronger than the parents. In other words, if I get pregnant in the future, I'll give birth to a tiger cub or a wolf cub. So I stretched out my hand and gently stroked my belly with happy anticipation and a gentle face, although it was hard to imagine. But if it was my child, it should be very cute, right? I reached out and gathered the clothes on my body, looking forward to it. But unexpectedly, a sharp claw suddenly appeared in front of my eyes, grabbing something and cutting through my eyes. So I was caught off guard and startled. After I stabilized myself, I looked up to the sky and asked curiously if such a big bird was hunting. Frost clouds aside obviously also noticed this scene. Face dark and fierce anger scolding. Stinking bird, how dare you scare me slowly? Cursed and rushed to the front, chasing the bird to run. You give me down. I want to teach you a lesson. Looking at him like this, I was a little speechless, but then feel a little funny. Did not hold back a snort of laughter. Frost clouds how so lovely, but also can not help but a little homesick. Raised his head in the heart thought. Mom and dad, I am not alone in this beast world. I will definitely live a good life. Sitting on the back of the white emperor, looking up at the sky flying birds, on the other side of the rocky mountain, there were several feathered people flying in there, they were chattering and discussing something, it's good to move here, the scenery is good, the terrain is good, and most importantly, at the foot of the mountain, there are a lot of crisp and tasty vegetables and fruits, I don't know why the wolf orcs, who only like to eat meat, want to grow vegetables, I hope the wolf chief, will come back soon and trade fruits and vegetables with us. The children on the side obviously also heard these words. Some curious thoughts excitedly said to the companion beside him. Have you heard ah? There are delicious fruits, but the sight of the little friend is a little afraid. The wolf clan old in the field. What can we do? So they muttered and discussed an idea. When they go back at night, then we can go. Soon it was evening, and a few children sneaked out into the field behind their parents' backs. The yellow kid was holding a red tomato. Wouldn't it be a bad idea for us to steal them like this? But the other kid didn't care. They didn't eat them. Wouldn't it be a waste? Anyway, when their patriarch comes back, our patriarch will discuss the amount with them. Forgive them not to dare to say anything. After saying that, he casually threw the fresh fruit in his hand onto the ground. He also said that he would have a good meal tonight, and stepped on the fruits without caring about them. And they were all trampled to pieces, said and eyes glowing, looking at the green vegetables not far away, where the vegetables are particularly large, particularly watery. The gleeful stretch out his hand to the green vegetables to take. Constantly him and Hosmai, I want to eat a good time. Just as he was about to put it into his mouth, a huge snake with lustrous scales suddenly appeared on the side, startling him greatly. The kid was about to fly away when the snake opened its bloody mouth and bit him on the foot and calf. 
making him scream. His buddies notice the scene and turn pale, shouting in a panicked manner, There's a big snake here, run away. The python looked at these little kids, so can help but be scared, instantly ran away, felt a burst of speechlessness. Saint Knight sped out his tongue, and thought seriously in his heart, This is the vegetable field that slowly worked so hard to grow, no one can touch it. At this time I don't know when, I have fallen asleep. Sleepy slowly opened my eyes, the sunlight is warm and bakes around in me. It was very comfortable, so I Saturday up and looked around, a little confused about where this place was, still confused and did not react to it. Suddenly remembered, we did not return to the Rocky Mountain, ready to go to the Black River tribe today to exchange some things. I reached out and gathered the outer rib on the body. Suddenly, I heard a man's footsteps coming in. It was Bidey. He was holding a bowl of something in his hand. He quickly walked towards the bedside, reached out and handed it over. I cooked vegetable broth. Drink some. I immediately stared with glowing eyes. I quickly finished the bowl, couldn't help but burp, and patted my stomach happily. I couldn't help worrying about myself. Would I become fat if I ate like this? The white emperor was looking at me with caring eyes and asked what was wrong. I told him that I was worried that I would get fat if I ate too much. But the white emperor held him in his arms and comforted him. It's good to be fat. It's cute. Just as the two were hugging each other, I suddenly felt a line of sight that was staring grudgingly, so I raised my head to look. It was frosty clouds. Piercing cloud arrow girl found himself, anxiously came up and asked, Why only let white emperor hug you? I also want to hug you. He was a little jealous. When I heard this, by Dai hugged himself tightly behind me. I frowned see for a moment. I was hugged back by Bai Dai again, so I had to somewhat shyly change the topic. How is the business talk going? Frost clouds did not squeak for a moment, looking at the white emperor tightly embraced his arm, has been skimming his mouth very unhappy, rather resentful, but then immediately came up, gently sniffed the girl, they want to pack all our vegetables and fruits, vegetarian orcs are not the only wild horse tribe, the rabbit tribe, the sheep tribe, the cattle tribe will be interested in the things we grow, the more customers we have. The higher our price can be. I die heard these words and nodded, saying he knows. After going back, we have to expand our vegetable fields and fruit forests. Thus the production can't keep up with the sales. By Dai said, while reaching out and hugging slowly, causing people to blush. These decloathed beasts, while discussing things, while on their own up and down, tolerate no more. No need to tolerate. Face dark and heavy down. A foot kicked the toe out of the cave. You to hurry to catch up. Don't kiss in touch again. Frost clouds and white emperor a face of confusion fusion was driven out. A few people have been rushing, feel a little tasteless, in the neighborhood to find a nuclear brook stop, begin to drink water to rest. Just after drinking the water, they looked up and noticed that there were two cute little rabbits on the opposite side of the river. As long as they crossed the river, they would be almost at the boundary of the Rock Wolf clan. Just as I finished my thoughts, I heard someone shouting cheerfully, Slow down, Frosty Cloud Clan Chief. So I quickly looked up and saw that it was the same person I saw last time. Surprised to find that it was the rabbit boy from last time. The beets from last time were very tasty. Is there any more? We would like to exchange some of them. Frost Cloud at this time stood out. Now what beat to many orcs? Need to see. The subtext is that we raised the price. I was a little surprised. Frost Cloud actually know how to bargain. Really cannot see it. Frost Cloud told the teenager, find more herbs and crystals to exchange it. The rabbit teenager speak really bad. While Frosty was bargaining with the rabbit boy, White Emperor seemed to notice something from the side. So I asked him in a strange way, what's wrong? White Emperor quickly turned his head when he heard me ask, and said on his lips that it was nothing. But on his hand, he couldn't help fiddling with the grass for a while. Couldn't help but think to myself, the track marks here are not marks that would be left by a wolf, or something like that. In the end what kind of thing came here? Several people finally returned to the Rock Wolf clan. They first came to the vegetable garden to check, but they didn't realize that the clansmen were noisily gathering together at this time. They were holding fruits and vegetables in their hands, and their expressions were very grave. And at this time, some people turned their heads and suddenly found that the clan leader had returned. Immediately liked to find the backbone of the same. You can finally come back. I was a little curious to ask, why everyone in the vegetable field? What happened? The expressions of the beasts were all very sad and grave. The vegetables in our field have been stolen. Some people kept saying that the vegetables had been stolen. Hearing this, my expression is also quickly grave. Anxious to turn my head, some worry that our family's vegetable fields and orchards. But I did not expect. Anxious to go over to check. The vegetable field is still neat and tidy. Surprisingly, nothing happened. Cannot help but breathe a sigh of relief. 
and at this time, the white emperor reached out his hand, found a white feather from the ground, kicked it up, he carefully examined, sure of the answer, this is the feather of the feather tribe birds and beasts, guessing that it may be they have been here, the beastman beside him spoke anxiously, you just left a few days ago, the rocky mountain came a group of feather tribe, want to set up their home on the top of our mountain, as he spoke, he reached out and pointed, could the mountain top close to him be their doing, frosty clouds face sank completely, the vegetables should have been stolen and eaten by the birds and beasts of the Feather Clan. I'll go to them to ask for an explanation. The clansmen responded in Tron. Must they give a statement? The Rocky Mountain can not tolerate thieves. And at this time the mountain also suddenly appeared movement. Rockwolf Clan clansmen have looked up. Some shocked. Is the mountaintop feathered man flew down? And that's when I noticed it too. Couldn't help but stare with white eyes. Somewhat curious. Each of them had huge wings and flew like angels. Coming down in their direction. We all raised our heads to look at this group of feathered people. I can't help but look around. Thinking that these feathered people are wearing clothes. That are a little different from the wolf tribe orcs. It looks like the fabric material seems to be a little bit better. Just thought finished. They fell to the ground. At this time. The leader of the yellow-haired man opened his mouth and asked, Who is the clan leader of the Rockwolf clan? Frost Cloud then responded to him with a serious expression. I am the clan leader of the Rockwolf clan. The yellow-haired feathered man was aggressive. It's just as well that you have returned. We need you to give our clan an explanation. Where is the snake beast that injured our family's cups? Quickly handed him over. Frost heard this, his face gloomy, and I suddenly had a flash of light at this time. Couldn't help but frownsy for a moment. Doubtfully asked out, What snake beast? What is going on? But in my heart I was thinking, could it be saying night? Is he not gone yet? Blue-haired feathered man shouted. Last night our cubs, together down the mountain to play, suffered a snake beast attack. Go back, the injury is too heavy to die. Frost Cloud also rushed to his angry shout. This has nothing to do with us. It seems that these vegetable fields was spoiled like this. It is your feathered people engaged in the ghosted. The yellow-haired feathered man's face is gloomy. Just a district vegetable field. Our loss is a cub's life. Is not you harboring the snake beasts? We will make you pay for it. Thinking that they were so arrogant and rude. So I shouted angrily. These vegetables and fruits. These vegetables and fruits were planted to be used for exchanging things. It is obviously you feathered people. Without our consent to steal vegetables. Encountered accidents. Blame us. The feathered man's face was summer. How did he retort? Simply looking for death. I did not give in. The louder the more unreasonable. The two sides have been confronted. The yellow-haired feathered man began to plant. The wolves planted these vegetables. Said what for something? Just to lure our cubs. In the earth them right. He also stared fiercely and said that the Rock Wolf clan's heart couldn't be put to death. I was so angry by his shameless behavior that I couldn't speak. I didn't expect them to be so arrogant. This is the snake beast from the hillside down. Saw this scene shouted. Your cubs are I heard. Something to come at me. With others have nothing to do with. I saw a group of guys who do not know the depth of the guy. To steal food and also spoil the food. Feel bad on the mouth. Want to take revenge to find me to revenge. Saying night transformed into his real body. Revealing his sharp fangs with toxins. This matter has nothing to do with others. If you want to take revenge. Come at me. The Feather Clan swarmed up. Their faces were gloomy. They planned to attack from both sides. Their aim was to make Sonya's life worth a life. Saying he hissed at the Feather Clan. But even that didn't help. The natural enemy of snakes is the Feather Clan. Not to mention the fact that they are outnumbered. I watched this scene with a cold sweat on my back. At this point I felt very alarmed and shouted for Song Yao. The moment I went forward, I die reached out and stopped me. Don't go over. It's too dangerous. But in my heart I was still worried. Sing Ye's attack power is high. But the other party is a feather tribe can fly fast. Sing Ye doesn't have any advantages. In the moment when I was in a daze, Sing Ye was scratched by the claws of the feathered race. And Sang Ye's straight body shrank back. I turned my head and questioned. The two people standing behind me. Can you help Sang Ye? They didn't want to talk to me. But the two of them look like they have nothing to do with it. I sat very helpless. These two guys do not want to get involved in this matter at all. At this moment, my face was very ugly. I sighed helplessly. I never thought that the two of them would ignore it like this. Then I turned around and ran towards saying night. I was very angry at what the two of them were doing. If you don't go, I'll go. Right. But Dai looked at me and ran towards saying ye. His face was a little sad, but he was more worried about my safety. Frost clouds of the clan are persuade me, but I simply do not listen to persuasion. Straight ran over. They had to shout. Do not hurt slow slow. The feather clan, who was hovering in the sky, saw my figure and he gave orders to the clansmen on the ground. 
quickly stop that female. At that moment, Saint Knight transformed into a human body with a snake's tail, and he stared at me with his body full of wounds. Still worrying about why I came over, Saint Knight directly stretched out his snake tail and rolled me up. When I was rolled up, I was very surprised. I was pulled to his side by Saint Knight. He had a nervous face. What are you doing over here? It's dangerous here. Do you know that? At that moment, the Feather Clan behind us attacked us. Sonia sensed the movement behind us, but warned me to be careful. It protected me in his arms, preventing the Feather Clan from harming me, and I saw the sharp claws piercing Sonia's back. Sonia was only protecting me. He didn't know how to fight back, letting the Feather Tribe hurt him. I looked at Sonia in front of me. I was very worried about him. At this time, the White Emperor and Frost Cloud could not stand it any longer, and blocked the Feather Clan's attack and shouted at the Feather Clan in the sky. They couldn't bear it a bit. They opened their mouths and cursed. This is the feud between our Feather Clan and the Snake Beast. Don't meddle in it. Get lost. Frosty Cloud was even angrier when he heard this. In the territory of the Rock Wolf Clan, whatever happens is my business. Beware of pulling out all your bird feathers. The Feather Clan's clansmen looked at them and cocked on the sidelines. This is indeed the tribe of the Wild Eating Wolf Clan. So don't be too reckless. Frost Cloud's clan members also stepped in to defend their clan leader. Whoever dares to touch our clan leader, we will kill him. In this way, the Feather Clan didn't dare to make any more mistakes. Their faces were gloomy, and they could only let this matter end, even though they had all sorts of unwillingness in their hearts. Subsequently, the Feather Clan chief with his own people, oiling wings all fly away. The Wolf Clan also did not expect, so quickly can be resolved. At this time, the Frost Cloud is very dissatisfied. Rocky Mountain is our territory. Want to live here? How to ask me as the master? After Frosty Cloud finished his anger, he turned his head towards his clan members and ordered them to pick a few powerful orcs and go up to the top of the mountain together to meet their leader. The White Emperor was looking at me and saying ye, and if his eyes could kill, I think saying ye would have died in his hands long ago. I didn't care about Bai Dai's gaze. I took out a bandage directly from my body. I could only give Sane Knight an emergency bandage first. By Dai looked at the scene. His face was very ugly. The atmosphere around him was like an ice cellar, making people feel ashamed of themselves. I looked at in order to save me, and was seriously injured Sane Knight. I feel very guilty. I can only take him back to recuperate first. At this moment, Bai Dai clenched his fist tightly, and questioned me viciously. Slowly, remember what you promised. I felt very confused and lowered my head helplessly. I remembered what I promised by day, but I can't leave Sang Yu behind. When I turned my head to look at Sang Yu, leaning against a tree with scars all over his body, he was cowering and didn't dare to look back at me. I stared at him with mixed emotions. He is like this now. I have to take him back. If you want to punish me afterwards, I'll accept it. White Emperor stared back at me with a gloomy face. He couldn't do anything about me. He didn't say anything, but in his heart he still cared about me very much. Just like that, Bai Dai directly turned around and left. Now he is probably very disappointed in me. I shouted behind him, but he didn't turn around. I looked at the direction Bai Dai left. He did not give me any opportunity to explain. Bai Dai angry. He has never been like this. In his mind, I'm just a bad female. I guess. I stood alone. The face of Bai Dai was always in my mind. Song Ya suddenly called out to me. That's when I came back to my senses. I hurriedly reminded Song Ya that I hadn't bandaged up yet. Don't move. Afterwards, I picked up the bandage and wrapped the wound. Sang Yi was shocked when he noticed my trembling hands. When he turned his head back in surprise, he saw me with an aggrieved look on my face. At that moment, I couldn't hold back my tears. Sang Yi looked at me gently. You go back with them. The injuries on your body are simply fine. In fact, you don't need to be so torn up about it. I unconsciously sniffled. My eyes contained tears. It's none of your business. It's me who didn't handle it well. Can you still walk? He heard what I said and nodded. He got up and tiddied up his clothes. I looked at him and my tears flowed down again. I assisted Sang Yi, walking towards the road home. I will take good care of you until the wound heals, as a compensation for my breach of trust. Sang Yi turned his head and looked at me with deep emotion. He didn't need my compensation. Of course I knew what he meant. I then did not answer his words. He thought in his heart. There is a sentence he cannot say. So already very sad. Cannot let her be embarrassed. Just as I was walking forward with Sang Knight. Frosty Cloud suddenly stood in front of us. Blocking our way. So I was in a difficult position. Frosty Cloud stared at me with a gloomy face. You promised not to bring him into our family home. I was very helpless. Explain to him seriously. This is what I owe him. Must personally pay him back. Otherwise I will be upset in my life. 
After hearing my words, Frosty Cloud was very annoyed. You are the head of the family. Everything is at your disposal. Okay. Then he left. I brought Sangni to our house. Eh. I took the herbs and put them on his wound very carefully. But suddenly as I stayed on me. This is Slow's home. Clean and warm. And Slow's scent. I stared at him with my lovely eyes and asked Sonya seriously. Why did you hurt the Feather Clan's cups? Send night. However, had a disdainful face? There was no reason but I believe in his character. He wouldn't hurt the cubs for no reason. There must be a reason for it. At this point, Sany smiled bitterly. I'm the first person who is willing to believe him and still want to listen to his explanation. Sonya recalled that when he was injured before, he was walking alone in the snow. No one was willing to believe him. He was forced to flee the temple. He was forced to run away from the temple, and he had long been used to being disliked and isolated by the people he had been displaced by, and by the people he had fled to avoid being hunted. It wouldn't have been so bad if he'd been living in exile. But he met me, and I shone into his life like a ray of light. I was thrilled when I realized that he was trying to protect the vegetable patch and the fruit grove. And that's why he hurt the cub. Sanyo is a honest person. He would not do anything to harm the world. They not only do not feel guilty about stealing food, but also maliciously destroy my orchard. I looked at him with glowing eyes. Your intentions are good. If it wasn't for you, the vegetables and fruit trees in the field would have been ruined. It's those with the people who are to blame, who told them to steal but I'm a little puzzled by saying Knight's nice words. I forgot that this is a world of orcs. It's not uncommon for them to kill their rivals for food and to fight for territory. I got up and looked at Sonya. I'll go find you some food. In the large cave, only saying he was left alone. He was sitting quietly at the table. At this moment, a flying bird flew by outside, making a screeching sound. However, Baidai was sitting by the stream, listening to the slow flow of the stream, and his mood didn't improve. Baidai stroked the ring finger of his left hand. That's the couple's ring he wore with me. At this moment, Frosty Cloud came over and looked at by Dai sitting on the ground. He was furious. The sun is going down. You still don't go home. He looked at the silent by Dai and shouted angrily. That's enough. If you don't stop, I'll kick you out of the house. By Dai slightly lowered his head, turning the ring on his ring finger. Slowly really cared about that snake beast. At this moment, the white emperor looked at the frost cloud gloomy face. The still slow to sheer half of you is already my limit of tolerance. Frost Cloud sitting on the ground is very angry. This matter is our say. Today we chased away a snake beast. What about tomorrow? Can we stop it? Both of them fell into silence at the same time. Frosty Cloud cursed by Dai in his heart. He didn't say anything again. This tiger is really yin yang strange. Frosty Cloud remembered how slow she was. Her character was too soft. Whoever treated her a little better, she couldn't help but return the favor to the other person. By Dai heard Frosty Cloud's advice to him and felt physically and mentally exhausted. How easy it is to change someone. At this time, Frosty Cloud turned his head. The corners of his mouth rose slightly. He does not want me to change. Let me be myself is the best choice. Because Frosty Cloud, he likes me to be soft. And easy to be soft. I also use this to pin him down. By I also recognize his idea. If I become selfish and self-centered, just like those females who are only utilitarian, I won't be the same person I was in the beginning. At this time, the confusion in the heart of the White Emperor finally got the answer. I usually rough and tumble, think quite thoroughly. Frost Cloud stood up with a big smart face. Otherwise his face was gloomy. He felt that I was not an ordinary female. These words of the White Emperor was very surprised. He did not expect. Frost Cloud actually also perceived this point. Frosty Cloud remembered how I seriously dressed up, as if I didn't belong to their world at all. His face was a bit embarrassed. He always had a premonition that a lot of unusual things will happen in the future slowly. Frosty Cloud turned his head to look at Baidai. If more and more powerful enemies appear in the future, can we rely on the two of us to protect slowly? He thought that I don't even have the ability to protect myself now. He was very worried that they for their own selfish desires, they will treat my safety without regard. Frosty Cloud suddenly stood up. Nothing can be more important than the safety of slowly. He can accept the other male beasts to protect me together. By Dai clenched his fist tightly. Frosty Cloud was right. Slowly is special. Her kind of physique will attract countless covets. He strongly agreed with Frosty Cloud. What if she gets hurt because of possessiveness? They need more helpers to protect to slow down. At this time, by Dai kissed the ring in his hand. The main thing is to become stronger yourself to be able to protect slowly.
Bai Dai's face was gloomy, but his eyes were firm. Slowly, we will definitely protect you well. At night time, Bai Dai returned to the cave, outside the cave to watch the slow, in serious cutting meat. Bai Dai quietly walked in and hugged me from behind. He reached out and grabbed the knife in my hand, intending to cut the meat. At this time, my body involuntarily trembled. My heart was very sad. He sensed that I was not right. His face was panicked, and he hurriedly asked me what was wrong, but I didn't know how to explain. Seeing that I didn't make a reply, Bai Dai directly reached out to hold my shoulders and turn me around. When I turned around, my tears snapped and fell, aggrieved, inquiring him, you're not angry anymore. Whitey was puzzled as to how he could be crying like this. Me, I hugged Bai Dai and cried loudly. At this point Bai Dai patiently calmed me down. He would never be angry with me. He saw that I care about Sonya and Renel to calm down. He reached out and wiped my tears. I choked and explained to him that I have you and Frosty Cloud now and that's enough for me. I followed that up with, I'll talk things over with Saint Yo when he's healed from his injuries. Bai Dai looked at me and got in a much better mood. He knew I was worried about his emotions. He didn't forget to pacify me, but I didn't expect it. But Bai Dai said, there was no hurry to send Sang Knight away. I was really surprised when the words came out of his mouth. I questioned him doubtfully, but he took care of my feelings. Let Sonya stay and stay for some more time. After all, he saved you. Hearing these words, I was in a very surprised mood. Bai Dai's attitude is too strange. Obviously so resistant before. How that attitude changed. I was so excited that I hugged Bai Dai. As long as Bai Dai was not angry, I was really afraid that Bai Dai would be angry and leave me. Bai Dai looked at me in his arms. His heart is very happy. His slow do not need to know the cruel reality. Just need to be happy and safe is good. At this time, the White Emperor felt the cave saying night. He said that it did not mind. His eyes are still very honest clear at him. He grimaced and didn't say anything. But in his heart, he was playing with his mind. As for the rest, let him take care of it. Sing also glared back, the two made eye contact, this quiet battlefield, hidden a huge storm, the next morning, the sun was just peeking out, it was a sunny day and the mood was very pleasant, frosty clouds sprinted over from outside the cave, grimly shouting, I'm starving, are we going to eat, I sat away at the table, looking at the food on the table, in a very happy mood, thinking that there were more people, the table could finally be used, but when they sat away at the table, I felt that the atmosphere here was very depressing, the air pressure was cold and creepy, this is simply a shura. Suddenly, the White Emperor spoke out to break the deadlock, asking Frosty Cloud how the Feather Clan side was doing. Frost Cloud holding food is not eaten. He is very annoyed. The Feather Tribe leader injured cannot show up. There is no talk. He was very angry and cursed. He knew that that group of bird people are not good things. At this time, I also told him the cause of the incident. Seeing this, Bai Dai handed me a bunch of meat. Don't just eat vegetables and talk. Eat more meat. Song Ya looked at Bai Dai competing for favor and felt speechless towards him. At this time Song Ya also envied the way they got along. If only he could have met slowly earlier and become her mate as well. Song Ya looked at me bringing over a big pot of meat and never thought that this was for him to eat. I smiled and just looked at Song Ya, telling him that all these meats were delicious and I wanted him to taste them. Song Ya picked up a skewer of meat and took a big bite out of it. It was the most delicious meat he had ever eaten. Bai Dai looked at me, directly poking through my thoughts. I turned my head sheepishly, not wanting to meet his eyes. I looked at Song Ya awkwardly, wanting to find a topic to turn this matter over. I then this vegetable then handed it to Song Ya. Song Ya chewed the food very carefully. The lotus leaves were much more delicious than the ones he had eaten before. He ate the vegetables I personally grew. His heart was very excited. Sun Yu's good behavior. People think it's adorable. The next day, Sang Yi unwrapped the gauze from his body and realized that all his wounds had healed. But he wasn't in a very happy mood. It turned out that Sang Yu had been reluctant to leave me and was looking for a reason to stay by my side. So he scratched his body a few times. At that moment, Frosty Cloud came behind him and shouted, Don't be lazy when you're healed. Get down to work. Hearing these words, Sun Yu was very surprised. They are not unwilling to leave me behind. Frost Cloud and not a little good face. Pick up the clothes thrown to him. We are not willing, but slow is the head of the family. Even if you are not happy, you can only hold your nose and admit it. Hearing this, Sangy hurriedly put on his clothes and attentively ran to work in the field. Frost Cloud's clansmen looked at Sang Yi's irrigation method and were surprised. They had never thought that Sang Nai would manifest his real body and directly spray water out of his mouth to irrigate these vegetables. Every cabbage on the ground was evenly irrigated. Frost Cloud see this scene. Harkon not praise. This guy watering efficiency is really high. Can be called a masterpiece. He was very excited and shouted, half a day to finish watering, saying night just a few minutes enough. 
So powerful, Sun Yat turned his head and saw Frosty Cloud who praised him, and said he was a bit speechless. He was watering hard, while Frosty Cloud, who was staring at him with glowing eyes, even watered my vegetable plot. By the afternoon, Sang Yi had watered all the vegetable plots of the orcs. The Rock Wolf clan members, looking at the crystal clear cabbages, lamented in their hearts. All of them were watered. This big snake is really too powerful. At this time, Frosty Cloud, to say Night committed nymphomania, we are going to go hunting in the afternoon. Do you want to go with us? Saint Knight was very surprised, never met an orc who was so enthusiastic about him. How should he choose? Just as he frowned, a sound of footsteps came from behind Sonia. We persuaded him to go together. I die and I walked up and looked at Sangy seriously. Sangy was a bit incredulous. At the moment I looked at him with a smile, trying to get Sonia used to life here. Hunting together is a good start. Sang Knight looked at me, smiled at him, and made a choice in his heart to seize this opportunity so that it could stay by my side. At night, some people were chatting while others were sleepy, and I was in the cellar of my house, arranging the harvested fruits. Suddenly my stomach grumbled, be entered by the white emperor on the side. He took out the fruits to feed me. This blue fruit is delicious. Try it quickly. I hurriedly opened my mouth and ate the fruit handed over by the white emperor. It was the most delicious fruit I had ever eaten. At that moment, the white emperor smiled. My mood was also happy because of him. The white emperor is not angry. I feel that all things are solved easily. My die suddenly reached out and wiped the corners of my mouth. His movements were so gentle that it made me feel like my heart was going to jump out of my chest. Just then he leaned down and kissed me softly. By Dai's kisses were so gentle and his body wrapped around me so strong. He made me feel the power of the master ring. My body could feel the resonance of Bai Dai's heartbeat. Just as I was flirting with Pak Tai, someone was lying on the cellar door and shouted at me in panic. She then said to us, It's bad. The beasts of the Feather Clan are coming to the door. When we heard this, Bai Dai and I couldn't believe it. Wasn't the clan leader of the Feather Clan injured? At this time, Frost Cloud's clansmen rushed out from the cave entrance with their weapons. The Feather Clan had planned to crouch in the dense forest, flying not far away to check the situation, staring at the Rock Wolves, always ready to attack. Inside the cave the Rock Wolves are standing by. They are talking restlessly. Shortly after White Emperor and I arrived here, White Emperor couldn't help but think, to us, slow is the new Witch Doctor of the Rock Wolf Clan. In the absence of the clan leader, the Witch Doctor is our chief. At this time, the Feather Clan also flew into the cave. Their expression was not worried. They questioned, we are here. To ask the Rock Wolf clan for an explanation. Seeing that they were so aggressive, Bai Dai explained that he was not an animal of the Wolf clan, and that Chief Frosty Cloud was out hunting, and would not be back until later. The Feather clan shouted angrily, then call out your witch doctor, ask your witch doctor to come out, we must give an explanation today. Hearing this, the beasts of the Rock Wolf clan looked at me in the center, hoping that I could step forward and solve this problem. When White Emperor saw that they were coming, he just wanted to stand out and say that the witch doctor, of the Rock Wolf clan was not there before, but I reached out and stopped him. I gently covered my mouth and whispered to Bai Dai, I'll deal with them, and I stepped forward to explain, our old witch doctor sacrificed, now I temporarily take over as the witch doctor. What do you have to say? The feathered clan was shocked by my words. They were incredulous and agreed that I was talking nonsense. It was impossible for the witch doctor to be a female. It was unheard of, and didn't believe it. I couldn't help but frown. I was a little upset in my heart. These bird clan orcs are so noisy. Their ideas are simply to backward. The Rock Wolf clan people heard this and were unhappy. They stood out with fierce expressions, saying that I was the witch doctor in their hearts. The Feather clan was so surprised that they changed back to their beast form. They were shocked that such a small female, who didn't have any fighting ability, was really a witch doctor. They gathered together and muttered, looking like they were discussing some countermeasures. I was a bit puzzled to see. I do not know what they are playing. This completely disrupted the plans of the Feather Clan, originally prepared to be polite before the military, but the Rock Wolf Clan even sent a small female to negotiate. They can't even say a few words to a female. I can't figure out what they're muttering about, but I just quickly opened my mouth to explain. I've already heard what happened from Sonya. He did hit too hard, but your cubs are also at fault. There's no need to rush into action now. When the Frost Cloud group leader returned, we can personally come to the door to apologize. The Feather Clan did not listen at all. One by one their cheeks blushed with embarrassment. They gathered together again to whisper, The little female is so serious and soft. There is no way to refuse, but so great to go back. Back, cannot explain to the clansmen. The White Feather tribe thought of one person. He should have a countermeasure. That is, the Blood Plume Elder, the leader of the group, 
has left all the big and small matters to him to deal with. He H, the other feather tribe of this person, may be a little afraid of sweat face. Blood plume elder has always been temperamental. Do things all depends on personal mood. They recall just now. Also looking for blood plume elder help. The result is not even see the face of blood plume elder. Was pushed in dragged away? Their expressions were a bit serious, gritting their teeth, thinking that the clan leader could not come out. The blood plume elders could not be relied on. They had no choice but to come to the door. But I didn't expect that the Rock Wolf clan was simply despicable, and even sent a small female as a shield. The Feather clan's expression was ferocious, as they stared at the beastmen in the distance. Rock Wolf clan see them like this. Also fears glare back. The two clans do not give way to each other. Constantly I war. Intersection between the four flames. Just at this time, not far away from there, suddenly came a majestic voice. Rock Wolf Tribe seems they want to apologize. Must come up with sincerity. Feather Tribe Beast heard this familiar voice. Have turned their heads to look over. Stunned eyes wide. Expression surprised. I didn't expect that it was in a came. Only to see that the person who came had a pair of fiery red wings. White and slender hands. And a head of golden yellow hair. Simply heavenly got like perfect appearance. He was carrying heavy accessories. And his clothes were obviously much more advanced than the other feathered races. I naturally also heard the commotion. I couldn't help but look up and frown see in place. Sighing in my heart. Why are his wings? so big. The blood plume looked down at me. I don't know when. That air slowly fell down a feather. I frowned and reached out to pick up this beautiful feather. Did not think that even the feathers are so big. Then their own two hands together are big. When the other beastmen of the feather tribe saw the visitor, they were all surprised. They opened their mouths wide in disbelief and shouted in surprise at the blood plume elder. I heard this name can't help but be a little puzzled. This person is an elder, and continued to look up towards the person in the air, constantly measuring him. Blood plume flew in the air. His body was shining. I did not raise my head to search around. It turned out to be the decorations on his body. Under the sun's rays, they emitted a beautiful light. These decorations were all inlaid with red crystals, and I stared at them with glowing eyes. I didn't notice his looks at all, and when I saw those ornaments, he was simply extravagant. Trancha saw. I stared at his hair ornaments in aggravation. Inwardly, I was saddened by the fact that my efforts to draw so many vegetables were not enough to make the red crystals on his hair chain worth my. The gap between the rich and the poor in this bee. Blood Plume noticed my unusual reaction. He slightly raised an eyebrow. This little female has been staring at my clothes and hair. Really interesting, ah. Uh. But then he returned to the topic. If you're not sincere, don't delay. If you have any grudges, settle them once and for all. I forced myself to leave the line of sight, but cannot look at it again. If I look at it again, I want to rob. I turned my head serious and said, in addition to apologies, can also give you a certain amount of compensation. Heard this sentence to go to the blood plume should be down. We lost a cub. You return a cubs. This is even if the matter on the past. I did not think he would be so unreasonable. Expression shock shouted. How is this going to? The feathered tribe on the sidelines to watch with great interest and constantly behind the encouragement to cheer. Blood Plume elders are really great, fast and hard to dislike them. Blood Plume did not pay the slightest attention to the words of the clansmen behind him. He had his own intentions, just gently smiling, eyes deep staring at me. Then he quickly lowered himself closer and slowly uttered a shocking sentence. Mate with him and give birth to a cub for him. Wouldn't that be a cub of the Feather Clan? I couldn't help but stare in shock, looked up and frowned see at him, and couldn't help but think to myself, before I only noticed the jewelry clothing material. Until now, I did not realize that this feathered man looked so gorgeous and beautiful, just like a phoenix. Is he courting with himself? And then the feather people have face-to-face -face vegetables. Hark coincidentally think, Blood Plume Elder you are talking about. Want to reach out to stop but do not dare to. Only to see the Blood Plume is still their narcissist said, Ah, is not happy stupid? I woke up suddenly, angry teeth gnashing. Shame and anger at the Blood Plume angrily shouted, You do not want to. The White Emperor is standing behind me. See me angry bed so gently soothing. Slowly calm down. Do not get angry. But the Blood Plume is immersed in his world. Said just now I stared at him hot. Clearly is in love with him. So the initiative to propose. I don't understand why I refused. I was even more furious. Opened my mouth and fiercely scolded him for his arrogance. Thinking that looking at a crystal stone was misunderstood. Blood lame but spread his hands. Really a mouth is not the heart of the little female. I was angry body shivering. I have never never seen such a shameless person, 
Seeing that I couldn't explain myself, I quickly made my position clear. I have no interest in you. If you really want to be a couple, I can introduce other females of the wolf clan. The blood plume spoke with a faint expression. He doesn't see other females and said that he only has eyes for me. When I heard these amazing words from him, I was instantly shocked and couldn't help but pull the corners of my mouth speechlessly, my face darkening down at this time outside the rocky wolf clan's cave. The atmosphere between the feather clan and the wolf clan's beastman was very awkward. Instantly all fell silent, speechless for a moment. When the feather clan orcs heard these amazing words, cold sweat couldn't help but slide down from their foreheads. They thought in horror, is the elder going to directly declare war? I was so angry that I couldn't stop trembling, gritting my teeth and thinking, this is really hateful. The orc's outlook does not exist this value of modesty. If this is put in modern times, it is a big pervert who was arrested into the police station. But this big pervert is still talking narcissistically. Is not it happy to be bad? The people of the Feather Clan can help but quietly complain that the oldest bachelor of the Feather Clan would even fall in love with a female and openly ask for her hand in love. The sun has come out of the west today. I really can't stand this arrogant attitude. I want to punch him with my clenched fists. But by die block in front of me, seriously open his mouth to warn, please don't tease slowly anymore. She doesn't like to be joked about like this, but the blood plume simply can not listen to other words, but also look serious to say, slow this name is good, I like it. Immediately after he snorted a laugh, he himself does not feel that this is a joke yet. I gritted my teeth and thought angrily, good to hear a ghost, a old rogue, but I then realized, that he might be genuinely interested in pursuing. His brows couldn't help but frown slightly. His expression was serious as he opened his mouth to question him. Blood Ling gently licked his lips. Of course it is serious. So tender and delicious little female. He is still the first time to see it. Hearing his flirting one after another, I was about to be furious, but I could only hide behind the white emperor, glaring at him with a ferocious expression. Blood Plume stared at me with deep eyes, especially when he was angry, like a small wild kid with open teeth and claws, so cute that he wanted to cut off his claws, raised in a cage forever. Bai Dai's face darkened when he heard his words. So let's fight, only if you win Bai Dai will you have a chance. When I heard this, I looked panicked and blocked. Don't fight with him, this Blood Plume is not an ordinary orc at first glance. If you really fight with him, Bai Dai will definitely get hurt. I looked at him with worry, but Bai Dai just touched my head. Don't worry, it will be fine. I wanted to say something else, but Bai Dai gently cupped my face and seriously said that I must fight him. This is the rule between male beasts. Bai Dai looked at me with a serious look, his eyes overflowing with deep love, trying to make me believe him, and then let go of his hand immediately after. I was so sad that I was about to cry, watching him walk towards the direction of the blood plume. I couldn't help thinking that this is the beast world, and the so-called battles. It's true that there will be casualties, but I can't stop by Dai, because he went to fight to protect me. Blood Plume saw him walk over, and also walked in the direction of Bai Dai. His expression was imperative. So let's fight. Bai Dai's expression quickly sank. His voice threatened fiercely. Only by winning this fight, will they have a chance to stay by the side of slowly. The words just fell, was about to rush up. Suddenly appeared a luxuriant jade hand, tugged the corner of the white emperor's clothing. Bai Dai turned his head in confusion. Did not expect me to come over? I cried so much that my body is shaking. Worried to look at him, you must be careful. The voice is full of panic. If you really can't beat you in the defeat, the hand is still dead tugging on the corner of his coat. The white emperor saw me like this. It couldn't help but sigh, and then looked at me with a smile. He hadn't even made a move yet. Why did he think that he would lose? I could couldn't hear his words. I rushed forward and hugged him tightly around the waist. I don't care about the matter between the male and the beast. I don't care if I win or lose. I only hope you can be safe. White Emperor did not expect me to say such words. Lowered his head and looked seriously. I will listen to you. At this time standing aside. The blood plume has long been unable to hold back. Looking at the two people in front of me. This black and heavy in front of me to putty. Really unpleasant. Fierce export provocation. Really a long time no one dares to challenge him. Really courageous. Let you a hand and do not use wings. Then he intended to put away his wings. But the white emperor saw his face, stared at him without expression, and refused. No need. Immediately after that, Bai Dai's whole body glowed with blue light, staring at Blood Plume with a serious expression. And in an instant, he transformed back into his original body. 
It was a huge silver white tiger, shaking off its fur. It took a step in the direction of Blood Plume. Let's go to war. Then it pounced on Blood Plume. But Blood Plume's expression was so easy to read. He stood still and was about to hit him. The rocky wolves on the side of the orcs are nervously observing the battle. Their expressions have been shocked. I did not think that he actually do not dodge away. White Emperor's eyes fierce fierce pounced up, immediately about to touch him, but the blood plume in place instantly disappeared, then quickly flashed, even came to the White Emperor's back, how it instantly moved here, really incredible, when I saw the scene, I was immediately worried for Bai Dai, panicked and shouted at the top of my voice, he is behind you, White Emperor heard the voice quickly turn back, but it was too late, his expression could not help but be a little shocked, he disappeared without realizing it, and appeared behind him, Blood Plume flew in there, gathered a flame in his hand, and then violently threw it at Bai Dai. The small group of flames even instantly expanded countless times, gathering a ball of fire fiercely towards the White Emperor. The White Emperor simply couldn't dodge in time. The scorching flames instantly burned his fur, and he let out a pain wail. He let out a painful wail and fell to the ground in pain. There was a large burn on his back, and it was still burning his fur. Seeing this scene, my expression was horrified as I shouted for Bai Dai, but the clan reminded me that females cannot intervene in a duel between male beasts. This is the rule. I shook off the clansmen who tried to stop him and shouted angrily. I don't care about the rules. In my heart, Bai Dai's safety is the most important thing. Blood plume not far away from the hands of the gathering a flame. See me like this. Also open his mouth to remind. The weak is the law of nature. He put away the flame in his hand. Since your mate can't protect you, you should get rid of them and look for a stronger male to be your mate. I rushed forward, hugged by Dai tightly, and fiercely warned Blood Plume that Bai Dai was not weak. He was very strong, but Bai Dai knew in his own heart that he couldn't be defeated. So he trembled and supported himself, trying hard to stand up. Eventually he stood up and walked in the direction of Blood Plume. I saw him like this and couldn't help but cry out. My eyes were filled with heartache. Bai Dai didn't say a word. His eyes unexpectedly exploded with a blue-violet light. I was shocked to see this look of Bai Dai. Frowned. In my heart I couldn't help but be a little puzzled. Bai Dai's pupils actually emit electric light. But at this moment, I felt something wrong on my body, and blinked with some pain, how hot on the waist, so strange lowered his head to look at his waist, shocked to find that there is a large tattoo there, surprisingly, there is a large tattoo there is still constantly emitting light, this in the end what is going on, this is the white emperor star tattoo, but how can this appear in my body? At this time, Bai Dai's whole body was haunted by many electric lights, crackling between the intersection. He walked leisurely towards the Blood Plume. Seeing him walking towards him, Blood Plume frowned, somewhat shocked to find that he was actually about to advance, and he had also stimulated the lightning attribute. But the White Emperor didn't even talk nonsense to him. He just opened his big fangs and his eyes glowed as he lunged towards him, seeing that a palm was about to ruthlessly slap on his body. Blood Plume hurriedly and panickedly darted upwards to avoid it. Afterwards, the two of them quickly pulled away from each other, and that palm of Bai Dai's just now unexpectedly smashed the ground out of a huge crater. Blood Plume couldn't help but look serious. He frowned fiercely, incredibly thought, even have such a powerful destructive force. The White Emperor's momentum did not decrease, followed by another flying attack towards him as it jumped, constantly using lightning to launch attacks. Blood Plume quickly opened his wings behind him, dodging away from the strike, his attack was too fierce, he could only passively dodge it himself, he was so fierce that he could only passively dodge it, but he had no power to counterattack, the white flaps kept fluttering and jumping, and the lightning crackled on his body, Blood Plume's expression was serious, incredibly realizing that this person's strength was actually still climbing upwards, he had never seen such a thing before, he could not let him grow any further. If he dragged on like this, he would have no chance of winning. He had to fight quickly. He gathered a ball of flame in his hand. He stretched out his hand and threw a ball of flame. Violently threw it at Bai Dai. Only to see Bai Dai not even dodge. Calmly stood in the same place. He had a backhand. When the flame was about to arrive, he opened his mouth violently and shot out a large beam of electricity from his mouth. With a ban, the blue and red colors converged, both of them emitting a huge power. They were equal in strength to each other. The beasts on the other side suffered, caught unawares by the demand's fight. A pile of debris flew to their side. But I am only worried about the White Emperor, always concerned about him. See his situation is not right. Worried about him shouted. When the smoke cleared, I saw another burn on Bai Dai's body, and the wound was on his abdomen. Bai Dai's steps were a bit unsteady. His body swayed, but he still barely maintained his sanity. 
he walked forward with weak steps. He was still ready to continue to meet the battle. He could not fall. Blood Plume did not expect him to be injured like this, but still insisting on it. Some admired him, but had to admit that he had lost, because he had just used his wings. Against his own words, the feathered people on the side were a bit unbelievable. Just now, Elder Blood Plume used his wings in order to avoid the fireball that exploded. So the Elder had lost. They thought incredulously. The most powerful Elder Blood Plume also had a day to lose. This was even more surprising than him finding the female of his choice. Blood Plume's eyes looked deeply at Bai Dai. He was silent for a while and eventually gave in. He recognized what I just said. Blood Plume turned slightly and looked at them sideways. You are right. Your mate is indeed very strong. It is he himself who has taken the enemy lightly. Then he quickly flew away without further entanglement. The rocky wolf beastmen underneath watched in shock as he flew away. The feather people also did not expect the elders just left. Then they also have to quickly withdraw. Had to go back to think of other ways? Soon, the feathered tribe of beastmen also quickly flew away, intending to return to their own nest. A group of people just left. The beastmen of the Rock Wolf clan were overjoyed. They kept shouting excitedly, We won, by die is so great. White Emperor and I naturally saw this scene. I gently stroked White Earth fur, and also felt a little surprised that they had all left. So I happily raised my head to talk to him, and just as I excitedly shouted out to him, I saw by die continuously panting heavily. His condition was not right, and beads of sweat were beating on his face, and his body began to shake. Soon he quickly changed back to his human form, but it couldn't support himself and passed out. I was looking at him with concern, and just before I could move forward to support him, he fell to the ground with a loud thud and couldn't hold on any longer. He let out a thud and could no longer hold on. His body was full of wounds from the flames, and he was already delirious. I anxiously shouted at him, but he didn't wake up at all. The side of his body, I anxiously called out to him, but I couldn't wake up at all. The clansman rushed here and anxiously asked what was wrong. I looked very panicked and shouted, quickly, carry by die back to heal his wounds. A few orcs rushed to carry him back to the cave. It was hard to put him on the stone bed. I carefully surveyed the wounds on Bai Dai's body. I did not expect that he had suffered such a serious injury. He didn't even say a word until Blood Plume left. I reached out my hand and came, but I didn't dare to touch his wounds. Eyes full of heartache, panicked some of the six gods, helplessly running around in the cave. Should first bandage the wound, looking for antiseptic wine. I found a piece of white cloth, but my hands were shaking. I didn't dare to touch him for fear of hurting him. I looked at his unconscious face and shouted in a trembling voice. Whitey, wake up. Don't leave me alone. I kept saying, don't leave me alone. I'm really scared. I couldn't stop the tears from flowing down. My voice was full of helplessness and fear. I don't need you to be the strongest. I don't need you to fight for me. I was so sad. Tears like broken beads, continuously dripping down on by Dai's cheeks. My mouth constantly broken. As long as you stay by my side, don't leave me. I was crying very sadly. A tear suddenly fell down by Dai's injured position. Just then, there was a sudden change. In front of my eyes, a blue-green light erupted, and the star pattern at the waist and abdomen of the White Emperor really kept flashing with light. At this time I was not even aware of it. I was still crying sadly, tears dripping down. The light reflected on my face, slowly surrounded me and the White Emperor in which the scene is very mysterious. The light fell on Bai Dai's wound. In the next second, the wound was slowly healing. What the hell is going on? I slightly opened my eyes. My eyes are still a little confused. Tears involuntarily slipped down, surprised to find the scene in front of me. The wounds were actually slowly disappearing. In the blink of an eye, all that was left of Bai Dai's body was some small marks. This is really unbelievable. I sat at a frown scene on the edge of the bed thinking, only to realize that it wasn't an illusion, that the burns on half of my chest were actually able to disappear completely. At that moment, the White Emperor suddenly opened his eyes, and this subtle movement was seen by me as if I had not been looking. So I flung myself into the man's warm embrace, little teardrops seeming to fall from the corners of my eyes, and my tender little white face rubbing against his pecs. I had absolutely no idea what to say, and could only call out to my lover, Whitey, over and over again. While inside I quietly sighed in relief, Whitey's long, slender fingers stroked my hair, and his uniquely male, magnetic voice rang out above him as he said he'd always been. I raised my head in pity to look at him. You finally woke up. I was so afraid that you wouldn't wake up again. There was a momentary gleam of dissimulation in his features, but he soon covered it up with ease. He wiped my tears gently, and I leaned against him for safety, and a sudden feeling of affection rose between us. But without waiting for Bai Dai's next move, staggering voices came from outside the door. It seemed that Frost Cloud and the others had returned. 
Frost Cloud and the others hurried to the cave entrance, hearing that the White Emperor had been injured and how he was doing. I didn't even wait for my reply. He directly revealed his fine patrol muscles and said in an extremely flat tone that it was fine. Frost Cloud scuffled up to them. He kept looking up and down at the White Emperor's wounds, and he really did find something. I didn't expect Bai Dai to advance to a four-star soul beast. Didn't they say he was seriously injured? Seeing that there was no way to hide it, Bai Dai had to tell them that he was indeed injured. But when he woke up, all the wounds on his body had disappeared. A flash of shock flashed within Sang Knight's expression. It sounded like a healing spell had been cast on him. At this point, it was the three of us who were confused, and we all looked back at him with a great deal of puzzlement and longing for him to show us the way. Healing is a secret technique unique to the temple. With the power of the gods, it can help orcs heal their wounds and restore their health in a short period of time. The instructions were lost in my head. I didn't realize this thing was so amazing. The so-called healing magic relies on sucking the life force out of plants to heal orsish wounds. Zen Knight, however, suddenly became incredibly serious, and in the end, it was an overbearing means of plundering for the purpose of administering cures to the privileged classes. If the plants don't have enough life force, the temple uses slaves as sacrifices to suck the life force out of them. But he's not going to tell us that. The White Emperor, however, did not squint slightly frown. Can know the inner workings of the healing art of the orcs. Sin Knight is not related to the temple when the thought came to him with some irritation. After all, no one wanted to live with such an orc. Little Frosty Cloud suddenly asked to the point, but I've been with the White Emperor the whole time and didn't really know what it was all about. I had to remember what happened before again, just crying and bandaging him up. And then the wound miraculously healed, which no one would believe. Right, the White Emperor held my small hand directly. Was there anything unusual about his body as his wounds healed? There was a slight hesitation in my gaze, and I could only state uncertainly that I smelled grass and trees. Frosty Cloud and Baidai looked at each other noncommittally, and the two of them searched for answers in each other's eyes. The time soon came tonight, and the stars in the sky twinkled with a faint light. However, the White Emperor and the two of them suddenly walked to me and gently reminded me that the rapid healing of my wounds should have something to do with me. Frost Cloud also nodded approvingly from the back as he stated that the divine wood seeds in my body could make the orc's wounds heal in a short period of time. But this metaphysical thing I do not believe. The White Emperor directly changed the White Tiger's paw. He personally tried it on the line. He cut his arm straight open with a big gash. But the sight made me cry out with a tear in my heart. The fool's wound was just healed. These bruises and cuts did stir up the pain inside me again. Are you crazy to cut so deep? The corners of my eyes were suddenly filled with countless more teardrops and they gradually dripped down my cheeks. These tears that dripped down on Bai Dai's wrist actually helped to heal off really quickly. Frost Cloud broke out into a few drops of cold sweat in shock, not expecting these wounds to actually be healed and repaired. I frowned in disbelief as my small hand crept up to his healed wound. At that moment Whitey suddenly came forward intimately, and the little teardrops in the corners of my eyes seemed to be still. He actually stuck out his tongue to lick my tears, and I fluttered my eyelashes slightly and closed my eyes, indulging him in these temptations of mine. Only a trace of the white emperor's wound was gone. It seemed that the teardrops in direct contact were more effective and the wound healed faster. Frosty Cloud's wee colored cheeks were a little flushed as he kept praising me for being really good and for doing something so magical. I blinked my big innocent and eyes, seemingly in complete disbelief that this scene was happening. Could it really be me? The White Emperor, however, whispered in my ear as he reminded me not to cry freely in the future or let anyone know that I had the power to heal. I of course nodded rapidly, and then sniffled my little nose again, looking like I understood perfectly. So while my tears have a healing effect, Whitey guesses that it's not just tears, it should be any part of my body. He suddenly lowered his head in serious contemplation. These may also include my tears, saliva, and flesh and blood. I listened attentively to the speculation with my hands on my chest. Like a very good white rabbit, Frosty Cloud was suddenly grim at this point. But he thought that if I was known to be able to heal, I would have been eaten without even a crumb of bone remaining. I didn't realize what the two of them were doing, but they secretly swore from this moment on that they must get stronger quickly in order to protect me. A figure suddenly appeared outside the cave, and with the dim light inside he launched into thought. The suspicion within Sung Ye didn't stop at this moment. The White Emperor's wounds were healing too quickly. It was too inexplicable. I didn't think he'd think of me again. After all, I was the only one who was there when it all happened. A few days later, with the help of the warm daylight of the last few days came the negotiations 
Between the Feather Clan and the Wolf Clan, Rock Wolf Clan Chief Frost Cloud was the first to appear, and he was followed by many of his own high ranking sons and daughters. Feather Clan Chief Xin Yan followed closely behind, with significantly more companions following in his wake. Frost Cloud doesn't believe his side of the story. You stole first, and your little breaths are all to spoil. Shen Yan's face suddenly became extremely twisted. The revenge of the Cubs we Fei Clan must be avenged. You call out the Snake Beast. This matter will be settled. Obviously Frost Cloud wasn't going to back down. The Snake Beast was a suitor for his female, and it didn't want to upset his young female. The Feather Clan Patriarch was suddenly exceptionally angry and immediately wanted to loudly reprimand the immediate start of the war. But he didn't act yet. The pain in his body caused him some heart-rending pain. Frosty Cloud's eyes narrowed in serious contemplation. It seemed that this leader of the Feather Clan's injuries were real. So it was no wonder that he would suddenly stop at the Rocky Mountain. So he asked the unthinkable question. Are you planning to settle in Rocky Mountain? Shen Yan secretly pondered. They no longer had much stamina. The rocky mountain top was the best place for them to look. All must not give up. Frosty Cloud, however, suddenly smashed the boulder with a slap. Rocky Mountain is the territory of our Rock Wolf Clan. If you want to live here, you first have to go through us. Then he crushed the stone in his hand. Seeing as you have lost your cups, as compensation you can land at the top of the mountain. If you want to make trouble, we Rock Wolves are not easy to bully. Shen Yan was so furious that his blood churned and inwardly he kept cursing this guy who took advantage of people's danger. At this time, a few small birds were flying in the air, and they kept patrolling around the cave at the top of the mountain. A large male foot suddenly appeared on the ground, and it quickly moved forward. Blood Plume touched his blood red wings, but his tone couldn't hear any emotion. What? Being bullied by the wolf clan's patriarch, Shen Yan swished his head down. In the future, when he found the opportunity, he must teach that bastard a hard lesson. Blood Plume said that this incident was a lesson learned, and that Frost Cloud had been right about one thing. The clan had overprotected the cups. Shen Yan, as the leader of the Feather Clan, would not allow others to resist. Not even Blood Plume. Hasn't this incident warned you that if this goes on, the cubs will gradually lose their fighting ability? The Feather Clan Patriarch, however, sighed in displeasure. In recent years, fewer and fewer females were able to lay bird eggs each year. The cubs were not easy to come by, and the clan had no choice but to love them so much. A cold aura flashed in the eyes of the blood plume. Even if a cub with no ability to survive survived, it would still be nothing more than a waste. Shen Yan felt that he was right, so he changed the topic again. I heard that you fell in love with the wolf little female and confessed to her in public. Only then did Blood Plume unfurl a genuine smile. He imagined me very angry. That little thing was indeed quite adorable. The Feather Clan chief was in the mood. So do you want to couple up and spawn quickly? Your cubs should be quite strong. Only to see the Blood Plume directly lifted his leg to give him a kick. Vicious voice then came. You also care too much. Since then, the Feather Clan and the Wolf Clan have been neighbors, and they have never interfered in each other's affairs, but both sides are still remembering the past, and there's no sign of improvement in their relationship. The Feathered Clan transformed into their own bodies and patrolled above, while not forgetting to use their small green bean eyes to glare viciously at the Wolf Clan below. The beastmen of the Wolf Clan were not vegetarians, and they also transformed into their own bodies, baring their teeth and roaring ferociously at them. Frosty Cloud, however, couldn't care less, and even hummed a song leisurely, because it's harvest time lately. The latest batch of vegetables and fruits are ripe, and they're ready to collect the fruits when the bags are ready. Sang Knight cut the sleeves off his shirt, revealing his to lean arms, which he thought would make it easier to, eh, being the sweetest little female of all, am of course the first to come forward with compliments. It's very pretty and not surprising at all. Frosty Cloud was also raging for attention, so I had to compliment them along with the, the vegetable patches illuminated by sunlight, and the sweetheart's vegetables become round and round. I was taken aside to watch the dandelions, and they did not let me have any part in the work in the fields, but I quietly observed the three of them in action through the layers of dandelions, each one a ravishing presence. Of course, I'm also gradually becoming obsessed. It's not nice to look at them like this, but all three of them are so handsome. At that moment, a snake's tail passed in front of me, and I didn't even feel half scared. It turned out to be Sang Knight using his own body, so worthy of being an orc, simple and brutal and effective. It was only after the sun gradually set, and the setting sun enveloped the entire heaven and earth. That frosty cloud wiped her face carelessly, finally done with collecting. I was in a good mood as I stared at all the vegetables in front of them. But to avoid attracting attention, I rubbed the ring in my hand, and it looked like it was time to put it away. So my look became serious, and I seemed no longer to be as droll as before, and decisively stretched out my finger to sweep the vast area. 
vegetables that were just piling up are also enviable ingredients for the with a ban they all disappeared and the ground became very tidy saint knight stood still in surprise he didn't expect me to casually wave my hand the mountain of fruits and vegetables had disappeared i had to answer for the crowd i have a ring with storage space in it and i've got all the vegetables and fruits in it some images flashed inside saint knight the ring on my hand by dye and frosty cloud also wore it before i thought it was a love token now it seems to be not so simple i I was oblivious to his inner speculations, still holding the bags in my hands, and said that these could be taken back for dinner. But Sang Yo didn't follow me, so I could only yell at Sang Yo to hurry up again. But his head dripped down slightly, and his deep and affectionate eyes were slightly lost in the moment. The White Emperor, being the most sensitive minded orc, sensed the change in him at the first opportunity, but did not say anything about it. Time was passing day by day, and soon it was time for the long awaited market day. Our family went out again with fruits and vegetables and set up a stall at the foot of the mountain to sell them. Sonya handed over the fruit in his hand, and I pleasantly reminded him to just leave it here. At that moment there was a noise in the distance, and I jerked my head up to look behind me. I didn't realize it was an old customer who had come to exchange food, but Winter's Tooth came with a kind of brotherhood, all carrying a huge amount of food in their hands. He unfolded all the herbs to us, and with a big, bold wave of his hand, we'll take all the fruits you're selling this time. Whitey picked up a side of herbs for me, and I instantly gave a hard nod. This would work. So we gave herbs in one hand and vegetables in the other, and the two teams swapped happily. At that moment a male appeared, who embarrassedly took out the herbs in his hand, and offered to exchange them for some vegetables and fruits. A figure suddenly appeared in front of Frost Cloud, causing him to wonder a little how Booker could have come to just see him pick up the small bag in his hand. We come to patronize your business. All vegetables and fruits are packed for him. Frosty Cloud, however, suddenly had some small interest. You came here specially this time. You wouldn't have come just to buy some vegetables and fruits. Right. Booker chewed the vegetables in his mouth quickly. There are two pieces of news to come to you. Hemp Green seems to have been seen by an orc. Frosty Cloud was instantly aghast. His gaze suddenly became unusually fierce. Finally seeing Ma Ching. After the man found Ma Ching, he followed and never left. And Booker reported back with a serious look on his face. Finally it was found that Ma Ching had entered the bee city. But the figure of that person was not found either. He seemed to have something important to do. And his black hat was so mysterious. Only his face showed a strange rune. And his eyes became very evil. Frost Cloud hugged his arms and kept making wild guesses about what exactly he was going to do when he went to the bee city. Booker shook his head to indicate that he didn't know. Ma Ching had always been a very mysterious mission. No one knew where he came from. His position in the Black River Wolf clan was very special. Even the clan chief was quite scornful of him, and Bai Dai was curious as to which BC he had entered. It was only then that Red Fork remembered to report that the beast city that Ma Ching had entered was called Dark Moon City. I couldn't quite hear it from the back, but what is Dark Moon City again? Saint Knight sidled up and explained for me in a soft voice. Dark Moon City is one of the three middle cities. The Orc Continent has a total of ten Orc cities, six lower cities, three middle cities, and one upper city, which has also been made into the main city. Unless Ma Chin has the strength of a three-star Orc, or has received special recognition from the Imperial Shrine of the Moon, he can enter the middle city, Frosty Cloud said that he had people keep an eye on the outside of the city, and as soon as he saw Ma Ching appear, he would notify them immediately. You said you wanted to see me for two things. What about the second? Booker realized with a jolt he seemed to have forgotten. Yesterday a few very strange orcs came to the Black River tribe. They claimed to be divine ambassadors from the Dark Moon Shrine, coming to look for a serpentine beast named Saint Knight. My two little mates and I all fell silent, little drops of cold sweat breaking out all over our little faces. We then looked over to Saint Knight, and a small embarrassment suddenly appeared on my tiny head. My dice suddenly came to his senses. They were looking for that Saint Knight for something. Booker immediately shook his head again. They were very tight-lipped, and generally didn't communicate with us much except to instruct us to do our work. If you see any snakes or beasts around here, you must be very careful and mind your own business. Saint Yo was very innocently holding a fruit basket on her head, holding a round vegetable in her hand on one side. Book equipped, reminding them that a guy who could be targeted by the temple must be dangerous. Immediately afterwards he seemed to feel afraid, and kept begging the beast god to bless him, and never to meet that serpent beast. It wasn't until after Booker had completely walked away that the three of us looked, as Saint Knight in the back, how did you get into trouble? 
With the Dark Moon Divine Hall, each of the ten beast cities is equipped with a shrine. The Dark Moon Divine Hall was one of the ten divine halls, but its strength was second only to the existence of the main city divine hall, and it was extremely powerful. There must be a deep conflict when the temple sends people after saying you. Sane Knight spoke with an expressionless face and replied, I stole the holy relics of the temple and killed the head priests. Frost Cloud was so shocked that he lost his voice. If what was stolen was a holy relic from the temple, it would be a great sin. He killed the chief priest. That's a crime on top of a crime. If he's caught, he'll be executed immediately. Sane Knight bowed his head without showing any expression. Don't worry guys, this is his business. He alone can solve it. He'll get out of here before the god emperor finds the rocky mountain, so he doesn't get them involved. I had to shout accusations at the man. I didn't realize that in your eyes. We are so greedy and afraid of death. We are a family. No one can die. Sang Yeo said that I'm family with Y Emperor Frosty Cloud, and there's no relationship between him and me. I was so angry that I wanted to go over there and talk to him. Now, that the god emperor hasn't come to our door yet. Let's take this time so we can discuss a solution together. Let's make dinner first. So we all left the place and grabbed some food to eat. Sang Yeo's eyes narrowed slightly as he kept thinking about what was coming next. He thinks I'm well taken care of by Whitey Frosty Cloud and that he's the extra one for us. So he made the first decision that it would be better for him to get out of here as soon as possible. A pattering rain resounded outside, and small rain drops again and again slapped against the huge rocks. Sang Knight dragged himself out with a heavy body. After all, they were good to him. He definitely couldn't harm them. He even thinks that if he leaves, I'll be relatively safe. It was not until there was no more sound from the cave that he realized he had gone far, but his back looked incredibly lonely. So early the next morning, the pouring rain outside didn't stop. Frosty Cloud stepped over the hole and droned inwards. It rained so hard with last night. We'd better go and look in the ground. The White Emperor nodded thoughtfully. If the ground was flooded with vegetables, things would not be easy to handle. But then it suddenly occurred to me that Sang Yen hadn't shown up and that he'd slept in the room outside earlier. The White Emperor's pupils suddenly contracted violently, as if he had thought of something terrible. So we immediately flew to the outside room. And sure enough, there was no one on the bed. I trotted along close behind, but Whitey and informed me quite clearly that Song Ye had gone off on his own, but it's raining so hard outside. If we run into the god's messenger on the way, Sing Yu will be in even more danger. No, I have to go out and look for him. Frosty Cloud, however, hurriedly shouted at me, you can't run around with such a weak constitution. Immediately after that, he grabbed me by the shoulders and used his words to tell me to put my heart down, that he would be able to help me find Sang Yeo. I looked up with great emotion. The last time Whitey left alone, Frost Cloud had assured me of the same thing, and had brought back Whitey. Although when I first met him, I only thought he was reckless and bad-tempered, but now he's getting more and more reliable. By Dai then interrupts the duo's little sweetness and says he's going to tag along too. Frost Cloud suddenly mined a burst of conspiracy theories. White Emperor, this guy can never be enthusiastic people. How suddenly a perverse want to go to the snake beast. By Dai said he'd go with Frost Cloud. If he really met any god's messenger, he'd have more chances of winning. After all, aren't we a family? A family has to work together. A wave of warmth rose up inside me. The White Emperor acknowledged Sonya as a family member. Frosty Cloud, however, sighed helplessly. Then we'll go together. After all, we're all family. Only to see Whitey suddenly kiss my cheeks and say that I should wait for them to return in peace. Frost Cloud suddenly transformed into a coyote and licked my cheeks affectionately, and said he wanted to kiss it as well. So he quickly gathered a bunch of his brothers, and loudly reminded them to come with him to find Sang Yeo. The beastmen were inspired by the patriarch's encouragement, and all of them transformed into their own bodies and walked forward with angry eyes. The white emperor also transformed into his own body, a supergiant and terrifying white tiger, and flew forward one step at a time. The two of them became the only emperor, and issued a very serious and planned order to set out in search of Sang Yeo. When I saw them all out, I immediately turned round with the intention of making some hot soup to ward off the cold, and waiting at home for them to return successfully. The heavy rain outside the cave seemed to be getting heavier and heavier, as if it showed no sign of obeying at all. Countless raindrops fell on the tiny plants, and an ethereal and eerie sound resounded around them. A huge serpent's tail was the first to appear, and it took advantage of the rain to slither across the ground. Sure enough, it was Sang Yeo who had actually come to this place, and he had even transformed into a half-beast, half-human state, with an evil look on his face, waiting to attack. 
the several divine messengers were actually unlike normal people. One was actually incomparably terrifying, and their eyes were filled with disdain for him within their eyes. Only a few hissing sounds could be heard, and the several orcs that were just in human form had turned into several giant pythons. Saint Knight was stunned for a moment, not expecting that the divine ambassadors who had come to chase him had actually arrived so quickly. He suddenly slapped his hands violently against the water. After all, it was too close to the rocky mountains. It was better to distract them first. But his big tail was wandering behind him, and the pythons were already approaching with red eyes. Suddenly several pythons twisted together in an instant, and the strength of several people was actually on par with Saint Knight's. Saint Knight opened his mouth fiercely, but there were too many people on the other side so he couldn't break free. At that moment, a giant python of a different color opened its bloody mouth and bit into Sang Knight's hard body with a plop. Sung you could only cry out in secret that it was bad. The teeth of these snakes were all highly poisonous. With his instinctive movements he slapped the water haphazardly, but he could not free himself from the... He wasn't, until the venom gradually rose to his brain that his consciousness began to blur. Another different colored python poofed another bite and was accompanied by a warning from them. Sung Yu bounded and ready. Unexpectedly, a white tiger came riding on the waves, like a hero to save him, and rushed forward without appearing to be afraid at all. Immediately after that, the white emperor resounded with a roar, an oppression that belonged to that emperor of the animal world. He actually rushed forwards unwillingly, biting fiercely into the torso of a shaped python, and its body immediately resounded with a zipping sound. Of course, the python couldn't bear this kind of pain, and for a while, the snake's letters were swinging wildly. Frost Cloud stood at the back and issued a call to arms. He had the clansmen take up their positions one after another, thus quickly surrounding them. The wolf crowd was of course very obedient, and the little paws moved quickly into formation, only to see the white tiger biting a python and not letting go. The rest of the black wolves surrounded them, and for a while the scene was chaotic. Whitey suddenly dragged Sonia's torso out quickly in a chaotic repose. Sang Knight quickly transformed into his human state. His angular face had fallen into unconsciousness. His body was almost entirely covered with no marks, and there seemed to be no part of him intact at all, and the venom prevented him from waking up fast enough. But Dai easily carried him on his shoulder. Brother, you have to hold on. This will take him back to be treated, but Sonia wouldn't be taken away so easily. And and behind him, several shaped pythons were furious and shouted at him to put him down. Whitey was carrying a sick man on his back, so he had to quickly call out to the reliable Frost Cloud. Frosty Cloud said that this was on his home turf, and as the clan leader, he would definitely break these little snakes into pieces. His small claws quickly slapped downwards, using a supreme must-up move, and suddenly the lake was still instantly frouncing. Several alien pythons had no time to break free, and actually quickly sealed them under the rock and ice, not giving them a chance to relax at all. Still, Frost Cloud was a little panicked. After all, his eyes couldn't stay frouncing for long, and there was a swamp ahead of him where he had to rush to get to. By Dai carried the injured Sangi to the rear, but his voice calmly expressed understanding. Then Frost Cloud played up his bitchy look and waited for them to struggle out, and started yelling at them for being stupid. Frost Cloud is walking against the light at the moment, and he's diverting all the threats to himself. As expected, the several alien pythons behind him had long been enraged and had lost their independent thinking. Frost Cloud looked ahead to a large swampy area, but inside he finally seemed to relax for a moment. Then, he was looking at the White Emperor and the others. It seemed that everything was under control. It was now. His claws flashed with a few flashes of light and danced with his movements. Without looking back, he stepped inside the swamp, the ice underneath him keeping him from sinking into it. But Dai followed behind him carrying Sang Yi, and they all stepped inside the swamp at once. This alien python seemed to have lost their minds, and are actually unaware of the impending danger. Frosty Cloud, however, secretly poked and smiled back in triumph his mouth revealing a few icy words. It seems that you really fell for it. Immediately after that, he slapped his little paw so hard that the ice underneath the ground began to break up rapidly. Several of the alien pythons swung their bodies frantically, but they couldn't resist the carcasses that kept sinking in. Frost Cloud and the others just waited silently in place until the pythons were down to one ugly head. It was only then that why he led them in with the intention of going home. And of course the wolves behind him couldn't stop cheering. Outside, the sky was brightening, and the heavy rain had ceased because of their victory. I looked out of the cave in panic. The white emperor Frosty Cloud and the others had finally returned. But Sang Yeo wasn't in the best of shape. Bai Dai carried the men and thoughtfully explained to me that Sang Knight had been hit by the venom of a poisonous snake 
and had to be detoxified quickly. Sung Yu's lips were already close to purple, and the wounds on her body were simply shocking. It was only after I took a closer look that I realized he was deeply poisoned and I guessed that ordinary herbs couldn't save him. Frost Cloud stated that after all, he had fought to the death to save him, and this snake beast had to be saved for him. I thought as they did, and quickly drew out a small dagger, and very often by very means. I think I took a knife and cut myself on the palm of my hand, and in such a tense moment, I seemed to forget the pain in my hand. I quickly brought the bowl aside, and used it to catch my slowly flowing blood. Whitey suddenly took the little bowl in my hand, and said that he could go forward and feed him. Frosty Cloud, on the other hand, became unusually dependable and did not utter a single word, but his big hands lifted Sang Yu's body early on. The two of them worked together marvelously, and Sang Yu drank in a strange position. Frost Cloud's little eyes immediately widened when she saw the rapid healing changes in his body. Sang Yu's eyes snapped open and widened as the changes within his body made him feel sick. He Saturday up straight in a hurry, then coughed up a few drops of black blood in agony. I relaxed a little at this point. It's good to get the poisonous blood out. Song Yu's consciousness gradually woke up. He couldn't figure out why we were here. He had obviously left the Rocky Mountain quietly. After you left, he and Frosty Cloud went out to look for you and saw that you were tangling with for snake beasts. We saved you and brought you back home. Song Yu knew clearly that it was me who woke him up. So there was a sudden change in his cool eyes. He clearly perceived the moving of his heart, which was beating wildly because of these people, but he was still paranoid that no one should have to help in this matter, and why they should have saved him. Of course I answered him noncommittally because we are family. Song Yao stated that she and I were not mates, and that there was no relationship between us. Frosty Cloud's irascible temper surged up. We went through so much effort to save you, and now you're skimming off the top with us. I stared at the man with some sadness. It looks like you're still leaving right. I quietly hid my wrist under the cloth, but it was still seen by Song Ye, who realized that I had saved his life. He just tilted his head to the side in a twisted manner. He didn't have anything to do with them and staying here was just causing them trouble. I loudly reminded this paranoid man that we don't think you're going to get us into trouble. The White Emperor also suddenly counseled him. You should understand. We all consider you as a family member. Song Ye doesn't care what they think. He only cares about what he thinks, and he's not my family. Then he showed a hint of sadness and begged the crowd to let him go. In my mind, he's become my mate. So of course I can just watch him get out. If he goes out like this, those God's ambassadors who are after him would definitely not let this opportunity go again. But I also had a moment of hesitation. Really let him leave like this. I secretly clenched my teeth in unpleasant thoughts. If I let him out today, he will only end up dead. So I loudly stopped Song Ye ahead of me, and my tiny body flew towards his side. Of course Song Ye wouldn't turn me down, and soon he looked back over his shoulder. Instead, I took him by the collar, and moved forward in a domineering and irritating manner. I proved it with my own practical actions, and I pressed my little mouth intimately against it, only to pray that the man would not leave the... It wasn't until the kiss was over that I realized my impulsiveness, but seeing the shocked look on Song Yao's face, it was as if this moment had been worth it. I've already kissed you. You'll be mine from now on. Now you still have the nerve to say you have nothing to do with me. Song Yu's face instantly turned red after I kissed him. He didn't return to his senses for a moment, savoring the residual warmth I left on his lips. After I kissed Saint Knight, I pulled away from him. I swore my sovereignty with a blushing face. I kiss you. You'll be my person from now on. Now you still have the nerve to say, you're not related to me. At this moment, I was staring at Saint Yi with my own cute and dopey eyes wide open, looking at Saint Yi with deep emotion. This scene was completely seen by Frosty Cloud, who had his arms wrapped around his body and was in a very unhappy mood. But the way I played the rascal was very much in his style. When Frost Cloud heard me say that we can be family with a kiss, he directly raised his voice to stop it. If you can be family with a kiss, you don't even need me. He can do it too. Suddenly, Bai Dai came behind me and has been helping me persuade Sang Knight to stay. Say, we've already accepted you as our family member. Sang Knight looked at us who had been retaining him. At this moment, he had an indescribable feeling in his heart, and it was a care that he had never failed to experience before. I am also very much looking forward to Song Yu staying and becoming our family if we will encounter danger in the future. I hope the four of us will face it together. At this moment, Frost Cloud also felt that all of this was like a dream, so beautiful that he didn't dare to imagine that he would have a warm and harmonious family. At this moment, Sang Knight called out to me, and I looked at him with big watery eyes, 
I had been expecting him to give me an answer, but I didn't expect him to ask me if he would treat me like he did by die in frost cloud in the future. Hearing this, I felt my entire brain explode. My entire face was like a red apple as I coughed lightly, wanting to change the subject, but I didn't expect to see saying night expectant gaze when I raised my eyes. Right now, I can only drag him out until he gets better. Hearing this, the corners of Sang Knight's mouth rose slightly. He'll recover quickly. Frosty Cloud was very upset and angrily cursed in his heart that this snake was really cunning. Sang Knight, however, also said that as long as he could stay by my side, I turned my head to look at Bai Dai's face. I didn't expect Bai Dai to say, I'll do whatever I want. When I got Bai Dai's answer, I took out the contract ring. I held his hand and told him, You put on the ring, you are my family. Sun Ya stroked the ring on his ring finger with a serious look. He would never regret becoming my family. While he was sighing, it was pouring rain outside. What happened on this day? Sun Ya would never forget. He had a family. Sun Ya also had a mate. He could finally be with me. After the rain cleared, life seemed peaceful for the four of us. There is a dark crisis in our lives. Bai Dai folded his hands together and slowly lowered his head. The Divine Temple was in a very high position in the Beast City. Frosty Cloud's face was also gloomy when he heard this. All four Divine Ambassadors were killed. The Dark Moon Divine Hall won't receive news for a short time. During this time we have to prepare to meet the war. I was worried when I heard about the war. People will definitely be injured in the war. I have to gather herbs for backup. Frost Cloud worriedly reminded me that if we really fight, he told me to take the females and the cups and hide inside the cellar. Bai Dai came up with an idea. We should dig the cellar bigger. Better to dig a secret passage, just in case of emergency. Hearing the White Emperor's suggestion, Frosty Cloud lifted his spirits. He would start working on it tomorrow. He would dig out the secret passage before the war. Sang Knight, who was sitting on the other side, watched as the two were actively discussing. And at the moment, Sang Knight couldn't interject a word and didn't know what to say. Sang Knight remembered his past. Since escaping the temple, he closed his heart. He thought he would never trust anyone in his life. My appearance was like a ray of light that illuminated his whole world. For the first time, he tasted the feeling of being trusted and protected by others. Sang Knight looked at me sitting across from him, but next to me were two people actively discussing ways to deal with the temple in the future. At this moment, I am listening, but at that moment, Sun Yu said sadly that the Divine Hall was the trouble they had caused. As long as he returns to the Divine Temple, nothing will happen next. I was furious to hear this and reached out to accuse him. You've already taken my contract ring with you, and you still want to run away. No way. The White Emperor stared at him with a gloomy face. The God Envoys have all been killed. Even if you go back, the Dark Moon Divine Hall won't let us off the hook anymore. Frost Cloud also nodded in agreement. Things have come to this point. Your decision can no longer sway the situation, so you can only stay obediently. I hurriedly ran forward to hold Sang Knight's hand. We are a family. We must be united in times of crisis. No one can run away. Hearing this, Sang Knight's eyes dimmed and gently patted the back of my hand. Because we are a family. I must leave him behind. Sang Knight leaned down and looked at me. He can only rely on me in this life. No matter life or death, I can no longer get rid of him. Then he agreed. I was in a good mood when I heard his answer. I looked at him with my lovely eyes and looked at him lovingly. That's a good boy. We got an accurate answer from Song Ya and it was almost time for lunch. Frosty Cloud went to get the sliced meat and vegetables with Bai Dai. At this moment, I was also very excited and planned to go and help cook. But just as I got up, before I could go far, I was pulled by seeing his wrist. I looked back at him in surprise, but his face was hard. He told me that it didn't steal the holy relics, and that it didn't kill the head priest either. Hearing saying he finished those words, I revealed an unbelievable expression. I didn't know I had gone through this before, but now I will protect him. It turns out that Release the Knight was wrongly accused before, but no one wanted to believe him. Instead, those people wanted to burn him to death and he had to flee the temple. I'm worried thinking about the nervous and apprehensive look in Sanjo's eyes. He's really afraid that I won't believe him, huh? I have to find a way to coax him. I then gently rubbed his jaw. That's when I met his eyes, and my eyes revealed trust in him. I suddenly leaned down and kissed Sonya on the lips. I wanted to show him with a kiss that everyone in this family would trust him. We embraced the kiss for a few moments before pulling away a bit. My pouty looked frowncy Sonia. I said seriously that I believed him. When Sonia came back to his senses, he slammed his arms around my waist. 
What I did to Song Ye touched him deeply. Suddenly his body trembled and I felt warm liquid on my waist. I was in a bit of disbelief. Could this be Song Ye's tears? I was reaching out and hugged her tightly, looking at Song Yu in my arms. My heart also felt sour for him. He must have suffered a lot before. At this time, Sang Night's tears are still snapping and falling. I promise in my heart that I will give Song Yu a lot of happiness afterwards, so that he can't forget his painful past. On the other side, Frosty Cloud and Bai Dai were busy in the kitchen. Frosty Cloud's face was grim, as he asked Bai Dai, It was your idea to let slowly leave Sang Yi behind, wasn't it? After hearing this, Bai Dai's face instantly turned ugly, turning his head to stare at Frosty Cloud, and asked him, Didn't you also agree to this idea, according to your temperament? If you don't accept it, you won't go and save him back, being poked and prodded by Bai Dai. Frosty Cloud's face was a little ashamed, and he couldn't even say the words. Frost Cloud slowly lowered his head. He also thought about it, but I was pushed off the cliff by Livy missing. If it is not Sang Yi, I may not be able to hold out. Although Frosty Cloud doesn't like snake beasts, but Sang Yi is loyal to me. If the two of them can't take care of something in the future, that guy can protect me. Bai Dai sneered as the two of them coincidentally thought of a piece. Their starting point is the same, just to protect me. If it wasn't for that, there's no way White Emperor would have let me be with another beastman. Frost Cloud on the side was speechless at this expression on his face. Three days later, the sun shines brightly outside the cave, and the leaves of the trees rustled in the wind. Sane Knight relied on his strong self-healing ability. He was already completely healed on the third day. He walked barefoot outside the cave, the wind blowing his long, flowing hair. On the contrary, for me, because of excessive blood loss, I fell sick straight away. I was ordered to lay in bed and rest, not allowed to get out of bed until I was healed. Suddenly the system prompt sounded. I slowly opened my heavy eyes and looked at the system interface. The interface showed that the 438th system upgrade was successful. The crystal mall is now officially open. I excitedly Saturday up from the bed. Hachi, you finally upgraded. It looks like the pixels are clearer. It's really good. The person on the system interface, hearing the name Hachi is very angry. Really can't endure a little. What kind of name is Hachi? I looked at him seriously. This is your nickname, ah. Uh. Otherwise call you dead bitch. This is also not good to hear, ah. Uh. He reluctantly agreed to be Hachi. After we finished joking around, I revealed my ignorance and asked Hachi, What's this mall you're talking about? Hachi and the system interface slowly opened his hands. Hosts can use crystals to exchange goods in the mall. At present, you can only exchange the kinds of primary plant seeds, namely sunflower seeds and long bean seeds. I looked at the seeds on the system interface. I did not expect to see sunflower and long bean seeds in this world. Without saying a word, I directly redeemed ten of each. I then clicked to confirm the exchange. In an instant, two large bags of seeds appeared in my arms. I really didn't expect that the system would exchange seeds so quickly. I then handed the seeds over to Frost Cloud. He was full of Igor and intended to plant the seeds in the fields. So I just left the matter entirely in his hands. But Frost Cloud didn't expect that by Dai was going to steal the work from himself. The matter of the vegetable field was told to be left to him and Sang Yi. But Frost Cloud's task was to train. Frost Cloud's a little hesitant to hand the seeds to Sang Yi. But Sang Yi hastily took it and opened it to check. He showed a face that had never seen the seeds before. When I saw this, I explained to him that this is indeed a seed. When the seed blooms, it will be very pretty. We can enjoy it together then. Looking at the amicable trio, I sighed in my heart. Although Song Ye is not good at communicating, I Dai and Xuan Yuin have both taken the initiative to help him adapt this is what family is all about. I looked at the new seeds planted in the ground that had already blossomed, but I wondered when the new seeds would bear fruit. The next morning the sun shone directly into the cave, filling the entire cave with a smell of sunshine. It was the day of the market again. In the bazaar, the beasts swarmed in, running frantically as if they were scrambling for special offers. I was surprised to see the same. I didn't expect so many orcs to come. I can't even keep myself busy here. All the orcs were frantically scrambling for the vegetables in my stall. One moment he wanted to buy here, the next moment he wanted to buy there. The whole scene was chaotic. I was squeezed by the beasts buying vegetables. I couldn't breathe. There was no order at all. It was really irritating. After a while, the beasts quarreled over the order of the groceries. No one was letting anyone in. They all wanted me to sell the food to themselves first. Suddenly White Emperor appeared behind me, grasping my slender shoulders with his strong hands and protecting me in his arms. Bai Dai shouted with a grim face, Shut up, there's no order at all. Do you want to buy food or not? If you keep arguing, we won't sell any more food. 
along with the white emperor's voice. There was a tiger's cry, which was the white emperor's majesty in front of them. The beasts, who were still in chaos before, instantly wimped out when they heard the tiger's cry. Not one of them dared to come up and make a scene. The whole scene was instantly silent. The beasts obediently lined up. This time they stood there in a very orderly manner, waiting to buy food. By Dai then warned them that anyone who dared to cut the queue or make trouble, he wouldn't mind adding an extra meat dish to today's dinner. This sense of oppression caused the beast to instantly panic, and they all lined up quietly. They didn't dare to say a word more, much less cut in line or make trouble. At this time, a little white rabbit at the back of the queue raised its hand and shouted, letting her by first. The beasts who heard this were all very surprised. Time went by little by little, and there were more and more people at my stall, some of them looked at the long queue and discussed it. The beastmen who weren't there in the queue looked at the long queue and were puzzled. Why is this queue so long? What are they doing? A dark-skinned orc squeezed in. The orcs in the serious queue were very dissatisfied with him and voiced to stop him from cutting in the queue. The orc was not impressed and felt that what he was doing was not wrong. He grimaced and threatened the queuing orcs from above. When San Knight arrived and saw this scene, he threw the queue jumper out with a horizontal tail sweep. With a grim face, he warns him not to jump the queue. I saw that the food on the stall was almost gone. I then told Wai that I was going to go to the stone house and bring out some more vegetables. When I walked into the stone house, I raised my hand and turned the ring on my hand. Then I opened the foreign space. From within a space fell out a bunch of fresh vegetables that we had planted together and pecked together when they were ripe. I held a basket of apples and walked out from the stone house, excitedly shouting by die. Vegetables and fruits have come. Bai Dai looked at me with a worried face. From the stone house, the two of them carried out many fresh vegetables and fruits and placed them on the stall. The orcs were very excited to see these. Frosty Cloud was struggling to move the vegetables from the stone house. Looking at the beastmen who came to buy the vegetables and messed up again, he directly shouted come one by one. At this time, Sang Knight stood at the side of the queue, observing the beastmen in the queue. As long as one of them dared to cut in the queue, he would kill that person on the other side. By Dai was warping vegetables inside the stone house. He sorted them out one by one and stacked them on top of each other. Half a day later, all those vegetables they had moved out were sold out, leaving only empty baskets scattered on the stalls. I raised my hand and wiped the sweat from my face, sighing in my heart. It was almost like being robbed. Luckily, the harvest of herbs and crystals was more this time around. Why he had been working all day, but it was too tiring to do it on his own like this. So he thought of a way to solve the current problem. It's that we can pay a reward and then come and hire someone to help with the work. So that it's an employment relationship between us and things will be much simpler. Frosty Cloud couldn't stop nodding at his proposal. Why don't we buy all the vegetable plots planted by the rocky male beasts and then ask them to help with the planting? The remuneration can be billed to them. I couldn't help but sigh at these words. Mentioning pre-hired helpers, by Dai thought of acquiring the land. He's too good at this. If he were to put it in the modern world, he would definitely be a super treacherous businessman. I looked at him in shock and couldn't help but imagine. By Dai didn't even realize how good he was and asked me, What do you think? I hastily nodded my head very much in agreement. Really can't ignore the intelligence of the works in this world. Uh, seeing that everyone thought it was good, we decided on a plan. So let's implement it like this first. The plan went smoothly, and the acquisition of the land was discussed happily, with everyone enjoying themselves and benefiting from each other. I was also patiently teaching the other orcs, teaching them how to plant seeds and vegetables, and the days were getting better and better. As time went by, the vegetable seedlings in the ground grew impressively, and they grew a great deal taller, so I thought that they would soon bear fruit. But at that moment, an accident suddenly happened. The beasts ran to my yard in a panic, looking very aggrieved. I saw that they were all bruised and swollen, and their faces and bodies were also injured. They looked like they had been beaten up by someone, and some of them were crying with sadness. I saw this miserable state of them. The face could not help but utterly up. Surprised and open mouth anxiously asked, You are bullied by who? The orcs uttered shocking words. They complained in unison, beaten by the plants and vegetables. I incredibly back a few steps. How is this possible? But they were still talking. Just now when we were working in the field, those sunflowers were spitting things at us, hitting people with special pains. A lot of people's faces were swollen, and the long bean stalks would suddenly explode whenever someone got close, blowing holes in their clothes. The sunflower and the long bean stalk are really horrible. You've got to do something about it. I didn't even think it would get to this point and was going to go to the ground to check it out. Couldn't help but think suspiciously. The exchange seeds from the mall shouldn't be a problem. Right, the sunflowers in the vegetable field 
were facing the sun and swaying warmly. I couldn't help but touch the beanstalks on the bamboo poles, but they were growing well and looked normal. There were no incidents of people being beaten up, and this sunflower is two meters high. Can't even reach it. So I tentatively reached out my hand and hopped around to touch it. White Emperor noticed this situation, so he hurriedly approached me and thoughtfully reached out his hand to touch the sunflower. Let me help you. But when he was about to touch the sunflower, the sunflower violently dodged back, as if it was conscious. White I was shocked by this, but the sunflower had already started to spit out sunflower seeds, which were hard and small, very powerful. Seeing this scene, Baidai dodged fiercely to avoid it, and then pulled me into his arms and turned his back, blocking the attack of these small sunflower seeds. After a while, the sunflower stopped attacking. It actually seemed like it had consciousness. It also pulsed for a while. The other ones didn't have this phenomenon yet. I was surprised to look at the sunflower not far away, panicked and thought, what the hell is this? The sunflower seeds I planted can actually hit people. Seeing that the current situation was safe, Baidai let go of the person in his arms and tentatively asked me, Then should we try again, those long bean stalks? I quickly nodded. So White Emperor picked up a stone from the ground, aiming at the long bean stalks. He violently threw it towards them. Unexpectedly, these long bean stalks received the attack, as if they had come to life, and violently exploded their outer skin, knocking the stone away and revealing the seeds inside. I looked at the stone flying far away, could not help the shock in my heart. Some speechless thought, this is reasonable, said after the founding of the country cannot become a spirited. The beasts also came with us, depicted in colorful pictures. These plants are like crazy, a little close to hit people, especially fear. I took out the golden willow flower and apologized to everyone. I hadn't thought it through properly. After crushing it and mixing it with water and applying it on the body, I then decided to think of other countermeasures. I have to give everyone a good explanation. Then I came to a deserted place outside the cave, seeing no one around. I called out to the system Hachi and decided to ask what was going on. Hachi heard the summons and instantly appeared in front of me. His mechanical filled voice appeared in his ears and said it with a serious expression. I inquired, how could the seeds? You asked me to exchange from them all this time hurt people. What the hell is going on here? Xiao Hachi opened his mouth to explain. They are all mutated seeds. After they grow up, of course they are a little special, but I can guarantee that they are all non-toxic and edible. I'm speechless. No matter if they are poisonous or not, they will be attacked as long as they are near. This is a serious problem that must be solved. Seeing this Hachi had to say the way. These plants are very good to get along with. As long as they are gentle to them, they will actively send their own fruit. I asked incredulously, is this true? Hachi said, the second rule of the system manual is that you can't lie. I couldn't help but bow my head in deep thought for a while, clenching my fist with a serious expression, and murmured, as long as it's a little more gentle. Then I smiled tentatively, that's how gentle it is. Then returned to the cave and hurriedly told everyone the news. Frosty Cloud tugged the corner of his mouth breathlessly. Does gentle mean wagging the tail? I explained to him that it should mean softly soothing them. Sane Knight also heard this from the side. He only stood up. Sin slowly said so. He planned to step in and touch these things. He quickly changed back to his original body and became a huge python. He spat out his snake's letters and slid over to a short distance away, quickly arriving in front of the sunflower. Using his water skill, he spat out a column of water from his mouth, with a ham la la sound, and watered them himself. Sunflowers like to feel his good intentions, very comfortable stretch, with the wind easily swaying their own branches and leaves. Long ago, he hid behind a tree not far away, observing the situation there. The beasts were there discussing in amazement, and it looked like they were quite happy about it. A uh, other orc, who had been badly beaten, didn't quite believe it. How could it be seen? And watched as Sonia finished watering and had transformed back into his original body. Then tentatively walked forward, came to the sunflower bush, reached out his hand to try the effect, gently stroking their branches and leaves. I looked at the scene not far away. My heart couldn't help but clench, nervously hiding behind the bushes, but not without some worry, looking at saying yo. Then the next second, the sunflower actually took the initiative, shaking their big head, pull up pull up down a large pile of sunflower seeds, like a gift. It shook down a large pile and gave it to Sang Yi, those orcs who were beaten before hid behind the tree, surprised to think that this is also good. Sang Yi walked towards me with an expressionless face, not forgetting to grab a big bunch of sunflower seeds from the ground and hugged it over to comfort me. It's okay now. I was also very surprised to see this scene. Actually really need to coax and touch to be good. So I hurriedly came forward and stroked the leaves of the sunflower. Very happy to go up and take the initiative to stick stick. The sunflowers even lowered their heads to come closer. But also very shy look. 
I couldn't help but shake my fist to cheer myself up, and thought in my heart, these mutant plants are really magical, and they have their own personalities. In the hot sunny afternoon, I was in this sunflower field, and I couldn't help but sigh in my heart, it's really just like a human being, it's so cute. In a short time, Sonia had already collected a bunch of sunflower seeds. He weighed the big bag in his hand a few times, and planned to go to see the long bean corner. He came to the garden of long beans, raised his hand and looked at them tenderly, gently stroked and touched them, and then after a while, the long bean curd is very much like Saint Knight, happily shaking off their fruits, quickly fell down by itself accumulated into a small hill mound. I was very happy to hold the sunflower seeds. It turns out that as long as it is approached with kindness, it is very good. It looks so well behaved like this. At this point, we can't increase the planting of sunflowers and long beans. It's a good weapon against foreign enemies. I instantly agreed with the blessed spirit. It's a good idea. When the enemy comes, the sunflower seeds can be used like machine guns to beat people up, and the long bean stalks can be used to warn the orcs. As long as there is an enemy approaching, it will crackle and explode. I immediately clenched my feast and decided on this plan. So it's decided. Then we'll plant more sunflowers and long beans in the precautionary area. Right. The next morning, the sun has just revealed the mountain. Shining warm sunshine, playing on the human body is very comfortable. I came to a hidden warehouse, carrying a few sacks, and gently called out to Xiao Hachi, who soon appeared in front of me. So I hurriedly walked up. These sacks of colorless crystals, exchanged for sunflower and long bean seeds, this is all my savings. Hachi followed the instructions, checked how many crystals there were, and exchanged them for seeds. I clicked to confirm the exchange and the transaction was complete. I held the seeds in my arms and couldn't help but sigh sadly. Things in them all are so expensive. The crystals that I had worked so hard to earn were all gone. I become a complete pauper. At this moment, a beam of light suddenly hit my face. I twisted my head in surprise and looked up, surveying the cave entrance above me, sighing. I opened my mouth. I want more crystals so badly. I'll have to keep up the good work. They reworked the plan and the beast did as they were told for days on end in the precautionary zone, diligently sowing these seeds into the ground. And at my behest, sunflowers and long bean curls have long been sown around the rocky mountains, and the growth has been very promising. After a few more quiet days, the birds fluttered their wings and flew over the top of the mountain. A very peaceful scene. The cave was bustling with activity, and frosty cloud shouts could be heard from a distance. We're back from the hunt, then threw a cow and a chicken on the ground. He led the clanning from outside, winking happily at me. He seemed to have harvested a lot of prey and kept rubbing his stomach saying he was hungry. I smiled and looked back at him, saying soothingly that the food would be ready soon, and then took a basket of green vegetables and held it in my arms. Soon a big table was ready. There was braised fish, green vegetables and vegetable soup, and surprisingly there were also a lot of kebabs. This is to sumptuous right. Frosty Cloud told me about the recent situation. Now sunflowers and beanstalks can be used as peripheral guards and warning tools. I listened attentively. I dieted on the side. Now is the time when animals and beasts are active. These may not be enough. He can't help but be a little worried. Hearing this I thought carefully and said the idea in my mind, proposing that it would be better to make a few traps to try it out. The three people present, they all stood up in amazement, as if they were hearing this word for the first time and didn't quite understand what a trap was, so I gave them a serious explanation. Very simple. It is to dig a big pit covered with a thin layer of grass and leaves, so that people cannot see that there is a pit underground. Just need to wait for the beasts or invading orcs to step over. They will fall down. Several people heard this. Instantly like a lake filling the roof. By Daidian means words as he praised. This sounds great and it can be used to catch prey. We can try it tomorrow. A few days later, Frost Cloud led the Rock Wolf clan to set up the trap. They used their claws to quickly run out a large pit. Then they carefully laid a layer of branches on top to hide it and lay it over the hole. It was seamless. Then as a wild beast passed by, Whitey attacked it. And the beast was instantly in and roared in anger as it chased after him. By Dai had already prepared for this and led it towards the trap. He grabbed the branch upwards and the beast fell into the trap. The beast was smashed and quickly fainted. The clansmen looked down into the big hole and cheered in amazement. With this we can protect our rocky mountain. The females and cubs. Frost Cloud quickly gave the order. Let's quickly dig a little more. By Dai had an excellent idea in his mind. Insert some sharp wooden thorns at the bottom of the pit and smear them with venom. So the effect can definitely be better. Frosty Cloud heard this idea from him on the side. 
and looked at him with a vegetable face. He couldn't help but spit out in his heart. This is to dark-hearted right. But then Sang Knight, who was on the side, spoke with an expressionless face. I can't provide the venom. Frosty Cloud shook his feast in excitement when he heard this news. Afterwards, Frost Cloud led the male beast to the bottom of the pit, inserted wooden spikes coated with venom, each sharp and incomparable. Once again improved the trap. Frost Cloud and the clansmen holding arms looking at the trap cannot help but be proud of the her 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 smile. This foot stepped on either dead or disabled. When I saw it, I carefully made a small wooden stick as a label, reminding them not to step on any of these marked places. Then turned his head and smiled and spoke to the coyotes. Fallen will die oh. The coyotes heard this fearful whimpering, and at this time, appeared a pair of blood red wings. The person is the blood plume. He stood on a high mountain, overlooking the following orc a series of operations. Gently smiling at the bottom, want to send you a big gift. And I am at this time ignorant and unaware, is playing happily with the young cups in the herd. Soon to the late night, the white emperor has long fallen into a deep sleep. Frost Cloud also sleeps very well. Do not know what beautiful dream dream, drooling out of the mouth. At this time, I also closed my eyes tightly and fell into a deep sleep. The night was peaceful and quiet. On the other hand, Sang Knight suddenly opened his eyes violently and woke up with a start. His pupils were dilating. He seemed to have sensed something. He quickly Saturday up. The expression on his face was shocked. He was keenly aware that there was actually the aura of a fellow clan member, and it was in the vicinity. The boulders above rolled down crazily, and a python flashed past quickly underground. It turned out to be Sang Knight's main body that was slipping and sliding. He followed his scent to the side of the swamp, and the situation in front of him shocked him greatly, so he slid his huge body into the thick forest to get a closer look. Sang Knight's little head quietly probed out. For a moment the scene ahead was actually very spectacular. There were many snake beasts on the other side of the marshland. They actually each wore night clothes in order not to hide their faces, sprouting those red eyes and long snake letters. Thing and changed into his human form and stared dead ahead with his deep eyes. The man was the same as the portrait slowly drew. He was the Machin that several clans were after. The man was still quietly explaining to the snake beasts. Sang Knight instantly dripping sized beads of sweat. There was only one wolf clan nearby. They would soon be looking for the Rocky Mountain. We had to hurry back to ventilate the situation. Only after seeing him slipping away with extremely brisk movements, Ma Ching suddenly jerked his head back to look at the, but there was no sign of anything behind him, and from the darkness of the forest there was no visible edge, and it was utterly impossible to find anything in the, Ma Ching exceptionally believed in their own intuition, so he carefully sniffed with his nose, I did not think it was the sin of the sinner, you guys quickly go after the, countless snake beasts were out in force, and several swish sounds appeared in the silent jungle, Song you frowned a little panicked, a head should be the trap. At this moment a sudden planned search inside him. It so happened that several snake beasts had already rushed over and ordered in a voice that they thought was very majestic. Brothers, catch him for me. Saying nice gaze suddenly frowned see and a few strands of hair drifted down between his eyebrows. He dodged with the intention of quickly circling away. The red eyes of the snake beast behind him lasered even more. Catch him. Don't let him get away. The front was the first to launch a few snake beasts to strike. But the moment they paddled past, their bodies unexpectedly began to fall involuntarily. What they didn't expect was that there were long, sharp thorns at the bottom of the swamp, which pierced directly into them with a poof. After they stepped into the swamp, these companions fell into the swamp one after another, and the scene was surprisingly chaotic. Sang Yu took the opportunity to slide into the forest, completely ignoring the howls of the people behind her. The rest of the serpents opened their fangs. Their eyes gleamed as they stared straight ahead. The rest of you give chase. But this dense forest would not allow them to find it very quickly, and almost only the sound of the snake's letters spitting out. At this point the sunflower boost they were in actually went crazy and started attacking them. Countless small sunflower seeds pierced into the snake beast's torso, and that kind of drilling pain was too much for the snake to bear at all. Huge swathes of sunflowers, d e d d d d a spewed out, seeming to have an air of destruction with them. The serpent beasts almost quickly hugged each other, their sharp fangs almost a show, and all that was left in their minds was a grimacing howl. Ma Ching walked forward quietly with his ropes on, and then probed a piece of the snake beast corpse inside the cave, its body completely becoming abnormally hard. 
He was secretly indignant to the point where his eyes were red and the corner of his mouth violently hooked up with a touch of mockery. He was really a bunch of losers. At that moment, on a boulder hill in the distance, the little orc heard a crackling sound coming from underneath, and his expression suddenly became condensed. He suddenly stood up and roared towards the sky. Behind him he even split into a werewolf body, long being po called the police. Enemy attack! Machin stood frouncing below, the constant howling of wolves ringing in her ears. He very cautiously instructed the Serpent King beast on the side to quickly shout them all back. Prepare flints and dry wood. We'll set fire to the mountain. At this moment, Sang Knight came into the cave with a staggering pace. Frost Cloud noticed him almost instantly. Was he in some kind of danger? Sang Knight did not dare to relax in the slightest and reported to him that the Dark Moon Divine Hall's people had come. There were more than two hundred orcs. Frost Cloud closed his mouth tightly at once, his deep pupils hinting at his shock, so the energy around him suddenly increased, and the tips of his ears stood straight up. He loudly rallied the orcs behind him, about to prepare for battle. Frost Cloud led the orcs to the side of the rocky hill, some holding their torches high, while others accompanied the clan leader to explore the, I didn't expect the little orc, to have a moment surprised that they were chopping down a tree. What was this about? The white emperor suddenly appeared beside them, and spoke very coldly and seriously, presumably wanting to set fire to the mountain. The white tiger has excellent night vision at night, so it was easy to see that the mastermind was Machin. Machin has a small tattoo on his face and a relaxed, finger-wagging, mouth-wagging look on his face. The red light of his eyes had dissipated, replaced by a hollow blackness, this method should have been thought up by Ma Ching. The duo immediately launched a series of brainstorming sessions. After all, Ma Ching wouldn't appear here without a reason. Frost Cloud snapped his mouth open and exclaimed, It couldn't be that from the very beginning, Ma Ching was in league with the Dark Moon Divine Hall. For his part, by Dai nodded approvingly. The hemp grain below seemed to sense the sight and looked upwards with a big grin. Sure enough, there were a few familiar faces up there. And for a moment, the two groups of people looked at each other. The red light within Ma Chin's eyes suddenly flashed, and the corners of his mouth slightly hooked into an evil smile. Old friends, I'm back again. Frosty Cloud and Bai Dai both looked disgusted at the same time. From the moment they saw him, it seemed that the air around them had become dirty. Only to see Bai Dai turn away with incomparable seriousness. You guys hold the fort here. I'm going to go look for people. Frost Cloud didn't seem to understand what that meant. The White Emperor had to answer his doubts once again by going to the top of the mountain to get help from the Feather Clan. Whitey quickly made his way to the side of the Rocky Mountain, followed by a few easy jumps, reaching the top of the mountain in exactly an instant. All the people of the Feather Clan's breathing became extremely light as they carefully reported to Blood Plume. The orcs at the bottom of the mountain are coming up. He looked at Bai Dai with an unkind gaze. What business do you have with us here? Tactai explains that there are people at the bottom of the mountain who want to prevent the fire from burning the mountain. You can either leave quickly or come with us to kill the enemy. Blood Plume's deep eyes were slightly stagnant, and the hair on his forehead was ruffled a bit. His magnetic bass voice slowly rang out, and the mountain came down to the... For his part, the White Emperor secretly sized him up, seemingly plotting this their abilities. At the bottom of the mountain were the divine ambassadors and escorts of the Dark Moon Divine Temple. Blood Plume and the other clansmen were incredibly surprised. We've already hit here. Why can't we still run into the Dark Moon? Divine Hall's people. When the White Emperor heard this, he understood that the Feather Clan had a problem with the Dark Moon Divine Hall. Blood Plume hung his head magnificently and delicately, wanting us to help kill the enemy. You guys have to show some proper sincerity at some point. He doesn't care about sincerity. He just wants to see what he wants. Blood Plume was indeed a decisive person and his tone was ghostly and sent out in all directions. I want the little female of yours. The white emperor's eyes snapped open, and his gentle breathing seemed to stutter a bit. The Feather Clan patriarch, Shen Yan, walked over in displeasure, and his tone actually carried a million accusations. What the hell are you talking about? Blood plume. By this time, the white emperor had returned to his senses, and lightly expressed his refusal to them. He then intended to turn around and leave, Shen Yan, on the other hand, clenched his fists in indignation at the side. Why did you say such words? Blood Plume suddenly avoided the topic, his eyes looking slyly at the opposite patriarch. The Dark Moon Divine Hall's people were at the foot of the mountain. Do we fight on, or do we continue to run away like last time? Give us a positive answer. Matriarch, Shen Yan instantly glanced his head to the side. It's better to look at the situation first. If the Rock Wolves can't beat them, it's not too late for us to strike again. After all that it still says that if we can stay out of war, then we should try not to go to war. A touch of sadness flashed across Blood Plume's expression. The Feather Clan, 
that once dominated the skies was now reduced to hiding at home and watching. It was really sad. He was not answering any of the patriarch's questions and went alone to the foot of the mountain to investigate them. The serpentine beast hiding behind the tree spat out its snake letters and looked ahead to await the danger. Frost Cloud and the rest of the crowd had transformed into their original bodies and raised their robust limbs to attack them. As if encouraged, the cold light in the werewolf's eyes suddenly enlarged. They took a bite at the snake beast torso, while the snake beast, not to be outdone, opened its own bloody mouth to try to strike back. But their thick bodies were so heavy that the wolves had the upper hand for a while. Frost Cloud's little paw stepped on the ground, and it actually revealed a strange rune at that moment. Saying night illuminated as a half-human, half-beast form, which was undoubtedly his peak moment, Frost Cloud, on the other hand, came over with an air of aggression. The serpent beasts on the other side were quickly frouncing, and their bodies could no longer move at all. This moment was the best time for them to launch. Sure enough, it was the turn of the imposing sand knight to strike, and the thick snake tail curled very hard and tight. Only a click was heard and they were instantly squeezed out of their bodies. Sang Yu wouldn't be soft on these people at all. It seemed that only by killing them would she be able to release the resentment within her heart. Whitey came to his support in haste, but the sight before him made his anger flare, because that's my vegetable patch. He exploded with energy almost at that instant, and the zipping electric current around his body rushed at them, the snake beast on the opposite side suffering even more. The remaining serpent beasts didn't dare to act rashly. Only the chirping coming from above made their hearts palpitate. Shen Yan carefully hovered above, surveying the wolf clan that was caught up in the fight. Ludling suddenly called out Shen Yan softly, prompting the patriarch's gaze to look at himself. And only then did he voice the unwillingness in his heart. We've already lost our home out of fear, and now we're going to lose the last vestige of our dignity. As the feathered ones out of fear, Shen Yan gritted his teeth and didn't dare to say anything. His back was sweating a little from resentment. His fists, on the other hand, clenched quietly as his body began to shake with anger. He clearly remembered his father's teaching that we are children of the god of the sky, and that as long as we are in the sky, we have nothing to fear. Shen Yan closed his eyes in pain. When father sees me now, he will be incredibly disappointed, right? Blood Plume lifted his blood red wings and quickly flew downwards. As far as the eye could see there was a clamor. The bottom of the rocky mountain was already on fire, and the trees around it were crackling. Looks like they're burning the mountain. He ignored the patriarch, who was buried in pain, and his blood red eyes suddenly narrowed in displeasure. This is our last chance. Only to see him instantly transform into his own body, his entire body filled with that noble and bright blood red color. A few rates of cold light lit up in his eyes. He came to the top of the serpent beast assemblage, and his pointed mouth gave them a disdainful cry of. Immediately after the snakes and beasts were actually set on fire, they could only frantically roll on the ground. Machin gritted his teeth and stared dead above. It was actually the blood red divine vulture. But how could the divine vulture appear here? Shen Yan fiercely looked down to the melee below. His tone was very raw as he called out to the clan to bite his teeth. He looked sternly at the clan behind him. Remember why we had to cross the mountains and migrate all the way here? Of course Bite knows what it's for, because our homes have been destroyed by the monsters, released by the Dark Moon Shrine. Shen Yan suddenly flickered the wings behind his chi, then seriously reminded his clan, the people of the Dark Moon Divine Hall are at the bottom of the mountain. The time for revenge has come. At this time, his body's energy quickly surged, and his original form of an orc actually appeared behind him. All male beasts listen to my orders. Defend our home and kill all our enemies. The clansmen behind them were even more unwilling to lag behind, so they all transformed into their own bodies and rushed out. Defend your home and kill your enemies. Shen Yan, as the patriarch, led the way. In fact, just as his father said, in heaven, we are just fearless. A flock of birds whistled through the air as they came over the top of the mountain. It was dark at the moment. And it turned out that the big birds in the air were the Feathered Clan. The leader of the Feathered Clan suddenly flew down from the air. A move he made when he spotted his prey. He had fierce and sharp eyes and aimed at his target. Led by him, the Feather Tribe all fluttered their gone and powerful wings. They flew with the snakes on the ground and grabbed them with their sharp claws. The White Emperor revealed his true form, 
and hissed at the feathered clan in there. This also reminded all the clansmen in the battle to gather their courage. The leader of the snake clan's face was gloomy when he saw this scene. The primitive wolf clan's morale had clearly risen with the addition of the bird clan's orcs. However, they had long since lost their momentum and could only order everyone to retreat. They fled in haste into the dense forest. They had failed in this great battle. Sane Knight quickly coiled on the ground and attacked towards Pale and Flea and Machin. It was a chase between Sang Yu and Machin. Machin directly pulled out his dagger and attacked straight towards Sang Knight. His face turned sinister. He wanted to kill Sang Yi to avenge the death of his men. Just as Sang Yi had just swallowed the minion, Ma Ching had already arrived in front of him. Sang Yi had no time to dodge and could only meet the attack head on. But he didn't expect Ma Ching's speed to be faster than Sang Yi's imagination. Sang Yi had no chance to fight and was stabbed by Ma Ching's dagger on top of his head. Sang Yi's wail of pain alerted a large flock of crows in the forest. But the main strike caused the serpent hunt at two on Sang Knight's back to wake up, and it was also sending energy to Sang Yo. The time had come, the serpent hunt at two on Sang Yi's back instantly emitted a purple glow. At this moment, Sang Yi felt an unprecedented abundance of power. The same knight who had completed his bloodline awakening, his true body became extremely huge. The entire body of the snake shrouded down, causing people to feel numbness behind their backs. It was saying his tail swing that sent Machin flying several meters and into the river not far away. Machin couldn't react at all. His men all raised their heads in surprise when they saw this scene. Protect Lord Asachin. Lord Asachin has fallen into the Blackwater River. The voices of his men caught Sang Knight's attention. And an immense black python stood behind them. This caused them to shout in panic. The minions couldn't believe that there was such a big monster behind them. They were so scared that they backed away. Some said they had down scenes of snake beasts left. And these down scenes of snake beasts were not even worth mentioning to Sane Knight. It was only to make Sane Knight full of food. Both Frost Cloud and Bai Dai were watching the movements inside the forest. And Frost Cloud just wanted to go check what was going on inside. He was stopped by the White Emperor behind him. I looked at the contract ring on my hand that was burning in my heart. I was very worried about Bai Dai and the others who were fighting outside. I didn't know what had happened when I went through the ring and learned that they were in danger of their lives. Without saying a word, I got up and rushed out, not listening to anyone's obstruction at all. By this time, I had already walked to the entrance of the cellar 
and was opening the cellar door bit by bit. I'm going to find by Dai and the others. They're in danger. I stepped out and put on my black cloak and walked for it with a determined look. White Emperor, Frost Cloud, Sen Knight, nothing can happen to any of the three of them. During this battle, I saw the Feather Clan. They were standing in the middle of the battlefield, cleaning up the corpses that remained from the battlefield, and those who were injured. I also saw the Feather Tribe circling in the air. This war should be over. Their Feather Tribe, all of them flying in the direction of going home. Seeing this scene, I covered my face and cried in pain. I really didn't expect that so many people would die in this war, and they were all trying to protect me. Someone was standing on a tree, a man with red wings. His voice made my crying stop abruptly. I turned my head to look at him. Blood Plume stood in the tree with his arms around me, looking at me fondly, and he asked with concern, Why did I come down the mountain? It's dangerous here. Hearing this, Blood Plume didn't know what to say. He kept looking at me with enchanting eyes, and the corners of his mouth even smiled evilly from time to time. After Blood Plume came down from the tree, he leaned over to my side. He asked me to give him a kiss before he took me. These words shocked me when they came out. When I heard him say this, I really couldn't bear it. It's already time to say this, Blood Plume said disdainfully. Then run over there yourself. He wraps his arms around me in a proud gesture, reminding me that if I am any later, there might not even be any mince me left. He's still flirting with me at this hour. Blood Plume's request embarrassed me a little. I clenched my teeth and stood in place. Yet my heart was torn as I put up countless resistances. In a flash, Blood Plume took me flying. His speed was very fast. Soon he brought me to the sky above White Emperor and the others. He detected this snake's aura that was very familiar to Bai Dai. This weird boa constrictor was actually someone they had spent so much time with. Looking at this python, Frost Cloud's face turned blue. How did Sang Knight become like this? Now he was more than twice as big. Bai Dai's face instantly looked sad. He really couldn't believe that Sang he had not only changed his appearance, but also improved his abilities during this battle. Frosty Cloud saw those corpses on the ground and really couldn't believe it. These couldn't all be made by Sang Knight. Right, the snake beasts were all killed by him. While they were surprised that it was Sangy's experience, by Dai and Frosty Cloud heard a movement in the air, and the two of them looked up into the air with great surprise. When Blood Plume landed on the ground with me in his arms, by Dai and Frosty Cloud shouted in unison, How did I get here? Bloodling, who was left behind me, had a slightly angry face in his heart. He cursed me, this little guy, sort of throwing him away when he's used up a... I also ignored them and directly crossed over from their side to see Sang Knight behind them. I really didn't expect Sang Knight to turn out like this. Looking at this huge python, I was saddened in my heart. 
Obviously when I came out, I was fine, but now Song Yat is injured and turned like this. Hearing my words, Bloodline replied with a firm look in his eyes, A fi demon is a monster that crawls out from the endless abyss. You recounted these things to me, the fi fiend and orc blood. Eating orc meat will absorb the anger, the fi fiend is hell. I don't believe saying he is a fi demon at all. But Blood Plume spoke the truth, because the foreign devil bloodline in saying Yi's body was always in a state of slumber. The dagger on Sang Yi's head was a dagger polished with foreign devil bones, which could attract the foreign devil bloodline. That's the truth. Blood Plume looked at the blood stains all over the place and said seriously, There are only a few skeletons left here. Those snake beasts should have been eaten by this guy. Suddenly Blood Plume appeared behind me and held my trembling body. Blood Plume looked at me with an expressionless face. Are you still sure you are Mulberry Knight now? These words made me sad, because in my eyes, saying he is not some foreign devil, he is just my family. Family that loves each other. No matter what he had become, he was Sonia and my family that I had spent so much time with. After I said those words, I kissed Sanya's forehead. At this moment, Blood Plume smiled evilly. Little female, sure you want to do this. The Phi Demons are dangerous. Your kindness may harm the people here. Without saying a word, Blood Plume reached out and pointed at Sang Knight behind me and kept reminding me that they were all a bunch of extremely destructive maniacs. As the words came out, his face instantly darkened. He put forward his own idea. Why not slaughter him while he is unconscious? To eliminate any future problems forever. Hearing his words, I hurriedly hugged Sang Knight behind me and turned my head to stare at Blood Plume. If you dare to touch Sang Knight for a second, I'll fight you to the death. My voice, however, made the two of them's hearts tangle off. The more I said, the more aggrieved I felt. But my eyes were determined. Tears were shed in order to protect Sang Knight. This scene made Blood Link completely unbelievable. This little guy, actually wanting to lay down his life to protect that foreign devil, just for a family member. When Frost Cloud saw my aggrieved and tearful appearance, he hurriedly came forward to coax me. Well, don't cry, but I couldn't stop my tears from flowing now. I trembled and blocked in front of them, just to make them not allowed to hurt Sang Knight. I pleaded with them. Could they not hurt Song Yue? By Dai is going to come forward and wipe the tears from my cheeks. His gentleness overwhelmed me and calmed me down as well. Blood Plume, however, couldn't believe that by Dai and the two of them were so unprincipled. The price of letting a foreign demon race go is greater than you can imagine. I stood in the White Emperor's arms nest and spat out my tongue. We don't need you to be in charge of our family's affairs. These words infuriated Blood Plume and inwardly cursed me. Saying he was suspicious by nature, and was afraid of being abandoned by those he trusted, as I looked at the current saying night, although huge and terrifying, it had a hint of desolation to it. But Blood Plume had a disdainful look on his face, looking in our direction. You can go and try it out. He sat Saturday firmly on Sang Yi's body and reached out his hand to grasp the dagger. 
with a forceful hand, but Dai helped Sanya pull out the dagger. After pulling out that knife over there, Sonya transformed from the huge python to his previous appearance. Seeing San Knight after pulling out the knife, Blood Plume couldn't help but sigh. It was really interesting. I didn't realize that Sanya had transformed from an alien demon into an ort. When he learned that Sangyi had returned to his original form, Blood Plume was not in a position to stay any longer. After he glanced at me, there was nothing more for me to do here either. When Blood Plume flew into the air, I looked up in the direction he left along with Bai Dai. I didn't realize that there were still a few of his feathers scattered in the air. I slowly lowered my head and looked at Sang Knight's position. I looked at the scars on his back and inexplicably felt some bitterness in my heart. After tidying up, I then put the cloak on Sang Knight. I looked at Sang Knight, who was lying on the ground with font eyes. Sang Knight, let's take you back home. Hearing me say this, Frosty Cloud was surprised, but White Emperor turned his head and skimmed him with a disdainful face. Really, he was speechless. As they were saying these words, they sensed a clamor behind them, and both of them looked in that direction at the same time. It turned out to be Frost Cloud's clan members, who were holding the skin that Sang Knight had molted, and reported to Frost Cloud that they didn't find any trace of the snake beast, and only found the huge snake skin. After that Frost Cloud transformed into a wolf body, so I Saturday on Frost Cloud's back, together we walked in the direction of home, and Sang Knight was carried behind by White Emperor. We left Frost Cloud's clan and went home to recuperate. After the big battle, the entire Rock Wolf clan went into a state of recuperation. I helped to treat the wounded during the day, boiling and serving them medicines to keep them busy. Sang Yu felt someone beside him and felt warm too. He then slowly woke up. I saw his eyes open. Excited shouted. I helped Sang Yu slowly do up. He covered his sore forehead and thought back to what happened before. His memory was forgotten after chasing Ma Qin. Seeing his appearance, I directly stood up and happily pacified Sang Yu. The most important task for you now is to have a good rest. Suddenly he directly hugged me, which made me surprised and a bit overwhelmed. Right now, Sang Yi's body is still weak. I'll tell him when he gets better. After Bai Dai Frosty Cloud, and the two of them walked in from outside the cave. They saw this scene and their faces were a bit ugly. I heard their voices and let go of him. He covered his numb mouth and cursed the stinking tiger in his heart. But Dai twisted his head to look at Sang Yi. It's good that he's fine. Those snake beasts had disappeared. Sang Knight sensed their desire to speak. Although the temple's people have faded away for now. The crisis still exists. The only way to do that is to become stronger. By Dai's eyes were very affectionate. He slowly opened his mouth and told me that seeing me take care of Sang Knight like this was very hard on his heart. Hearing those words, I stared at Bai Dai with my cute and adorable eyes. At the moment my heart was beating uncontrollably. Bai Dai lowers his head and looks at me fondly. He dominantly raises his hand to lift my cheek. He also wants me to help him like that, but I'm also shy. In the next second, he kissed me, his strong arm holding my back. His arm slowly tightened. The two of us were in an intimate position. After a long time, he finally let go of me. The knot in his throat rolled, slowed down his mind for a while, and then gently packed my forehead with great interest. I grabbed his arm with great anxiety. I was being unfair, but Dai noticed my emotions keenly and lowered his head in worry.
When my mind was fuzzy and my legs were weak, I die finally gave up and let go, and their lips slowly parted, snuggling together intimately. I die sighed helplessly, his eyes full of heartache. He suddenly stopped moving. I looked up at him in confusion. What's wrong? His gaze was as gentle as water. Gazing straight at me, his eyes were filled with heavy affection. You're so tired. I shouldn't let you get tired again. After saying this, I die violently pick me up. Send you back to the bedroom to sleep for a while. I quickly shook my head and refused. I still have to burn dinner later. In the next second, Bai Dai lowered his head and whispered softly in his side ear, I want you to raise your spirit so that it tastes good. My whole body turned scarlet with shyness. Bai Dai hugged me and put me on the lying bed, and also thoughtfully covered the quilt. One second he said he wasn't going to sleep. The next second he was huffing and puffing. His Saturday on the edge of the bed and raised his hand to gently stroke my hair. Looking at my sleeping face, Bai Dai constantly flashed a thought that he really wanted to monopolize slowly. Bai Dai's eyes flashed, once again gazing over with his head lowered, his eyes glowing with a faint watery color. There seemed to be more than a hint of imperceptible sadness. He lowered himself and dropped a kiss on my forehead. Extremely precious and loving, as long as it makes you happy. No matter what you do is fine. After an unknown amount of time, Frost Cloud suddenly pushed the door in, and again asked softly, Slowly is sleeping. Bai Dai gave a hum and nodded. Frost Cloud slowly came to the front, warningly and vigilantly staring at Bai Dai. Looking at that just now, he thought he was about to mate with slowly. Bai Dai didn't even raise his head. His eyes stayed glued to me, looking down at the sleeping me with a heartbroken look. He's been too tired lately and needs to rest. I lay on the bed and slept peacefully, and he couldn't help but remember. Again, the scene of our first encounter, the weakened frightened me in the eyes of the White Emperor. Although my appearance was petite and soft, my character was like a tough plant, chasing after the sun light and trying to grow so hard that people couldn't help but follow it. Before he finished speaking, Bai Dai keenly noticed that Frosty Cloud was pouting and wanted to kiss me. His face immediately grimaced and it spoke out to stop him. Frost Cloud couldn't help but blush slightly, remembering that I stood up to protect Sang Knight today. He was a little bit tarted up in his heart, but they both knew that, no matter who among them is in trouble, I will stand out like this, because in my eyes, they are all important family members. By Dai Saturday on the bed, couldn't help but freeze for a moment. Hearing him say these heartfelt words, he couldn't help but purse his lips and smile. Very much in agreement, we are all slow family members. So I curiously walked out, just as I stepped out of the cave, I saw the fiery red and dazzling wings, it was actually the blood plume opening up. Before the clansman could open his mouth to complain, Blood Plume pushed him away. The feathered man has a beastman injured. We don't have enough medicinal herbs, so we've come to borrow some. Or Blood Plume first opened the mouth. He was very arrogant, his face dark and heavy staring at saying nay provocation. I did not think that you are so quickly well. I see the situation is not good. The Blood Plume eyes are a little dangerous. Hastily find out the herbs too. High in the hands. In this, attempting to try to cover saying night, the two of them stared at me speechlessly, holding the herb in their hands for half a day. Too damn, I'm too short. I can't block Bloodline's line of sight at all. Seeing Bloodline lowering his head playfully, I looked very serious and started to drive people away, holding it high in my hand and handing it to him. Here's the herbs. Hurry up and go. Blood Plume reached out and took the herbs. He couldn't help but pint my cheeks. His face was smiling. I'll come back to play with you some other day. I let go of him in pain.
saying he has a very cute contrast. He nodded with a good face. I'll listen to you. Look at him like this. Immediately hit my heart. My snake snake so good. Ah, uh, I want to protect him. I want to protect him. Saying he is really good when he is good. The biggest change in this war is that the relationship between the wolf tribe and the feather tribe has eased a lot. Even if the two tribes meet on the road. When I think of this, I can't help but smile in my heart. I brought my basket to the sunflower garden and gently touched them with a gentle hand. As I was talking to the sunflowers, there was a sudden movement behind me. I twisted my head strangely to look, and there was that fiery red wing again. I saw Blood Plume rushing towards me with a smile on his face. When I saw Blood Plume, I didn't have a good face at all. I directly disliked him. As an elder, are you this idle every day? Blood Plume also did not give in, knowing that he himself is an elder, but also used this tone. Is not afraid of him? When the time to go to find the trouble of the wolf clan, I closed my eyes and held back the anger in my heart, and smiled at him with my teeth bared. But the Blood Plume smiled and spread his hands. Is so petty people, I was angry fists are hard. The world how come there be such a brazen person? Looked at him like strolling in the backyard garden. A face of leisure and relaxation. I heard that the fried sunflower seeds are quite tasty. Even shamelessly told me to taste it. I immediately panicked. Immediately reached out in front of the sunflower. Expression serious reprimanded him. Quickly stop. You ruined my sunflower. But Blood Plume was so relaxed. Didn't he tell you to let me pick it with my own hands? I was immediately rendered speechless. But the Blood Plume is not relentless. To eat fried melon seeds than this fragrant. I was furious and gritted my teeth. So many requests. Why don't you go to heaven? But I didn't expect the next second. Blood Plume suddenly opened his wings and flew violently up to the sky. Flaunting with me. Of course he can't go to the sky. See Blood Plume fly away before also did not forget to say. Next time remember to fry good. I was angry at the back of the feet, constantly cursing him. Get lost! Soon it was evening. The setting sun gilded the deep mountains with a layer of golden color. I was so angry that my head was smoking, still thinking about what just happened, with a face of indignation. I clenched my fist. Can any of you beat Blood Plume? The three people in the room couldn't help but fall silent when they heard this. Cold sweat slowly sliding down their cheeks. I was still angry and asked, Can I beat it? By Dai was the first to turn his head. It was a fluke that he was able to win last time. If Blood Plume used his full strength, he would definitely not be a match for Blood Plume. Frosty Cloud also lowered his head and fumbled with his chin. His expression was a bit scornful. He definitely can't beat them alone. But the whole clan together still has some chance of winning. Sin Knight also raised his head and told me with a grim expression, the Blood Plume's strength is unfathomable. No one here is his opponent. Hearing these words, I instantly frowned. See, my face ugly thought. No wonder he is so arrogant. So it is emboldened. Ah. I immediately slapped the table and stood up and complained with righteous indignation. Bullying our sunflower, eating our melon seeds without paying, but also frying melon seeds for him. White Emperor heard this. Derry Doden lowered his head to appease. Then tomorrow to go and ask for it back for you. But I shook my head firmly. I don't care about the money. I just can't swallow this breath. I just hope it won't appear in front of me. If Whitey goes, that stinking birdman will surely bully him. I can only turn my anger into appetite. I keep on eating big mouthfuls of food. I hurriedly walked up to open the door. Once I saw the person who came, the whole person frouncy. How is it again, Blood Plume? Hastily blocked the doorway. I saw him smiling and saying, The flavor of fried melon seeds is good. Give me some more. I was speechless, looking at his shameless face. Blood Plume heard this, directly turned around. You still have a lot of sunflowers in the vegetable field. I immediately panicked and shouted, Do not spoil my vegetable field.
Blood Plume suddenly raised his hand and took out something. I won't eat your food for nothing, so I'll give you this as a gift in return. The thing looked like a small green bean, with shoots sprouting from the top of it. Blood Plume stood at a distance holding his arms, then patiently opened his mouth to explain. It's called the half-branched lotus. When it grows up it can blossom, and many females like it very much. I pinched the small seed in my fingertips and looked at it in the sunlight, and asked with great curiosity, How should I plant this? When Blood Plume heard this, his entire face darkened, and he was silent for a while. Give it a drop of blood and throw it into the pond, and it will grow up on its own. Back to the house, I immediately find out the flowers and plants of the ancient books, sitting at the table and constantly looking for access to the I tilted my head and looked at it with big eyes, puzzled, how come there is no information about the half branch lotus in this part in a book? However, when asked this sentence, little A rejected it outright. The house authority is not enough. The system is unable to answer. I Saturday down on the bed angrily. I lowered my head in surprise and looked at the seat, watching it gradually change, and was pleasantly surprised. Then Saturday on the edge of the pond, staring at a small bud, couldn't help but murmur, looks so much like a lotus flower, don't know if there is a lotus root. I didn't realize that as soon as the words left my mouth, many lotus roots suddenly erupted from the pond, all at once smashed in my feet. I was dumbfounded sitting on the bank of the stone, surprised to look at the lotus root. This is what happened. I was shocked when I looked up and saw that the half-branched lotus Root was shaking its head towards the bank. As if it wanted to get close to me, I quickly reached out my hand, and the lotus immediately tilted its head and rubbed against the back of my hand. Inside, very shocked, could not help but praise it. This is too good, and the bud was so soft and tender. I held the lotus root in my arms, curious to ask the half lotus, this lotus root are you give me, in my heart, I thought, lotus flowers can become a spirit, hearing this, the lotus opened its petals happily and spoke directly, and he likes it, it's all for you, looking at the half lotus that can speak human language, I was very surprised in my heart, you can actually talk, and also call me Eddie, see the lotus flower nodded. The next second, Blood Plume flew to the pond, seeing the scene in front of him. He quickly understood, is this a gift from Half Branch Lotus to you? He flew into the air and lowered his head, with a gentle face. He smiled at me. It seems that you guys are getting along very well. When the Half Branch Lotus saw him, each petal was manifest in its toy, constantly shouting with excitement, Abba, Abba. At this time I finally realized that something was wrong, seriously raised his head and asked, how can this half branch lotus call me my mother, and also call you dad? Blood Plume laughed softly and slowly told the truth, the half branch lotus is a rare species, it will evolve from a plant into a human form, before it was born, whoever drank blood for it is its parent, and before I gave it to you, I gave it a drop of blood first, after hearing the whole story, I was furious and stood up violently, shouting angrily, you did it on purpose.
I forced a smile on my face and smiled at Aff Lily, stroking its head in a soothing manner, the half branched. Lotus happily turned back and swam towards the middle of the pond. It was Aeon's little good boy. I watched speechlessly as it swam away. In order to blast this damn bird away, directly at him to throw out a bag of melon seeds, I face ugly roar at him. Don't come again. The blood plume sharply reached out to catch, before leaving also Ode beating said, after giving birth to a child, do not recognize people, really ruthless. I raised my head and kept cursing in my heart. This guy is so handsome, but so shameless. Every day, apart from molesting me, he just dabbles in food and drink. Soon it was the day of the market stalls. The beasts gathered here, very noisy and lively. Soon, the stall I set up was swept away and instantly became bare. I didn't realize that the orcs also like to get high on melon seeds. Suddenly someone gently knocked on the table. I twisted my head in confusion. The blood plume but some dissatisfaction pouted, at least I am also the father of the child. You do not leave a packet, I shyly reprimanded. Do not talk nonsense. But I didn't think that. Behind me suddenly came an eerie questioning. I turned my head with a vegetable face and looked at the person who came. This situation is bad. Surprisingly, it was Frosty Cloud who came, only to see him frowning fiercely, with an angry face, asking, when did I have a child with you? I quickly and anxiously pacify Frost Clouds. First do not be anxious anon, but Blood Plume is still on the sidelines to add fuel to the fire. Anyway, our children have already grown up. Frosty Cloud couldn't calm down at all and shouted angrily at him with an indignant face. What the hell? Wouldn't it slowly give you a child? Blood Plume looked unprecedentedly arrogant, directly reached out his hand and summoned the half-branched lotus. Why don't you come and see our child with your own eyes? I could only slowly and honestly tell Frosty Cloud the whole story. After listening to the story, Frosty Cloud's wolf ears dropped down and he was very unhappy, saying, If you have a child in your belly, will it be mine? I quickly coaxed him and couldn't stop nodding my head. It's yours. It's yours. Frosty Cloud's mood immediately changed from cloudy to sunny, and he was happy. He was very dejected and stuck his waist in place. Still slow love me the most. Blood Plume looked at the two people in front of him, silent for a long time. Finally still opened his wings. He turned around and prepared to leave, but also did not forget to mouth. First take our son back. You also quickly come back. But when Blood Lane heard this, he just coldly glanced back at him and thought, doesn't it have anything to do with me? That's not for sure in the end. But soon he waved his wings and flew away with the city sun. The sun was shining, the rocky mountains were bustling. It was a good time for couples to talk about their love. I am excited to open the door of the house. Frost clouds closely behind me, carrying a basket of things. As soon as I entered the door, shouted, we are back. Unexpectedly, once I opened the door, it was actually Blood Plume, who was as relaxed as he was in his own home, and even said, we're all back. Blood Plume smiled and twisted his head, quickly sit down and rest. Frosty Cloud was simply full of questions and was speechless at his behavior. I didn't have a good attitude towards Blood Plume. I asked him, why are you here? It's like he's the master of the house. 
saying he quietly hid behind a rock at this time. Heart 100,000 alert, slowly said this person is very dangerous, must stay away from him. By Dai also walked over, his attitude towards him was cold, directly swearing sovereignty. How come Elder Blood Plume has time to come to my house as a guest? Blood Plume opened his mouth with a beaten face, bringing my son to find his mother. But Dai was so angry that he gnashed his teeth. He really wanted to rush forward and beat him up. When I heard this, I immediately slapped the table in shame and indignation. My complexion couldn't help but be a little flustered, and I hurriedly opened my mouth to explain, don't listen to his nonsense, and angrily stretched out his finger to point at the blood plume. Dead frowned and shouted, can you not say this kind of ambiguous words? I have nothing with you. Blood Plume was simply fearless, or that look of beating, summoned the half branch lotus. In its ear accusation, your mother dislike us how to do. The half branch lotus immediately straightened its roots and looked majestic. The little guy was also very domineering, stepped forward and stretched out its branches and leaves to wrap around my arm. And as soon as I pulled me over, I cried out in panic. I looked on with a puzzled face and saw it standing in the middle like a peacemaker, constantly persuading and making peace. A now nay dad, stay together, stay together. Blood bloom heart simply happy flowers, very compassionate reach out. Touched half a lotus bud, a bud did not hurt you in vain. Finished as if asking for permission, shouted a child's mother, my whole body instantly frouncy, and I was silent with a face of vegetables, my heart was in seven pairs, and I was in a nervous cold sweat, if by die heard this, the consequences would be unimaginable. Hastily and nervously looked back, the white emperor's expression was dark and gloomy. His mouth was closed and silent. His aura was frightening. This is the end, but I couldn't help but clench my fist, looking a little flustered explaining the whole thing to Bai Dai, not wanting him to get the wrong idea. I stared with big soulful eyes and explained to him, Bai Dai you should be able to feel it with the rain on. It's not what Blood Plume said. Bai Dai nodded seriously. He understood it all, but for Blood Plume to come up with such a way to get closer, it seems like he's really hooked on it. Seeing that the explanation is clear, I have no more worries, and with an angry face, I walked out of the cave, wanting to drive away this nuisance. Blood Plume, the top of my head was smoking, and I pushed Blood Plume with my arms outstretched, so I could leave without seeing him off. Blood Plume was pushed by me and stumbled. Ruthless woman, the White Emperor stood at a distance, watching the two of us interact. Such a powerful guy didn't directly snatch the reprieve. I'm afraid he's already trapped in it. Blood Plume sighed with a pitiful look at the half branch lotus. A person alone in the house, and good to have a son to accompany me. I tugged the corners of my mouth speechless, directly sneer, gave up arguing with him this had no. He acted happy on the good. I die as I sullenly stared at the door. His sight was to eye catching. It would be impolite to pretend not to see it. Blood Plume had to raise his head, and their eyes met in there. He was very clear in his heart and knew that Bai Dai had seen through his mind. But in the end, the person who makes the decision is only slow. All Bai Dai can do now is to be by the side of slow no matter what. The weather gradually turned cold. The sky did not know when it started to pour rain. The breeze blew past, revealing a hint of coolness. Bai Dai and the others have all gone hunting, and the rain won't let me follow. So I opened the system panel and wanted to plant something else. But my level is too low right now. I can't plant the potatoes and rice that I want. I opened my big eyes and looked up with some curiosity to ask the system. Xiao Hachi, why haven't you sent me any quests lately? Xiao Hachi's cold and inorganic voice came. Outside of random and special missions, the system will not take the initiative to issue missions. As soon as I heard special missions, my eyes immediately widened. Couldn't help but clench my fists. Full of excitement, this is the first time I've heard of it. The difficulty of special missions was divided into beginner, intermediate and advanced. The higher the difficulty level, the more generous the rewards. Which level mission does the host want? I was about to say I wanted an advanced mission, but I immediately realized I was being impulsive. I'd better calm down. The difficulty level of the mission is still unclear. As oh, I raised my head and took a beginner's quest with Hachi. I was going to feel the difficulty first, to test the waters. After all, you can't eat a fat man in one breath. However, there are currently three primary quests, which are related to planting, minerals and hunting, and it is recommended that the host take the minerals quest. I couldn't help but frown. Hunting and killing I definitely don't dare to choose, but I don't quite understand why the system suggests choosing minerals after evaluating it. Shall I well speak up first to explain, this mission is relatively simple and the host is in great need of crystals right now. I immediately clenched my hand with some anticipation, and was so shocked inside that I couldn't help but stare. 
mining turns out to be able to dig up crystals. After getting an affirmative answer from the system, I was simply bursting with joy and motivation. If I could dig up a crystal vein, wouldn't I be making a fortune? The host has successfully taken over the primary mining task. The special task cannot be abandoned. The time limit is three months to complete. The task failure will accept the punishment. After calming down and learning that there is a punishment, I cannot help but ask with some nervousness. What is that punishment? Xiao Hachi's face was sullen. The punishment for the primary mission is to be unconscious for seven days, and after the failure of the advanced mission, the life may be directly wiped out. When I heard this, my face immediately turned ugly. I couldn't stop the fear in my heart. I almost chose the advanced mission just now. Liu Wei then thoughtfully reminded again that because of the limited time, the host is requested to hurry up and complete the mission, and then it disappeared. I couldn't help but close my eyes, relaxing. I exhale a breath. Fortunately, I didn't act on impulse just now and pick up the advanced quest. I then took out the compass again and looked down at it and thought, the mission time is limited. It seems I need to hurry up. I carefully recalled what Hachi had said and carefully turned the compass in my hand, wanting to activate it. But just as I twisted it, the compass actually clicked and turned on its own. It simply couldn't stop. Not only did this pointer keep spinning round and round, but it was also getting faster and faster. I couldn't help but look a little flustered and could only hold it in my hand in a frouncing manner so hastily called the system, suspecting that the compass it gave should be broken. Xiao Bai soon appeared in front of me. The treasure hunting compass needle kept spinning because of the location, just located in the top of the ore vein. I heard this is simply full of question marks. Instantly incredibly wide-eyed. How can be so lucky all? Clutching the compass in my hand, I lowered my head and contemplated. There is a vein of ore under my feet. When Bai Dai and the others came back, I hurriedly told them about the mineral vein. A few people were also shocked when they heard this, seeing that they were very unbelievable. I nodded my head with great certainty, but opened my mouth with some hesitation and asked, So should we dig? By Dai pondered for a while. If we dig, it will most likely cause the body to sink. And if the situation is serious, it might even collapse. I didn't expect the situation to be so serious. His face immediately turned ugly, and he couldn't help but frown, saying Knight also has concerns. Once the digging starts, it will alert other tribes in the vicinity. The feathered clan will not be able to hide it. It will attract countless covetousness. Hearing this, I covered my mouth with some hesitation. I didn't think that there would be such serious consequences. So let's not dig, right? Frosty Cloud lowered his head with a headache. The crystals were certainly tempting, but he actually cherished the current days more and didn't want to invite trouble. Baidai also nodded in agreement, saying Knight's attitude was also very agreeable. Frost Cloud was right. My heart is also very guilty. I can't force the whole clan to be first to move just because of my one mission. It's better to look elsewhere. Early the next morning, it was a beautiful day with bright sunshine. I was in a hurry and kept circling around in the same place. Three months is not too long to say. Not too short to say, but where the hell am I going? To find another vein. Having said that, I'm still a bit nervous, in case I underestimate. The punishment isn't the heaviest, but it won't be a lightning strike in a seven-day coma. Right. The White Emperor noticed from the side. Since yesterday there is something on his mind. Is it because of the vein? So he probed and asked with concern. What are you thinking about? I smiled at him a bit sheepishly. Since I've made up my mind to look for the vein in a different place, I have to go out and look for it quickly. Looking at Bai Dai's alert eyes, I'd better not tell them. Bai Dai is too smart and good at thinking. He might guess something. So he hastily took his arm and started pampering him, trying to pull away from the topic. I'm so bored at home. Can you take me out for a stroll? White Emperor smiled and agreed. Go out to get some air or not. Slow down happy. May be willing to tell the heart. Soon I change my clothes. Excitedly shouted. Set off. White Emperor turned into the appearance of the original body of the big white tiger. The two went out together. While passing by the vegetable garden, I ran into Sane Knight who was busy in the field. I saw him and excitedly shouted out his name, then stretched out his arm and waved at him, bidding him a happy goodbye. We're going out for a stroll. Don't have to wait for us to have lunch. Sun Yu was silent for a while, his eyes staring straight over. He also wanted to go very much in his heart, so he hastily opened his mouth. I want to go too. I frowned when I heard this, feeling a little surprised. When the clan members saw this, they laughed and advised me, just take same night with you and have some fun. Leave the watering to us. Don't worry about it. I was all smiles. And after earnestly thanking everyone, I came to St. Knight's side. I raised my hand affectionately and touched St. Knight's snake head. Let's go together then. St. Knight's heart was practically bursting with joy. And she hurriedly agreed. Soon one person, one tiger, and one snake, headed outside, walked out of the unknown half 
far, I cannot help but look down at the hands of the compass. The heart is very sad to hear the compass did not move. At this time on a tree, there are many bird eggs in the bird's nest. Saying Knight was very keen to find them, he fiercely poked out his big head, his eyes sharply staring at these bird eggs, directly flicked his big tail and rolled up a nest of bird eggs, in his heart. He was very pleased. So many bird eggs. Slowly will definitely like it. Sonya directly stuffed the bird eggs in my hand. I was a bit shocked as I looked at the nest of eggs. Inwardly marveling. This is too much. I quickly concluded that Sonya must be a repeat egg thief. Seeing his face of selling and pleasing. I only need one. Then wanted to let the two of them share the rest of the eggs. But by Dai suddenly spoke up and refused. Not liking the eggs. They tasted strange. Seeing by Dai's disgusted expression. I picked up a bird egg, and quickly thought of a way to make sure he would like to eat it. I looked up at the sun in the sky. It was midday and the sun was at its peak. I found a lotus leaf, and knocked the bird's egg on it. In the past in modern times, there was a saying that the egg was scorched by the hot sun, and fried into a lotus egg. After a while, after the scorching sun under the carbon baking, the egg soon nuisance out of the aroma. It was baked. Packed Ty's penny kept shrugging. It was too fragrant. The bird's egg that smelled foul became so fragrant all of a sudden. I hastened to strike. While the iron was hot and roasted three or four eggs on a lotus leaf, took them over to Bai Dai, wanting him to taste the flavor. Bai Dai immediately opened his big mouth and dropped it into his mouth. With his eyes closed, he took a bite of the lotus egg with great enjoyment and hurriedly threw one to Sang Yi as well. Looking at their happy faces as they ate, I was also very happy. Song Ya finished eating and was ready to go fetch water. I stuffed a bite into my own mouth as well, chewing the contents of my mouth and nodded, thinking, the poached egg I made is really delicious. Sitting alone under the tree, I couldn't help but feel a little emotional. I would actually eat a poached egg in a strange beast world. How could I not dare to think about it before? I looked up at the sky and felt the breeze in my ears. Dad, Mom, I will live well in this world. While I was lost in thought, a water bag suddenly appeared in front of me. I hurriedly looked sideways in surprise. It was Bai Dai who had turned back into his human form. He lowered his head and gently handed the bag to me, filling it with some water. Would you like to drink some? I hastily took it and drank it in large gulps. In this world, I still have Bai Dai, Frost Cloud and Sand Knight, and many others. I'm not alone. After drinking the water and quenching my thirst, I asked Bai Dai with some anticipation. How is it? Is the poached egg I made good? Bai Dai's eyes deepened. His eyes stared at me without moving. Compared to eating poached eggs, I want to eat you more. When I heard this, the water in my mouth had even been swallowed. Immediately shocked, it sprayed out and splashed onto Bai Dai's face. Sang Knight, who was coiled up in the tree, tilted his head, a little puzzled in his heart, and asked with a face of innocence, Is something wrong? I quickly shook my head, nothing, and could not help but take out the compass. Seriously look at a moment, the heart sinking thought, This pointer has never moved again. After traveling so far, there is still no trace of the vein. I'm still a little lost in my heart. Bai Dai noticed my emotions very keenly, concerned. He asked, Is there any difficulty? I wanted to say something. I need a lot of crystals. Sane Knight listened carefully to my words from the sidelines. So it turns out that slowly came out in order to find crystals. He couldn't bear to see me sad. So he opened his mouth and spat out a bunch of crystals, which were almost piled up into a small mountain mound. When he left the temple, he only brought this much with him. I was very shocked to see this scene. Saint Knight can actually spit out so much. Is there a storage space hidden in his mouth? Bai Dai also understood. If you want crystals, I have a friend who has some crystals stored there in B-City. I can go fetch them all for you. I couldn't help but freeze when I heard B-C. Bai Dai hardly talked about going there. Maybe it wasn't a good place for him over there. So I tugged on Bai Dai's shirt with some concern. I can take care of it myself. Don't you go to BC. I don't want to be separated from you. We are too weak right now. And if we go to B-City rashly, we might encounter a lot of potential risks with white eyes. I worriedly reminded by Dai. There must be another way to find the vein. When I said those words, I Dai's eyes looked a little sad. But I didn't read him at all. By Dai looked at me towards a beam of light that illuminated his entire darkness. I was worried that he was in danger. I was really keen and felt the danger of the bee city. Immediately after that I turned the ring on my hand and took in all the crystals that Song Ya had brought with him. Sang Knight nodded very nicely. I have the ability to put things all in the ring and take things out of the ring as well. He transformed into a snake body and guarded me at the side. He looked at me fondly. He really didn't expect the slow ring to be able to take things in and out at will. He then turned his head to look at Bai Dai. Sang Knight thought of Bai Dai and Frost Cloud, also wearing rings on their hands, 
not sure about the magic of their rings. Bai Dai sensed his sight and twisted his head directly to look at him. What's wrong? San Knight, however, grinned a little, crouched down and shook his head. But he waited for a while, and then he gave White Emperor. Just think I'm amazing. San Knight thought I sympathized with him and kept him around. But Bai Dai looked at me in front of him with deep eyes. I am awesome and special. Maybe later, I will be more awesome than the people in the city. And at this moment, I am admiring the peach blossoms. My smile is very radiant. It's because of this that they are all shocked inside. The sun is about to set. The birds in the sky are flying freely. The dusk scene at this time of the year gives one a desire to go home. Frosty clouds squatted in the vegetable garden. His hand on his head listlessly. He looked at the fresh cabbages in front of him, but his mind had long since flown far away. Soon he raised his hand and poked his face again, pondering with a haughty look on his face. His inner turmoil led him straight to me. I was walking side by side with Bai Dai and was puzzled to see Frost Cloud running towards us. I called out to him in surprise. I really didn't expect Frost Cloud to run straight over and stick it to me. Frost Cloud thought that Bai Dai and Sang Knight had eloped with me, and his words left me speechless. I've only heard of two people eloping. I've never heard of three people eloping. As soon as these words came out, he let go of me. He looked at me with arrogance and shyness. At some point, a few red feathers drifted down in the sky. At this time, none of us had discovered who the feathers belonged to yet. When I noticed that something was wrong, I looked up into the sky at the same time as Frost Cloud and found Blood Plume with his wings spread out. He was actually listening to our conversation. Blood Plume looked at the half-branched lotus on his arm. The child misses his mother. So I, as a father, of course I had to bring him to you. He kept shouting a mother. I looked at his smelly appearance very angry. We can't let Blood Plume continue to be so ambiguous. If you really want a child, you should go find a female. He didn't expect me to say that. I am a family man. Please don't say that in the future. These words made the air around Blood Plume gloomy and cold. Seeing that I was angry, the half-branched lotus kept wrapping around Blood Plume's wrist and shouted loudly towards me, calling out to me, Auntie, his voice made me suffer. Every sentence of Enyum gave me a heartbreaking feeling. Long pain is better than short pain. I tell the truth. I am sorry. I am not your a mother. I can't let little pod be used by Blood Plume any longer. Blood Plume, look at my smile. Revealing a kind of evil. You want to draw a line. His eerie aura made my whole body feel a chill. But I could only harden my heart. Blood Plume's smile looked so dangerous. Blood Plume's aura was very powerful. And in a low voice, he said very well. He then raised his hand and pinched half branch Lotus's lifeline. This pinch was so good that it made half branch Lotus tremble. And it cried like a child. He cried like a child. He wanted a bot to stop and let himself go. Seeing this scene, the White Emperor walked straight up and blocked in front of me. With sinister eyes, he glared angrily at Blood Plume who was going crazy. However, Frost Cloud on the side also clenched his teeth and stared closely at his movements. At this moment, Saint Knight's face wasn't any better, all afraid that I would be hurt. In the sky, Blood Plume had a smile on his face that made people think hard. Your mother does not want you, so there is no use in keeping you now. After that he used the art of bathing in fire and burned the half-branched lotus, he kept pleading with a ba in the fire, but Blood Plume showed no mercy. When I saw the scene, I was surprised that Blood Plume was going to burn the little pod. I directly shouted at him to stop. You cold-blooded fellow. Hearing my words, Blood Plume put away the phoenix flame, looking at the half-branched lotus that was floating down in the air. I hurriedly went forward to catch it and kept coming him down. Half-branched lotus, who had been choking, was trembling in my arms. His choked voice said, Auntie, I mean pain. This broke my heart. I gently patted his body. Her flower, crying like a little baby. How could Blood Plume bear it? Wanted his life. Blood Plume slowly fell from the air. Didn't you want to draw a line in the sand? He kept my blood in yours. Just burn it and you'll be completely clean. His words poked my bottom line. I directly scolded Blood Plume angrily. He at least called you a ba. You actually want to burn him to death so heartlessly. He then opened his wings and had the face to smile at me. But what is said stuck in my heart. In terms of cruelty, who can compare to you? With a brush, he flew up into the sky, fluttered his powerful wings, and left in contentment. I was left standing in the same place. Angry, the sky was already getting dark. The sun was setting and the moon was slowly climbing up. The sky was particularly relaxing at the moment. I took the half-branched lotus back to the home. After receiving a basin of water, straight put him in the water. 
looking at the scars of the half-branched lotus heartbreaking. My heart has been broken. I directly bit my finger. Want to use blood to feed the half-lotus, so that he quickly get well. Drop by drop, the blood slowly flowed down my fingertip. Every drop landed on the stamen of the lotus with precision. As I nourished him with my blood, his petals slowly stretched out, and his voice wasn't as jerky as before. He cried out excitedly for Enti. The half-branched lotus was now slowly recovering. I reached out and gently stroked the petals. Rest well, it won't hurt when you get up after a good night's sleep. From now on, you live your life with me and ignore that bastard bloodling. After the half-branched lotus received the warmth of my fingers, it shook its body. Frosty Cloud, who was hiding in one place, watched us. My gentleness towards half-branched lotus made Frosty Cloud's face grow darker and darker, feeling like she was being robbed of her love. Frost Cloud showed his sharp teeth in anger. This little flower is blatantly relying on me. So when will I be able to carry his child? By die directly yanked out Frost Cloud in the dark. Don't look. We have something to talk about. Go out and talk in detail. Frosty Cloud was very angry when he was pulled by his neck after being yanked out by the White Emperor. Frosty Cloud stared at him angrily. White Emperor has something to say. Quickly say it. Has been waiting for you here. What is so important about this? He did the same action as Frost Cloud. Today he went out actually for the mineral vein. But the mineral vein is not easy to find. Consider the vein of Rocky Mountain. It's better to just take out the vein underneath the Rocky Mountain. When these words came out, it made Frost Cloud very shocked. And Sang Knight was not spared either. At this time, Sang Knight also found out that I wanted to open the mountain and dig up the mines. Sang Knight voiced out the concern for me, but just didn't want to cause trouble for everyone and kept it bottled up. Hearing this Frost Cloud was another shock. Sang Knight twisted her head to look at him and reminded Frost Cloud, because I have to go out tomorrow to continue searching for ore veins. The vein is very important to me. When Frosty Cloud found out about this, he agreed to the matter. He definitely won't let me suffer, because I'm so cute and well behaved. Frosty Cloud crawled around Sang Yu's tail and now arrange for everyone to dig for the mines. Seeing his impulsive appearance, Sang Knight helplessly advised, Wait first, don't be so impulsive, to dig for minerals and still live on the mountain will it be dangerous. By die leaned against the stone wall, if it is a small vein, you can hollow out the ore and build a house on the original foundation. There would be no danger, but as one big guest scared Frosty Cloud and the two of them. But if it was a large vein of ore, it would have to be a different place to stay. There is another problem. The digging will definitely not be able to hide from the feathered clan at the top of the mountain. Is it not a good idea to say hello first? By Dai said seriously. When he finished speaking, Frost Cloud changed turned around and walked out of the cave. He knows that this matter is very important to me. He will go and talk to the Feather Clan chief. Frosty Cloud's face instantly turned gloomy, and in a low voice, he said to the two behind him, Big deal, we'll fight. Whoever wins will listen to whoever wins. The next morning, the sun was just about to rise, and the dazzling sunlight shone through the mountaintop. I yawned repeatedly. At first that's why I had tears in my eyes. I was still in a deep sleep, but as I stepped out of the cave, the sun shone directly on my back, and the warmth made my sleepiness disappear instantly. No one was home all morning. Awake I walked slowly along the road. I came halfway up the hill and heard the noise below me. After that I walked forward and stood at the hillside and looked down. Below was actually the beasts of the Rock Wolf Clan. What were they going to do? Immediately after that, I could see the people leading the group. It was actually saying night and by die. This sight gave me a twinge of unease. Not knowing their plan, I hurriedly ran down from the middle of the mountainside and ran towards the two of them with open arms. I wanted to blend in and find out what was going on. When Bai Dai watched me run over, he picked me up in his arms. His deep eyes overwhelmed me, and he never forgot to remind me to be careful. After receiving White Emperor's instructions, the beasts of the Rock Wolf Clan began to carry out their work. I was surprised and asked by Dai, you guys are digging a hole. Instead, he nodded, after which he instructed me that breakfast was put in the pot. I followed his example and nodded to look at him as well. At the look in his eyes, I looked back. That's what made me remember what they were actually doing. I was surprised to say what you were digging for, but it wasn't the least bit defensive of me. Last night they had discussed that there was a vein of ore right at the bottom of this rocky mountain. It would be a waste if we don't dig it. I stared at him in front of me with big dull eyes. I was heartbroken for him at all times. Their sudden change of mind was for me. Looking at the beasts of the Rock Wolf Clan, they were sweating profusely. Everyone must have started working early in the morning. I'm really thankful for them. Suddenly someone waved at me and called out to me as a wish doctor. I looked back at him in surprise and returned a smile to him. The way everyone was working seriously made me very happy. 
everyone has worked hard. So you guys dig first. I'll go to the vegetable field to see what's there. Standing alone by the river, I looked at the sparkling water. I can't stop it now. It's not good to change things from one day to the next. The half-branched lotus in the water is now in a much better condition than before. I kneeled down and watched him, looking very happy with his vigor. The half-branched lotus is standing up. He stretched out a lotus leaf in the river. This is for me. He shook his body excitedly and called out, Auntie. I took the lotus leaf. He gave me and blocked the harsh sunlight. I cooled off under the lotus leaf, which was comparable to a mobile mini air conditioner. Once I experienced the effect of being under the lotus leaf, I came up with an idea. I asked the half lotus for some lotus leaves. However, on the other side, the beasts who were working hard under the scorching sun were receiving the sun's baptism. I then wanted to give them the lotus leaves, running from the side of the river to the white emperor. I had a lotus leaf on my head and two more in my hand. This one can block the sun. It's very comfortable. By Dai took the lotus leaves in my hand and placed them next to his body, and he instantly felt cooler. The corners of his mouth rose slightly in his smile, but I put the lotus leaf directly on Sane Knight's head. Sun Yao was very cute with it on his head. He won't be so uncomfortable by the heat in the future. Sun Yu raised his hand to support the lotus leaf on his head, and his body instantly felt cool. Just as I said, the effect is comparable to a mobile mini air conditioner. Suddenly I sensed something was wrong and turned my head to look behind me. I heard the people behind me shouting, Oh no, there's a fight. The orc of the Rock Wolf clan hurriedly ran towards me. His face was very ugly, and he opened his mouth in panic. The clan chief and the clan chief were fighting. At this time, on the summit of Rock Mountain, many people were watching from above, and the whole scene was very noisy. Flying birds passed through the sky and were frightened. The Feather Clan had powerful wings and amazing speed, while the Wolf Clan was no less powerful than the Feather Clan. This was a word that belonged between the two clans. Frost Cloud transformed into a wolf as he rubbed his sharp claws on the ground. The spot he stood on had been left with several scratches by him. When he had built up enough strength, he attacked towards the Feather Clan chief, who hastily dodged. The wolf's claws were rapidly freezing wherever he scratched them. Most of the crowd of onlookers were Feather Clan members who stood below and watched the battle. They also didn't forget to cheer for their clan leader. The beasts of the Rock Wolf Clan were also unconvinced, and they kept cheering their clan leader, unlike cheerleaders from both sides. When I got this news, I ran from the bottom of the mountain to the top. When I reached the top of the mountain, the road was surrounded by a huge crowd. The two of them, Blood Plume and Frost Cloud, were not letting anyone in. Both of them attacked with vicious moves. I only knew that Frosty Cloud was doing it for me. Seeing this scene, I was very worried about Frost Cloud. My face was gloomy as I shouted his name. At this moment, I was planning to rush up and stop them, but I didn't expect Blood Plume to pull out of the fight and come in front of me. He looked at me condescendingly. The fighting arena is not something I can't go to. The more he said, the more gloomy his face became, and the smile on his face gradually disappeared. A duel between male beasts. No one is allowed to intervene. No exceptions. I just wanted to drill in through the gap, but was discovered by the blood spirit on the side. He stopped me without saying a word, just to keep me away from being grabbed by the back of my neck to tease me, struggling in his hands. But my strength was never able to defeat him but he laughed disdainfully and taunted me. At this moment, the White Emperor appeared beside me and directly snatched me from Blood Plume's hands. By Dai, Sinister Raya's wanted to kill Blood Plume. By Dai hugged me and persuaded me to let them fight, letting out the conflict, instead of holding it in is good for both sides. Don't worry about it. He stroked my cheek. You have to trust Frost Cloud. Although he usually seems impulsive and impatient, he's not weak. He'll be fine. These actions made me feel a little shy. I silently lowered my head, not daring to look at by Dai's gaze, standing on the periphery of the battle arena. But inside, I had been fueling Frost Cloud in the battle arena. I sincerely prayed that Frost Cloud must win. I looked at the scene inside, but I couldn't see Blood Plume's figure. I really don't know where he is now. However, Blood Plume is looking at me from the side. Blood Plume's eyes were filled with a murderous aura. It's been for days since the last time I was unhappy. It's not easy to have a chance to see me again. And I turned a blind eye to him. At this time, after I came into contact with his sight, I directly stared at him with disdainful eyes, and my whole person was very grumpy. Angrily, I turned my head and only looked at the fighting field, not leaving Blood Plume with any look in his eyes. But Blood Plume didn't get angry at me. The whole person became a sunny and cheerful big boy again. The more I was like this, the more Blood Plume didn't want to let go of me. Frost Cloud snapped his foot on the rock, and the aura around him snapped to life. 
Beside him there was also the Feather Clan chief accompanying him here. Shen Yan quietly guessed for breath, and a few small drops of cold sweat emerged from the corners of his forehead. Even his main body was starting to get a little weak. Little Frost Cloud bared his teeth and gazed ahead, his body's exhaustion seemingly falling on deaf ears. Only his ears began to shrug. He extended his hand with a smile on his face, and his low voice slowly sounded. Do we calm as a tie? Shen Yan gazed appreciatively and high-fived him, and a crisp sound rang out. The runes on his arm actually became lifelike. However, he did not say anything to Frost Cloud, but in the eyes of the two of them, one could read the meaning. I anxiously ran with small steps, my large eyes overflowing with worry. This caused me to keep shouting at Frost Cloud. I couldn't care less about his frantically wagging tail and slapped my small hand viciously on his shoulder. Quickly let me see your body. On his sturdy and powerful arm, there was a heavy bruise. If the other party's claw scratched deep, the wound would be very troublesome to get infected, only to see the little frost cloud small face red. We colored skin cannot resist the shyness, and finally explained that I am not afraid of. Of course, standing behind Shen Yan was very dissatisfied, a pair of eagle-like eyes staring at dead. I quickly felt this line of sight, but after realizing that he did not mean any harm, I let him look at me at will. Shen Yan suddenly let his thoughts fly. This is the little female that Blood Plume has his eye on. It's quite cute and looks gentle. He fiercely looked at his fellow clan's young elder. You actually like little bitty females, but your tastes are very strange. Blood Plume looked at him unimpressed. A tiny one. You can hold it in the palm of your hand and love it well. Clan Chief Shin was disgusted by these words, so he stepped back in a row. I didn't expect Blood Plume to be a pervert. He still planned to get his mouth first. Images of me flashed in my mind but I see that she didn't look at you after she came. You couldn't have been dumped, right? Blood Plume definitely couldn't hear the sentence, and his flavorful peach blossom eyes narrowed slightly, have the guts to say it again. Shen Yan Shen Patriarch frantically stepped backward and Saturday on the ground with a buttock. Elder I was just talking casually. The young elder, however, buried a seat inside, and his eyes couldn't control themselves to look towards me. But I only have frost cloud in my eyes right now. His long eyelashes flapped carelessly, and his sexy lips quietly flicked open. Want to get rid of me? Dream on. Shane and Saturday on the sidelines and witnessed the whole thing, feeling a pang of fear in his heart. Suddenly, he sympathized with the little female who was targeted by Blood Plume. Because the results of the battle between the two leaders were not comparable, the two sides returned to the negotiation table. The two little Feather Clans walked forward with gusto, but the Feather Clan chief was a bit confused. Are we going to look for the vein? Frost Cloud stood in front of me and nodded. His body's muscle lines were perfect. Shen Yan's focus is no longer on this. How do you know that there is a vein of or under the mountain? He smiled leisurely. Of course, the old twitch doctor told me before he was born, when I had not yet awakened the animal spirit. But our Feather Clan chief is what character? I glanced to see through this wolf man in front of me. He must not be telling the truth. Blood Plume suddenly opened his mouth in a sinister manner. Was it really the witch doctor who said that? But his eyes looked towards my position. I immediately felt a wave of hair all over my body, and a feeling of fear covered my little face. So I quietly raised my head to observe and doubt. What was going on? Just now it felt like I was being watched by a wild beast. Shen Yan flickered his wings behind him. You guys are opening up the mountain for mining. What if the mountain collapses? I can't explain to the clan. Frost Cloud has long had a way to deal with this. We intend to hollow out the mineral vein and rebuild the place to live. And we can also share it with you. The Feather Clan. Chief was a bit skeptical when he heard this. Building a house isn't that simple. Can you guys build it well? Frosty Cloud instantly hooked a smile, very confidently holding his chest and explaining, it seems that the Feather Clan is interested. That's what we intend to do. But there was always someone who spoke up to interrupt, and Blood Plume directly expressed his disagreement. The crowd snapped in his direction, their large eyes filled with doubt. Why would he disagree? Blood Plume patted the dust on his arm, his expression devoid of any semblance of emotion. If it can't be realized, aren't we suffering a big loss for nothing? Oi, Frost Cloud, we're the first to express our displeasure. What's in it for me to lie to you guys? You're deliberately picking a fight, aren't you? The elder lit up the jewel on top of his head, his brows filled with satisfaction. I did it all for the sake of the Feather Clan. Shaney and Saturday by the side helplessly. I'll be damned if I believe you. When you play with your temper, you can kick the entire Feather Clan like a ball. By die suddenly stood out. Elder Blood Plume is so adamantly against it. What does it take to believe in our sincerity? If you can solve the problem of the Feather Clan's fertility difficulties, not only will we move, we will also mine the veins together. I hurriedly grabbed By Dai's arm, my small body quietly stepping back. 
I didn't even notice by Dai's expression at all. Frosty Cloud was instantly enraged. What does your inability to have children have to do with us? Do you want us to care? I had to reach out and pull the man's body with my small hand. I am a witch doctor. Maybe I can try. There are herbs for infertility in the flora and fauna almanac. We can find a solution if we study them. All the people of the Feather Clan were stunned. The witch doctor of the Rock Wolf Clan can solve the problem. Can we let the Feather Clan carry a child? Blood Plume was also a bit unbelievable. A pair of phoenix eyes staring at me. This little female, even a creed just like that, he seems to want to explore my truth. Is it too stupid or too naive? Of course I don't know all this. Then it's ideal. We'll help mine the veins. And you'll solve the problem of the fertility affliction. Shen Yan stood at a loss for words. And his heart was actually very upset. It seems that I am the Feather Clan chief, right? I only saw that he suddenly opened his blood red wings, and the oppressive feeling of his body immediately came to me and threatened me not to lie to him. I stood still in fear, but he walked slowly to me, whispering softly that he would definitely not let me go. He then went on to state that the agreement was official and if I didn't do it, he wouldn't let me go. I felt the chill in the air and cringed slightly, but I still nodded my head to signify the deal. Frosty Cloud and Shen Yan Saturday on the sidelines speechless one after another. And this finalized the cooperation proposal. In the end, who is the patriarch? He looked at Shen Yin with a sly look in his eyes, at the expense of you being a clan leader, letting that blood plume decide everything. So under my resolute commitment, the Feather Clan members also joined together in the fierce mining vein operation. The Feather Clan had an inherent advantage, as they happily flew in the sky, holding the small wooden barrels in their arms. Frosty Cloud and the others stood by and watched. They actually sighed in whispers, once the Feather Rays joined in. The speed was quite a bit faster. The White Emperor nodded approvingly. But at the same time, he couldn't rest assured about me. I can only hope that I can find a way to say yes. As a famous witch doctor, which is the best treatment for infertility. Of course I am slowing down the witch doctor to help. Then I was a little shy. Just now the behavior seems to be a modern kind of advertisement. Specializing in the treatment of psoriasis scammers. So I focused on the herbs again. This kind I have. This kind I don't. I'll have someone look for it in the forest later on. I have most of the herbs for infertility. The rest will take time to collect all of them. I had just closed the book when a voice appeared above my head. I thought you had the guts to say yes. So you're hiding a secret weapon. I quickly turned my little head to look. I didn't expect the visitor to be blood plume. Why are you here? The White Emperor instructed me not to let anyone find out. Could blood plume have seen it? He wouldn't have leaked my secret out. Right. The man doted on me. I've seen it all. I'm not interested in your Alice. I'm more interested in you. I was upset and turned my head away from looking at him. This bird man is temperamental. It's better to avoid it first and hide the parchment booklet. I took the pamphlet and tried to get up, but accidents always happen. My stomach is simply too painful. Blood plume hurriedly leapt down, his blood red wings quickly retracting. Then he walked with his long legs, concerned about how I am doing. The pain in my stomach caused me to frown tightly, beads of sweat dripping from the corners of my forehead. In my mind, however, I already had a suspicion, so I quietly looked between my legs. Things are really not right. My own they're actually bleeding. Blood Plume quickly walked behind me, with a hint of shock in his expression. You actually bled? Could it be that you're injured? I don't want to pay attention to the big pervert, so I shouted at him very fiercely. I'm fine. Just get out. But this big pervert actually picked me up in a hug, not even caring about my retort. Big hands tightly imprisoned my body. Eh, <laughs> who was always calm, was also a bit flustered. If our Feather Clan females are like this, it means that the child in the belly is dead. I was petrified in place. My little mouth forgot to retort. For a while there was actually some internal stagnation. Then I snapped on the man's face. What child died? Shut up you. Do I look like I'm going to have a baby? My belly is flat and moving freely. Of course it's not a miscarriage. I'm just having my period. The little birdman is even more puzzled. Who is anti again? I'm helplessly crumbling inside. Why do I keep having to explain physiological phenomena to the orcs? But for now, I'm still in his hands. So I took a slight breath. This is a normal phenomenon for me. I just need to rest. Little Blood Plume has been reserved all his life. For the first time I heard someone drive him away. But I don't care about that. This is my home. Please get out. He stayed on me for a brief moment. Then flickered his wings again and left the cave. Now I sighed heavily. Finally gone. But the pain in my stomach was unbearable and the blood was staining my dress. I had to change my clothes first. In a few minutes I was changed. My own belly still hurt a little. Luckily I had the required tampons in my space. I got comfortable on the bed and the huge bed instantly wrapped around me. 
It made me let out a long sigh of relief, but there was something different about the touch under the bed. So I felt up quickly, then Saturday I began in a hurry. Under the animal skin were actually feathers. Blood Plume's voice came from above, and I couldn't help but quietly look up. Why are you still here? I held the feathers on the bed with both hands, and a hint of surprise passed through my gaze. Did you make these feathers? The man above me didn't feel anything. Only his voice was more gentle. This will be warmer and more comfortable when lying down. I was touched and put down the feathers. My big clear big eyes were incomparably innocent. Thank you. These things are very useful to me. In looking at the blood plume has long since twisted and flown away. Leaving only one sentence. For us it's the same as losing our hair. Nothing more than that. He suddenly stopped. His guard relaxed in front of me. You get some rest soon. I looked up into the cavern above me. The figure quickly disappeared. He should be gone now. The bed padded with feathers is much softer and more comfortable. That blood plume. I didn't expect to have such a sight as well. I guessed that the man who had gone away was standing not far away. But he was thinking in secret. He remembered my painful appearance. Large winds involuntarily flapped. It's still not a good idea to leave her alone now. Let's wait for those guys to come back. At that moment, a rustling sound came from the side, causing him to look back violently. It turned out to be Saint Knight hiding behind a rock. Her small face filled with weariness. Blood Plume was puzzled and opened his mouth. What are you hiding for? Saint Knight instantly became even more defensive. This is our home. What are you doing here? Blood Plume suddenly remembered my appearance and spoke to him with a flat face. Slowly a little uncomfortable. Bleeding a little. I let her lie down. Only hearing the moment of bloodshed. Saying Knight said that he couldn't listen to it at all and flew into the cavern. I heard the ringing and turned around violently. Surprisingly, it was Saying Knight who came with food and with an anxious face. He asked me if I was hurt. I ignored the blood plume above me and hurriedly waved my hand to Song Ye. I'm fine. I'm just having an ante. Blood plume narrowed her eyes slightly in displeasure. This snake isn't her mate either. Right. Why can it be so good with her? It's really an eyesore. A small bouquet of buds within a certain space violently erected its own rooted branches. The killing aura just now. It was daddy. Its petals opened one by one, and the tiny bones actually looked nervous. Mother and daddy. Don't ever fight. Song Yu suddenly felt a great crisis. Her eyes eloquent. He then stepped out of the cave and looked outside. What a great pressure and killing aura outside. It's blood bloom. What's going on? Such power, even penetrating into the rocky cave, stronger than those guys in the temple. What exactly was this blood plume's background? The day's labor is over. The sun is setting. Whitey touched my head and told me to rest. Don't work anymore. I mumbled softly, feeling Whitey's tenderness. He then explained to the two that slowing down the body will be like this every month, and that a few days of good rest will be fine. Sing Knight still doesn't quite believe it. Is she really okay? Hmm? Let his rest for a few days, and tomorrow you stay with her. So don't let her go to the mine. Hearing about this matter, Sun Yu cheered up. That's certainly good. Over here, a hand picks up a feather. Bai Dai looked at the feather. Sing Knight said that when he came back, Blood Plume was guarding slowly side. He looked towards the top of the mountain, as it was exactly where they were perched. He hadn't given up yet. Uh, and Zulim, standing at the top of the mountain, seemed to have sensed something and looked down the mountain. The feathered also joined in the mining and digging together with the orcs. They continue to mine the crystals, and the feathered men are responsible for transporting the ore to its destination, where the wolves conveniently break it up. After the vein was dug out, it was found to be just a small vein of green crystals. We looked at the ores in our hands. They were all green crystals, which was a considerable amount of wealth. That's when I called out to them. Whitey, Frost Cloud, they all paid attention. I was looking at the two men at the top of Song Yao's head. Whitey held the crystals for me. To see and I looked at the glowing crystals and exclaimed. I held it in my hand and it was sparkling and crystal clear. A green crystal. It's a beautiful crystal. You can see the orcs working through it. After the crystals were all mined, the beasts began to build houses. I look at the crystals that have been mined. So many green crystals. That's when the system finally responded and I frowned see in my tracks. Congratulations to the host for completing the primary special mission of mining. Mission points meet the requirements to open secondary mall access. I looked at this secondary mall. Potato seeds, creeper seeds, bamboo shoot seeds, elementary medicine recipe, elementary contract scroll, one elementary architectural drawing. So expensive. It's not cheap. One seed is that expensive. Luckily, I dug up quite a few green crystals. Each kind of seed was first exchanged for one, and the primary medicinal prescriptions for these were also exchanged for a copy each. Just in case, I looked at the seeds in my hand. The seeds were given to Song Yao. 
find a place farther away to plant them. Uh, if what happened before happens again, people are going to be scared again. I opened this book I just replaced and looked at the architectural drawings next. Uh, it's a fortress with this design. A orc world, which is now very short on supplies and technology. It can be built too. The crystals were worth spending. They all came to me. And this is, this is the architectural drawing of the fortress. Does it look familiar? Frostcloud looked at the drawings. It was based on the rocks of the mountain and was well suited to be built on a rocky hill. Indeed, it can again cater for everyone's daily living and turn into a battle-guarded bulwark in times of danger. Whitey was then a little shocked, never having thought that a house could be built this way. I didn't think of that either, in my heart. I was also thinking that this is all due to Shahachi. Hachi just appeared in my mind. Wherever, wherever, also you trade crystals for it. It's all business. Frost Cloud looked at the drawings in surprise. So it's time to build according to the slowed down drawings. Starting the next day, Frost Cloud took the drawings and started directing the Rock Wolf Clan beastmen to build the fortress. Step by step, they looked at the drawings to direct the clan's building. I came here and it was just about midday and the sun was so hot. Little flower boy, did you think the water was too little and it's all wooded? Shall I take you to the pond? Pick some lotus leaves on the way. When it heard what I said, it stood up immediately, swaying his petals H-M-M-M-M-M. I carried Flora to the river. Little flower treasure happily swayed her branches. Mother, the water is so comfortable. I'll let it play by itself, and I'll pick lotus flowers to shade the sun. And it spat water right in my face. You little scoundrel, I'm a little annoyed with this little guy. Then I also patted the water and went back towards it. Don't run, little flower treasure laughed happily. Mother let me go. I was chasing this little guy behind me, and he kept running towards the front, and there was a hee-hawing noise. Tzu so Ling in the tree saw this scene, and didn't say anything to disturb them. That's when little flower treasure suddenly shouted out daddy. I also reacted. Then he looked up at the tree, and sure enough, it was Snow Plume. When did he come over? I couldn't find out. Tzu so Ling Saturday on the trunk of a tree and watched us. Suddenly his eyes lowered and he did not speak. I immediately covered my chest and my clothes got wet. Luckily it's animal skin. What are you looking at? Oi, the Feather Clan have already opened the mine for you? And what about your promise to solve the Feather Clan's fertility difficulties? I have a thief's embarrassed bowed head in response. This will take time. I need to find more herbs. You also know that the Feathered Clan has difficulty in procreation, and that's not something that can be solved all at once. Su Lane's eyes changed. In fact, you can also use other ways to solve it. Hey, I was a bit surprised to hear you you say that. Blood Plume's eyes were a bit strange. I immediately got nervous. No kidding. Before I could finish my sentence, Su Lane came to me, not knowing what to do. He grabbed my face straight away and kissed me. Which frown see me, what are you doing? Let go. Little flower treasure shyly blocked her view with her leaves. Su Lin thought in her heart, actually, you can also use your body to breed my offspring. A descendant of the feathers, he was finally away from my face, and I told him to let go of. He ended up holding me tighter and I struggled to get away, splashing around. Little flower treasure then saw this situation and said, Daddy, don't bully mother. Su Lin suddenly realized something was wrong. A knife appeared and slashed at him. I fought back with his knife, and Su Lin let go of me. Zhu Ling touched the wound on his chest and couldn't believe that I still had my bone knife with me. I put my knife in front of me in a furious manner. Back off or I'm not going to be polite. Zhu Ling showed in a grieved face. I just want to kiss you. But I didn't agree. Who allowed you to do this to me? Even if you're powerful, it doesn't make sense to force someone to do it. Is this the looking manner of a Feather Clan elder? I waved my knife. Don't anger me or I'll make you Feather Clan cut off your children and grandchildren. The look in her eyes was a genuine disgusted fear of me. I was wrong and I apologize, but I really didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't listen to his explanation either. I just yelled at him, go away, don't ever come near me freely again. Zhu Ling, however, did not give up and said seriously, slowly, I really like you. I don't listen to a word he says, are you kidding me? You're saying I'm joking? Snow Plume looked at me with a serious face while he spread his wings. You're not playing a serious game, are you? If Blood Plume is serious, I must reject him immediately and cut him off completely. Blood Plume is too scary, and the fact that he had a murderous intent towards Saint Knight is always a pimple in my heart. Sidling looked at my eyes, slow eyes. She didn't have a heartbeat at all, only wariness and disgust. He could only laugh bitterly. I didn't realize that I had fallen to the point of being disliked so much. Then look at me again with a smile. I'm just kidding. You're not taking this seriously, are you? That's when I relaxed. That would be great. 
That's great. Except the guy went crazy. Su Ling looked at me somewhat helplessly, not knowing what was on her mind. He ruffled my hair again. Don't worry, I'm a little nervous. He sniffed my hair. I already have someone I like. I won't really do anything to you. I hurriedly avoided him, being able to know that such a terrible blood plume even had a favorite. Then how powerful the other party must be, is that person who. I'll consider telling you if you'll sleep with me. Please keep your secret. Don't ever tell me. He pouted and said, What a lack of affection. I then said seriously, You shouldn't be warming up to someone else when you have a crush on them. So you might as well show some self-respect. To Lin Sita Long Head said indifferently, She will not look at me. It does not matter if she misunderstands or not. You're in good condition. She's got a good eye then, although the person is crazy criticized, but the face value is still okay ah. Uh. Su Ling gave a meaningful smile, her vision was indeed high, it must be that you're so perverted that she's scared, come on, even though you're a bit older, the good thing is that you've kept your looks well, so it's still possible to win over your sweetheart, I was ready to leave with my little flower baby in my arms, come on, there's still a chance, Snow Plume wrapped his arms around himself helplessly as it just pondered, am I that old? After the disagreement at the river pond, Blood Plume did not come back. Time passed quickly, and in the blink of an eye, it was three months later. Relying on the rocky mountain, the orcs had built a tall and imposing fortress that looked quite impressive from afar. Mutant potato, mutant bamboo, and mutant creeper have also grown. The potato will smash any creature that comes near it half to death, while the bamboo will stun creatures with its high volume, and the creeper will roll up any orc that comes near and whip it mercilessly. And I was stirring the boy up mashed potatoes. Hey, mashed potatoes are my favorite. It tastes good. So exchange another 300 seeds and plant it on a large scale. Let's exchange some creeper seeds and bamboo shoots as well. It's good to be able to defend. The creepers are growing fast and have surrounded the fort. It was good for the creeper to cover the fortress like this. This fortress surpassed the level of construction in the orc world. It was better to keep a low profile. The fort had 20 floors, 17 above ground and 3 below. The top two floors were set aside for the Feather Clan to live in. The three underground floors were used as warehouses and kept as spears. The remaining 15 floors were divided into living, commercial, entertainment, and study areas. I walked out with the mashed potatoes and saw the coyote pups calling out to me, Lord Witch Doctor, be careful not to fall, being taken care of so much by the rocks. I've done something good for everyone, right? That's when Hachi appeared in his mind again. Congratulations to the host for triggering the growth quest. The rise of the king's tribe. The host is requested to enhance the strength of the tribe, increase the number of tribes, expand the tribe's territory, and if the tribe's overall rating reaches C, the host will receive a large number of mission rewards. When I heard about increasing the tribe's numbers, I thought about it. The herbs are still missing. That starts with impregnating the feather females as soon as possible, followed by the rock wolf children. I dragged my head just thinking about the child. Whitey had brought the meal. The slow down. Eight. I looked up and noticed Whitey. So I answered, looking at by Dai's appearance. This robust body, perfect muscles, delicate features. I was looking at him with a bit of a daze, and my heart was already bursting with joy. At this time, Frosty, Cloud suddenly came back and said it was hot as hell. It's hot today. He then poured cold water towards his head. The two of them then looked at me curiously and asked me what was wrong. I buried my head in embarrassment. Nothing. I'm sitting here alone. Kids, now that the house is remodeled too, should I be thinking about having a baby too? After the exterior of the house was repaired, the interior layout was made according to the idea of slowing down. Most importantly, there is finally a bathroom in the house. Finally no need to run the canal at night to go on it. Ah, uh, it's tables and chairs and beds. Someone just exclaimed to come here. And the females all came here. It's a nice house. We don't have to sleep on straw. There's several rooms. Thank you slowly. Thank you slowly, witch doctor. I immediately waved my hand. There's no need to thank me. It's all Frost Cloud and the others who are doing it. Mu Xiam then directly explains. You can't fool me. If that brain of our patriarch knew about it, he would have started to implement it long ago. Slowly, you must be the witch doctor that God gave us to help us. It's all because of the Rock Wolves and the help of the Long Drew Witch Doctor that I was able to land here. These are also the things I can do. Together, we'll build Rock Hill better and better. The ground floor of the Rocky Hill opened up into a commercial area that slowly led the beast to trade fruits and vegetables. And business was good. The fruit and vegetable business is growing. And the Rock Wolves have made a lot of new friends. The reputation gradually spread and became the largest tribe in the neighborhood. In the blink of an eye, the end of summer and the arrival of autumn. When the first leaves fell, the beasts of the Fox Clan arrived at Rocky Mountain. The females of the Fox Clan 
have a strong ability to reproduce, and their offspring are predominantly female, with delicate and beautiful appearances, and the fox clan's matriarch, Xuanyin, the ability to hunt is not strong, so in order to be able to survive, the foxes go to a tribe each year and rely on mating to take in strong males. Fox Clan am I? She looked at us here and was stunned. This is the tribe of the rock wolves. I asked to them curiously. Foxes come to us looking for mates. Frost Cloud then explained. Well, they come every year, looking for any suitable male orcs. So it's a dating convention for orcs. I have to golden eyes. I want to go see it so bad. Frost Cloud rubbed my head. So go ahead. They're at the foot of the mountain and I'm not allowed to allow the foxes inside the fortress. I then happily inquired him, Really? Let's go check it out. He then looked to the rest of the clan. The female orcs of the fox clan have arrived. I know there are quite a few of you who are single. It's fine to look for a mate, but no one is allowed to be brought into the fortress. The crowd nodded as they listened attentively. Finally, Frost Cloud sternly shouted out, Whoever dares to disobey the order, don't blame me for flipping out. All of them have stunned the clansmen. Don't worry, matriarch, we will definitely not disclose half a word. Mukha brought me here, and over there is the fox clan. There's a lot of fruit. We orcs are very attentive. They ate our fruits, and these fruits and vegetables were really delicious. No wonder some orcs are willing to travel long distances to buy them. I was suddenly struck by the scene before me. Those two fox clan women are so beautiful. There are the fox chief Xuan Ying, and her clan member Yi Mai. I saw someone else. It was Whitey. The white emperor has come here too. Just as I was about to call out to the White Emperor, the Fox Clan member, Yimai, immediately stepped forward. I withdrew my hand in helpless embarrassment, and Whitey saw me. Yimai touched by Dai's arm. I can feel it. The power in you is very strong. You must be a very powerful soul beast. Whitey immediately broke away and said thank you. Yimai was a little surprised. With that, he tugged on by Dai's clothes, telling him to wait a moment. Yimai spoke out seriously. I like you a lot and would like to offer you my first time. Uh, first time, something that outrageous. Shyly, Imai pulled Shiroido back and then said seriously, I'm going to dedicate me to you. But the white emperor remained unmoved, the scowl on his face unchanged, as he looked at this fox clan member with some irritation. The other orcs shed unread tears of envy. It was too much happiness to be looked upon by such a beautiful female. Mok Haim was talking right next to me. You're still sitting down, aren't you? I blushed slightly. I trusted Whitey. I watched as Whitey moved. But I frowned. And if it wasn't for the fact that there weren't many people around watching, he really wanted to chop those two hands off. It was only then that Imai let go. What a scary look. Full of murderous intent, Shirati pushed Imai away with his arm. And Imai gave a surprised cry as his body fell backwards. Whitey said seriously, Sorry, I already have a mate. Nice job. Mika waved her hand. And I watched with a blank face. By Dai turned to leave. He might also thought of something. Yeah, such a powerful soul beast. There must be females looking at it. It's just that I came too late. Nu Xiem covered her mouth and whispered, Your tiger kana, come over, come over. The white emperor Saturday down right in front of me. Why are you alone here? Where's Frost Cloud? I pointed to Mu Xiem. Don't I have Mu Xiem with me? No need to worry. I whispered to Bai Dai. Are you happy? that such a beautiful fox female confess to you. Bai Dai said seriously. Firstly, I don't find that female pretty. And secondly, I don't feel happy at all. Hey, I don't believe it. Whitey then took my hand and kissed it. I think you're the prettiest. And I'm sure I'd be very happy for you to confess your love to me. I shyly sidestepped my head and sweet talk. I'm not going to fall for that. But inside I'm happy. Am I Saturday down and couldn't help but sigh as she looked at me and Whitey. The other clansmen immediately came to her. You are really pretty. You can choose me. He already is a mate. But I don't. This flower and fruit is for you. She smiles and looks at everyone. Thank you. A soul beast with that kind of power. It's a pity. Her face remained sat up towards evening. We raised a fire together here and flocked around the place. It's got delicious meat skewers grilled on it. Yimai looked at the scene in front of her and was a little incredulous that she was roasting meat over a fire. The rock wolves are very skewed with fire and were roast meat. All the other beastmen were afraid of fire. This was completely different from the previous life. In my previous life I had never heard of the rock wolf clan until I died. But now look at the size of this and the ability to. They will surely become a powerful tribe that will shock the party in the future. She looked to the white emperor again. After all, there were such powerful Sioux beasts in this tribe. A voice came and Frost Cloud called out for a reprieve. Am I then looked over. Frosty Cloud arrived with a fruit basket. I baked the fruit. You taste it. It was the Frost Cloud clan chief. 
Zhuan Yin seemed to notice something. Wait. On his body, with a hidden pattern on her arm, she called out to the Frost Cloud Clan leader. Zhuan Yin then walked up. Haven't seen you for years. You've evolved into a soul beast. Congratulations. Yimai, who was on the side, then heard the words. She couldn't believe that this Frost Cloud Clan chief was also a soul beast. As a result, the scene in front of him made him completely speechless. Slowing down to eat this. Is this delicious? I want to eat it too. Looks like he's got a mate too. But what makes this female? It's not bad looking, but she's so skinny. She's not even close to me. For such a female to get to awesome males in quick succession. It's not fair. Damn it. If I can't get it, why should I let others get it? Zhuan Yin said helplessly. This one beside you is your mate. Right. You guys are so affectionate. Damn it. How dare you completely ignore me? Hearing that Frost Cloud hugged me and showed off. That's for sure. Mize is the cutest. I pushed Frosty away. Let go of me, you rascal. On the side, by Dai brought the roasted meat to my face and slowly ate the meat. Be careful of the heat. Frosty Cloud looked on in resignation. His heart was very bad. Then he grabbed my chin with one hand and set my head straight. And then he just kissed me. After kissing him, he immediately stepped back and licked his mouth. The food in your mouth is really special. When the White Emperor saw this scene, his eyes immediately became eloquent. Then a hand slapped Frosty Cloud, and Frosty Cloud was electrified and his body shivered continuously. Finally, he fell to the ground in a heap of limbs. By Dai then took me in his arms and eased over. Frost Cloud looked on angrily. Hey, Whitey. Frosty Cloud looked on with a smug look on his face. Fight me. You're still way bit too young. Frost Cloud looked at Bai Dai's smug look and was very annoyed. Damn it. It's great to know how to use electricity. Xuan Yin was very speechless when he saw their fuss and ignored us. And I was also very upset. A sour stench of love. Not a moment later, a loud noise came from the trees. It was the Feathers. The leader of the Feather Clan looked down at the commotion. Bonfire night. Let's have some fun too. The fox tribe beauties below all looked up in surprise. Yeah, I didn't expect the Feather Clan to be here. Zulin is watching from above and has no intention of going down. Zulin inserted his hands and looked expressionlessly at the The Fox Clan below looked on in a flamboyant manner. This handsome and charming look. And these wings this full of gems. It's elder blood plume of the Feather Clan. Only he mized the surprised expression. Surprisingly, it's Blood Plume. I've heard of Blood Plume in my last life. The strongest male beast of the Feather Tribe. How could it appear in such a small tribe? I've heard of the Blood Plume in my previous life. The strongest male beast of the Feather Clan. In the 10,000 beast city where the strongest people are like clouds. The Blood Plume sweeps across the landscape. Because of him, the Feather Clan had maintained the supremacy of staying out of the way in the midst of the many battles to come. If I can incorporate Blood Plume under my skirt and become one of my mates. So powerful, Snow Plume has fallen. I will definitely be able to get a great boost. Yi Mai looked at Su Ling with confidence. Ah, Matriarch Zhuan Ying. Zhuan Ying took the lead and walked towards Su Ling. You're an orc from the Feather Clan, aren't you? She looked at Su Ling with a peach blossom face. What's your name? What a charming male orc. Su Ling lifted Zhuan Ying's chain with one hand, and Zhuan Ying was a little confused. Su Ling smiled slightly. My name. You're not qualified to know my name, stupid female. Zhuan Ying couldn't believe what she heard. Never had a male beast dared to speak to me like that. Su Ling then blew his arm, and I don't know how many male beasts have slept with him. So dirty. You think I'm dirty? Zhuan Yin was very annoyed. How dare you humiliate me like this? I want you to die. Zhuan Yin grabbed at Zhu Ling with a sharp claw. And Zhu Ling looked at this dirty woman with a sharp look in her eyes. Zhuan Yin's hand caught fire straight away. She looked at her hand in horror. Eh, <sighs> my hand. Yeah, it's on fire, it's on fire. The other matriarchs noticed the situation and were in a hurry. Saying, put out the fire. The last bucket of water was sprinkled on Zhuan Yin's body. And only then did the fire in her hand go out. Hearing the sound of the zip, the clan inquired of her. Matriarch, are you all right? Xuan Yin grasped her hand, grating her teeth in anger, her body constantly trembling. She was shocked when she saw Zhu Lin right in front of her. Because Zhu Lin's expression was very serious, she'll just have to suck it up. It's fine. Let's go. On the side, Yi Mai saw this situation. The power of the blood plume was so powerful. The male beast that even Zhuan Yin touched the wall. Being able to conquer him proves that my charm is invincible. Zhu Lin sat her day down next to us and just said, Give me some melon too. I was very upset and took out the melon seeds. Here you go. 
he probably didn't want to be harassed by the foxes. So let's call it a day. Little flower boy just popped up and called out for dad. Shao Leon, he's going to burn you. Why do you still call him dad? To Ling knocking melon seeds with a smug face. That is because of the blood tie. It cannot let go of me. You call it little lotus. Su so Ling smiled. Isn't it a half lily? It's called little lotus for short. I then whispered to Shao Leon, stay away from him in the future. He's a snake charmer. Xiao Yun fell on my hand and pouted. Look at you. I looked around. Hey, where's Son Yao? Frost Cloud then said that he went to get something over. You'll know when the time comes. A foot came this way, and the noise seemed a little loud. The others were drawn to her and looked at him. It turned out to be Yimai who raised her hand. The bell on her hand rang. Then she stroked her chin again and danced gracefully. The orcs on the side were looking at her in fascination. Drooling disgracefully. So beautiful. I also looked at her with some curiosity that there were people in this world who knew how to dance. It's been a while since I've seen a dance like this. It's beautiful. It's a shame she moves so simply. It would be more stunning with music. She came to Zulin first with a spin. One hand hooked around Zulin's neck. And the two of them met eye to eye. She then stroked Zulin's chin again. And Zulin reacted with a less serious expression. I realized something was wrong. Eh, I smelled a faint strange scent. Was it an illusion? I looked to the two aside. The White Emperor and Frost Cloud. All had eyes for Yimai. No, they're not like that. They're obsessed. It's the fox girl. She's got issues. The two of them are about to kiss. Yimai stroked Zuling's chin, and in her heart, she let out a light sigh. It's going to be a success. Suddenly a sound came out. It was so smelly. It turned out to be Little Lotus on Zuling's back that made the sound. It could smell the smell. Xiao Leon quickly opened her mouth wide and rushed towards Yimai, stinking to death. Piss off. Little Lotus went straight to cannibalism. It stinks. Ola, oh, uh, a bite on her hand. Imai screamed miserably as the cannibal flower on her arm had bitten her. With that, she was very annoyed, and her other hand immediately revealed its claws and teeth. The little bastard loosened his mouth, just as it was about to grab Xiao Yun. It let go of its mouth. I shouted for Lotus in a hurry, worried about her condition. Frost Cloud and White Emperor were then startled by my shouts, and they woke up to what had just happened. Su Ling also realized that something was wrong, then directly flung away am I. Bitch, how dare you use fox sin on me? Ye my fell to the ground. I hugged Xiao Leon and asked him how he was doing and if he was hurt. Xiao Leon was scary and trembling, but you were so fierce just now that you still have the face to pretend to be afraid. Bai Dai then called out to me. Bai Dai, are you alright? Just now, I saw that you and Frost Cloud didn't have the right eyes. He stopped me behind him. Watch out for the fox female. She's using fox scent. Fox scent. Fox fragrance is a secret art of the Fox Clan's ancestors, which is said to be refined from the bones of the Fox Clan's females, and as a fatal allure to adult male beasts, a male beast controlled by fox incense will lose its mind and become a puppet. The Fox Clan classified fox incense as a forbidden technique, and I heard that it had long been lost, but I didn't expect it to appear again today. Am I covered her injured arm? This couldn't be happening. She was already starting to panic. Obviously they were both mesmerized by the fox scent, so why were they able to wake up? These two just looked at her fiercely. At that moment, she was struck in the back by the flames and screamed miserably. No, don't. She shed tears of pain and begged Zuling not to kill herself. Zuling flew in the air, the flame in his hand still burning. A second time, I will let you taste what it's like to be burned alive into ashes. Yimai continued to beg. I don't dare anymore. I won't dare anymore. Please let me go. Blood Plume looked really annoyed. This was also her own fault, and she had already been spared by not being torn to pieces by Blood Plume and the others. When I heard Makayan say that, I asked her what was wrong. Why did she say that? Then a man walked in front of her, are you okay? Mika was very angry, so she shouted and yelled, Kiba, when did you come back? I was curious and asked her, who is Kiba? That's my brother. Kiba came to my side and helped her up. He always liked to run around outside and hadn't been back in a long time since he went out. I didn't think it would come back at this time. His eyes, HMPH. What a spoiler. Su so Ling waved her hand in a very unhappy manner and spread her wings. Then he flew towards the mountain without stopping down too much. Yimai then returned here to the fox clan. Chuan Yin saw her return. You still have the face to come over. Fox incense is a forbidden art. Where did you get the bones of the female corpse from which you refined it? And I shook her head. No, I didn't. But Chuan Yin didn't believe it. You're still lying to me. Not long ago, a dancing females went missing one after another within the fox clan. I thought the missing female had been taken by another tribe. In fact, it was refined into fox fragrance by Yi Mai. The offense of mutilating a fellow clan member is punishable by death. I trusted you so much that I even wanted 
to pass the position of clan leader to you. And I wanted to continue explaining. But Chuan Ying turned away. I'm so disappointed in you. We can't let the outsiders see the joke. We'll dispose of for later. Yi Mai sadly kneeled on the ground, shedding tears of sadness. I don't have it. Patriarch, you believe me. Kiba knelt down to comfort her. Don't be sad. Your matriarch must have misunderstood you. In time, she will understand you. I sighed as well. Fox scent is so scary. No wonder all three of you are gulking it, am I? The white emperor then explained that the fox fragrance only works on adult males. And you are a female, so you are not affected. Luckily, Xiao Lian reacted quickly, or you guys might have become puppets in the future. Xiao Yun proudly stood out. No, her, her, her. Kika saw Kiba like this. Kiba, the stupid boy, should be confused by that fox female. Then she shouted, Kiba, get your arse back here. Kiba was taken aback. Am I also sad? I'm fine. Go back. But then Kiba hesitated and clenched his teeth. Then he turned his head and spoke to Mu Xian. Sister, she is injured. I will come back after sending her back to the fox clan side. Kika was still talking behind her. Kiba, come back here. But no one pays any attention to her. With Kiba the way he is, it looks like he's been bewitched by that fox female. So we have to be careful, maybe he'll turn on us. That female looked soft and weak, but she would use such a sinister technique. Even going so far as to mutilate her clanmates, she had to find a chance. She had to completely solve the hidden danger. Song Yao came back at that moment, and as soon as he arrived he called out to me. Frosty Cloud just shouted at him. You're finally here. Did you bring the wine? What was all that commotion? Did something happen? It's fine. It's better to keep Sang Knight out of this trouble. There's no trouble that can't be swallowed in one bite. And if you can't swallow it, just swallow it a few more times. Sang Knight then took the bamboo tube and handed it to me. Drinking slowly. Thank you, San Yong. I immediately sipped my wine and felt the aroma of this wine, which tasted more mellow. Frosty Cloud was also very happy after drinking it. It was good and refreshing. Whitey was hesitant when he looked at this wine. I definitely won't allow myself to get drunk again. After being so right to slow down the last time I got drunk, a small hand slapped him on the thigh. Whitey also took notice, and a little wolf cub cried out for daddy. The white emperor smiled as he picked up the wolf cub. A child of Mwako Ka, I guess I'm sleepy. I'll give the baby to Mu Xian when she comes back later. I looked at them. Bai Dai really likes children. If it was his own child, he would have taken good care of it. My face flushed at the thought of it. Frosty Cloud hugged me right behind him, shouting for reprieve. He was already drunk. Frosty Cloud said with an aggrieved face, I'm not as gentle and considerate as Bai Dai, and I'm not like Sang Knight, but I really like you. Don't you don't want me? I looked at him like Frost Cloud was drunk again. Frosty Cloud continued again, I want to have children with you. I'm just thinking about it, and the quest also asks me to get Rocky Mountain to add more offspring, so I need to work on that too. A slow down, there's no going back. Then drink hard, the three of them were shocked that I was drinking so directly and told me to beware. After the wine and food, well, let's all go back to resting. Sang Knight then dragged him. He was drunk. I dragged him back. Frosty Cloud's mouth was full of alcohol and the unloved hyena. In the end, he was dragged straight away by Sang Knight and clumped his head on the road a few times. Why'd he just look down at me? I'll take you back. My face was very flushed. My heart was beating fast. And I said, slightly drunk. Whitey, I'm hot. As a result, I heard the white emperor say, it's okay, it'll be cooler. When the wind blows down the mountain in a little while, going out on a limb, I immediately hugged Whitey. No, no, no. I want to take a bath. I want to go to the river and swim. I continued to pout again. I want to go, I want to go. Whitey had no choice. Fine, I'll take you. We then went to the river and I poofed into the river. And Whitey told me to be careful. He looked aside again, slowly, careful of the depth of the water there. And I went further and further into the shallow depths of the river. I then looked to the shore. Whitey, Whitey, the water was so comfortable. One hand on my chest. And then slowly took my clothes off. My heart beating faster. I just looked at Whitey. Aren't you coming down? Whitey looked dumbfounded. He then transformed into his human form. And walked into the water with one eye on me. I looked up at the approaching Whitey. Whitey, do you remember? The first time we met was also in the water. Whitey, hum, you were in the bath then, weren't you? And you ran away as soon as you saw me. The eyes gradually got lost. The slow under the moonlight is so beautiful. I covered my chest. I didn't expect to meet you this way either. But now that it's like this, it's not shy. Finally, the two hugged and kissed themselves. In a few moments, they parted, the two of them looking at each other without speaking. Whitey continued to kiss me. He picked me up again, and I guessed in surprise. Both feet are out of the water. Whitey then said to me, It's late at night and a bit cool. Let's go back. I let out a hum. I was just thinking about the fact that Moksha and the others had babies as winter turned to spring, 
and the females of the fox clan came in order to reproduce. I draped myself. Would I have children of my own son too? Suddenly I could hear an owling sound. So I inquired of Whitey what it was. It was the howl of a frost cloud. Frost cloud stood alone at the top of the hill, the moon reflecting off it as he continued to howl his voice. I looked to say night. This is. Say night then explained. He came back and made a lot of noise looking for you. And when he didn't find you, he cried and said he lost you. And then just cried on the roof until now. What should the clan think if they see this? I immediately called out to frosty cloud to come down. Frost cloud Saturday up then and saw me. As lowly. He was very pleasantly surprised. He's, you didn't leave me. He hugged me straight away. What am I going to do without a laundry witch doctor and losing you again? Frost Cloud cried again. Don't leave me. Who? Why he saw them like this? You keep him company. As the leader of the Rock Wolves, he can only show such a side in front of you. I looked up at Frosty Cloud as if it was just as why he said it would be. We came to the room where Frost Cloud was lying down, and Finnish inquired of him. Was he more comfortable? Frost Cloud said drunkenly, uncomfortable. I can only be comfortable when you're around me. Frost Cloud continued, I know that you like by die. Your heart aches for say night, and you have no choice but to mate with me. But I don't love you any less than they do. He pulled on my shirt, with tears in the corners of his eyes. He said, slowly, I would give everything for you. Can you love me a little more too? Who doesn't care about you anymore? I immediately countered his words, then took the initiative and kissed Frost Cloud, who looked at me with her eyes. A moment later I parted and lifted my head. He's up. You took the initiative to kiss me. I'm so happy. As a result, he rolled right over and pinned me down, and then sniffed me. He's up. I love the way you smell. It really seems like a big dog. Don't sniff. He added seriously. Really? There's something about you that reassures me. Then his head moved back down. At the end he's on top and I'm on the bottom. He's up. I love you so much. I love you. Tears flowed from the corners of my eyes. And I called out Frosty Cloud's name. And then they hugged each other. Frost Cloud lifted his head and shouted my name. And then hugged me again. Slowly. And I want you to have my offspring. Last to people. This is not a suitable image. Soon came the next morning. Whitey jumped up the hill into bounds. I just came up and saw Sane Yu outside. Why are you here alone? Why don't you go back to bed? Just now, at the entrance of the cave, he heard Frost Cloud's gasping breaths and the sound of slowly suppressed sobs. I know what that means, but it's something I don't deserve. The White Emperor looked at Sane Knight and said, Do you want to couple up with slowly? He then pondered what Whitey meant by that, and the White Emperor's eyes didn't mean to joke. He looked seriously at Sane Knight, and I'm still lying in bed. Overindulging I'm afraid I'm going to die in this orc world. What combat starts in hours? Whitey walked in and brought a bowl of, slowly, some juice. I Saturday up violently. By Dai looked at me heartily. I was too tired last night, so I'll rest at home today. I awkwardly agreed. Suddenly at that moment there was a voice. Are you stupid? I spit out the juice I just drank. The voices continued to come from outside. How dare you try to bring such a female back home? I forbid it. Is that Mika's voice? I just immediately flipped off the covers and was ready to get out of bed. Go and check it out. I hadn't even come down when I suddenly felt something wrong and heard the clicking sounds. My back. Why he then tried to carry me there and I immediately bobbed my head no. Then everyone knew I had overindulged yesterday. It's too embarrassing, but I still got out of bed and went to Mika's room. I forbid you to bring her into the house. Kika was then berating Kiba. This female has a bad heart. How can you be with her when even the Fox Clan's clan leader has abandoned her? Kiba also started to retort. Sis, I really like him I. I'm willing to take care of her for the rest of my life. Who I find as a mate is my freedom. Zhou Yun hugged the child and kicked his hand. Kiba, we have no problem with whoever you want as a mate. But the matriarch's injunction does not permit the taking of fox orcs into the rocky mountains. And you cannot disobey it. Last night I sent her back to the fox clan side. But the fox clan chief wanted to kill Yima. That's why I stepped in and saved him I. I've come to beg the clan leader to let me take Imai to Rocky Mountain to take care of her. But Maka didn't budge one bit, roaring that it wasn't possible. Imai's body was shaking and coughing constantly at this point. So Kiba got worried. I've made it with Imai. She's my mate now, and I'll never be able to leave her. Mu Xian, who heard this was furious. You little white-eyed wolf. Ew. Kiba also continued to explain. Sister, I'm sorry, but I really can't leave Imai. If Matriarch Cross Cloud doesn't approve of me taking her up the mountain, then I'll go with her. Mwokoka is just sent. What are you talking about? And Nine Elements was shocked too. Are you serious? Kiba, you're going to break away from the Rock Wolf for an outsider. Kiba's eyes dodged and looked to the side. Yes, at this time, Frost Cloud walked out and said indifferently, Then you can take a dance with you? 
The crowd looked behind them and shouted for the patriarch too. It looked to Kibo when he arrived. Come here alone. I need to talk to you. Whitey and I watched them walk out of the room and got to thinking. It didn't take long for them to finish. And I was very shocked when I asked to Frost Cloud. Kiba's gone. Frost Cloud leaned to the side. And yes, he chose to go to Amai's side. I sighed helplessly. Mika must be so sad. The beloved brother had abandoned his own sister, who had brought him up like a mother. For a female they had known for one night, anyone would be disappointed. Could it be that Kiba has fallen for Izumi's fox scent, and that's why he's so dead set on not even wanting his own sister. Frost Cloud said with an expressionless face. Isn't it what difference does it make? He had already contracted with Imai. The May contract had bound them together, and there was no way Kiba would ever leave Imai again in his life, unless it was by death. May contracts are so cruel. If a male beast is unfortunate enough to meet a thinly veiled female mate, his life is over. I then looked up and asked to Frost Cloud, What do you think? If we have kids later on, what if they run into a female who is not nice to them? Frost Cloud then immediately said, Just let them use you as a standard to find a mate. But what kind of person is like you? Niu Xiang walked in at that moment. Matriarch, can I talk to you alone for a moment? Good. Frosty Cloud followed and walked out. Miu Xiang looked so haggard. Her brother leaving really hit her hard. When he came outside Kika said, Clan Chief, if I can't convince Kiba to leave that fox beast female, can you get him to rejoin the rock wolves? Males can leave their female mates unless they're abandoned. It's a very big price to pay. Frost Cloud didn't refuse, as long as it didn't break the rules. The Rock Wolf Clan welcomed him back. Mu Xian then thanked Frost Cloud. Thank you, Clan Chief, for your generosity. And I'm here alone, tinkering with these ceramics. Little Lotus suddenly appeared at that moment, calling out for her father. And I heard this cry of father. Immediately, I raised my head and looked over. What are you doing here? Tzu Ling said very calmly. I am here to ask if the medicine to solve the fertility difficulties of the Feather Clan has been made yet. This is embarrassing. End of story. I've been so busy harvesting seeds the last few days that I completely forgot about it. I immediately turned around and pounded the herbs. Ah, uh -huh. so what you wait? I've got some ideas. When it's done, send the medicine too. Before the words are out of my mouth, a hand caught my chin. Su Ling looked at the look and said, You're not going to forget all about it, are you? My heart beat faster, and then desperately shaking my head. No, 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 absolutely nothing. Chu Ling was dumbfounded. Then he reached out with one hand and I looked at him nervously. He leaned in close and looked at me and said something like, You better not be lying to me. And I can only respond that I never lie. The heart is also in fear. Such terrible pressure. What you do? Frost Cloud came here and saw this scene. And Zhu Ling immediately dodged out of the way to avoid unnecessary trouble. Frosty Cloud shielded me from you and forbade you to make a move on slowly. But Zhu Ling laughed and gave an oh so disdainful cry. I'm moving more, he said, licking his lips. Hearing this, Frosty Cloud gritted his teeth and said angrily, Don't think that I don't dare to beat you up, uh. I immediately pulled Frosty Cloud. Frosty Cloud, you calm down. I then opened my mouth and explained that Blood Plume didn't like me. He liked someone else, and I had nothing to do with him at all. The corner of Zhu Ling's eyes twitched when she heard this. Hey, this woman. But then Frost Cloud looked at Zhu Ling with a suspicious face. He has a favorite. Then he pointed at Zhu Ling. So why did he make a move on you? I had Frost Cloud's hand. He's just being idle. Even a different female would be just as likely to tease people casually. So don't think too much about it. Su Ling was annoyed by this. What do you mean a different female can just flirt with me? Do I look so starved for food? Well, Frost Cloud. I held Frost Cloud's hand. Frost Cloud just looked at me. I then opened my mouth to look at Su Ling. If you don't have anything else to do, hurry up and go. Su Ling was inexplicably upset when she heard this. Are you kicking me out? This bloody plume guy, I'd say yes, would definitely be a deadbeat. Frosty Cloud and I have some family business to take care of, so outsiders should leave first. But Su Ling got up with a deadpan face. I even had a child with you. What kind of outsider am I? I retorted to him with some embarrassment. Why do you have to talk like that? I'm not at all interested in you. And as a result, before my words were spoken, Su Ling's eyes became eloquent. He spread his wings. I'm not happy. Stop talking. I shrieked. Crap. This guy is moody and unhappy again. Su Ling continued. There is one more thing. When I flew down just now, I saw a nail beast from your wolf tribe following a dance. Looking at the direction. It was heading towards the Black River Tribe. Both men looked at each other. What was Kiba doing following Imai to the Black River Tribe? Su Ling then held out her hand and I looked over curiously. Su Ling beckoned. With such important information, shouldn't you send me some melon seeds as payment? 
I just muttered in a low voice, nothing but melons or melons, you stoner fiend, but I pulled out the melon seeds anyway, so Ling took the melon and left the place, Frosty Cloud watched from below, Frost Cloud frowned not knowing what to think, a few days later, slowing down they finally realized what Imai had done, Zhou Yuan quickly ran in, clan chief, the wild horse clan which Dr. Man Li has brought 58 wild horse orcs to the foot of Rocky Mountain, requesting to see you, which doctors never just leave the tribe, what happened to the Mustang tribe, when he came here, he shouted Frost Cloud Patriarch, as a result, Frost Cloud saw this appearance, Man Li why have you aged like this, a clan member on the side then said, Frost Cloud clan chief, our wild horse clan has erupted into internal strife, what? They're all shocked. Yes, Clan Chief Booker died a horrible death at the hands of his brother, Booster Gold, who became the new Mustang Clan Chief. Frost Cloud was very surprised to hear that. Booker was dead, and I covered my mouth in all. Booker, gosh, neither the witch daughter, nor we recognized Booster Gold as a patriarch. So we fled the Mustang tribe in the night. Frost Cloud was just thinking, how could that be? Booker was a tough fighter. No one in the entire Black River tribe could beat him. Monday Caliber shed a tear at this. It was the fox female who had caused the trouble. A fox female, Frost Cloud also remembered. Was it called M.I.? The Mustang orc immediately responded to his words. Yes, it was Emi. She was the one who killed Clan Chief Booker. The fox woman named Emi brought Kiba to the Mustangs. She looks pathetic and says she was kicked out to be with Kiba. Booker, seeing that Emi was poor, took the two of them in. And Emi has the beauty and heart to make Booker fall in love with her in no time. Booker and Emi are made. Buck's brother, Buchan, but unbeknownst to the Buck patriarch, Emi has already been secretly in bed with Buchan as well. Booker does everything Emi says, now realizing that Emi has betrayed him. Somehow, Emi has hooked up with Booker's brother, Booster Gold. Together they laid a poisonous plan to kill Booker. Emi secretly poisoned Booker. Booker was paralyzed and defenseless from the poisoning. And that despicable fellow Booster Gold. Surprisingly, he threw Booker into the Blackwater River and drowned him alive. And Booker had no choice but to sink in the end. There was actually something about it. Frost Cloud slapped the stone in anger. Male Beast Duel has always been open and above board. Life and death by myself. Never use poison so underhanded means. No wonder you are unwilling to recognize Bu Jin's position as clan leader. Such tactics are too disgraceful. This kind of sinister and venomous orc doesn't deserve to be a clan leader at all. We didn't know that Yi might have revealed her fox's tail as early as Rocky Mountain. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let her into our tribe, even if I had to die. The Mustang shed tears of sadness. I looked to them weeping, and Booker of the Wild Horses, the bright-natured chief, was dead. Monday Calendar then said, We are now homeless and being hunted by Buchan's men, and we implore the Rock Wolves to take us in. Frost Cloud frowned. I'm sorry, I refuse. Hearing Frost Cloud's refusal, they were in an uproar. Frost Cloud Clan Chief Hugh, while I sympathize with what you are going through, my first priority is to keep our Rock Wolf Clan safe. How do you prove that you came to us in good faith? Menli also sighed helplessly. Then Frost Cloud Clan Chief, what do you need us to do? Then he turned to me. You guys wait here. Slowly you come with me. I'm looking at Frosty Cloud. I got curious and asked Frosty Cloud what you wanted to do. We're still a secret at the Rock Fortress. And if they leaked out that we're now in the Rock Mountains, we'd be in trouble. So you need a contract to bind them. The previous refusal was a desire to escape. What does that mean? It's just a tactic, right? Ups, whatever. Slow down. You said earlier that you prepared some sheepskin deeds. The ones you can sign for orcs below three stars. Now I need to write the deeds. So get them from me. So I asked him, are you going to take in these Mustang orcs and not worry about Buchan coming to make trouble? Frost Cloud stroked his totem confidently. Uh, that despicable guy killed Booker. I saw him beating the crap out of him. It's sad that an orc with Booker's quick personality died like that. I know. Then I pulled a scroll from my ring. Then I'll write that the wildebeest must strictly follow the rules of the Rock Wolf Clan after living in the Rock Mountains and must never divulge any information about the inner workings of the Rock Mountains. If you break the contract, you will suffer from the pain of soul backlash. Right. Frost Cloud was in reverie just looking at me. Worthy of being my daughter in all. Not only is she soft and cute, she is also knowledgeable. The most powerful female in the entire orc continent. At that moment, however, he suddenly realized something. This was the feather of the blood plume. Well, he lost a lot of feathers anyway and didn't care. So I collected them. It's good for feather pins again. And feather cushions. 
Damn, that stinky bird is everywhere, but so what? In his eyes, you're nothing more than a guy you can pluck. I'm one of her most important mates. Frost Cloud will leave after taking the deed, so I'll go first. Let's collect the blood trays and stuff first. I smell something awful, something so fishy. Animal blood still tastes strong, so it looks like I'll have to find some plants to grind for ink. Frost Cloud came to them with the deed, which was a contract, and pressed his handprints, and the deed was made. Mung Lek looked at the deed and was shocked. This is writing. Someone from your tribe knows how to write. But I couldn't read the writing on it. What kind of contract was it? Then Frosty Cloud began to explain. Don't worry. This contract is not harmful to you. The details are. Manly is a bit uneasy. There must be some kind of trap hidden in this contract. Right. My life is only one thing. But I can't let so many of my clansmen be trapped. Frost Cloud instantly got cranky. I want to have designs on you guys. Wouldn't it be more straightforward to just do it? You guys can't beat me anyway. The Mustangs were furious when they heard this. But there was nothing else to say. Monday Caliber didn't dwell on that either. You're right. We have nothing now. Nothing for you to count on. He looked to the rest of the Mustangs. I'm going to sign the contract on behalf of everyone now. Whoever doesn't want to, can leave. Oh, which doctor? We believe you. There's nothing else they can do. Monday Calendar said seriously with a frown. I hope I have not betrayed your trust. At last his hand, stained with blood, took up this deed. Pressing on this, the compact instantly glowed. The scroll was glowing. Monday Calibro looks at the deed in amazement. What magical secrets did the Rockwolf clan hold? Frost Cloud put away the contract, and the pact was reached. Then he looked at Meng Li. Take your clan and follow us up the mountain. Frost Cloud plucked this side of the branch, and Monday Calendar and the others all followed, seeing the scene in front of him. Man Lee was stunned. This, this is, welcome to Rocky Mountain. How did the Rock Wolves build such an awesome fortress? No wonder Frost Cloud insisted on signing the contract scroll. If it were me, I would have done the same. This is the living area. From now on you will live here. The rooms are at your disposal. And if you lack anything, you can tell Zhou Yuan. The Mustangs looked around curiously. It was simply awesome. Rocky Mountain wasn't bad. Yeah, we can finally get some rest. Monday Calendar was just thinking back. Maybe, coming to Rocky Mountain was the best decision I ever made. Monday night and the others have checked in. I believe. Frost Cloud answered, and nine elements had it all arranged. The White Emperor then said, There are down scenes of people in the White Horse tribe, so we can't let them live for nothing. Can we? Can they be given a job? So that they can exchange their labor for food and residency. That's right. It just so happens that there's still a shortage of people in the fields. So turn around and let the Mustang orcs work in the fields. I agree with them. This is a good idea. How about getting a work point system? All three were surprised and asked me. Labor points? What's that? They've learned a lot of new things from slowing down lately. Get a system of work, credits, and exchange them for houses and food, and all sorts of living materials. They were puzzled by this. Exchanging resources. A work point system. Let's say an orc gets one work point for a day's work. If you save up 10 work points, you can exchange them for the use of a house. There's also food and herbs, all of which can be exchanged for work points. Frost Cloud immediately agreed with my plan. This could work. By Dai was also thinking, since this is the case, why don't we take the opportunity? to set the rules of the tribe together as well. There are more and more beastmen in the Rocky Mountains, and the tribes are getting more and more mixed. There was a need for a set of rules, like the beast cities, to limit the behavior of the beastmen to avoid chaos. Hearing saying nice words, isn't this the law? Ah, uh, Frost Cloud was seriously thinking about what this was. Then he clicked together. That's a good word. From now on our tribe's rules will be called laws. I explained that laws are issued only by the state. We are just a tribe. We don't need to use such a serious word. Right. Frosty Cloud asked me curiously. What is a country? That is a more advanced form of social group than a bee city. You could say it's a super bee city. Frost Cloud settled down again. Oh, so that's how it is. It seems that our future goal is to establish a super beast city. I held my forehead and sighed. Nakajia, don't make this so easy. Okay, what's it called then? Rock Super Beast City. According to the Rock Wolf Clan's rate of development, it's likely to become a new beast city. And it's not impossible to establish a super beast city. Didn't saying night always keep a low profile? Could it be that middle age sickness is contagious? Baidai also spoke up. The goal of establishing a super beast city is too big. I can finally breathe a sigh of relief. There is finally a normal person. As a result, Baidai said, first set a small goal, such as making laws. Before considering the matter of super beast city, 
these three guys have advanced middle age cancer. It's hopeless. After he finished his face became serious. There are too many secrets hidden in the slow body. Only when we are so strong that no one dares to bully us. She can only get real safety. Frost Cloud immediately greeted. Don't wait. Start writing now. I also am down. This time, I have a proposal. I don't know. If this proposal coming out will be too much for everyone to accept the following day. Yesterday was a busy day. Everyone from the Rock Tribe was gathered here, and the crowd was making a lot of noise. The other orcs were just wondering, what did the clan leader want to see us about? There should be an important announcement. The Mustangs are here too. Let's wait and see what happens. Frost Cloud directly a huge thick book was put in front of him. This is the newly established law. No matter who, as long as they live in the Rocky Mountain, they must abide by it. If they violate it, they will be expelled from the rocky mountain if it is light and if it is heavy they will be killed on the spot hearing frosty clouds words the people on the stage were wondering words what is that it sounds so powerful the witch doctor of the wild horse clan couldn't believe what he was hearing words the rock wolf clan was actually using words the noise from the stage continues the feather clan from the mountain seems to be here the chief of the feather clan looked at Zuling with curiosity are the words carved on the stone slab really words Su Ling looked at the words on it. It should be words, but I have never given seen this kind of words. He also pondered. Even you have never seen it, so who would have carved it? Su Ling did not answer this sentence. I do not know what he was thinking. Looked at the crowd below. Won't we know when we go down and ask Ross Cloud? His eyes keep staring at me. Last night, I properly corrected the text with slowly, so I can't make any mistakes. Number one, no shitting or peeing anywhere, and no remodeling of the house structure at will. Article two. No one is allowed to disclose anything about the Rocky Mountain to outsiders without permission. Number three, private fights are strictly forbidden. It's strictly forbidden to hurt or harm anyone. The beasts are talking. Seeing this situation, Frost Cloud directly summoned his beast to him and his. The people below were immediately stunned and didn't speak again. He then continued, I know that beastmen are bloodthirsty. If you have conflicts, you can apply to the escort for a fair duel. But there is one thing to remember. Point to point, no killing is allowed. Then someone was curious. Eh, what is an escort? I'll explain later. There's one last rule. After a female and a male are mated, she must not abandon the male without reason. They've been dumbfounded to hear the last rule. The females were then protesting that this was a deliberate attempt to suppress and chip away at the females. What are you trying to do? Frost Cloud Clan Chief. The male beasts are not good to us. We have to abandon them. It's only natural that you have no right to interface. I then open my mouth and said that I was the one who proposed this last rule. The female beast couldn't believe that it was me who proposed it. They all looked at me. Niu Xian was very upset. Why are you taking the male beast's side? Our physical strength is already inferior to the male beast. If our family status is also suppressed by the male beast, won't we be bullied by the male beast in the future? I just want to give all beasts a fair power. Male beasts love and care for females, and females should respect males, and the mate relationship should be equal. Not a one-sided torture. Females can abandon their mates for no reason. But if a male treats a female badly, or if the relationship breaks down, you can come to me and I will help you dissolve the mate relationship. How can a mate be disowned? This is simply unheard of. By die. Who heard this? Was very shocked. Frosty couldn't believe what I said. Slowly actually said that my test ships could be dissolved. Tulin was also a bit disbelieving. What is this little female talking about? Dissolve the mate relationship. What is that little female talking about? Although it is possible to dissolve a mate, but once you dissolve a mate, you will be strangers and will never be able to be mates again. The males are just talking about it. Is it really possible to dissolve a mate? I believe what he says. The female orcs then got worried. Will there be after effects? I also opened my mouth to explain. There will be a little, but it won't be life threatening. Is it really true? that I can regret it once it's lifted. If I want to couple up with someone else again, are there any repercussions? Frost clouded so many people asking questions. Then he hissed. Him and don't scare me slow down. I'll shut up. Look here first. Currently Rock Mountain only has these for laws, and they will be added and improved little by little in the future. There's also a new council of elders and a new guard of honor. The council of elders is made up of highly respected individuals, elected by the three clans to participate in major decisions. The escort guard is currently formed by the Rock Wolf clan 
and is responsible for daily patrols and defense work. If you want to join the escort guard, go to Jiu Yuan later to test your abilities. He is currently serving as the captain of the escort guard. There is also the work point system, the houses that are now distributed to you to live in. If you want to live there forever, you must work. Apart from vegetable plots and fruit groves, there's also hunting and cleaning the common areas. As long as you do the work, you get work credits, and 50 work credits can be exchanged for permanent residency in a house. So if we want to buy the fruits and vegetables you grow, can we buy the vegetables and fruits you grow with work credits? Of course, the witch doctor of the Mustang tribe immediately agreed. Okay, we Mustang orcs don't intend to wait for death. In this atmosphere of lively discussion and active participation, the first work conference ended. I then Saturday here awkwardly with a helpless face, not daring to speak, looking at the three of them looking at me. You guys don't stare at me like that. Frost Cloud was the first to speak. You have a way to omit orcs. Yes. I then took out the bottle from my ring. There is a very magical medicine called forgetfulness water. Drinking it will make you forget all your feelings and will also remove the bond between mates. All three of them looked at me wearily this. They they asked me, have you already developed the water of forgetfulness? But I am still missing to herbs. I die's face was very serious. If it is developed, you must tell us immediately. Saint Knight also said, we can't let others know about the existence of the water of forgetfulness. Otherwise, there will definitely be a big mess. It was only then that I realized the seriousness of the problem. I can't believe I didn't think of it. The water of forgetfulness is equivalent to allowing male beasts to both allow females to produce heirs for them and not be controlled by the females. It's just like the modern world I was in before. In the civilized world, there were still all sorts of exploitation of females. In this barbaric orc world, once the amnesia water was popularized, stronger males can force females to become tools for procreation. I don't want to study the water of forgetfulness, Mateship is the only means for females to restrain males. I thought shallowly at first, but the white emperor said that this water of forgetfulness can continue to be developed. You're not wrong. Many innocent male beasts have been killed because of the inequality of Mateship, and the forget-me-not water offers them a ray of hope. It's just that we must strictly control the formula and quantity of the forget-me-not water. I agreed to it. Got it. In order to protect the females, the development of the forget-me-not water was put on hold slowly, and they started to busy themselves with the construction of the kindergarten. But the mates in the tribe have quietly changed. In the past, the females relied on their dominance and didn't take the males seriously. Hearing that they could dissolve their mates, the females developed a sense of crisis and curbed their temper, and the mates instead became more intimate and harmonious. Finally, I looked at the blackboard on the wall and the blackboard was done. The next step was to see how well the children came to class. That's when a voice suddenly came. So let's teach us first. I looked at the three people at the door. Whitey, you guys, we're here for the lesson. We also want to learn to recognize words. You teach us. Teaching is certainly possible. But just to be clear beforehand, we're not considered teachers and students, in case they get beastly. Teacher, your skin is so white. Okay, let's start. I point to the blackboard and start teaching. Let's start with numbers today. I wrote 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8. They all look at the numbers I've written. In a few moments, the numbers go up here. And by the way, I'm going to teach you your names. I wrote out their names. Here are your names. I'll teach you how to write them. Frosty Cloud, with a dazed look on her face, inquired of me. Slowly, how do you write your name? I wrote out my name. Lynn is my surname. This is my first name. Where I used to live? A family name is a symbol of a family's continuity. Frost Cloud waved his feast. Then all our children will have the surname Lynn. Your surname is nice. I turned my head to them in surprise. A bit in disbelief. By Dai also said, that's right. If the place where you used to live had a family name, then your children should inherit it as well. Well, Lynn, it's nice to hear. Sonia agreed with them as well. It was as if a heavy blow had been struck in my heart in this beast world, to give birth to a child that belongs to my bloodline and inherits my family name. Ren, 